Audiobook title, Genius Summoner Turning the World Upside Down, 01 to 55, 1. Unlocked. Everyone is looking at the petite figure who is about to turn 10 years old in a minute. Those eyes are full of expectation, mockery. Some are curious and came here for fun even put a bet on the result on what would be the aptitude of the only daughter of the late summoner of Long Dynasty would be. Martial artist? Magician? Summoner? Or would she continue to live as a waste just like how she's living in the past ten years? Even she is the only offspring of the only summoner of the kingdom. Only few have an expectation to her aptitude test. As she not only naive but also the well-known vase of the Su family, one of the four great families of the Long Din Sati. The little girl in the middle of the crowd wearing her pink blush hanfu is called Su Meixiang. She is the third young miss of the Su family. Her father, Su Lan is the second son of the current patriarch of the Su and also the husband of the late summoner. Dan Fairhan. Su Lan is among the crowd who is also looking forward to this aptitude test of his daughter as she may become a summoner or become a dual element ability user just like her mother, if she may just be as talented or even only half of Dan Fairhan's talent. It is enough to bring back his glory not only to the Su family but to the whole Long Dynasty. A minute passed but out of everyone's expectation not only there is no sign of the little girl becoming a summoner but also the stones of martial arts and magic didn't light or even move. And unidentified whispers are coming from the crowd while the little girl of their topic is startled as a pressure on her body is lifted while a spell placed on her body is being unlocked. She closed her eyes and feel the undescribable movement inside her body. She is now standing in a black space staring at a beautiful lady three steps away from her. Mike Xiang, er, uh, a smile appeared on the lady's face. Now that you can see mother, it means the seal I set into your body is lifted. It also means that today is your so-called birthday. Her mother laughed slowly. Her lips drew a smile full of meaning. Ten days from now, Mike Xiang er will turn ten and also the time Xiang er can really test her aptitude. Ten days, you have ten days to know who really cares for you, and who really don't. A bitter smile appeared on her beautiful face. Blood ties doesn't make you call a person family. Mother believes Mike Xiang Er's judgment. This is the only thing mother can do before she leaves the mother's only princess. The transparent like soul image completely closed their gap before placing a kiss on her forehead before it fades completely. Everyone thinks that the third young miss of the Sioux is dumbfounded on her result as a tear flows from her left eye. She lower her head and stare at the ground to hide the emotions on her pair of eyes. She haven't recovered from the moment of seeing her mother when suddenly a strong force pulls her soul and when she opens her eyes again, she appeared at a place with unending collections of books and scrolls. 2. Master at the sacred book, lifting her eyes, if only the crowd would not focus on their gossips. They may notice the changes on the little girl's aura especially her eyes that was full of naivety before and now those clear eyes turns as bright as the moon that you could say the owner of those calm full of knowledge eyes is unreasonable to be owned by a young girl that hadn't even reached the age of 10. Makes Yang Kami look at the crowd, it only pass a second to this world but no one of these judging eyes know that to her it pass an unknown years reading unending books inside the sacred book that is currently living inside her body as it recognized her as its master long ago. After her soul arrived inside that room full of books, a note was placed in front of her. The note says to read the books on the currently unlocked shelves and put those knowledge in her mind and in her heart. After completing the mission. The other shelves are unlocked and her soul came back to her physical body only to learn that to the outside world after her accumulating unending knowledge in different fields. These people only accumulate gossips, years passed to her but to them, only a second had passed. In just a second, her eyes full of sadness became calm like an undisturbed lake raking her eyes in the crowd to look at a specific person. Her father, Sulan, among the crowd is startled at her daughter's gaze but suddenly recovered his disappointed face that turns into a face full of anger. He turned his back towards his daughter and make a way out of the crowd. The members of the Su family whom all eyes to the father-daughter pair laugh at this scene. They sneer while their eyes are full of mockery. The Su family followed and came back to the manor. The crowd slowly dispersed leaving Su Meixiang calmly observing everything. Third young miss, Meixiang lifted her eyes and met the eyes of a middle-aged man. A smile showed on her face and in a low voice she called, General Tain. General Tain was startled at the aura their third miss brought. 
her bright eyes staring at him have no sign of sadness and disappointment of what happened tonight. This scene makes him doubt of this third young miss. This general was asked by the young lady's father, Master Sulan, to escort the third young miss to the Su Manor. A faint smile appeared on Meixiang's face. She is too naive before to believe General Ten and his family treats her well because it is her father's order. Meixiang just nodded as she makes her way to the carriage and said nothing else. General Ten who is a fifth-year martial artist that have sharper five senses than ordinary person was startled again after realizing something. Following her gaze to the straight back of the petite girl, he saw the image of his late master Dan Fairhan. Returning to the Su Manor, Su Lan is on his knees in front of his father, the current patriarch of the Su family. You arrange your daughter's aptitude test at the plaza for only to what? Only to humiliate the Su family that a waste was again born on our family? If only testing her talent was executed inside our manor we can at least have some face but now what? You just put shame to this family again. The only good thing you had done to this family is to trick a summoner and bring her here but what happened next? Only she lived for five years and our family didn't get much from her. And now you even let your daughter come after you and became a waste like you. A trash. Go away from my eyes. Su Lan's fist is now in round pressing his fingernails on his palm as his eyes full of anger but hide these emotions by kowtowing almost banging his forehead towards the floor. Father. Make Xiang's aptitude result may not be good but don't forget that she is still betrothed to the crown prince with the power of my late wife the only summoner of Long Dynasty. Yi Yan, the main wife of the first branch of the Su family, stepped forward and bowed her head and said in a full of empathy-like voice, Yes, father. Although the late sister-in-law is now gone she is still the only summoner existed in our kingdom. Third niece may not be a talent like sister-in-law, but this generation is not a total loss. Su Lan frowned with his sister-in-law helping him subsiding the patriarch's anger. Not only she reminded the old man that his wife is now no longer existing and his daughter is a waste but also to be said that the Su family still have the pair of siblings from the first branch who are known to be a genius martial artist, Su Yuan Su Ruin who is tested as a rare dual magician. The face of the patriarch became lighter being reminded of his talented grandchildren. He took his seat and tried to calm himself by drinking tea. When everyone felt that the patriarch is now calm. Everyone flaunts about their children and their progress to remove the tension in the hall ignoring Su Lan who is still on his knees bowing his head staring on his fist angrily. The heavy atmosphere in the Su Manor is soon lifted completely while the cause of this tension is now on her bed ready to enter the sacred book again. 3. The Countdown The next day while the story about what happened last night circulated to the entire Long Kingdom, the person on their topic just woke up with a smile. It turns out a day here is equivalent to three days inside the book. A satisfied smile on Meixiang's beautiful face appeared. She also noticed after reading the first set of books last night, learning is much easier to her now. Aside from having a cheat in time, her learning ability also increases that allows her to learn a lot and maybe the unlocked shelves will be done before her real birthday arrives. Standing up. She was about to change her clothes when a knock on the door was heard. A whisper-like voice heard from the back door of her room. Little Xiang, this is Brother Ling. Mother cooked your favorite snacks. It's now afternoon she think you are craving for these so she packs a lot. Oh this one is special than before she puts a lot of milk and even added some. The young man called Tan Ling only stops his about to no end line and was taken aback that Mei Xiang suddenly appeared in front of her out of nowhere. Little, little Xiang. Make Xiang turn her back to the young boy and said in low voice, Go in before others saw you trespassing this young Miss Manor and taint my already tainted reputation. Tan Ling realized this and look around like a spy, confirming no one is around he followed Make Xiang inside her room. Little Xiang, you, don't be sad. Big brother is always here. Make Xiang nodded looking at the young man full of anticipation, to be exact she is looking at fully packed foods in his arms. Tan Ling sigh and look at his friend. It's okay not to be okay and even better if you'll show to big brother you're not okay. Make Xiang nodded not caring if she's being misunderstood and said, Now please big brother put the snacks auntie brought for me here and I'll be even better. As she tapped the table in front of her twice. Su Make Xiang's face was seriously asking for her food as she tapped the table in front of her twice. Tan Ling surrender and put the snacks he brought into Make Xiang's side. 
he sat in the opposite seat and observe her little sister who is happily munching like an hungry little rabbit. He then turned his eyes to her little sister's pink blush hand foo. TSK, if you are really okay you would at least change to sleeping robe. Tanling continued to nag her like a real big brother. Makes Yang didn't mind to explain and continue to eat. This is her first food after like years had passed inside the sacred book. Inside the unending library she didn't feel the hunger but she just missed the joy of eating. When she gets back home last night she didn't even mind to change her clothes and directly enter the sacred book to continue reading the new available books. That is today's explanation her condition is like this. L. Little Xiang. Tanling said looking at her little sister pitifully. She looked at the uncomfortable face of her childhood friend while her cheeks are bulging eating in unlady-like manner. Little Xiang he sigh like an mature tired man and look at her friend seriously. Don't be sad, you see so what if you can't practice martial arts or magic? Look at me. I can't practice neither the two but I am so handsome. Make Xiang keep eating trying to ignore his friend's last sentence. Tanling who is looking at Mei Xiang's action being carefree and all remembering himself five years ago, he turned his mode in a very serious mode just like an old man saying an advice to his predecessor. Do you still remember when me and my twin brother Tan Feng held our aptitude test and him being a rare thunder and fire attribute and me who can't cultivate at all? Tan Ling's face can't help but twitch when he saw Mei Xiang's face towards him full of sympathy, cough. That time you also came to me and tried to comfort me. You are only five years old at that time not knowing what really is happening. You said to me I would always be your older brother and would always be the best in the whole world. He laughs remembering that again, his eyes full of smiles. What really happened that day is you seriously told me these exact words. He tried his best to imitate a young girl's voice and said, Brother, even you're a waste you would always be the best for me. He then laughs remembering that scene again. You even said that out loud. The people from Su Manor all laugh at that time but to me. He smiled beautifully his eyes full of appreciation. Your words saved me, although you called me a waste. Those words keep echoing inside my head even today. The next day I went to old Leng and pester him to teach me how to become a smith like him but after I almost put his workplace to fire he never let me near his smith place. The next day I came to the Beast Taming Association and only rejected hundreds of times. Then lastly I found myself learning medicine and loving this profession. Now I am assisting Dr. Fan and soon to learn prescriptions. He laughs and shyly scratch the back of his head. I may not become a heavenly doctor but becoming a normal doctor like Dr. Fan is great right? This brother is still the best in my little sister's eyes right? Make Xiang can't help but smile at this older brother of her. Indeed a perseverance will brought you good. But perseverance isn't enough to reach your real dream. Do you want to become a heavenly doctor? Startled Tan Ling Sai. Little Xiang, dreaming is good but setting a realistic dream is even better. To become a heavenly doctor, I have to become a fire attribute magician to make pills and also being heavenly doctor is too high. I, I just can't. But you want it? Who doesn't want it? In our long kingdom alone. We only had two heavenly doctor and those two learn to fully grasp their profession when they get out of this small long dynasty. Little Xiang, you may think our kingdom is powerful but out of those walls, there are kingdoms powerful than ours and people stronger than the people you know. Yes even stronger than father. Look, let's remove of me not being able become a fire attribute magician. The moment I get out of these kingdom I would easily be died in the hands of those powerful people. You said a lot. A yes is enough. Tell auntie thank you for the snack. You come here again tomorrow. Same time. Yes. Oh I will also bring books so we can learn being a doctor together. Don't worry. Older brother will teach you the basics. I will also reward you the prescriptions I accumulated the past four years if you learn faster than me. Yes. Yes. Ha 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 ha. Make Xiang's face can't help but twitch with this friend's acting like an old man who just recruited a disciple. She can't help but remember those hundreds of thousands of book about medicine she read from the sacred book. She just sigh waving her hand in a leisurely manner she said. You don't have to. Just remember to come tomorrow and don't forget auntie's homemade snacks. And now you can go. Little sister wants to rest first. Tanling stops laughing realizing something. Oh, yeah. You are still sad. You can't learn in this state. Yes, yes. Big brother will go again tomorrow. After Tanling left, 
Make Xiang returned inside the sacred book and tried to bring some medicinal books outside the library only to be failed, therefore, she writes word by word and bring them outside in success ready to be studied by Tan Ling whom in the future would be known as a heavenly doctor with God hands that can heal any sickness. The next day, Tan Ling bringing the snacks prepared by his mother, he was surprised by the pile of medicinal information Make Xiang brought. He happily study them full of enthusiasm while Mei Xiang is leisurely eating her snacks. Days goes on in this manner as Tan Ling will learn this pile of medical information unknown to him that these books are his road in becoming a heavenly doctor. While the young man is learning he sometimes cast his gaze to his friend Mei Xiang who is either eating or sleeping on her bed. Sighing, he is full of vigor making Mei Xiang her inspiration. If he can learn more. He can teach her little sister right. Little did the future heavenly doctor knows, his so-called little sister who is sleeping is now on her journey learning unending pit of knowledge as she already master thousands of books. Days continue like this until two days away from Mei Xiang's real birthday, the crown prince's birthday banquet arrived. 4. Martial Artist Genius When the Su family's arrival announced, the whole place is put into silence. Everyone's eyes focus on the little girl in yellow dress who is calm and graceful like not noticing everyone's gaze on her. When they were recovered after seeing Mei Xiang's different tour abroad, the so-called noble young masters AMD misses continue their whispers as they reminisce what happened eight days ago proving that the well no vase is indeed an only vase. So what if she's the number one beauty? The world is lead by the strongest and being a waste means the best she can be as a tool for a man in bed. Real to what Mei Xiang is showing, she really didn't care about the whispering and mockery around her even some are from her cousins. She can't help but sigh, if not with this banquet she may already had read a book. While thinking of her older brother Tan Ling, she can't help but sigh again. While she is now surrounded by these wastes that older brother of her is for sure surrounded by pile of papers studying medical knowledge. Tan Ling although son of General Tan, he is tested as neither magician nor martial artist five years ago so even he's not present to these kind of events, no one minds. Mei Xiang on the other hand is highly anticipated to this royal celebration especially it is her betrothed's birthday banquet, everyone is anticipating of her becoming a laughing stock. Mei Xiang knew all about these and indeed didn't care, feeling bored and hungry. She roam her line of sight and unknowingly look at Tan Feng's way that reminds her of her brother Ling again. Tan Feng and Tan Ling are twin brother, although their temperament are in total opposite direction the two are with the same will to reach the peak of their own fields. Just like now, Tan Feng can't wait to go home to cultivate. In such occasions this makes the durability user Tan Feng envy his waste brother. Tan Ling on the other hand being envied by his brother and younger sister is indeed full of vigor reading pile of medical information. Although he looks carefree in ordinary days he is full of enthusiasm to learn especially among him and his twin brother, he is older by two minutes that gives him the responsibility to show the mature older brother image which he obviously failed to show most of the time. Noticing Mei Xiang's stares, Tan Feng look at the young lady's direction. Mei Xiang didn't even show a shyness of being caught staring at a young man but instead she let go a sigh and calmly withdraw her gaze and look at the main door. Not long after, the eunuch announced the arrival of the royal family. All the people present bow their heads and welcome the royal family. Entering, the king is carefully laughing while the queen have a restrained smile as the fourth princess is telling something that obviously is the reason of her royal parents' light mood. Now realizing the presence of the people in the hall the king leisurely wave his hand while walking to his throne. You don't have to be formal. Everyone follows and raise their heads. They took their seats after the royal family. After a short ceremony the performance of the noble young misses started. This young misses are to show off their talents as they know the so-called crown princess is about to be replaced by the most deserving one. The smiles of these young misses got stiff when they heard the last performer. The last performer the second young Miss Su Ruin of Su Manor playing the Kukin. Su Ruin shyly get up from her seat and gracefully place herself in the middle of the hall. This scene melts the hearts of every young man especially the crown prince Long Jiang who is staring at her intently. When she plays the Kukin, every young master's emotions are in stir aside of course. From Tan Feng who can't wait to get home and continue his cultivation. On the other side where the young misses are sitting, 
they simply steal a gaze to the crown prince's reaction only to be heartbroken of course this is not the case to make Xiang as she is indeed heartbroken not because of the crown prince but because of her wasted time which if calculated inside the sacred book, she is now wasting two days, in the middle of Su Ruin's performance. A white creature flew to the direction of the young misses that caused the disturbance of the entire hall. They all look at the direction where the ladies are sitting only to see Mei Xiang stretching her right arm, on her right hand a white creature is being strangled by her small hand. A shout suddenly rang to the hall as the fourth princess eunuch walks toward Mei Xiang, third young Miss Su. Mei Xiang calmly look at the eunuch few steps away from her. The eunuch spread his hands toward her indicating her to hand the white creature on her grasp. Do you own this wild thing? A shout rise again. Everyone's attention turned to the fourth young princess Long Kiaran. You, you. Everyone held their breath. Who didn't know that this so-called wild thing by Mei Xiang is the well-loved tier 3 beast White Gust Sparrow, a wind attribute beast owned by the fourth princess. A tier 3 beast is indeed nothing special but to the small kingdom of Long Dynasty, owning a spiritual beast with element attributes alone is special not to mention a tier 3 with element attribute, it must be the third young miss of the Su family, a voice rang and everyone look at the king who have not lose his composure since at the start, Mei Xiang calmly gave the dead body of the white gust sparrow to the eunuch and bow her head to the direction of the king, responding to your highness, this is indeed the third young miss of the Su Manor, Su Meixiang. This king remembers that summoner Dan Fairhan's daughter just passed her tenth year of age and now seeing how a tier 3 warlock with a wind attribute was single-handedly killed, this king is astounded. Indeed the daughter of the genius summoner Dan Fairhan would also be a genius like her. Everyone choked with the king's statement, who didn't know that the third young miss of the Su family is a waste? No one believes that the king didn't pay attention to the result of the aptitude test of his son the crown prince's betrothed. In this case the king is blatantly reminding everyone the result of her aptitude test and also asked what mean did she use to be able to handle a tier 3 warlock. At the last of his statement he again reminded that she is indeed waste and even lower than a waste compared to her genius mother who not only a dual element ability user but also a summoner. Your Highness looks too highly of this little Meixiang compared to my mother whose roots isn't here. This little Meixiang is nothing compared to her and the others. The king isn't dumb not to understand the blatant threat of the little girl. Dan Fairhan is indeed not from Long Dynasty and with her aptitude she is surely from a big family outside the small kingdom. The little girl respond is vague but holds a lot of meaning. The others can be said as her family in her mother's side. If she compares her aptitude of her own to her mother's family it means they are in touch with her, or she's just bluffing. If not then how could she have the ability to kill a tier 3 beast without cultivation? It is indeed from an external factor and surely this isn't available to this small kingdom of Long Dynasty. The king is smart enough not to take a risk and only swallow his anger. The so-called external factor everyone speculating is indeed not fully wrong. Make Xiang indeed used a needle but without internal force these needles wouldn't affect the tier 3 warlock. This internal force is only a drop of knowledge she learned from those sea of books. After reading the first batch of books, Make Xiang learns that in different world they use different way of cultivation and one of this is cultivating internal force. In the world where Make Xiang born where Qi can cultivate to do Qi and magic Qi. Internal force is closely related to the duchi cultivated by martial artist in this world, although it's not fully appropriate to cultivate this internal force in her current environment, she still tried as 10 days is not short and accidents may happen before her real ability will be shown. Make Xiang looks calm outside but her back is in sweat as she wants to pat her own self praising herself. Training and cultivating internal force is not put in vain. Without this internal force and this needle, that lowly third tier beast may have just killed her in just one pound. 5. Breaking the Marriage Martial artist genius who didn't know she not only breaks her Sioux family's expectation of her becoming a summoner but also ended up becoming a magic and duchy waste. Yes indeed people are whispering this things but saying it blatantly not only to the face of the man in topic but also in front of the king is too inappropriate. This manner of Princess Kiaran gave a disapproval to many. She ignore the warning gaze of her mother, the queen, and look at Mei Xiang full of contempt. But seeing how the third young Miss Su protected herself from this princess spiritual beast, a tier 3 wind attributes warlock, 
is indeed a worth applauding act. This princess had reacted wrongly and acted rashly. This princess third stage wind attributes warlock's life is no better than third young Miss Sue's life. Fourth princess Kiaran is asking for forgiveness to the future crown princess and would be pleased if what happened today will not cause a discord between us. Even her tone and eyes is full of contempt and mockery no one can refuse as her statement have nothing wrong into it so even the queen was pleased that her daughter is now finally sober. Future crown princess wouldn't dare to. Make Xiang's reply choked everyone, riding the sarcasm of the princess and can even say such words in a calm manner. She called herself future crown princess in front of the royal family without blinking her eyes. Princess Kiaran swallowed back her anger and tried to calm herself again. In that case, this princess wanted to ask a favor from the F, future crown princess. This is to make the day of this princess royal brother, the crown prince, become more special. Ow. Future royal sister-in-law wanted this royal sister's future husband the day of birth more special than before. While Mei Xiang is ignoring those reactions from the crowd her smile is getting deeper and deeper as she can tell what this simple-minded princess low-level trick. Please, indeed, as the future crown princess, this little Mei Xiang will do her best to help the royal sister. Princess Kiaran was too dumb how Mei Xiang call her from future royal sister-in-law to royal sister too quick without blinking an eye. The eunuch seeing the princess is fuming with anger, he signaled himself the people outside to brought the thing inside. A metallic cage that was blinded by a black cloth was pushed by twelve men to the center of the hall. When the cloth was pulled, a golden lion was exposed with a fire surrounding its neck and at the end of its tail is also in a small fire. Seeing the beast, the princess mood got better and look at Mei Xiang full of arrogance. It is supposed to be this princess gift to the older brother the crown for the birthday banquet but unfortunately the palace beast tamer didn't tame it in time. This beast is found in the forest near the east border of the kingdom and transported here in the palace secretly five months ago unknown to royal brother. Five months have passed but with the power of our palace beast tamers these warlock haven't tamed yet. Mei Xiang look at the warlock nodding her head. Princess Kiaran is indeed true to her words. With this five-tier golden crimson lion of fire attribute and is currently on his fifth peak strength, the crown prince day of birth would indeed become more special. A pity this is useless to my bit road even it is tamed. The princess may forget but the crown prince is a martial artist. It is impossible for a martial artist to contract a warlock with magic attribute. It is indeed impossible if you have no knowledge and ability given by the sacred book. Make Xiang inwardly said, Princess Kiaran is indeed thoughtful but a pity, the princess five months effort of taming this warlock even if it's a success would be a waste to my future husband, unless the crown prince knows someone who is a fire attribute magician. Everyone thinks of a person and some are brave enough to look at the direction of Suruwen. Suruwen is currently excited seeing a warlock on its fifth peak level as one of her magic element is fire. She lower her head tried to hide the greed on her eyes that seems to other people she was too shy to look to the crown prince. A pity the royal family doesn't have a fire magician. Royal sister. If you want this future crown princess will help you ready this present to the crown prince that will allow this warlocks be useful to him. A smile appeared on Mei Xiang's beautiful face and together with her calm and soft voice the startled princess Kiaran whom expected she would backed away unknowingly nodded. Mei Xiang walks near the cage and look at the golden crimson lion. She pulled five golden needles and a dagger that she just unlocked recently inside the sacred book. These needles and dagger with the knowledge she read from the beast section of the library, she undoubtedly have an upper hand not to mention the beast is restrained inside the cage. Within those books she had already read, every warlock even normal beasts was now known to her, from the position of their core, their strengths and weaknesses, their nature level of strength in nature, how they cultivate, she no longer foreigner to these details. Of course she already learned the art of beast taming and can easily tame this level 5 warlock but a pity, aside from the time is not yet ripe to expose this ability of her she also not an idiot to let this beast be tame and let Sue Ruin harvest this warlock. Focusing her internal force to her feet and hands, she run in an inexplicable speed about 10 lapses around the cage and target the Aku points of the warlock to paralyze it for half a minute. Getting the results she wanted, she leaped so fast run towards the unmoving warlock and by using the dagger she easily cut its neck with fire and clutch its core putting it away from its flesh. 
everyone was dumbfounded of what just happened. Now in the middle of the hall, the little girl bath with blood is smiling at the shining core on her hand. No one sees how she killed the beast and everyone was confused on how did it not attack her. That is a five-tier beast. Mix Yang indeed has the speed but a five-tier beast have sensitive senses not to mention sensing a waste like a Mix Yang. Killing it would be easy. A waste one over a five-tier warlock? What operation is this? If Mix Yang is a waste then what are they? Mix Yang Kami walks toward Princess Kiaran and stretch her both hands holding the core of the beast. Royal sister, just as future sister-in-law said, this warlock can't be contracted by betrothed so future royal sister-in-law solve this matter with your permission a while ago. Future crown princess hopes royal sister wouldn't mind the mess this little sister caused. Everyone look at Mixing and then to the unbelieving look of Princess Kiaran. Her face full of disbelief with a hint of fear. Startled, the eunuch who got into his senses offered a pillow where Mexiang placed the beast core. Royal father, the king became sober when he heard the crown prince's sudden call. Pring Long Jing hurriedly walks toward the king and kneel in front of him. Everyone gasped with this sight. Royal father, this crown prince wished to cut the contract marriage to the third young miss of the Su Manor. Startled, the king who is still speculating Mexiang's identity frowned to his son's request. He fearfully look at Mexiang's way and carefully observe her reaction only to see her still calm face. Royal father, the people around once again shock when Princess Long Kiaran also kneels beside her brother and do the same. Look at her. Such like her isn't appropriate to be part of our royal family. She is too barbaric, too unlady. A war. The princess remember once again how Mexiang killed the Warcraft and swallowed the word waste. The king's head is hurting as too many information have to be organized. He needs a plan. He needs first to confirm Mexiang's backer and resources before dealing with her. But before he can stop the two, Mexiang suddenly said, Your Highness. Bowing Mexiang raised her both hands presenting a jade with intricate carvings. Little Mexiang need not to pretend. This young lady before coming here is ready to accept the cutting of contract marriage with the crown prince. In a sad voice she continued, This. This little makes Yang after her aptitude test. The first thing she remember is the crown prince. This young lady still remembers when mother is still alive she said serving the kingdom is her greatest glory and so should I. This young girl, when she grow up, of course such memory is not existing. Her mother only cares for her. Serving this small kingdom is to assure her daughter's safety. In a weak and hurt voice, makes Yang continued starting from the day. This young lady's dream is to bring glory to the Long Dynasty just like mother when she brought the kingdom to win many battles. My hope serving the kingdom just like what mother did is gone when my aptitude test takes place. Little Mexiang knows she not only disappoint mother but also the Long Dynasty. I, a waste, the last thing I can do now to bring glory to the kingdom is to not hold back the talented crown prince. Everyone was hit by Mexiang's words scolding them that after they benefited to her mother's existence. Now knowing they can't get anything from her she is now to be disposed, they even lower their heads when they heard Mexiang calling herself a waste just like how everyone calls her behind her back, everyone knows they are in wrong here but realizing the royal family being more shameless their anger directed towards them. Such an white-eyed wolf, your highness, allow the crown prince be free to our contract marriage. Make Xiang even lower her head more and weakly plead which break the onlookers hearts. 6 spiritual weapon. The crowd is still in silence as they look on Mexiang's back full of sympathy. This, the king was too startled of the development of everything and even don't know what to said when everyone's gaze seems indifferent to his royal family. He calm himself and sigh. If that's Mexiang wanted to, then this king can't reject. This is to pay respect to your late mother with a great contribution to this kingdom. Naturally this king has to satisfy some of Feihan's daughter's wish. This is to calm everyone and make them realize this decision is by Mexiang and at least to lessen the pushing the blame to the royal family of the cancellation of the marriage. Thanking the royal highness Mexiang made a bow and said in an hesitant manner. This, Mexiang believes the banquet is now on its end part. Everyone just look at her and so with the king to allow her to continue what she wanted to say. This who makes Yang would wanted to follow the princess in giving a present to the crown prince if allowed. 
Meg Xiang is not in a good state and only wanted to hand her humble present to the crown prince. Silence. They almost forget this is a birthday banquet and not a banquet for cutting a contract marriage. They almost forgot that just a while ago she easily killed an almost dear six warlock and now covered with the warlock's blood. The king gave a signal allowing her to do everything she wanted. This third young lady of the Su Manor, Su Meixiang, offering this humble present. The eunuch once again walks toward Meixiang as she carefully placed the dagger covered with blood at the top of the red pillow. This little Meixiang would want to ask for forgiveness as my present to the crown prince is now tainted by the warlock's blood but rest assured the lethality of the weapon wouldn't be affected. In a shy voice she said, this. This is a treasure given by mother and said it is valuable and can help me in times of need. Crown Prince Long Jing is already talented but with this five-hold spiritual weapon, Crown Prince will surely be undefeatable. The petite nine years old girl covered with blood smiled innocently looking at the Crown Prince that makes everyone doubt if this girl is too dumb or too devoted to the kingdom. Once again their anger rose towards the royal family. Suddenly the royal advisor stepped forward among the crowd and bowed his head towards the king. Your Highness, allow this servant to ask the young miss some questions in front of the king. The startled king who is still mesmerized to the five-hold spiritual weapon recovered and signaled the old man as he knows the advisor is doing this to subside the crowd from putting the blame to the royal family. Third young Miss Su, allow this old man to ask you a question. Make Xiang just look at him with her clear innocent A's. This present of yours to the crown prince. Does the young lady of the Sioux knows how important this is? Makes Yang just hesitantly nodded keep on acting her weak innocent white sheep image. Very important. It was given by mother. Naturally it is very important. Everyone sigh in their heart. So why are you giving it to that scumbag? Let this old man inform the young lady how and why valuable this so-called spiritual weapon is. The weapons usually existing on our kingdom are just ordinary weapons. You think these weapons may be already lethal but with the existence of spiritual weapon, such normal weapons are just nothing. Now, spiritual weapon is already powerful but when placed with beast cores and spiritual crystals, the more powerful this weapon is. Now you said it is five hold weapon. It is indeed powerful with five beast cores and five spiritual crystals. The higher the level of these cores and crystals, the higher the lethality of the weapon. What is more tricky in creating this weapon is a person who can only allow to hold these crystals and cores to the spiritual weapon is at least a martial artist in his seventh stage who must also be an armament master. All in all, this present you are giving to the crown prince is priceless that it would become the most precious treasure of the kingdom. Of course this information is fully known by Meixiang, too detailed that if she is now a seventh dear martial artist, it only takes time for her to be called an armament master. Meixiang nodded with her eyes full of amazement. It is indeed too valuable. This old man once again wanted to ask, do young Miss Su still wanted this five-hold spiritual weapon to be given to the crown prince? Without hesitation, Meg Xiang said in a clear and excited voice, whom seems happy to help the crown prince more than she expected. I, Su Meg Xiang, really wanted to give it to the crown prince. Princess Kiaran sneered and whispered, and do you think older brother will like you because of this? This whisper was heard by everyone. The hall was dropped into an awkward silence once again. Fourth Princess Long Kiaran, Princess Kiaran was startled by his father's call. Aside from his tone. He also called her name as a princess indicating he is really enraged. This is the first time his royal father directed his anger to her. She's in panic to meet her mother's warning gaze and father's anger until the voice of Meg Xiang rang to the hall. This little Meg Xiang will lie if she said she didn't like her fiancé, ex-fiancé, the crown prince. Everyone was shocked at the little girl's brave confession. In the past 10 years this is the first time Mei Xiang see his highness the crown prince in this distance as Mei Xiang never leaves her resident after mother died. Mei Xiang can only imagine, can only portray her betrothed based on sister Ruin's stories. Su Ruin seems at loss when she heard her name mention out of nowhere. Even second sister is already tired from attending the royal events. Second sister will always find time for this younger sister to tell every detail of his royal highness the crown prince. Second sister will never miss a detail. With her stories this young lady slowly learned the crown prince's favorite food, favorite wine, favorite color, favorite incense, favorite petals on his bee. Makes Yang stops talking and shyly look at her toes like she just realized that she just talked too much. 
The crowd who is already scolding Su Ruin on their mind how she boasts her relationship to the crown prince's ex fiance while they are still betrothed is now getting heated more. Incense? Petals of flower? The only reason Su Ruin knowing these things is that the relationship of her and the crown prince is already in that level. Shameless. Such a shameless whore. That liking ended there and will no longer grow into something. Please accept this humble gift of this little Mexiang so can calm her heart at least in this small way Mexiang can contribute to the long dynasty. Everyone don't know how to react. Again, the awkwardness of the hall once again rose. The king coughed loudly to make everyone sent back. He signaled his son as Prince Long Jing who is with mixed feelings follow his father's command. He was about to lift the dagger from the pillow. A sudden pain runs toward him before even touching the weapon. The eunuch who is holding the pillow with the knife on top discarded it quickly and furious so he can aid the prince Long Jing. Everyone was startled and look at the crown prince and the dagger covered with blood who is now lying on the floor. This, the royal advisor hesitantly said, there are some spiritual weapons, a high grade spiritual weapons, that can only be used by their recognized owners. This. This dagger is must be a high grade spiritual weapon who already recognize an owner. He turned his head to Make Xiang. A realization suddenly rose inside him and look at Make Xiang in shock. Obviously third young lady Su Make Xiang is already its recognized owner. He again hesitantly stated. This, this old man just remember. Martial artist can only activate spiritual weapon spirituality. If used by an ordinary person, spiritual weapon would only be an ordinary weapon. But, if this old man didn't see wrongly, there is no fluctuation of duo chi in third young lady's body while using the spiritual weapon. High grade spiritual weapon recognizing a non-martial artist owner is already shocking. This, this old man can't explain this matter. He look at Mexiang like he was asking for explanation. Make Xiang only tilted her head then turn her head to look at the dagger on the floor frowning acting like she also can't explain what's happening. Her face is plastered with her worry towards the now in pain crown prince. Young lady Make Xiang obviously also didn't know the answer, the king's voice said and he looked Make Xiang kindly, please get back your dagger, it was given to you by your mother she surely used some means to recognize you its master from the start. Make Xiang acted like she didn't heard the king's kind persuasion and like she is deeply thinking something she looks toward the royal advisor and ask, how can Make Xiang transfer its ownership? This, he was taken aback by the little girl's question and hesitantly answered, it can only recognize a new owner if its master died. This little Make Xiang then wanted once to, third young Miss Su Make Xiang. The king abruptly stops Make Xiang words, you are too young and impulsive. Your thoughtfulness is recognized by the palace, having you and your mother be part of this kingdom already bring glory to this small long dynasty. This palace would be pleased if you get back the spiritual weapon. This palace is already thankful for the young lady's sincerity. For the final act makes Yang nodded full of disappointment and slowly walks toward the dagger like she was too sad that she can't give it to her beloved. She hesitantly look at the dagger on the floor and to the crown prince who is still holding his hand in pain. With a look in her face full of reluctance, she gets back the spiritual weapon and hide it away. 7. Dan Mexiang. The next day the whole kingdom of Long Dynasty is busy with the new gossip of what happened to the crown prince's birthday banquet, the so-called waste of Long Dynasty, Su Mexiang strangle the white gust sparrow of Princess Kiaran. A five-tier beast on its peak with a fire attribute was killed by once again, Su Mexiang in a single blow. The contract marriage of the crown prince and Su Mexiang is broken plead by the crown prince and princess Kiaran, the crown prince and the princess even kneeled to king in front of everyone, the cutting of the contract marriage is even agreed by Su Mexiang with her selfless reasons for the long dynasty. Su Mexiang possessed a five-hold spiritual weapon that was used to kill the five-tier beast that night given by her mother. Even after the royal family's shamelessness she wanted to give this spiritual weapon to the crown prince as a present. Everyone laughs when the spiritual weapon itself is smart enough not wanting the crown prince and even gave him a blow. And of course at the top of the board the most popular gossip, Su Ruwen, Su Mexiang's cousin, and Prince Long Jing, Su Mexiang's ex fiance not only have an illicit relationship at the back of Su Mexiang but also have already entered that stage of relationship. Of course those who attended the banquet didn't fully confirm these but as those young misses who like the crown prince and envy Su Ruwen, 
they exaggerated things to put things bigger. In this case, Su Mexiang's wasted time at the last night's banquet is not a total loss. While everyone is in uproar with this one month worth of gossips, Mexiang is happily eating her snacks and on her side, Tan Ling is on his journey to become a heavenly doctor reading intently. Lunchtime passed. Mexiang turned her head towards the direction of her room's front door. Mexiang's smile deepened and eat the last piece of her snack. I almost thought they are not going anymore. Tan Ling who is still mesmerized by the book he's reading stops and look at Mexiang. When he is about to ask what she said, an angry voice rang from the courtyard. Mexiang is smiling as she leisurely stated, whatever happens don't let them know you're here. Before Tan Ling processed what is happening Mexiang is already walking towards the main door. Su Mexiang looked at her small courtyard now being visited by her expected but uninvited guests. She walks toward her grandfather, the current patriarch, and bow her head ignoring his angry face. Su Mexiang have seen the patriarch. Su Mexiang have seen aunties and uncles. Ignoring the mood of everyone she asked innocently. Su Mexiang is curious why Patriarch is now visiting Mexiang's resident. Patriarch who is now enraged did afford to observe this granddaughter of his first. This is the first time he saw this child closely as he never put unimportant people into his eyes as this child when born didn't show any good sign of a powerful person but because she is Dan Feihan's daughter he never neglect the child's needs but unlike the other grandchildren of his. Mexiang never received love from him especially when Dan Feihan died. Now, observing the temperament of this child the patriarch sighs can't help but observe this child more intently. He have been exposed to powerful figures of the Long Dynasty and seeing the aura this granddaughter of his brought, he can't help but do a comparison. Su Ruin seeing the patriarch's anger subsided a little she pulled the hem of his grandfather's sleeves and in a sobbing voice she said, Gee, grandfather, please El, let's go back. It, it's not third sister's fault. We have to go back. Gee, grandfather's condition is not good. Hearing his granddaughter's voice, the patriarch again remember what he's here for. Waking up, he found out that last night's banquet not only announced the breaking of the crown prince and his waste granddaughter's contract marriage but also implicated that her granddaughter, Su Ruwen, is in such relationship with Su Mexiang's betrothed even before the breaking of the contract marriage. Even his body is not in good condition he got up from bed followed by the other members of Su family and ransacked to Su Mexiang's courtyard. Second sister, this, Mexiang acted oblivious to everyone's ugly faces and asked innocently. Yi Yan's, Su Ruin's mother, voice suddenly rang, you shameless woman, you didn't even lose your worth to this family at the last night's banquet but also tainted my daughter's reputation. This. Su Mexiang's small face frowned and asked like she's at loss. Mexiang didn't understand. In the last night's banquet, everyone aside from the patriarch is present. Mexiang is certain she didn't say such. She looked at everyone's eyes but only to be failed. No one stepped forward to clear things to the patriarch, even his own father. This was long ago expected by her and not even felt shock and disappointed at all inside. Su Lan is smart enough not to cause a discord to the first branch as his only trump card is now gone. He can only abandon this daughter of his patriarch. Yi Yan suddenly kneel in front of the old man and plead. Give justice to this lady's pitiful daughter. My one one is now ridiculed by the whole long kingdom. This lady understands the nay ice being hurt after the crown prince breaks his contract marriage with her. What this lady didn't understand was how can she put all the blame to one one and even tainted her reputation just because of jealousy. Mexiang's eyebrow is now twisted pretending she really don't understand what her aunt's words. Mexiang, the patriarch look at his granddaughter as his sickly face is now stoic with no hint of any emotions. Your courtyard's budget will be cut only enough for your meals. You are not allowed to get out, patriarch. Yi Yan's cry once again rang. Wan Wen's reputation is tainted. This I'm afraid it's not enough to subside the Yi family's anger. If this is the case I, Yi Yan together with my daughter and son would live with the Yi family for the time being. Everyone look at Yi Yan in horror, they are not idiot to not see the threat from her words. 
it is letting the patriarch choose between the pair of his talented grandchildren and his waste granddaughter. Patriarch makes Yang bows her head. Patriarch not need to decide. This granddaughter asked to be removed to the Su family's book. Everyone gasped in shock. Although Maxiang can't understand what she did wrong but seeing everyone's face Maxiang can tell Maxiang indeed commit a punishable sin. Everyone is now in silence. Even the patriarch can't say a word. The silence was broke when a sudden falling metal heard and a man's voice rang. I, General Tanzai, is now cutting ties with the Su family completely and will follow the young miss. After removing his armor, General Ten walks toward Maxiang and bows his head respectfully. Young miss following him. Both his sons are on his both sides, his son Tan Ling whose clothes is disheveled from running and Tan Feng who is in his training suit. General Tan, the angry voice of the patriarch breaks everyone's shock face, are you really going to throw your position for this nameless young lady, are you going to abandon your eleven years serving the Su just for this? Patriarch Su, this low birth man never served the Su family. I was nurtured by the great summoner my master Dan Fairhan and served the Sioux's army for her and for her daughter only. Patriarch laughs but everyone can see his anger between those laughs. Dan Fairhan indeed paved away for her daughter, even before she died her daughter can still benefited from her glory. He looked at General Ten once again and said, if you want to leave then leave, but you can't decide for your family. Everyone understood the patriarch's meaning. They all look at Ten Feng. Yes General Tan is indeed one of the strongest martial artists in the Long Dynasty next to the Commander General of the Royal Family but Tan Feng, his son who is not only a dual element magician but also have the rare attribute Thunder should stay. I will also follow Miss Maxiang, Tan Ling's voice rang loudly, his face can be seen he have already decided and can be swayed by no one. Everyone's face twitch, we're not asking you okay, we don't care about who you follow okay. Yes yes go far away and never return. Follow that waste. You waste. Make Xiang smiled with this scene not minding unimportant people's faces. I will follow father. Everyone's jaw drop when they heard Tan Feng's voice. Tan Feng, if you follow your father do you think you can cultivate your element magic just like your under Su manners care? With the Su family's resources you will have an endless road ahead of you. Tan Feng didn't speak. Patriarch Su even get angrier. General Tan. Is this how you wanted to destroy your child's future? Correcting the patriarch Su. I, Tanzai, no longer a general. You, controlling his anger he said in an angry voice. Good. Now everyone who wanted to follow this nameless lady can follow her. No one will stop them from leaving. Patriarch wanted to let these brainless lowly birth slaves to realize how useless Fairhan's daughter is and see how they will plead to go back to the Su family. The patriarch turns his back to make Xiang but suddenly stopped by a calm voice of the little girl, correcting old man Su. I, Dan Make Xiang, is not the nameless lady. 8. Aptitude Test. Make Xiang look at the people following her. Tan Zai together with his son Tan Ling and Tan Feng and of course his wife, Tan Bayu. She tilted her head and looked at the rest of the men. Greetings to the third, to the young miss. This old bones wanted to follow young miss. This old man is called Old Leng and is responsible to the smith shop of the Sus. A, eh? and this young man, he pat the young man's shoulder in his side and said, This is my apprentice. Little Chun Ping Chun greets the young miss. The young man who wears a cover on his face bow his head respectfully. Oh, greeting the young miss. This young man is called Xian Ji. The carefree boy who looked like about 17 or 18 said as he smiles showing his white teeth shyly scratching the back of his head feeling awkward when he tried to imitate the formal way old Leng's greetings. Tan Zai cough uncomfortably and said, Young miss, the other young man is called Bei Aizihun. Zihun is part of the Su army, before, one of the most talented in the army. Zihun is also a martial artist like this old man. Make Xiang didn't mind much and just simply nodded. Follow me if you want, I wouldn't mind. Make Xiang turns her back and walks toward the entrance of the forest. Tan Zai look at the back of Mei Xiang and unhurriedly follows and so with his family. Old Leng and Bei Aizihan look hesitant but also followed when they saw Tan Zai followed the little girl. Ping Chun who didn't care what is happening observes his back and when he sees the presence of the hidden men not far from where they're standing, he also follows the others. Unknown to Mei Xiang's followers, a spell is now being activated to the whole mountain as their group following Mei Xiang is now on the way to the peak of the mountain. Four hours passed and when they saw a house at the very peak, they curiously look at Mei Xiang's back, 
Makes Yang turns her head to them and a smile that didn't reach her eye appeared on her face no one leaves, her aura suddenly changed and her lazy manner can no longer be seen as her eyes are full of authority. If you follow me another step and enter this residence, you have to follow everything I will say. Whatever reason you have wanting to follow me I wouldn't mind but once you become my follower you are not allowed to betray me. When I said go east you can't go west. This young Miss Words would be your priority in the rest of your lives. Stepping on this resident will change your life entirely, of what changes, no one knows, take the risk if you have the guts. Everyone was taken aback at the little girl's words and the sudden change of atmosphere. Young Miss, rest assured this slave will follow you to the end, Tanzai's resolute voice rang. The others are still mesmerized at the little girl's voice while Tan Ling and his mother is nodding their heads multiple times. Tan Feng on the other hand is still wearing his stoic face standing still, not agreeing nor disagreeing. A smile appeared on Mei Xiang's face and take her first step inside the resident that causes the spell to be unlocked after identifying Mei Xiang. In this case the people following suit will not be harmed, Tan Zai is the one who stepped forward followed by his family. Xi'an Ji just followed without having any thoughts. Bei Ai Zihan look at the way they walk from how many hours and look at his masters, General Tan, back and with a sigh like he had no choice, he just follow his steps, little did this young man know this one step will change his world to the fullest. Old Leng who is so tired of old age just wanted to enter that house and rest, when he sees his apprentice looking at the way back he just grab his shoulder and push him to enter the resident that caught Ping Chun off guard. When everyone entered the resident, Mei Xiang's smile deepen, so everyone decided, their fate did. Looking at the young man in mask still being used as a wall by the tired old man, Mei Xiang chuckled. After appreciating the view of these people that was with fate to follow her, she walks toward the center of formation just in front of the house. Young miss, this, Tan Zai hesitantly said looking at the formation drawn in the ground. This is to test someone's aptitude. Mother really prepared everything. Makes Yang smiles while looking at the formation on the ground. She lowly laugh as she realized things. Mother looks too highly of me. Arrays that is used in testing aptitude have usually two stone inside the formation. These two stones will detect either that person can cultivate the qi to do qi or magic qi. The brighter the color at the stone, the purest that child's talent would be. What ordinary people didn't know is that these stones only highlight what talent that child is but not to detect that child's ability. What really happens at a child's first aptitude test is, a character of either magic qi or du qi appears in thin air. The brighter it is the better that child's potential. It just happens that in most cases, children taking aptitude test especially in such small kingdom like Long Dynasty, those characters written in thin air are too weak and can't be seen by ordinary people with their bare eyes. This, just like Mei Xiang's words, indeed means Dan Feihan looks really high of her daughter's result. Tan Zai was about to step forward when a light arose from the formation. A character appeared in thin air shining too brightly but they can still recognize this character. Everyone look dumb at the scene unfolding in their very eyes, the girl they are following in the middle of the array is the reason of this. Du, Du Qi. Old Leng stutter when he saw the sign of the character Du Qi in the thin air, it is too bright that his poor eyesight can still recognize it. When they thought this is the most shocking thing another character arise from Mei Xiang's another side. M, Magic Qi. That didn't stop there, the character Magic Qi soon shows small ball of light in the color of red. F. Fire. Another ball of light arise in different color one after another. E. Arth. W. Wind. They can no longer speak too unbelievable on what is happening and just stared at the other ball in different colors dancing around the magic chi character. The red ball signifies fire. The brown ball signified earth. The green ball signifies wind. The blue ball signifies water. Everyone just stared blankly at another two balls. The yellow ball signifies thunder who is so rare shocks them enough but also the white ball that signifies light wanted them to bang their head at the nearest hard surface. What is happening? Did they just follow the deity? What operation is this? Everyone knows there are total seven elements that a magician can control. These are fire, water, wind, earth, thunder, light, and darkness. The most rare element among these are light and dark magic. Light magic represents the beginning and dark magic represents the ending, it represents creation and destruction so these two elements can't be possessed by a person at the same time, the other elements are just sub-elements, 
it is created at the middle process of creation and destruction, as these sub-elements can do creation and destruction but not as strong as the light and dark magic. In this case the best a magician can possess is six elements that they are currently witnessing. It also means in the future their future miss can also contract six elemental beast and not forgetting their young miss is also a martial artist it also means she can contract a duchi based beast. The two characters both floated towards Meixiang's body. When they think nothing can shock them another light appeared in front of Meixiang and the character of summoner can be read. It suddenly get inside her body and a green in unidentifiable writing appeared on her index finger like a ring. SSS, Summoner. Their heads are about to get crazy with what's happening. Their young miss not only can practice both duchi and magic, six elements at that, but she is also a summoner like her mother. Summoner is the most noble profession as they are not only extremely rare but also in this entire realm. There are only 10 summoners currently existing and all them are being respected wherever they go. Summoners can connect to the phantom world and can summon phantom creatures. These creatures are more powerful than the beasts in this world. There is this saying that when a summoner is in your side, you can have the world that is not an exaggeration at all. Now that they chose to follow their young miss, do they also now have the world? Everyone are staring blankly at their young miss and was more dumbfounded when they heard her leisure voice saying, not bad, what not bad, who's not bad, miss if you want to hurt our pride in this way better kill us. When Meixiang saw the writings on her index finger that is in green color, she smiled satisfiedly, plant based summoner, of course this is the rare plant based summoner that never appear in this realm and unknown to everyone, she herself wouldn't know the existing of such plant based summoner without reading those book inside the library. There are three kinds of summoners, weapon-based summoner, beast-based summoner like Dan Feihan and the rarest, plant-based summoner, like her, Meixiang. If this thing is to know by her followers, they will spit blood once again. The show-off is done. Meixiang look at the speechless people in front of her as she wave her hand lazily. Find your own room inside the resident and sleep. We will be busy starting tomorrow. Those who heard this can't help but twitch their mouth. You expected us to sleep after witnessing your aptitude test? No one will sleep. No one can sleep. What these pitiful weak hearted people didn't know, this is just the start of their sleepless night questioning the existence of the little girl they are fated to follow. 9. Two years plan. Dan Maxian who is currently copying books for her tomorrow's instruction stops and suddenly exited the sacred book. She rose from her bed and silently followed the quiet movement inside the resident. When she saw the petite stature from the dark she said in a not loud but not quiet voice, leaving, the man in dark turned her head and saw Meixing's image. M, Miss Th this, he nervously said but only to be more startled under Meixing's gaze, you have the most practical reason among the others in following me. Wanting to end your slave contract? She asked but not asking. M, Miss, startled, he stuttered more. A pity I asked a while ago that if you step inside the resident it means you will be my follower in your entire life. Ping Chun was startled and looked at Meix Yang nervously. With no choice, Ping Chun kneels and said, Young miss, this slave can't afford to be young miss follower. This, this slave is disfigured and thinks doesn't deserve to be miss follower. Miss, he hesitantly looked at the young lady but only to see Meix Yang's unwavering face. After some thinking he reluctantly removed his mask showing a her face full of deep wounds that is almost unrecognizable. His eyes are close to hide his pain as he raised his face to let Meix Yang see his disfigured face. This is the first time someone openly look at his disfigured face aside from his brother. A pity such a beauty was ruined. He was startled with Meix Yang's remark. Stay. I can cure your wounds and get your face back to normal. Ping Chun was startled once again but soon recovered. He bows her head more and plead, young miss. Please this slave didn't deserve such, this monster. Then be honest. Ping Chun look at her in shock, this, young miss. You only wanted to break your slave contract and in the middle of our journey, the spy from Su Manor suddenly lose contact to us. Step the resident by accident and witness my aptitude test. Even after seeing my result you still wanted to leave. Even after I said I can get your face back to normal you still wanted to leave. You even brought only one or two piece of clothes blatantly saying you really wouldn't stay. Now, tell me, 
what is your real reason? Why young miss, with no choice he cried. M my brother is alone at home. H, he's heavily sick. If I said I can heal your brother, would you stay, miss? Don't let me repeat what I just have said. I hate dumb people. Do you know why I have this patience towards you? Ping Chen just look at her. The moment you step inside this resident, I already took you as my person. Now I'm giving this last chance to you. Stay tonight and tomorrow early morning we'll bring your brother here and look what I can do. Make Xiang turn her back and said once more. Leaving tonight is dangerous especially to a weak girl like you. Ping Chun was startled and look at Make Xiang's leaving back in days. Make Xiang went back inside her room lying to her bed before entering the sacred book. Continue on copying number of books. This scene continued until the sun rises. After writing the last book, Make Xiang gave a yawn. She stretched her body and found a relaxing position. Going back inside her room she get up and get out of her room. In the courtyard, when everyone saw their young lady they bow their heads respectfully. Mother Tan is the one who breaks the silence first. Young miss, the breakfast is ready. I know you are hungry would you want to eat first? Auntie you don't have to be too formal. Just call me what you call me before. And yes I'm hungry. Now let's go to the dining area and have the meeting there. Everyone followed suit. They ate together in the same table with their young miss as this weird setup goes on they got more comfortable with Mei Xiang a little. After eating they sat upright and look at the lazy face of their young miss who looks, sleepy? Did she also not slept last night just like them? Yes of course they themselves who are just merely onlookers hardly slept after witnessing that result. Being misunderstood, Mei Xiang just yawned once again while munching the snacks brought by Mother Tan. And now let's start the meeting. In a lazy manner she casually stated, two years from now, we'll go to the Central and build a mercenary group. Everyone was dumbfounded. Two years, to Central, mercenary group? What? Not to mention the tone of their young miss like discussing a simple matter. That is the Central, and a mercenary at that. Central is where the strong survives and weaklings guild. Unlike in kingdoms ruled by the royalties, Central is where the place survival of the fittest really exists. In kingdoms whatever grade are they, strongest really not being the top priority but the royalties. But Central is different. There is really no ruler in it but just the strongest. That is the reason those who have talents with no background go to the Central and tries their luck. Central really don't have rules but as the population rises, some leaders of leading organization tried to restrain some acts but still in Central, being strong and having a potential is enough to find you a good backer. Because the natural talents go to the Central. Even the royalties of different kingdoms tried to establish their branch to the central by building an organization usually a mercenary group to steal these talents to be part of their palaces. M, miss, I will only say this once to this group. I, Dan Maxiang, don't like repeating things. You heard me. Maxiang scatter her gaze to these followers of her. Seeing no one refuted she continued all you may be skeptical of our journey to the central but that's the reason I gave an ultimatum of two years. She leans her back against the back of her seat and patiently explain, you may notice that the chi around the resident is abundant? The others nodded, they noticed this before going to bed last night. Mother prepare the entire forest good for cultivation. Formations are around the resident to let the chi of the whole forest for the entire eleven years pour in this area. We have the whole year to cultivate here, by that we'll start our journey to the capital. Abundant qi and absorbing too much can harm a cultivator but the long dynasty have too thin qi, the accumulated qi in the formation is just enough for uncultivators to absorb not to mention the formation prepared by Feihan is a high level array resulting not to harm the cultivators inside, almost all of us can cultivate qi. Uncle Tan, Bei Aizihan, Xianjia martial artist. Tan Feng and Ping Chun are magician, Auntie Tan, Old Leng, and Brother Ling can't on the other hand, now let's start with the latter, Mei Xiang waves her hand and pile of papers appeared on the table, others are amazed that their young miss must have an interspatial ring that is a luxury item to the kingdom even royalty family hardly possess such but what they didn't know their young miss possess is million times better than an interspatial ring. Tan Ling on the other hand didn't mind such only his eyes are too excited that brightly staring at the pile of papers, he was about to hug those papers but suddenly stopped. Hold on, brother Ling, these are not for you, little Xiang, these are? Tan Ling showed a questioning expression, these are for Auntie Tan and Old Leng. She looked at Auntie Tan and pat the pile of papers on her right side and in a serious tone she said carefully, Auntie, 
you have the most important job among us. These are new recipes of meals and snack that is not existing in our kingdom or even in the central. Without letting her followers recover makes Yang put out three into spatial sack and put it on Mother Tan's side. These are full of coins. Spend as much as you can. If it's not enough I still have a lot. Auntie you have this responsibility please learn much recipes as you can. Little makes Yang is looking forward to Auntie. Auntie Tan who can hear the serious tone of her Xiang as she raise her fat right hand and round it into a fist with a determined face she look at Mei Xiang, Auntie will do her best. Everyone around Mei Xiang and Mother Tan twitch the side of their mouth seeing this scene. Isn't it too obvious that their young miss is a foodie? Not to mention those three insta spatial sacs she mindlessly gave to Auntie Tan. Mei Xiang nodded many times contently with her auntie's reply almost drooling of those recipes she have seen in the books. Yes, even foods are available at the library inside the sacred book. Recipes from different world is available in it that it excites her a lot puts her copying these recipes on the top of her priority stealing her time to copy medicinal books for her brother Ling. If Tan Ling finds this out, he'll surely be devastated. Old Ling, next to auntie. Your responsibility is also the most important. Patting the pile of papers on her left she said in a serious tone. These are different designs of equipments and machines. Study them and try to imitate the functions of these. Some of them are to be used by Auntie Tan so ask for her comments. Lying without blinking an eye, not only some but most of these equipments are somehow related to these unseen delicacies. Your craftsmanship isn't a foreign to me, little Mei Xiang believes old Leng. This old man will obey Miss Mei Xiang's words. Old Leng need not to be formal. You can also call the younger generation by its name or just Xi. Yang er old Leng cough uncomfortably and said in a stiff manner. L little Mei Xiang. Mei Xiang just smiled and gave old Leng three into spatial sack. If not enough you can just inform me. You probably will fail that will consume a lot of money. It's okay to fail. These equipments are new to us so creating them is a bit difficult. Mei Xiang really didn't need to worry about money. When she entered her room in the residence she found out a bunch of interspatial sacks full of gold and silver coins and three interspatial ring full of cores and crystals and some treasure. These are all left by her mother. Leaning at the back of the chair her lazy demeanor return as she turns her head to Tan Ling and lazily said brother Ling. For you, you have to become a heavenly doctor. Everyone was dumbfounded. What heavenly doctor? Who's heavenly doctor? And what's with that tone like you have lost your appetite like heavenly doctor is no big deal. L, little Xiang, Tan Ling, you heard Xiang Er said she didn't want repeating her words. If she said you should become a heavenly doctor you should become a heavenly doctor. Mother Tan shouted as her chubby cheeks are turning red. When facing Mei Xiang she returned to her smiling face. Auntie is really the best. Mei Xiang lowly laughs as she waved her hand to signal her brother Ling to come on her side. Tan Ling followed suit under the glaring eyes of her mother. Mei Xiang stands up facing the tall frame of her brother Ling. She raised her hand and tap her palm on where Tan Ling's heart was located. Under the eyes of everyone an incantation was drawn into thin air as Tan Ling's eyes turn red for just a second. Can you feel my fire inside your body? I, I don't know but th there's these heat somewhere else inside. My fire magic is still on its early level of first stage so it's still weak. I opened a portal inside your body so part of my fire is currently inhabiting your body. This technique is only enough for doing medicine and not for a battle. Another disadvantage with this is if the owner of the fire died then the fire inside the body of the beneficiary also cease. Don't worry I won't die that easily. Mei Xiang casually said, the advantage you have is as my fire gets stronger and purer, the fire inside your body will follow suit. Everyone's jaws dropped long ago from the moment their young miss lend part of her fire to Tan Ling to her words saying she's just an early level to reach first stage. What early level? You just have your real 10th birthday this morning right? They are too numb that they can no longer react from their young miss murmur about hell's blessings, ancient beast, fire of God, son of water fire. Mutation of fire ways to purify her fire in the future. True to Mei Xiang's words, she is indeed already on her early level to first stage on her fire magic. When she entered the sacred book after her attribute test, some facilities have been unlocked. A second floor appeared turns out to be a training ground with an abundant chi, good for cultivating both magic and martial arts. She cultivated her fire attribute until it breakthrough to this level to be able to perform this. L. Little Xiang, this, how, you, 
Tanling ask as those who are also around give him a thumbs up mentally. We also wanted to know, Meng Xiang said with a deep meaning. Do you know having a summoner on your side is good but having a summoner who fully knows her advantages on your side is better. Seeing her brother Ling's confused face she just laughs. In a simple word, knowledge is a power. Indeed, with the knowledge accumulated in the books she read adding her being a summoner, she easily open a portal to Tan Ling's dungeon and allow her part of her fire live inside him. What others didn't know was a summoner can not only open a portal to the phantom world but also to others. You don't have to know much. If within a week you haven't controlled that fire don't expect I'll give you a new medical book. Thinking that he now have a chance to become a heavenly doctor, Tan threw his curiosity at the back of her head and replied to her little sister slash young miss full of determination. Now next are those who can cultivate qi. Waving her small hand seven man in black robe appeared on Meixiang's Xiang's side. Aside from the qi here is abundant you also need to have an actual combat skill. These are puppets good for your training. They all can practice magic and martial arts. The level of these puppets can only reach tier 3 for now so aside from Uncle Ten who is now tier 5 martial arts, Uncle Ten will have 3 of these and the rest will have 1 each. These puppets can only do a combat for an hour and have to take a rest for 3 hours to recharge. These combat partners are inside the training ground that have been unlocked after her aptitude test. The highest tier they can reach is tier 3 at the peak level. Once makes Yang reach 4th stage these puppets will also upgrade to be able to reach 6th tier. These puppets can be customized before combat simply telling them what stage and ability they can show before their training combat. Looking at the bright eyes of the others, Mei Xiang can't help but look at the dull reaction of Ping Chun and uninterested face of Xian Ji, brother Feng and brother Han. The two look at Mei Xiang, Bei eyes a hen with his excited face and Tan Feng with still his stoic face but his bright eyes betrayed him shining too brightly from the sight of his new combat partner. I'm expecting the both of you not to bother Uncle Tan anymore. Bei eyes a hen nodded many times while Tan Feng just cough uncomfortably. Brother Ji startled Xian Ji look at Mei Xiang's way. M Miss, you are not interested with cultivating Du Qi? Miss, this. He weakly smiled and shyly scratched the side of his forehead. Among all of you here your reason following me is, some follows because of my mother most are because of Uncle Ten and some are for someone. Your reason, Mexian laughs in a low voice. To be honest until now I haven't learned your reason. To see your reaction seeing these it's obvious being strong is not what your dream is. Mississippi. This, scratching the back of his head he laughs his eyes are shy but still have the carefree look. To be honest I always do whatever I wanted to do. I live with the horses in the stable of Su Manor. When I saw young miss leaving the manor it's the first time I saw young miss eyes in such a distance. That is the first time I see clear eyes clearer than those family I have. You mean the horses? He just smiled again nodding. The other's faces twitch, did he just compare their young miss to the horses, and young miss seems not angry. Mexian smiled they said eyes is the window to a man's soul. Maybe my soul is as pure as those innocent creatures. Everyone's eyes twitch. Their miss can praise herself without blinking an eye. Too innocent but not dumb. Too carefree but not careless. Don't you follow what your instinct says. With this you are always happy. You also have a clear eyes that when looking at you they can tell that you wouldn't hurt them. A characteristic of a beast tamer. Bei eyes a tilted his head his clear eyes asking. Do you want it to be a beast tamer? Bei eyes a didn't answer. Mexian laughs thinking of what the boys thought. Once you tame a beast, you're the one who will decide whom to let it have a contract with. Slowly nodding, Mexian smiles at the response she received. This young man who is at the age of 18 is her first follower. So even the young man didn't have a strong will. She still wanted to cultivate him. You have 12 months. Cultivate and be stronger. Your current level is first stage. In peak level. Too late too weak for your rage. In a year with your current aptitude and the resources around reaching tier 3 is an achievable goal. Make Xian look at Xian Ji's unsure face. You can't always tame a beast with those eyes. You have to be stronger to confront them before performing the art of beast taming. In 12 months, reach the peak of tier 3 stage and I will personally teach you the art of beast taming. Thanking the young miss, Mexian smiled, raking her eyes to her companions her smile deepened. I just show off and bribed all of you. I don't care whatever your reason in following me at first. This young miss hopes what happened today is enough reason for all of you to stay and offer your loyalty to this young miss. I, Dan Mexiang.
never accepts a betrayal. Everyone nodded and looked at their young miss with determined face. Dan makes Ian laughs. In the future, let's show off and bribe each other. 10. Shi Hai. That morning the task are divided. Mother Tan, Tan Feng, and Xi Anjia went to the market to buy their supplies for an entire month. Old Meng, further Dan, Tan Ling and Bei Aizahan are responsible for buying materials for Old Meng's new workshop. Dan Meixiang on the other hand together with Ping Chun is now on their way to visit Ping Chun's brother, entering a secluded bamboo house, Meixian raise her right eyebrow seeing the man lying in the small bed. Ping Chun who is now attending her brother didn't mind Meixiang's observing gaze around their small home. Meixiang's smile deepen after seeing through things, having the hint of the identity of the two, she just faint ignorance. She walks toward the side of the bed and look at the beautiful face of the young man lying unconscious. My my such a beauty can't just die like this. A dark magician at that. Ping Chun's busy track stops and look at Meixiang Yang in shock. A dear seven dark magician at the age of 21. Such a talent but more importantly of course his beauty. I can't let this beauty die under my eyes. Ping Chun walks toward Meixiang Yang and her eyes too unbelievable but with the hint of excitement. M. Miss why you can cue my brother? At first without seeing your brother I am fully confident with just a wave of my light magic he can be healed but after seeing he's a dark magician, my first plan was abolished. Ping Chan's shoulder dropped, light magic and dark magic are two contradicting magic that can never be together, they represent creation and destruction, whatever light magic creates, dark magic can destroy vice versa. But Dark Magician himself can't be healed by Light Magic and so with Light Magician can never be destructed by Dark Magic. A playful smile risen to make Xiang's face. A pity to those who tried to harm your brother. I am not just a Light Magician but also a Heavenly Doctor and a Summoner. Ping Chan's tears fell from her eyes when she saw her young miss smile that gave her hope. And don't cry. And no kneeling please. I'm too tired for too much drama. Just pack your things and your brothers. Ping Chun laughs in the middle of her tears and happily followed what her miss order. When the carriage brought by Bei Aizihan arrived, they are already ready to go. With the four of them in the carriage, the ride went well until they arrive at their residence at the peak of Mount Fuhan. Before night, all of them arrived and already organized their new resident. Having their dinner make Xiang is the last to arrive as she was busy concocting medicines inside the sacred book. Seeing the dining table full of food, Meixiang Xiang raised her eyebrow and looked at the people in surprise. With an disorganized manner they shouted in unison. Happy birthday, Xiang, er, uh, happy birthday, little Xiang, happy birthday, young miss, happy birthday, miss. Meixiang Xiang laughs at this. She almost forgot it's still her day of birth. She took her seat and started eating. The others follow suit, unlike their first meal together. This dinner is livelier with Tan Ling and Bei Aizihan being the initiators. Meixiang Xiang didn't talk much but respond sometimes at the stories and bantering of the two. After their meal, Meixiang Xiang went to Pingle's room and check his pulse. When she was assured his condition is stabilized by the medicine she concocted herself she gave the rest to Ping Chun and gave her the instruction. The pill can only stabilize his condition. It's expected he can wake up tomorrow. Until I haven't concocted his real medicine he can only stay on his current cultivation stage. Miss with this, me and big brother are already grateful. With a wave of Meix Yang's hand a medium-sized jar appeared. Stop wearing mask. Every day apply this to your face at least thrice a day. Meix Yang didn't wait for her reply and turn her back but suddenly a weak voice rang inside the small room. Ping Chun Hu. Meix Yang stops from her track but didn't face her. And my real name is Ping Chun Hu. Young miss is now our benefactor. Me and big brother are now young miss followers following her till the end. Me and my brother are, are, are from. You don't have to tell things if you are not yet willing. I'm not interested anyways. Meix Yang didn't stay anymore and took her leave. Standing outside Ping Le's room. A curve appeared on Meixiang's Yang's lips and whispered, not now at least, after leaving the sibling's room. Meixiang Yang went back to her room and took a seat looking at the direction of the window. Have you not seen enough? Silence. After a minute of silence Meixiang Yang didn't retract her gaze from the window then a sudden aura overflows revealing a man standing leaning his back on the wall near the now opened window. Dan Meixiang Yang greets Uncle Shi Hai. Meix Yang stood up and respectfully bows her head toward the man who looks like in his mid-twenties. Seeing that the little girl recognized him, he didn't get surprised at this. 
but the man called Shi Jinhai can't help but twitch his face, calling him uncle. Without being shy, isn't this speed called shamelessness? Mother showed me the faces of those she can trust and to those she said I can rely to. I hope uncle wouldn't mind. At the day she performed her so-called aptitude test when the spell inside Mei Xiang's body was lifted, the moment her mother touched her, Mei Xiang had a glimpse of three unfamiliar faces. Without explanation from Dan Feihan, she felt the warmth of these three towards her mother that puts her into conclusion these three are her mother's contracted beasts. Outsiders knew that Dan Feihan is a dual-element magician but what the most didn't know was she's a multi-element magician with wind, water and thunder attributes. This is the reason she was allowed to contract three spiritual beasts the most. One of them is the man in front of Dan Meixiang named Shi Jinhai, a wind attribute beast currently in commander level. A beast after achieving its seventh stage of cultivation it can speak a human language and when reaches its ninth level it can transform to a human form whenever it wants. Commander level is a level 1 rank higher than ninth stage. Mother is indeed the best. Contracting the patriarch of the three-eyed golden eagle surpassed my expectation. The stoic face of Shi Jinhai broke and look at Mei Xiang frowning. How did you know I'm the patriarch of my clan? So mother didn't know. Mei Xiang nodding her head slowly three times like a kid learning an interesting thing. Shi Jinhai's face twisted more. He unknowingly released a heavy pressure that directed towards Mei Xiang. Cough. When Mei Xiang felt the aura of the other party she strengthened her back and explained unhurriedly and clearly, Mother just really gave me a glimpse of your faces in your human form and didn't leak any information. Mei Xiang learns uncle is from a three-eyed golden eagle clan and also the patriarch of the powerful beast clan was with the reason of uncle's aura. When the green with the tint of white color was seen by Mei Xiang, this little girl had a hunch of uncle's identity. The only wind attribute beast that have the ability to heal is the patriarch of the three-eyed golden eagle as he can heal its clansmen by opening his third eye. Little Mei Xiang applaud to such existence and standing in front of uncle's majestic Jinhai's eyebrow twitch. He can't tell at first if this little girl is too innocent contrast from her mother or just as sly as her mother but now he can tell things clearly. Dan Fahan is too nice compared to this sly little hash dollar equals at slash hash. He have to cut ties with this little fox as fast as he could write. I am just responsible guarding you till you turn 10 and perform your aptitude test. Now that your day of birth ends, this uncle shall leave. Make Xiang's smile deepen when she heard him. Uncle would really leave? Uncle's clansman is living at the farthest land of the east and even without uncle, the patriarch. They are to live good and in peace all thanks to a lady in red who helped the whole clan find a safer and suitable place to continue the next generation. In the history of the three-eyed golden eagle, a lady in red became a savior of the clan when she saved the last Anoayu in tree where they depend the reproduction of the next generation and also their home. Once the lady in red saved the last Anoayu in tree she even find a suitable place to replant it. Three-eyed golden eagles are arrogant spiritual beasts, contacting with human not to mention owing debt to them. This leaves no choice to the young master, the current patriarch today, to accompany the lady in red for a time being but soon become one of her contract beast. It's also after knowing Shi Jinhai's identity, Mei Xiang had an idea that the lady in red portrayed in the history of the three-eyed golden eagle clan's history was her mother Dan Fairhan. This story was read by her from one of the million books inside the sacred book. Uncle need not to worry. I, Mother Dan Fairhan's daughter, indeed not lied. Even this little girl didn't grow up with mother's teachings. This little girl will not lie, indeed too sly. Not only she continued to punch him with her words so he can't forget his and his clan's debt to Dan Fairhan but also how this little girl acts like a pitiful orphan in front of him. Maxian's lips curved and said slowly but clearly uncle may already have a hint of how Maxian knows a lot. Remembering something he looked at the little girl's clear eyes. Eleven years ago when Dan Fairhan who is three months pregnant to Sue Maxian, goes back to the Dan Manor after learning Sue Lan already have a five concubines after promising the whole world to her. She was to enter the manor secretly like she stayed at her room the whole time just like what she always do. On her way to the room. 
she suddenly stopped from her track when a sudden light shines in the ancestral hall of the Den Manor. When she opens the door a sudden force enters her stomach. Then suddenly the most treasured artifact by the Dan family displayed at the ancestral hall disappeared. That sacred book was recovered from a ruin found by their ancestors and even the book can't be opened and didn't know its function. The Dan family highly treasured it more than anything else. Dan Fahan who is suspecting herself to be pregnant left the Dan Manor completely that very night and went to Long Dynasty. A deep smile appeared on Meixiang's face when she saw Shi Jinhai in deep thought. Forget it, uncle may not be interested. Bowing her head she said in a clear voice Meixiang then bids farewell to uncle. You kid is too cunning. After stepping on my conscience then after waving my interest you want to bid farewell to this patriarch? Now tell directly what you wanted from this Lao Tzu. Shi Jinhai gave an arrogant harumph. Of course he is strong. Of course this kid needs such a powerful man like him right. She arise his interest because she need him, the powerful patriarch of the three-eyed golden eagle clan. Makes Yang nods her head satisfied. She then gave a smile and said, Makes Yang read three-eyed golden eagle clan are to be known of being man of their own words, not to mention the patriarch. Tell it directly, as long as this Lao Tzu can do it then he'll do it not to mention Lao Tzu can do everything. Makes Yang knows uncle is the best. Then is this, a yes? Shi Jinhai suddenly had a bad premonition with this little girl's smile. Such smile also appeared on Dan Fairhan's face when she asked him to be her companion for a time being. After that he was pulled to a trap and become her contract beast. Uncle need not to worry. Uncle can do this task with uncle's ability. In exchange uncle can not only see the sacred book but also can enter it. A deal then. In just a second they are no longer in Meixiang's Yang's room but already inside the sacred book. Shi Jinhai was in days seeing where they are now. While he is surprised and amazed with this place, a big smile appeared on Meixiang's Yang's face. She is like a wolf looking at her prey. Meixiang Yang look at her uncle who is busy surveying the whole place. She explained everything to him from unlocking the items to the facilities and everything about the sacred book. When Shi Jinhai asked for the book where she read the three-eyed golden eagle clan's history, Meixiang wisely answered, Little Meixiang already fulfilled her promise but uncle have not yet. Seeing her uncle not complaining she pointed at her working place where she copies the books she wanted the others to learn. Meixiang is in need of uncle's hands to copy these for Meixiang's subordinates. Pointing at the pile of books in this case Meixiang will have more time to cultivate especially Meixiang have to cultivate six elements. Du Qi, not adding being summoner and heavenly doctor. Additional to these art read. This is her major problem, lacking time. She indeed had a cheat with time but also she have a lot to cultivate to leave her to no choice of this. Even before at the Su Manor, unknown to her brother Ling she tried many times to make Tan Ling enter the sacred book only to no avail. Then at the crown prince's birthday banquet when the white gust sparrow attacked her she tried to put the already unconscious body of the beast inside the sacred book and succeeded. This only happens for a second to not arise the suspicion of others, but then so what if a beast can enter the sacred book? Unless that beast can read and write and already have its human form, that is a nine-level beast at least. Noticing her mother's contracted beast around she already have this plan since they entered the forest. Makes Yang pitifully listed all the things she needs to cultivate and look like she is troubled with these. With a black face Shi Jinhai said, you indeed surpass your mother in everything. Uncle is agreeing. Shi Jinhai's eyebrow twitch. Doing this thing is shameful thing for his reputation and position. He is the patriarch of the powerful clan of three-eyed golden eagle okay. He gritted his teeth looking at the hateful little girl in front of him. 11. Phantom Plant Summoner. The little girl happily went to the training ground after scamming a pitiful patriarch of a certain powerful beast clan. Meixiang cultivated for consecutive days inside the sacred book, adding the abundant chi and the special constitution of her body. In just a short while she break through to the second stage of fire and light element and the rest on the peak of first stage. This is the reason that the both elements are her top priority. The stage of her being a heavenly doctor is in par with her stage of her fire element unlike others needing a lot of training and learning prescriptions. As for her who have the sacred book and have learned all the prescriptions, rising her fire element means also jumping her rank as an heavenly doctor. As for the light element being one of her top priority, she noticed the injury inside Shi Jinhai's body at the very beginning. 
Meng Xiang have some doubt if her mother's death is connected with her uncle's cultivation injury. This injury is fatal that can only heal by light magic. Her cultivating Du Qi on the other hand is now currently in second tier middle stage. Being a martial artist, it's not enough to cultivate the Qi to Du Qi inside your body but to also practice your combat skill. Having a great force without fatal movements as a martial artist even a rank lower than you can defeat you in a one-on-one -on -one battle. With the help of the puppets inside the training ground, her combat skill greatly improved. This speed may be fast for the others but for Meixiang who have a big goal and currently cultivating not only one or two, Meixiang can't sit still. Now achieving her goal in martial arts and magic, she didn't rest but to cultivate her summoning skill. Cultivating as a summoner is not the same as martial artist and magician. The summoner's strength is measured by how wide is mental strength. Summoners can open a portal and summon phantom creatures from phantom world. Summoning them is not the hardest part but retaining them outside the phantom world is. It is for the reason of the longer the phantom creature stays outside the phantom world, the mental strength of that summoner who summon the phantom creature will exhaust. But not in the case of contracting a phantom creature as his own. Yes. A summoner can contract her summoned creature permanently. Once a summoner have a contract with an phantom creature, he can freely summon it without affecting his mental strength. This fact wasn't known by anyone aside from Meixiang who have the powerful sacred book. The reason this is unknown to the world is for the reason a phantom beast and phantom weapons can't verbally communicate with anyone outside the phantom world. Phantom plants on the other are the only phantom creatures that have a human form but aside from lacking of plant summoners. Phantom creatures especially phantom plants are too arrogant in nature hating weak humans lest having a contract with them so mentioning this contract doesn't to be known by humans. Meng Xiang started to feel the writings on her index finger with her mental strength, a portal suddenly appear in the air, the green color brightly shining that part of the training field is in green color. At the other end of the portal, Multiple eyes are staring at it looking at the bright green color. A sudden laugh rang pulls those creatures back to their senses. K -k 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 it seems the majestic plants would be busy from today's on k -k 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 said by a phantom beast with a monkey as his upper body while at lower body is a spider's. Ra 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 not to mention this new leaf have a strong mental strength. A lion in cheetah's print said. This is the strongest mental strength I have ever seen even with all the beast and weapon summoners. A cannon phantom weapon said. A sudden images of people appeared near the green portal, all the plant phantom creatures appeared near the green portal looking at it with different reactions. Sh hash question mark a dollar colon hash yen yen tilde comma lowly human. Sha 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 a human that can summon us can't be that low. I think this summoner is not that bad. The little girl is a beauty and to think that a plant summoner was born to the lower realm. Then you go uf hash colon dollar yen euro yen backslash underscore greater than all of you calm down, we have to decide who is to enter this portal or else, no one of us can cultivate. Look at that little kid, obviously she just summoned for fun or maybe out of curiosity. Just anyone may do, the people in their colorful and unique attires turn a step back leaving a little girl looking at the green portal with her big doe eyes. A vine suddenly run towards the little girl's feet and throw her into the green portal. They all look at the petite young man with curly hair. Vines in green color are all over his body. He calmly clapping his hands like removing the non-existing dirt on his hands and said in a serious voice, no need to thank Lao Tzu. The green portal suddenly closed until it turns to be a small green of light floating in the air no longer seeing the other end of the portal. On Meixiang's side, a little girl went out of the portal more alike thrown out. Meixiang look at the little girl who stands up and act like nothing happened. She stands up and look at Meixiang with her big doe eyes. The little girl have a big pink fluffy hat bigger than her face covering almost her short hair with curl at the ends. Her small face have a faint blush with faint freckles on her cheeks, the freckles are in seed shape and in pink color, her big doe eyes, her small nose, chubby cheeks and pink thin lips complemented each other that makes the cute childish face still beautiful, her knee length pink dress are also fluffy paired with her sandals with a big fluffy round fur in the middle on both of her feet, makes Yang restrain herself for poking the little girl's cheeks. She loves beautiful things and a little girl is no exemption, even this little girl's is a plant. Coughing, Meixiang remembers what her real intention is. You are strawberry? 
A hint of shock appeared on the little girl's small face. You know me, little plant. It's obvious even without the sacred book I, Maxian can still guess. Even with eyes closed with smell of your sweet strawberry scent anyone can guess okay. <coughs> strawberry. After checking Maxiang's mental strength, she no longer surprised with Maxiang's knowledge about her. What mission you wanted me to do? I want to contract you. Why? I have this mission to contract a phantom creature. If put into reality there is a big reward. I see. Silence. Do you want to? I don't know yet. If those phantom plants would see this scene, they will surely scold their own kind hundred times. We phantom plants don't need to think for this okay. We phantom plants don't contract humans okay. <coughs> Nodding softly Maxian tilted her head. Then would you want a tour first? If a summoner can hear Dan Maxian now, they would all be choking. Don't hurt our summoner's dignity with your mental strength okay? The petite young lady and the small young girl toured inside the sacred book, from the training ground to the alchemy room ending up to the library where Shi Jinhai is currently reading a book. Make Xiang look at the books all copied by Shi Jinhai as she respectfully bow her head and said sincerely Make Xiang thanking uncle. Shi Jinhai ignore this and look at the little girl besides Make Xiang. This is... This is my first summoned phantom plant. So that's how a phantom plant looks like. Shi Jinhai nodding checking out the unique way of dressing of the little girl. Strawberry didn't mind the existence of another party as her a phantom creature is higher than by any creature in this realm. The only one who she needs to respect is the summoner who summons her no one else. When Shi Jinhai saw this manner from the little girl he was not at all offended. His late master is also a summoner and phantom creatures not to say phantom plants are indeed higher than them, a beast from this realm. By this their arrogance is deserving to them. Strawberry walks toward the wall of the library and stare at the heavily closed door. When Maxiang saw this, she walks toward the little girl and said, Once I had a contract with you this door will be unlocked. This thing in your possession is too powerful, she whispered but Maxiang still heard this. Yes the sacred book is indeed too powerful. Once a phantom creature went inside a summoner's portal, the phantom creature and the summoner will bind that allows strawberry. When entering Maxiang's summoning portal, she saw the unending sea of her master's mental strength. This mental strength was accumulated by staying at the sacred book reading tons of books. Let's do a contract. Make Xiang is not surprised at this sudden approval. Aside from reading Strawberry's information, she herself saw with her own eyes how smart this phantom plant is. Creating a contract with a phantom creature have a great advantage for a summoner but to a phantom, there is really no gain at all, but it's different possessing the sacred book. Strawberry must feel how the other part of the door is a great comfort for her. The two started to form a contract. The writings on Maxiang's finger shine in green bright color as a pink ring appeared on her index finger where the symbol of a summoner was covered by the pink ring with intricate carvings. A green also suddenly shines on Strawberry's eyes. When the green color on her eyes faint and went back to its original black color, a green dot appeared in the middle of her eyebrows. In this case Strawberry can no longer be summoned by anyone else aside from Maxiang. She can also be summoned without affecting Maxiang's mental strength while outside the phantom world. A sound of unlocked door suddenly rang. Strawberry look at the unlocked but still closed door. Her face with no emotion before is now with a hint of excitement. Maxiang smiles and leads the way opening the door. A vast piece of land covered with green grass was seen with fountain at the very middle of the grass land and streams and springs around the area. Make Xiang felt this place is empty. But for Strawberry, this is not the case. She ran towards the one of the cold spring and dive in. Make Xiang observe the new unlocked facility. She can see now the exterior tall building of where they came out. At the top of the grassland is a blue and white sky. There are no other creatures here and only the fountain and some body of water is around. There is no birds or insects or even trees. The air here is also different. The chi is also abundant but there is something different with it. Make Xiang observes more and found out the springs have different temperatures and where the strawberry dive in is a cold spring. This is in line with the information she read about strawberry. Make Xiang walks toward the fountain and have a drink. By only just touching it she can feel the unending spirituality to it. She turns her head and look at the way of strawberry closing her eyes while soaked in the spring. This explains everything. This place is abundant with spirituality, from water to land and even the air. 
there is unending supply of spirituality that a phantom creature was attracted. Phantom creatures are described as their name as is phantom. They are just a figment of imagination at first but because of the spirituality in the phantom world they came into existence that even make them more powerful than the other creatures of the other realm. The scarcity of plant summoners make the plant phantom creatures stronger than beasts and weapons as they have more time to cultivate. The rationale behind this is, while a phantom creature is outside the phantom world, its entire kind can't cultivate for a while until it was summoned back to their world. This is the main reason why phantom creatures disdain humans moreover summoners, currently at the phantom world, is the new leaf too dumb? She's been out for an hour right? G -g 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 the majestic plants are really in trouble. All the phantom plants currently can't absorb spirituality with the reason of strawberry is still outside the phantom world. A young boy in red is currently raging with anger as his face is full of tears and snot. You, you, this is your fault if you didn't push big sister strawberry. Big Sister Strawberry would be here now. Big Sister Strawberry is too beautiful that the summoner is willing to exhaust her mental power only to see Big Sister Strawberry. If you are the one being summoned you must already been summoned back. Big Sister Strawberry must be scared right now. The teen man with vines all over his body can't help but twitch his mouth. Who didn't know in the whole phantom world that little girl only have one emotion. Who is scared? And did this little boy just scold him of being ugly? Wait that's not the point here okay? It is we phantom plants can't cull t wait. The heavy atmosphere on phantom plants side spreads toward the phantom weapons and phantom beasts when the green of ball light in the air suddenly disappeared. This phenomenon indicates the phantom creature entered that portal has been contracted. It means their kind has been kidnapped. On the other side, Maxiang, the kidnapper, is now looking at her kidnapped victim that is happily soaking in the cold spring full of spirituality. 12. To be stronger, little Xiang. When Tanling shouted, everyone at the courtyard look at him and to Maxiang's direction. Everyone was about to run to their little miss but she just waved her hand and said to continue their training. It's been a week since their young miss stays inside her room. They wanted to show their progress and to ask for more advices. Little Xiang, are you out to look at my heavenly progress so you can give me the heavenly books? Tan Ling excitedly asked. Let's look at the heavenly progress of Brother Ling. Tan Ling under the observing eyes of her younger sister become nervous for the first time. He put a fire on her index finger and in every five seconds he controlled the fire according to Maxiang's order. Seeing Maxiang's satisfied nod he playfully run the small fire in between her fingers and laugh arrogantly. See, see this? Little Xiang really have a discerning eyes for talents. Ho 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 ho. His voice is too loud that everyone in the courtyard can hear him. You see me and little fire have this undeniable bond. In the past week he is like my brother now. No my twin brother ha 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 ha. Wait did that makes us triplet? Oh that's so funny ha 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 ha. Tan Feng who is currently cultivating didn't care about his older brother adopting a fire to be their brother. Mei Xiang on the other hand didn't also mind her brother Ling's nonsense and casually put out all the prescriptions for heavenly doctor dear one outside the sacred book. Tan Ling after learning the basics of becoming a heavenly doctor at the Su Manor is now ready on his first step to become a heavenly doctor first level. Seeing the pile of papers, Tan Ling thanked his little sister, carefully carrying the prescriptions he hurriedly run and went inside his room. Mei Xiang next went to Old Leng's workshop area. Yun. Ahem little Xiang. Old Leng. Mei Xiang while walking around the workshop and observe everything. The old man's tools are scattered at the surface of the large table while one of the wall was full of papers with drawings and notes. Seeing the writings, Mei Xiang nodded satisfiedly. Yun. Little Xiang. My progress is slow but rest assured this old man is not wasting little Xiang's resources. No need to worry about money. Old Leng's progress is great. These are new things that are not existing in our kingdom not even in the capital. It's normal to have such progress at the start. Besides you are still on your research stage. I just wanted to know what are the comments of the old Leng to the designs I gave. Old Leng's restrained eyes suddenly brighten. This cough. This are amazing that this old man never expected such things existed. These machines or called appliances functions are amazing. Some are existing already in our kingdom but their source of power is what makes them more amazing. 
There are a lot of ways to run this appliances but I focused more on this thing called solar panel. Imagine only by accumulating the heat of the sun, you can already do chores in one go. It's just that this solar panel's other parts are foreign to this old man and not at all existing here. With the knowledge of this old man trying to find substitutes, expect to have a great progress after six months. Make Xiang satisfiedly leave old Leng's open workshop and was encountered by Ping Chunfing pulling Ping Le excitedly. When Ping Chunfing saw Make Xiang she happily bows her head. Ping Le also followed. Ping Chunfing sees the miss. Ping Le greets the young miss. Make Xiang casually nodded then turns her head to Ping Le. You're better good looking when you're awake. How are you? Ping Chunfing who have seen her young miss appreciating beauties blatantly still can't get used to her not to mention Ping Le whose ears are blushing for the praise he received. Ping Le's good, I have woken up a day after taking young miss pills, little Chan already explained to me that I can't continue my cultivation, I am helping the others to their combat skills. Good. And sister Feng? Make Xiang look at Ping Chunfing whose face is covered with a thick green colored cream. If her bare face was shown everyone will notice her extremely blushing cheeks. Chunfing can't be blamed with this. To be called Sister Feng by a little beauty, Chunfing can't help but feel shy. This, this s sister's training is good with the help of brother. Also Miss Cream is so effective. Indeed, you have risen to beginning level of the next stage. In just a week, nodding satisfiedly she then dismissed them. The two obeyed. Walking towards the training ground, Make Xiang saw Bei Aizhen doing a combat training with his puppet that is set at martial artist third stage at a peak level. Bei Aizhen is currently a martial artist at third stage at beginning level. Considering his current stage and age, 21, Bei Aizhen is considered a talent in Long Dynasty but in the capital where geniuses all gather. This aptitude is not shocking. Although Bei Aizhen's current cultivation is average. His combat skill is in par or better than those with higher cultivation than him. This is with a reason, Bei Aizihan is a soldier of Su Mani joined countless of combat training and actual war since at age of 15. Being an orphan who personally recruited by Tanzai, his training partners are real soldiers from war always more skilled than him. Until it came to the point no one under Su army can't compare to him anymore so he always seeks General Tan's presence during training. This is also the reason he leaves the Sioux army and join Uncle Tan. When Bei Aizihan noticed their young miss presence, he stops his training and walks toward Make Xiang. He bows his head respectfully. I have seen Brother Han's combat skills, it surpassed my expectation. Bei Aizihan proudly smiled amd chuckled. Thank you, Lit, Em Little Xiang. Your fighting style is like Uncle Tan and the Sioux armies. You have adopted the moves while in the Sioux army. Your technique of fighting gives a great blow to your opponent. Based with these moves if given a weapon it will be inappropriate with you. You have great agility and stamina. If you still use this fighting technique your agility will be wasted. Stop your combat training for the time being. Focus first in cultivation. When you improve your cultivation to stage 4, I will give you a book that is suitable to you. Bei Aizihan nodded too grateful and thanked Make Xiang. You have noticed this before. He is agile by nature and his stamina was just nurtured after joining the Sioux army. In a large-scale war, soldiers kill one after another by force as the space is not that wide so the movements are just limited. With this, showcasing his agility can't be fully displayed in war. Even noticing all these facts, Bei Aizahan no longer care changing his fighting technique appropriate to his natural talent but this is not the case with the proper guidance of their young Miss Make Xiang. After some more advices, Make Xiang together with Bei Aizahan went to Father Tan who is currently cultivating. Make Xiang didn't change his Uncle Tan's cultivation and fighting method but improve it by giving a book of martial arts suitable with his current fighting technique. While discussing the ins and outs of the book the three of them are on their way to Tan Feng where he's currently cultivating, not far away from Tan Feng's room. Mother Tan's shout was heard, you stinky kid, you wanted to let your brother put the fire for me? That's not even that kid's fire. That is Xiang Er's. Hurry up to the kitchen you stinky fire magician who thinks he's a dragon with a priceless fire. Father Tan coughed loudly to call his wife's attention. When Mother Tan saw Make Xiang, she abandoned her own blood and flesh running towards Make Xiang Xiang Er, Auntie. Make Xiang politely greets Auntie Tan. Auntie is here for? Oh it's nothing. It's nothing. Make Xiang wave her hand and two combat puppets appeared on her side. Auntie cooking for us all is hard. Have them to help you. 
It is also to thank Auntie for the delicious delicacies she brought me for the past few days. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. Mother Tan being humble as she looked at the two men in black. Xiang oh, are you sure with these? They can do small works just show them what to do. They are the same as Uncle Tan's combat partners. Naturally both can perform fire magic. Bei Aizahan can't help but twitch his face. Isn't this luxurious? Isn't this too much? Miss? These powerful beings to assist in the kitchen? So they are better than my stinky son? Mother Tan murmur which is still heard by the four. Oh. Oh. Okay, nodding happily. Then auntie have to go first and go to cook Xiang Er's meal. Xiao Feng and Xiao Ling will be in my hands first. Bei Ai Zihan's mouth twitch. Isn't this scene too familiar? Xiao Feng, Xiao Ling, little fire. After Mother Tan leaves, same as what she do to the others. Make Xiang check on Tan Feng's progress. Not bad. After a week your cultivation risen a lot. Your thunder attribute risen to the third stage and your fire element is about to break through to the peak of second level. Make Xiang casually stated not noticing the three men's faces are a bit off. They swallow their questions. Since day one, they really wanted to ask how can she see through their level of cultivation. It is a basic to know that a cultivator who have a lower level of cultivation than the other cultivator can't see the strongest cultivation stage. Their miss is indeed a talent but now that she just started cultivating, their cultivation is indeed higher than her leaving them a question how can make Xiang see through them. Not only this question but a lot are floating in their mind. Like where did she get these powerful puppets that she just casually gave to them as their combat partners? If she just turned 10 seven days ago then on the crown prince's banquet how did she defeated the spiritual beast on its fifth stage peak level? But these questions just stayed on their mind. Seeing too much, they are no longer surprised at her current level of cultivation. She just cultivated for seven days right. Now looking at this level of cultivation, only months will it take to be in par with them who cultivated for years. Make Xiang who is being interrogated by the three on their mind is now giving her instruction slowly and clearly. They are given list of herbs to be used in removing the impurities in their bodies for a better cultivation and healthier body, because nine people are to use these in their bath, a massive amount is to be bought that needs a manpower. After instructing the three, she took her leave and go straight to Xianji's place where he is currently cultivating. She didn't disturb him as he is in his bottleneck period about to break through to the second stage martial artist. Among these subordinates of her, Mei Xiang knows Xianji have the lowest aptitude and also have the weakest will. Hence, she only set her goal for him to reach the stage 3 before 6 months end. Anyways, when this lazy young man will learn the highest form of beast taming, she knows this idle wannabe young man will turn to a new leaf, before going to the dining area. Mei Xiang went back to Old Leng's open workshop unexpectedly to see Pingl helping Old Leng on his workshop. Yun, little Xiang, you are here again. Mei Xiang look at Old Leng and turn her head to Pingl. Oh. Yes yes this young man is helping me for the past few days after helping the others on their training. Oh he also helps Madame Tan inside the kitchen sometimes. Mei Xiang nodded and with a wave of her hand a puppet is already standing on her side. Little Mei Xiang forgets to give old Leng a help so I went back. Miss, this? Mei Xiang didn't explain much. She calls the attention of Ping and went out from old Leng's workshop with Ping. While the two are walking towards the direction of the dining area, Mei Xiang is explaining the specification of Pingle's poison. The poison inside your body is a bit tricky. This poison is especially made for dark magicians. This kind of poison should be given to the victim consistently once a month. Until twelfth month, the poison will be self-sufficient and will slowly act inside the victim's body. The poison eats the host's cultivation. The more the host cultivate, the more the poison eats his cultivation. If the host is strong, the poison will take some years to eat the host's cultivation completely. There is another way to kill the host using the planted poison. It is to exhaust the host's magic chi so the starving poison can eat the remaining chi and will take over the host's body. When I checked your condition I can say they use the latter. You use your magic in an incredible level until the poison started to eat the remaining few chi inside your body. But it amazed me that you still live after you exhaust your magic. It means your absorption of chi is extraordinary. You fed the poison inside your body and still cultivate for your own news. The great damage inside your body means you exhaust your cultivation twice. Seeing you are still alive today, it is considered a miracle. 
thanking the miss for this miracle. No, Mei Xiang shook her head. What I did is nothing compared to what you did. It really amazed me how fast your body absorbs qi. Such a genius. A pity your cultivation have to be delayed first. Ping Lu pursed his lips about the pills I gave. What I concoct is to freeze the poison worm inside your body and also I fed you another pill to freeze your level of cultivation. Therefore, even you cultivate, you can't increase your stage of cultivation. This is to avoid to awake the poison worm inside your body. Thanking, young Miss Maxian. Then be good to me. I just didn't expect seeing such a high-end poison personally this early. Thanks to you. This challenges me a lot. Pingle however stoic his face is. Every time facing this young miss he can't help but to show new faces to remove the black magic inside you completely. I still need some time. I have to reach stage 9 of becoming an heavenly doctor. For the herbs. It's a seed of a certain phantom plant and the water flowing inside the phantom world. Lastly, a leaf of Inouyu in tree. A home of the beast clan three-eyed golden eagle. Others are available in the market. M. Miss, a crack suddenly appeared on Pingle's stoic face. Maxian casually said, Oh the three ingredient are just around the corner. It will just take a lot of time in becoming a stage nine heavenly doctor. I'm still on my second stage so it will really take some time. Maybe a year and a half is enough. Pingle can't help but look at this little girl's face in days. In the past few days, his sister, Ping Chunhua keeps on boasting this young miss of them so he naturally knew this little girl just cultivated for seven days. Second stage. In just for seven days it means her fire attribute is also at the second stage. Is it a joke when she praised me just now for being a genius in cultivation? When he tried to see through her, his face twitched more. Not only the fire attribute but the other elements and her duchi is also not being idle. Pingle can't help but fear this little girl's talent. How perverted this young miss they are currently following. Even in the place they came from this talent is just a legend. Seeing her speaking casually without a hint of boasting, he can't help but stop on his track. Make Xiang also stops. When I removed the poison worm inside your body, let me have it. Pingle just stared at her blankly. I'll accept that as a yes. Oh I remember. Old Leng said you do menial jobs around the courtyard in the past few days. Pingle nodded. Make Xiang frown then think of something. You see, helping the others will only leave you at loss. Try to do something. You can't improve your cultivation but you can still use your magic. Do you want to be a refiner? Make Xiang casually asked him like being a refiner is a menial job. Pingle's mouth twitched. She didn't wait for his reaction and added, Old man Leng does smith before. Learn the basic from him. He is also your sister's master when they are still at the Su Manor. You seems to be smart maybe a week or two. When you think being smith worker is into your lacking I will give you book in becoming a refiner. You are a magician in seventh stage of black magic at that. It will be wasted if you wouldn't cultivate other areas. It would also be beneficial to us. Refiners are those smith who works with spiritual materials to create spiritual weapons. They are called master refiners when they are able to put beast cores and spiritual crystals on the weapons. To be able to hold these spiritual weapons with beast cores and crystals, they have to be at least stage 7 magician or 7 level martial artist who trains to become a refiner. A master refiner magician can only hold cores that can be used by a magician the same rule followed by martial artist master refiner. Magicians are rare compared to martial artists not to mention magicians who practice refining. This is the reason the scarcity of magician master refiners are error and with higher demands resulting with higher prices. These spiritual weapons have a better quality based with the spirituality of the metal used. The beast cores and spiritual crystals and lastly the master refiner himself. The stronger the magic of that master refiner, the stronger the spiritual weapon he refines. Pingle is the best candidate for this not only because he is already in stage 7 middle level but also with the reason he is a dark magician. The lethality of the weapons he will refine will be greater as the dark magic's ability is destruction. While Mei Xiang is persuading Pingle to be a refiner. Further ten and the two are in the market buying the herbs on the list given by their young miss. Their manner is boasting her talent to cover the relationship with her cousin's betrothed. SHH. Someone may hear you. Hey did I mention a name? But we can't deny her talent. Aside from being double element magician her cultivation is too fast. To be honest she is like the second Dan Feihan of Long Dynasty if she is only a summoner. Oh speaking. After the three overheard these gossips. 
They can't help but reminisce their young miss attribute test. They can no longer react on mentioning their young miss and her mother's name as they can still feel their fear of how perverted their young miss is. Bay Isahan can't help but sigh. A pity suddenly rose from his weak heart for these people especially towards the Sue Manor and the royal family. There would be time their young miss will kill these people with regret and shock. He turn his head and look at Uncle Ten's back. Good thing he followed General Ten. Good thing he followed him right. 13. Their progress a year quickly passed. Nine people are now waiting on the courtyard. All the things they need to prepare are all packed. The only one missing is Mix Yang and any time they are all ready to go. They really didn't have much. They have their own interspatial sacks so carrying their things are convenient. The two lucky people and the favorites of Mexiang on the other hand have interspatial ring which have more space compared to interspatial sack. The entire workshop of old Leng where the fruits of her six months research are inside his interspatial ring. This is also the case with Mother Tan whose interspatial space is full of foods and ingredients. Tan Ling can't help but feel envy with her mother's and old Leng's interspatial rings on their fingers then look at the four strong puppets as their assistants on their sides. His little sister's favoritism is too obvious. After 12 months, Tan Ling is now in his stage 1 as a heavenly doctor. An official heavenly doctor. He is studying all the prescriptions in stage 1. If he successfully break through to ninth stage continuing doing this. When he reach at the peak of this profession it is at the same time that he can heal every sickness a heavenly doctor can heal. Today, the future heavenly doctor with God's hand didn't have that maturity yet and still looking at the two interspatial rings of her mother and old Leng. Father, seeing the same ring of mother and old Leng, if I'm a stranger I will guess they are husband and wife. What if you ask mother that I'll staff keep her ring first? Further Tan didn't respond or even didn't look at his silly son. He's like a statue looking at the direction of Maxian's room. In the past 12 months, the cultivation of the five are in incredible speed with the help of the resources Maxiang provided and their individual effort. After detoxifying the impurities of everyone, they not only change physically but their cultivation was much smoother and faster with also of course with the help of the spiritual water from the sacred book that they casually drink every day. This luxurious group of people don't even know that they are drinking thousands of beast cores worth every day. Tanzai, age 35, martial artist from stage 5 middle level to stage 6 beginning level. The higher the cultivation stage the harder to break through. In just a short 6 months, he is able to break through two levels which is amazing enough. Tan Feng, age 16, Dual element magician, first element, fire from second stage middle level to third stage peak level, second element, thunder from third stage beginning level to fourth stage peak level, Tan Feng cultivating two elements at the same time with this progress is undeniably a genius. Bei Aizuhan, age 21, martial artist from third stage beginning level to fourth stage peak level. This numbers can't tell purely the improvement of Bei Aizahan as he cultivated more on his combat skill in his new learned fighting technique. With his current combat skill, defeating a man one stage higher than him is just a small matter. Xianji age colon 18, martial artist from first stage peak level to third stage beginning level. Among all of them, Xianji have the lowest aptitude and slowest progress also barely reach Xiang's ultimatum. He didn't do much combat skills but advised by Maxiang to practice his agility and stamina for the purpose of his future profession. Ping Chunhua, age 17, magician, element, water from stage 3 beginning level to 4th stage peak level, among them all. This is the most visible improvement jumping two stages in only six months. Not only her cultivation greatly improved but also her face full of scars before. Six months have passed and her face was long free from scars revealing her beautiful face. Now not hiding her face anymore but still hiding her true gender even with her subordinates aside from Maxiang and her brother who already knew it long ago. Little Chun, Washington, Bei Aizuhan stretch his hands and a water suddenly pour from it. Smiling he wanted to pat Ping Chunhua's head just like before but suddenly stops under the dark gaze of Ping. Ping, age 21, magician, element, dark currently at 7 stage middle level. Because Ping can't cultivate magic chi there is no progress on his cultivation but this talent is already amazing. For the past 6 years under the teaching of old Leng, and guidance of Mexiang. He is now an official master refiner. 
his progress is indeed too fast as he not only a genius in cultivation but also have a strong learning ability. Make Xiang walks toward the courtyard and saw her subordinates all present. When everyone sees her they all shouted in unison, Little Xiang, Xiang er, Xiang Xiang. Make Xian smile deepen. A year passed, not only their abilities improved but also the relationship of everyone got closer, slowly cultivating their relationships not as a follower but as subordinates. Dan Make Xiang, age, 11, martial artist at 5th stage middle level. Multi-element magician, first element, fire at fourth stage middle level, second element, wind at third stage peak level, third element, water at second stage peak level, fourth element, earth at third stage middle level, fifth element, thunder at third stage middle level, sixth element, light at fourth stage peak level. Not only twelve months have passed with Meik Xiang but her almost cultivating inside the upgraded sacred book, almost three years have passed for her. Not only she cultivate Du Qi and Magic Qi but also cultivated her relationship with Strawberry. In exchange of staying at the sacred book, Strawberry voluntarily planted her seeds. This fruits was eaten by Meik Xiang and the others eating the fruits of the goddess of all strawberry not to mention the overflowing spirituality on it. After summoning her first phantom beast which she had contracted with, Meik Xiang didn't practice her summoning again. From far away land of the phantom world, Meik Xiang's portrait was posted in the whole phantom world, with the joining forces of the plants, beasts, and weapons. This is the first time in the phantom world's history that the phantom creatures are excited seeing summoning portals. Summoning portals mean they have this little chance to see Strawberry or the notorious kidnapper Meixiang. The so-called kidnapped victim Strawberry is happily enjoying alone the abundant spirituality inside the sacred book forgetting her own kind. 14. To Y Kingdom After greeting Meixiang, they all look at the man following their Xiang Er who looks like in his mid-twenties. Father Tan is the first one to recover when he recognizes the man's identity, although in state of being shocked he still bow his head respectfully. Tan Zai greets Master Shi Hai. The others followed suit without knowing the identity of the man. At the past twelve months, Shi Hai stayed inside the sacred book, reading books or absorbing the qi and spirituality inside. In exchange he works behind Tchsin as the group's secretary copying books for them. Make Xian explain his uncle's identity seeing her subordinates asking gaze. Uncle Jinhai is mother's contract beast. He is one of the most trusted confidant mother had. Without blinking an eye she further explain her uncle's role on their journey not forgetting to insert good words. We are going to ride uncle's majestic back until we arrive at Y Kingdom. Everyone's eyes widen, slowly looking at the majestic strong man in a careful gaze. At the past six months they thought they are already numb on their young miss being extraordinary but today they realize, they are wrong. Everyone knows or at least heard that the summoner Dan Fairhan have two contract beasts and both of them are powerful. Seeing one of her contract beasts that can transform to his human form it means his rank is at least in ninth stage right and using him as a mount. Even they wanted to ignore this powerful beast's dark face. They just can't. Their young miss on the other hand is fainting ignorance of his uncle's black face. Shi Jinhai's face suddenly twitch with this little girl's smile that is with a shadow of Dan Fairhan's. This sly and shameless little girl is still Dan Fairhan's daughter. Repeating this words every now and then to restrain himself harming the little dollar at equals and backslash. Surrendering from this little girl, Shi Jinhai hops and turns into his beast form. Everyone look at the sky and sees a massive eagle in white color with a tint of gold covering the sky with its massive body and long powerful wings. They unconsciously bow their heads again before carefully hopping at the back of their luxurious mount. At the Long Dynasty, everyone looks at the sky above the Fairhan Mountain. This mountain was renamed by the people of Long Dynasty, Fairhan Mountain. It was with the reason of when the late summoner Dan Fairhan was still alive. She spent most of her time training at the mountain and even gave birth to her daughter, Maxian, at the very peak of Fairhan Mountain. After a month of giving birth, Fairhan brought her daughter back to Su Manor and never returned to the said mountain. Everyone looked dumbfoundedly at the unknown creature flying in Searle at the peak of the Fairhan Mountain. 
but in just a blink of an eye the sky with the image of the majestic creature cleared like everything they saw is just an imagination. Su Lan who witnessed this scene was in daze. Many knew Dan Feihan's contract beasts are all above ninth stage. Many have seen them in their human form but few of the people in Long Dynasty have seen these powerful beasts on their beast form, he belongs to the latter. He suddenly remembers something. A year ago, after his daughter left the Su Manor, Two spies were sent to follow her till her and her companions entered the forest to the Fairhan Mountain. One waited at the entrance of the forest and the other followed Meixiang and the others but time passed and the spy that followed Meixiang didn't go back. An idea pops on his mind, his emotions fluctuated in indescribable feelings. Meixiang who is currently on her comfortable position at the majestic back of the Patriarch of the Three-Eyed Golden Eagle Clan really didn't mind his father or the people of the Long Dynasty. She was not loved but they also didn't abuse her for the past 10 years even the reason behind these is the possibility of her being a summoner. She didn't hate them but didn't care for them because in the first place, she really didn't put them into her eyes after waking up to the reality. As long as they will save their tricks for themselves if they ever cross path in the future, Meg Xiang will bring no harm to them. This if will shortly happen in the next two years crossing path in an inexplicable situation. 15. Contracting Beast in just three days, Meixiang's group arrived at Wai Kingdom. They landed far from Wai Kingdom's entrance gate to hide their mount's presence. Xu Jinhai, the group's secretary slash mount, went inside the sacred book directly misunderstood by the others that the he's Meixiang's contract beast. Meixiang didn't mind to explain. Walking by feet, the group arrives at the long line of people and carriages that is to enter Wai Kingdom. They almost spent an hour waiting in line. When it's their turn. Meixiang saw the posted amount needed to enter the gate, kingdoms are graded from F as the lowest and S as the highest, Sabgd, Y kingdom is an A-grade kingdom that explains the expensive entrance fee. Mother Tan, the group's treasurer, gave the bag of golden coins to the guard, the guard inspects the gold coins, after confirming he gave them their passes while entering the gate. They already see the big gap of an A-grade kingdom to an E-grade kingdom like Long Dynasty which they came from. Tanling who can't hide his amazement on his eyes is like a country bumpkin pointed at almost everything he sees with his jaw dropped. The others tried their best to restrain themselves from reacting, at least not like a certain country bumpkin, to give face to their young miss. Makes Yang calmly look around. True to an A-grade country, from the people to the kingdom itself, they are all incomparable to their long dynasty. Everything in Y Kingdom is top-notch including their security in both land and aerial. This is also the reason Meixiang's group landed far from Y Kingdom to not be noticeable having a companion with a commander level beast, they directly find an inn and wait for their young miss for their instruction. A year ago, Meixiang set a goal and said they have to go to the capital after two years and set up a mercenary, there are still one more year and with Uncle Xi Jinhai's presence traveling for half a month is enough. Therefore they can't find a reason in going out the mountain Feihan earlier than the planned date. The streets are bustling, and the tourists are unending. When they enter the inn, the lounge is full with foreigners but the whole place is quiet. It is obvious these people are strong, stronger than them. When Dan Meixiang's group entered, everyone in the room didn't look at Meixiang's group directly but observed the newcomer's cultivation. The strongest among them is a seven-stage middle-level magician. What shocks them all is its young man that aged 22 to 23. The rest's cultivation are not even worth to mention. There's even four of them who can't cultivate. What intrigues them is how they are led by the petite little girl that seems to age only 11. This little girl didn't even have a fluctuation of chi on her body. The young man with the strongest cultivation get the catalog of the inn and respectfully give it to her. When they already guess the little girl is from a powerful family, she chose an ordinary manor to rent for two days. The fat lady on the little girl's side pay it with silver and gold coins giving it one by one to the employee of the inn like she really didn't want to give it away. Meix Yang's group entered and exited the lounge quietly leaving those groups of men inside in an awkward silence. The manner Meix Yang chose is indeed ordinary. Those expensive manners available in the catalog are with a reason of the location which is with a budent chi good for cultivation. Aside from the reason they didn't have much time to cultivate inside the manor, they have spiritual water and fruit and beast cause to improve their cultivation. After everyone picked their own room inside the manor, 
they proceed on their usual meeting area the dining area. When everyone entered the dining room, Mei Xiang is already sitting munching her snacks while Mother Tan with the help of Xiao Feng and Xiao Ling are already setting the dining table for lunch. Everyone look at the sight with complicated gaze as the two puppets covered with black cloth like they are shadow guards only revealing their eyes, carefully putting the foods on the table. Their faces are more complicated when they thought the abilities of these puppets are only put in vain to do this menial works. This six months, they haven't used to this sight knowing the puppet's cultivation level. Because Mei Xiang's cultivation risen in the past 12 months, these puppets can already achieve stage 6 as a martial artist and also with fire and light magic, and the rest didn't change. They also upgraded a lot in terms of the time they can use and their recovery. If before they can use up to one hour and needs to recharge them for three hours, now they can already take four hours and only two hours to recharge. These combat partners are not only good in fighting but also good in menial jobs. Mother Tan and Old Leng, who had now two puppets as assistants, are highly satisfied with their performances. Just a pity these puppets are restrained in entering other facility inside the sacred book. If they can only go to the library, Shi Jinhai would be the happiest. The books are also restrained in leaving the library so passing the secretary job to the puppets is an unachievable dream of Shi Jinhai. Knowing Mother Tan and Old Leng have two puppets each as their assistants while all of them only have one, Bei Aizahan can only sigh. Even General Tan who have three at first have only one now when they upgraded and be able to reach sixth stage of martial art peak level. Tan Ling have the most complicated feelings among them. Ping Liu also didn't own a puppet didn't mind. These puppets can only do menial jobs aside from being a combat partner. They can't help him in practicing his master refiner. When everyone was already seated, Mei Xiang, after munching the last piece of her snacks, said, Auntie, have a seat first. Let Xiao Ling and Xiao Feng set the table. Mother Tan follow. In a lazy manner, Mei Xiang calmly said, Months from today, an ashen beast is about to be born inside the white forest of Wai Kingdom. Brother Ji, she turns her head towards Xian Ji. You have to contract that ancient beast. Everyone was dumbfounded. Xian Ji recovered first from the gaze of Mei Xiang. I if, cough if. Little Xiang said then then brother Ji will do his best. Mei Xiang nodded satisfied good. Mei Xiang not caring her subordinates weird faces continued to explain. Contracting that ancient beast is not our only goal in going here. Aside from training and cultivating inside the white forest we are going to look for powerful beasts that we have to contract with. Brother Ji, I said before that after you risen your cultivation to stage 3 I will teach you a special beast taming technique. Xian Ji nodded. It is actually called Art of Ancient Beast Taming. Taming using this technique will increase the cultivation stage of both the person and the beast. Everyone gasp in shock only to be confused in Mei Xing's next words. If, only if the person and the beast are both Du Qi base or have the same element magic, miss, they really didn't understood Mei Xiang's words. If the person and the beast are both Du Qi base or have the same element magic, this new beast taming technique will help them increase their cultivation by one stage. Isn't a person that can cultivate qi to do qi can only contract a beast that is also do qi base? Isn't a person that can cultivate qi to magic qi can only contract a beast that have the same element as he has? If this is the case then why would their young miss say the word if in the first place if there are no other possibilities? Mei Xiang smiled and raised her hand to show them her index finger. She removes the interspatial ring that covers the symbol around her index finger. Seeing this, everyone's mind is more in chaos. Summoner? I mentioned before that having a summoner on your side is good but having a summoner who fully knows her advantages on your side is better. Everyone knows that a summoner can open a portal to the phantom world. What everyone didn't know is becoming a summoner can also forcefully open a portal and put a person and a beast with different practice of cultivation or even without cultivation and enter them into a contract. But this alone will affect the person's and the beast's cultivation. It will also kill a person and a beast without cultivation to death using this method. Everyone swallows back their amazement and gulp with fear. But, Mei Xiang said with a smile. But it is different with the help of the art of ancient beast taming. Everyone, after some seconds, realize what their young miss words. Little Xiang, you mean your brother Link can also contract a beast? 
Tan Ling excitedly asked. With Mei Xiang's nod he almost run to her little sister and hug her if not only with her mother's fat hands squeezing his wrist with excitement. Brother Feng, you are dual element magician so you can contract two beasts. I suggest a water attribute beast to you. Your cultivation on your thunder is at its best. Working with it will add your thunder's lethality. A duchi base is also good. Your physical respond is slow. If an opponent would attack you in a short range, your magic would be too late to protect you. Uncle Tan, the lethality of your attacks are great not only because of you practicing duchi but your technique gave a great damage to your opponents. But because of this technique of yours, your speed is not great. Your short-range attacks will be useless if you can't close the distance with your opponent. I suggest a wind attribute beast to Uncle, Brother Zahan. Although your techniques are lighter than before that affects the lethality of your attacks, your natural agility improved. Though these new figuring technique have lesser damage unlike before, as long as you cultivate more the lethality of your attacks will increase as your duchi increases. Contracting a duchi base beast tamed using ancient beast taming technique will increase your cultivation. This will also increase your attacks lethality. You can also try to contract a fire, thunder, or dark magic beasts. Contracting them wouldn't increase your cultivation but will add the lethality of your attacks. The latter will bring you a long-term benefit. Brother Chen, you are a water magician, next to light which really can't bring damage. Water is next with the least lethality among the elements. On the other hand, dark magic's lethality is the best among the seven elements. Although dark magic beasts are rare we will try our best to find one. Next good candidate to be your contract beast is with a thunder attribute. Water and thunder elements are good combinations. Brother. You can't increase your stage of cultivation for now. If you find a dark magic beast to be your contractual beast then you can contract it without taming it using the ancient beast taming technique. If you find a beast that isn't a dark attribute then it is still possible using my summoning ability and the ancient beast taming technique, you can still contract a beast. Your dark magic's lethality is already the best. You already know what's good for you, Brother Ling. Mei Xiang seeing his brother Ling's eager face. His both eyes are shining brightly, and his thin lips are pressed to restrain himself from talking. You must already have an idea of the contract beast suitable to you, Tan Ling when he saw Mei Xiang asking him he excitedly state what's in his mind, he 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 at first I thought of a light attribute beast so I can also have an assistant in healing patients using it but I had a second thought. Our little Xiang is already a light attribute magician and if we encounter a problem that needs a light magic then little Xiang will always be there. Also light magic can't protect me because I'm a weak young man without a protection powerful puppets like mothers and old lengs then I want a dark attribute beast on its ninth stage peak level. Everyone's eyes twitch. Look at how brave and shameless this dumb is. Anything brother Ling's wish. Tan Ling nodded many times as he could and smile silly his mind full of imagination. Make Xiang turn her head and look at Xianjie again. Brother Ji, we will stick to the old plan. The ancient beast will be your contract beast. Everyone's face had a crack after being reminded of this ancient beast. Especially Tan Ling. Yes. Why didn't he think of an ancient beast? What dark magic beast? What ninth rank? In front of an ancient beast this is like an ant okay. Tan Ling and Bei Aizahan curse Xianjie for being too lucky too many times on their heads but suddenly froze when they heard their little Xiang's next words. Lastly, Auntie, and Old Leng, the both of you are weak and not young anymore. Mei Xiang will try her best to look for a divine beast. Ancient beast is also good. Damn it, they forget these two local tyrants with body of Koi God and Goddess. <laughs> These are just my suggestions but if there is a special circumstances or encounter a great opportunity then grab it. Waving her hand lazily she said in a leisure manner, now let's eat. 16. Identity. The next day, all the men aside from Pingle was brought by Mother Tan to the market to buy their supplies for the next whole month inside the White Forest. The pair of Ping siblings on the other hand was given a task by Mother Tan to take their Xiang Er to stroll around and spoil her. Xiang Xiang, what do you want to do? Shall we go to the stalls over there? Oh yeah jewelry shops are over there beside those are selling hanfu and girls accessories. Brother, brother Chun, little Xiang. The three look at Tan Ling running towards them, breathing heavily but with a triumphant smile. He he he, 
I told mother that little Xiang's day wouldn't be complete without this big brother so she let me off. That didn't happen. Leaving a note saying he will follow his little sister. He leaves without asking if her mother approves it. The four of them with unending persuasion of Tan Ling and Ping Chunhua. They went to a shop for young ladies and let Make Xiang take a look. Little Xiang, this color looks good to you. Take a look. No. Xiang Xiang's face is fair. Dark colors will only make her paler. Considering Xiang Xiang's age and temperament, this Han Fu is best for her. This will make her look innocent but also elegant. Oh this accessories will also go to pair it with it. Tan Ling take a look at Ping Chun Hua's side and nodded three times giving his brother Hua thumbs up. Brother Hua, why are you too good at these? Yes yes let's pick this for little Xiang even she said no. Ping Chun Hua cough at Tan Ling's casual words. She just turned her head to look at Mei Xiang and ask little Xiang. What do you think? Aren't you going to get it? Even I said no. Ping Chunhua laughs at this remarks of Mei Xiang and take a look at Tan Ling who is already talking to the shop's employee pointing at the dress she selected. I want that dress. Everyone turn their head to a young lady in peach Han Fu pointing at the dress on Ping Chunhua's side. An employee of the shop walks toward the young lady and politely say, the young miss have a discerning eyes. The dress the young miss picked is the centerpiece of our shop this month. There is only three of this and if young miss will buy this today she will have the first piece. I'll pay for all the three and will only take one. The young lady wearing peach hanfu stated arrogantly. The employee talking with Tan Ling look back at him bow her head then walks toward the young lady in peach hanfu. Young miss, I am sorry to tell you the dress was already reserved and even selected it earlier than the miss. No. That is why this pea. I said I will buy the three because I don't want others wearing the same as mine. Tan Ling and Ping Chunhua who heard this can't help but frown. Ping Chunhua was about to talk but stopped under Mei Xiang's gaze. Tan Ling on the other hand didn't. Oh, oh. Tan Ling's loud and arrogant voice rang. This dress, I'm willing to give way if you look better wearing it but a pity compare with my little sister. You are too ugly. All faces inside the shop crack. Ugly? Isn't this young man blind? Mei Xiang laughs at this brother Ling's declaration. Brother Ling need not worry. I really don't love the dress particularly. You can just choose another pair for me. Looking at Mei Xiang's face, they somehow understood the young man's statement. The little girl that is only about 9 or 10 is indeed too beautiful compared to the young lady in peach dress. Everything is good at me because I'm beautiful anyways. All the onlookers can't help but twitch their faces. Yes being a beauty is good but telling it blatantly without being shy is too shamily right? Yes. Yes. Our little Xiang is the prettiest. Your handsome brother Ling will look for another dress. Ping Chun will look at the spectators weird faces. For the past six months she was already numb with Tan Ling and her young miss this kind of casual conversation. The young lady in peach dress was fume with anger. I will buy all the dresses inside this shop. The slave on her side bows like she just received an order. She walks toward the employee of the shop that is responsible of taking the bills. Make Xiang just laughs at this scene. Let's go to the other shops. But little Xiang. Don't worry. If I really want something I will definitely get it. She turns her head to the young lady in peach dress and smiled. The young lady is lucky today this Dan Mei Xiang didn't fancy any of these. Everyone gulps with this little girl's words. Even after witnessing that the young lady in peach is not from ordinary background, the young lady named Dan Mei Xiang not only opposed her but even stated her name. Unless this isn't her real name, it is either this Dan Mei Xiang have a powerful backer or just an idiot. But the latter didn't seem so as this little girl seems smart. Also this kind of temperament is indeed look like from a big family. The young lady in peach was about to refute but was stopped by one of her confidant. Being impulsive isn't a good thing. Offend no one without knowing his background. This is her father's one rule to her. Especially now that she just escaped from the palace and currently under incognito. With no choice, the young lady and Peach just frown to make Xiang's leaving back. When the four of them return, the others are already at home preparing for tomorrow's journey inside the white forest. Tan Ling, who escaped to stroll with Mei Xiang and the others, use what happened in the shop to divert her mother's fury. True to what he expected, Mother Tan cursed the faceless young lady and Peach for getting her good son's deed. That night, Mei Xiang stayed inside the sacred book soak in hot spring full of spirituality while eating strawberries in leisure manner. Mm. 
I'm thinking lately to plant variety of plants here but those that can only plant it here are seeds of plant phantom creatures. I'm just thinking if you can help me with this matter. The little girl with eyes closed leaning comfortably towards the wall of the spring she's soaking suddenly open her big doe eyes. I forgot I have to go back. They must be worried of me. Makes Yang even with her undefeatable mental strength. Can't help but twitch the side of her mouth. Is this realization too late? A N Strawberry equals co my greater than m 17. To the white forest, the next day, Meix Yang and the others had an early breakfast to discuss their further tasks. Uncle Tan, you have to improve your speed. Brother Zahan, familiarize yourself in using bow and arrow. You're already familiar with sword so familiarizing a long range weapon would do good to you. Brother Feng, your physical condition isn't good. Do some exercises. White Forest is a good place to increase your reflexes. A magician with good physical condition is more powerful. Brother Hua, your water magic's lethality is weak but when you reach level 7, you can freely turn your water to ice. Cultivate more. Brother, you are powerful. Put your guard on every time. Brother Ling, continue to study the prescriptions. With your progress, I can say you'll finish all the prescription of stage 2 in a week. By that time. We will set a camp and stay for a while so you can concoct a second stage pill successfully and be able to break through to become a tier 2 heavenly doctor. Old Leng and Auntie Tan, the both are weak and not young anymore. Just stay safe and wait for a good news. Tan Ling and Bei Aizihan just sigh with this obvious favoritism. Again, makes Yang bring out small crystals and everyone get one each. Break those crystals when you are in danger for others to find your location. Everyone nodded and Saf keep their own crystals. Now, I want to discuss the seriousness of the matter first regarding the ancient beast that was about to be born months from today. Everyone's mood became more tense. Yes, that's ancient beast. They restrain themselves from looking at Xianji's way. Everyone must know there are four kinds of beasts existing in this realm. The normals beasts spiritual beasts and the last two are ancient and divine beasts. Beast tamers can and only tame the first two. The reason for this are ancient beasts and divine beasts are too powerful that they are the one who choose the person they wanted to contract with if ever there is. Unfortunately in the past century there is no news of a person who have contracted these kinds of powerful beast. Everyone was stiff. If this was the case, then, again, they restrain themselves to turn their heads toward Xianji's way. Then everyone must think that contracting this about to be born ancient beast is impossible to be contracted. It's not actually impossible. It is because this ancient beast was born. A newborn ancient beast is different from a grown up one. In order to contract a newborn one, you just have to put a blood in the surface of the egg's shell before it hatches. But, I said it's not impossible but it is not also easy. It is for the reason that when an ancient beast was born, there would be a great fluctuation of qi in the surroundings that will attract spiritual beasts nearby. Discussing the good side first, these beasts can be captured by us and if you are your beast partner among these then it is good. The other beast if not to be tame then we can still benefit by getting their cause for our cultivation. Also with the fluctuation of qi around. Those who can cultivate should cultivate. Looking at the bad side, these beasts are to protect and kneel to the newborn ancient beasts. These beasts may outnumber us. Not only this beasts are our problems but also the practitioners nearby. Once the newborn ancient beast descended from the heaven, it will also attract other cultivators. So to solve the matter with the beasts, we have the entire five months to prepare. In five months, we will capture or kill as many spiritual beasts we can inside the white forest. Use the beast cause for cultivation and the rest, save them. In the capital, beast cause and spiritual crystals are the acceptable currency while only few accepts gold and silver. Also in that five months, we have to familiarize ourselves inside the white forest. In this case, escaping from cultivators if we're in disadvantage would be an easier task. Don't worry. If we can't handle it by ourselves, I have a backup plan. Everyone think of Master Shi Hai. On the other hand, Mei Xiang thinks of a little girl in pink dress in live action. Little Xiang, I'm just curious. 
You said the other cultivators will only know an ancient beast will be born when it will descend from the sky. Then how did you know this? Everyone gulps. Of course they also have a thought of this last night but was not brave enough to ask this to their young miss. When she discussed the matter with the ancient beast their attention was set on a special beast taming technique and summoners another unique ability ignoring another more important matter. They only recognize the peculiarity of the matter that their young miss who can predict that an ancient beast was about to be born when they went to bed. Even seeing their young miss early in the morning, they have no strong will to ask this another of many questions their young miss can do, but Tanling is too brave, idiot rather. Everyone gave him a thumbs up mentally to his idiotness rather, they also wanted to know okay. Tanling their sacrificial lamb looks at Mei Xiang purely curious not knowing his companion's thoughts. Of course, Xiang Er is the best. She is the smartest and also the strongest. Everyone's excited mood dropped. Mei Xiang chuckled at her auntie's statement. PFF, maybe this is the reason little Xiang favor you, Tanling retorted. Oh, oh are you saying Xiang Er is being unfair? Mother, don't twist my words. We all can see little Xiang's favoritism towards mother and old Leng. Tanling who turned his head to his brother Zihan and everyone to ask their support but was only abandoned by his so-called family, they all look away from Tanling's pleading eyes, they are wrong, Tanling is brave, he is brave, he is the bravest, they carefully observe their young miss not chuckling anymore, she is raising her right eyebrow hearing things from Tanling, little Xiang, tell me if I'm wrong, you gave them two puppets to assist them, even the others only get one each. But me a weak young man who can't cultivate wasn't given one. Also brother, he also needs an assistant when he's practicing refining before but you didn't give him one. Then the interspatial ring, and many more when we're still in Long Dynasty. Oh let's not forget last night, you said you'll find an ancient or divine beast for them. You always said they are weak and old. I'm also weak and also too young to protect myself. Little Xiang, you forget this brother of yours. Everyone's back was soaked with sweat. Is this everyone thinks? Everyone when heard this from their young miss was trembling inside. Further Tan who is calmer than the rest almost wanted to pull his son and threw him in the nearby cliff. He looked at his son and said, you ungrateful thing. Give back to young miss the fire inside your body and the books you are reading to become heavenly doctor. No. I just randomly said this. I didn't think it's unfair and also I'm not ungrateful. HMP now I forget why the topic came here. Oh yeah I just casually asked mother then she said being words about being unfair then so I listed things out. Tanling didn't lose his momentum. Little Xiang, I'm just curious why you favor mother and old Lang the most? Mei Xiang took a sip of tea and put down her cup and calmly said, Six months ago I said let's show off and bribe each other in the future. Up to today, no one aside auntie and old Leng gave me anything. You only can show off but can't bribe me. What's good things with you? Nodding like realizing something she added. Realizing now, yeah, I really like them more than the rest of you here. Old Leng coughed too shy to respond to this. Auntie Tan gave a proud smile. The others are dumbfounded. If this is the case they must learn to cook now right. Favoritism isn't bad. As long as they doesn't think she's being unfair to any of them. It is all good. Mei Xiang didn't mind to explain the matter of wanting to find divine or ancient beast to contract with old Leng and Auntie Tan. It is actually with a big reason behind. That morning, after eating their breakfast they early departed on their way to the White Forest. 18. A Peculiar Team before Mei Xiang take her first step at the very entrance of the White Forest, she was stopped by a voice, Are you going to enter this forest? Mei Xiang turn around and look at the burly man looks like in his late twenties. Mei Xiang raise her eyebrow. The burly man is looking at Uncle Tan. Uncle Tan then look at Mei Xiang. The burly man then did look at Mei Xiang's way. So you must have the final say of this group. Little girl, I don't know what is your motive in entering the White Forest but you must go back. A group of people from Viandin Pavilion just entered the forest. Mei Xiang even with the sacred book on her possession didn't know this Viandin Pavilion. This only meant it's a lowly existence not worth to mention. Senior, this Viandin Pavilion is? You didn't even know Viandin Pavilion? The burly man's forehead crinkled like he's seeing aliens out from this world? It is indeed the case, Senior. We are just from small kingdom and too ignorant with this too high identity. The burly man nodded. He then patiently explained, Viandin Pavilion is a powerhouse at the central. Their influence is powerful that they have their own mercenary. 
because their pavilion offers everything. Naturally they have to gather everything. This time, their pavilion sent people to maybe gather beast cause or something is bigger inside the white forest. Mei Xiang's eyebrow raised and a glint of interest was seen on her eyes, but these are not important. You have to know that Vian Din is well known of the slaves they capture and auction. Your group is weak but a bit interesting. I'm scared you wouldn't be spared. Your group's highest cultivation is only in 7 tier but the people of Vian Din Pavilion even sent a cultivator in 9th stage. Mei Xiang smiled towards the burly man, thanking the senior for informing us and for the concern. A pity we have to enter this forest no matter what, she politely stated. This little girl bids farewell to the senior. The burly man was frowning at the leaving back of Mei Xiang's group. A man suddenly walks toward him and stand on his side looking at the leaving people, his eyes full of interest. That group is too peculiar, that little girl is too ignorant, she will kill those people in no time. The burly man stated. Ignorant? I don't think so. If you are not sleeping while we're at the end the other day you must see how those people are casual to her but their eyes have deep respect while looking at that little girl, is she from a powerful family? That kind of respect is too deep that was like earned by the little girl herself, she seems only 10 or maybe younger, how would a little girl would earn such, I can't even feel a fluctuation of chi inside her body, right? That's what interests me most. Such a peculiar girl. Such a peculiar group. Let's not care about them anymore. I already warned them. Let's go. The two men then entered inside the forest in an inexplicable speed. Not long after, another group of men with two young ladies with them came into the scene. Just like the others, they also entered the forest. On the other hand, Mei Xiang's group was following the way to the center of the forest where they planned to build their main camp. On their first day inside the white forest, they didn't encounter any spiritual beast which isn't odd as they are still at the very outer part of the forest. On their first day, they set their camp early, night arrives, Auntie Tan is almost done cooking their dinner when there's a sudden commotion outside the tent. When Auntie Ling went out, a group of people are outside their camp talking to Uncle Tan and Ping. Auntie Ling asked what is happening only to find out this unknown group of people are asking if they can lend a place for their young missus to have dinner first while they are setting their camp. No. No, you can't. Our young miss is sensitive to other people's presence. No. No. You tell to your young missus to just wait until you set your camp or just eat under a tree. You go away. We are about to have our super. Auntie Tan suddenly retorted after knowing the matter. Uncle Min, a young lady appeared on her simple attire. With a polite smile she greets everyone and looks at Auntie Tan smiling. Auntie, this young lady didn't wish to be accommodated. This young lady just wished to accommodate her younger sister as she isn't accustomed in eating in the wild. The man called Uncle Min and the young lady's followers are about to protest when Mei Xiang who heard their conversation at the very beginning came out of her tent fainting ignorance. What's happening here? Auntie Tan then explained everything. Mei Xiang nodded pretending just knowing what's happening. She can't help but helplessly smile at the sudden change of Auntie Tan's treatment, calling her young miss instead of Xiang. Uh, this is to let the uninvited people knew she isn't from an ordinary background. Is that so? Mei Xiang look at the young lady. The young lady who maintains her polite demeanor then said, This young lady indeed said those words. A meaningful smile appeared on Mei Xiang's face. While looking at the young lady she said, Auntie, prepare another place at the dining table. This selfless young lady's younger sister will eat with us. Yes, young miss. Auntie Tan and Uncle Tan then leaves to follow Mei Xiang's order while Ping Lu stayed, standing behind Mei Xiang. The young lady's confidant are now wearing black faces aside from the young lady who barely maintain her polite demeanor. This young lady thanks the young miss for accepting to accommodate this young lady's younger sister for tonight. The young lady who came to her senses politely said, this young miss can't just ignore an older sister's selfless plea, Mei Xiang said smiling more. Dinner time arrives one after another, Tan Feng, Tan Ling, Xian Ji, Bei Ai Zihun, and Ping Chunhua went out of their own tents. Seeing the situation outside, they greet Mei Xiang formally and stand behind her. Stay here and wait for the young miss to take her to dine with us. Mei Xiang then turns her head to the young lady and said, This young miss bids farewell first. The opposite group looking at these beautiful young men can't help but wonder Mei Xiang's identity. The man that was called Uncle Min who of the highest cultivation among this group can't help but get curious more about these people.
The strongest level of cultivation among them is in seventh stage which looks so young only on his early twenties. Another man who also looks so young is already at fourth stage of cultivation while the man same face as the latter is with no cultivation. The other's cultivation are just average or below average. They even bring people with no cultivation inside the dangerous white forest. What shocks him most is this group was led by a little girl with no cultivation about 10 years old or younger and this little girl seems not ordinary. Bringing people with no cultivation and even lead by such inside the dangerous white forest full of powerful beasts, he can't help but wonder this group's reason of coming here. This team is peculiar. Too peculiar. 19. Local Tyrant. A young lady went into sight wearing white clothes looking at her elder sister then to the six good-looking young men saluting to a little girl who was about to walk out. The young lady in white recalled what her sister's confidant said. While she was waiting for others to set their camp, her sister's follower came to fetch her while on the way she was informed of what happened. When she saw the faces of the unknown young men, she can't help but blush. Fifth sister, second sister. After greeting her older sister she then look at the young men and make siang. These are fifth sister. This young lady leads this group of travelers and gave her permission on allowing the fifth sister to spend her tonight's meal inside the benefactor's camp. Die before agreeing notice their companion's heavy mood. She slowly realized everything. She and her older sister, Weyun, are from a small kingdom of Yin country. Their kingdom was just a great D kingdom who have a low resources and weak power. Although their kingdom is small, they are royal princesses who somehow have resources in the whole kingdom. She and her older sister have the highest aptitude not to mention they are both magicians. With this reason, their royal further gather resources and hire and grade mercenary from central to hunter spiritual beasts to contract them. Because their kingdom didn't have much resources, they can't afford to buy a spiritual beast in the central so they can only pay to join a mercenary group and hunt their contract beasts themselves. With the help of this mercenary group lead by the man they called Uncle Min. Mercenaries from capital are normally arrogant as they already established their roots to the central. Even the lowest grade mercenary are respected in small kingdoms not to mention and grade E mercenary. Fortunately for the two, the group lead by Uncle Min is not as arrogant as the others and also very considerate to them. Their journey went smooth until they completely entered the White Forest. Daya noticed that the other's treatment towards her was a bit different compared to what her older sister is receiving. Then she recalled her mother's, the Queen of Yin Kingdom, advice to not put her guard down towards her sister. Growing up with the affection of her royal parents, she was naturally spoiled and mischievous. Yin, on the other hand, a daughter of a concubine, strive hard to achieve the affection she received. They are a year apart. 16 and 15, but their cultivation are at par at the beginning level of fourth stage of earth magic. Daya suddenly recalled everything and realized things. Her sister, not only trying to win Uncle Men's group's affection but she also is trying to destroy her name in every opportunity she has. In this case, they will give her the most powerful beast they will hunt in this journey not to mention they are both earth magician. Her, Yin Daya can't just confront her sister blatantly and can only use her sister's method to counterattack. Second sister is indeed selfless. Then she smiled towards Meixiang. A pity this young lady have to reject the benefactor's politeness. This young lady can't swallow her food knowing Uncle Min and the others are working. Meixiang's lips curved. It seems the younger sister is not that idiot. She then didn't push things more and bids farewell to them. After eating their meal. Make Xiang discuss the specifics of the following days they have to encounter. Starting tomorrow, we will increase our pace on our way to the eye of the forest. The nearer we are at the center, the more powerful beasts we will encounter. Keep your guards up all the time, not only towards the beasts but especially towards other cultivators. This white forest is popular to strong cultivators not only with the spiritual beasts but also with the abundant chi here. It is natural to meet cultivators from the central here, try your best not to offend them for now, Make Xiang added, but also don't get maltreated. If they become unreasonable then beat them, if you can't beat them then just break the crystal I gave you. She gave reminders and pointers, then suddenly remember something, brother, regarding the beast cause they needed to their scepters. Pingle nodded and tell the specifics about the matters. Scepters are used by magicians in order to cast their spells. Magicians can still control elements without it but with the use of a scepter, 
it will be more powerful and faster, and because they can use to channel their element to their scepters, their magic chi wouldn't be easily exhausted. Scepters are more powerful with the consideration of the following, the spirituality of the metal used to create the scepter itself, the level of beast cause and their attributes hold into the scepter, and lastly the master refiner himself. Refiner is the smith who smelt the spiritual metal to create a scepter while a master refiner is the person who can hold the beast cause to the scepters. Once a refiner reached to become a stage 7 magician then he will be considered a master refiner that can hold beast cause into the scepters. This is the same with refiners that can cultivate chi to do chi. Martial artist refiners can create weapons and to make those weapon more powerful. Martial artist master refiners whole beast cause and spiritual crystals into these weapons. The more and powerful the beast's cause and spiritual crystals hold into the weapons, the more powerful that weapon is. Martial artists can use unlimited number of weapons without considering the holes of each weapon unlike magicians. Magicians can only use one scepter and can only allow their scepter hold beast cause not greater than their level of cultivation. Hence, typically, the number of beast core in the magician's scepter will tell his level of cultivation. Ping Li explained the particularity of the matter to everyone especially to Tan Feng and to his sister. Tan Feng is a fire and thunder attribute while Ping Chun is a water attribute. Currently, we have one beast core each of water and dark magic attribute commander level and three ninth stage of water, fire, and thunder element. Everyone was shocked that they have such possession. That is three ninth stage and two commander level beasts. They all look stiff and take a glimpse of this local tyrant young miss of theirs who is munching her snacks casually. Make Xiang, the local tyrant, is actually thinking of how poor are they right now. The gold and silver coins given by her mother was almost gone while the beast cores are not enough once they enter the central. They need more beast cores. They have to earn a lot in this journey and earn as much as beast cores as they can. The first beast core is the foundation of a magician's scepter. Therefore, choosing a magician's first beast core is a crucial point. Both the commander level is suitable with Ping Chun's element while Tan Feng is only suitable with the dark magic beast core as water magic core will highlight his thunder attribute but will do otherwise to his fire magic. He then stops talking hesitant to say the next words. Make Xiang then continue his words, but brother Chun's water magic's lethality is weak. Brother. Save the dark magic court to brother Chun. We still have six months. And a scepter is no hurry. We haven't even find the best metal for our scepter. We just have to make sure we must have no lower than commander level as our first beast core. Save the ninth level cause for the second hole. For our spiritual weapons, the lowest cause we have to accumulate should be no lower than fifth stage. We don't have scarcity of these. But even this is the case, we still have to kill as many as beast as we can for our plan and also for money. They all nodded stiffly. Make Xiang saw the faces of her subordinates. You must think this beast cause are already luxury. Don't forget that our target is the central. We no longer at the Long Dynasty. These luxurious are just small things for the strongest in the central. They swallow those thoughts and purse their lips. They nodded wiping out their flabbergasted reactions. Yes, their target is the central. They can't be a country bumpkin anymore. Little did they know, what their young miss let them taste in the past six months even the richest man in the central. He can't afford these things. Ancient techniques that are no longer existing. Blueprint of machines from different worlds. Cultivation techniques. Powerful combat partners. High-end beast cores and spiritual crystals. Spiritual water same as flowing inside the phantom world. Mm, spiritual strawberries. Oh let's not forget that their secretary and mount is the current patriarch of the three-eyed golden eagle clan. The next day, the camp of Uncle Min are partly done in packing up while Meixiang's group just finished eating breakfast. When everyone on Meixiang's group had enough rest, Auntie Tan then command the group of men to start to pack up. When Uncle Min saw how the other camp easily dismantle their tents and can even fold it into small packages, he can't help but stop what he's doing. Old Leng, the creator of these tents, is highly satisfied with these creations. He can't help but be excited to go to the central to complete those machineries he already adjusted and modified according to the materials available in this realm. With central's resources, he can already do those appliances any time any day. Throwing those excited thoughts at the back of his mind, Old Leng strictly order the young men to carefully place the foldable beds 
chairs, tables and others in his front so he can start to put them in his interspatial ring. On the other side not far from Meixiang's camp, Uncle Min and the others long gone stop packing up. Tudam found it at how fast and trouble free the other camp pack up those objects that they never ever seen before. A N E A thanks for the reads and votes. 20. Beast Taming. Meixiang's group's pace was indeed increased. They will settle late at night. Those who can cultivate will cultivate. Tan Ling will study prescriptions while Auntie Tan will cook dinner. Old Leng and Bing on the other hand will stand as guards. After dinner they will directly sleep. The puppets will have their shifts to guard the camp while everyone is sleeping. The next day, they will start their journey early morning. When lunch time arrives, they will just sit and eat Auntie Tan's ready-made lunch and if starved, there are unlimited supply of snacks prepared by Auntie Tan beforehand. These snacks were stored inside the sacred book to avoid spoilage. While in journey, Old Leng, Mother Tan, and Tan Ling in pursuit of the cultivators barely survive all thanks to the medications and spiritual water from Meixiang. Tan Feng, Ping Chunhua and Ping on the other hand are not completely worry-free. Ping Le's stamina and speed is great as he not only cultivate to become a master refiner but he also nourished and practiced his physical body in the past six months. Ping Chunhua on the other hand is weaker than his brother, adding she is a female so there is indeed a big gap in the first place, but if she is to compare to Tan Feng, she is undoubtedly much stronger. Tan Feng's physical condition is not as great as the others. Same with the others. Meixiang already helped Tan Feng to solve his physical condition with the nourishment of the spiritual water from the sacred book and a medicinal bath. What Tan Feng lacks was the actual physical conditioning. Because cultivation devours most of Tan Feng's time, and even after cultivation he trained with his combat partner using magic, standing and walking determinable counts of steps are his only exercises. In this case, Old Leng who isn't a cultivator and also very old is stronger than Tan Feng a young man on his teens. This journey inside the white forest will indeed help him a lot. While the others are tired, martial artists are joining the walk while doing another part of their training. Bei Aizihan is shooting arrows when he sees normal animals then Uncle Tan improves his speed by fetching these dead animals to give them to his wife. Xian on the other hand is wearing his usual carefree smile, enjoying the nature watching every trees and weeds. Meixiang who is both magician and martial artist, naturally have no problem with this, she just simply munch her snacks while observing the surrounding. On the fourth day of their journey, they finally encounter spiritual beasts but these are only with low levels of cultivation. Even so, they capture them and get their beast cause while their meats are to be saved by Auntie Tan for their meals. On the fifth day, Meixiang said to settle earlier so as they did, they continue their old routine while Xianjia was brought by Meixiang outside the camp. They walk from the camp to the east part of the forest. While walking, Meixiang is giving a brief introduction of becoming a beast tamer. Before you can perform the art of beast taming, you need to conquer them first. Spiritual beasts have a longer lifespan compared to human cultivators. That is why they didn't favor having a contract with humans. Cultivator and beasts often do master-slave contract. Human as the master and beast as the slave. Once the master died, his beast also dies. With this reason, spiritual beasts are against contracting with humans. The other kind of contract can a human and beast come into is a same fate contract. Different from master-slave contract, once the other party died, the same fate contract will let the other party lives and automatically the contract will end. But humans are against this contract with the reason of, once the other party died. Their stage of cultivation will decline by one or two stages. This is different from ancient and divine beasts. They can only enter a same fate contract unlike ordinary spiritual beasts. This same fate contract entering with ancient and divine beast is also special with the reason of, when the ancient beast died, the human's cultivation wouldn't be affected vice versa. Also when the human dies before the beast, the ancient and divine beast have an option to retain the same fate contract. Once the ancient and divine beast decided to retain the contract, the cultivator's soul can be saved and reborn in the same world. The ancient and divine beasts have this privilege because they are ancient and divine beast. Ancient beasts are the first ever beast existed in the world that learns to cultivate and contributed a lot with the war of gods against demons. The heaven then bless ancient beasts next generation to be higher than the ordinary spiritual beast. Once born, 
they descend from heaven and inherit the power of their ancestors. The ancient beast with the greatest contribution in War of Gods and Demons are the Black Warrior of the North with Water Element, Azure Dragon of the East with Wood Element, Vermilion Bird of the South with Fire Element, White Tiger of the West with Metal Element, and Yellow Dragon of the Center with Earth Element. The ancient beast about to be born here six months later was unknown, we'll only know once it descend from the heaven. In ancient times, cultivators can control fire, earth, water, metal, and wood, and so with the ancient beast, these elements correlated to one another, in the cycle of creation, wood feeds fire, fire creates earth, ash, earth bears metal, metal collects water, water nourishes wood, in the cycle of destruction, wood parts earth, earth absorbs water, water extinguishes fire, fire melts metal, metal chops wood, generation comes and go, cultivators able to control fire, earth, water, wind, earth, light, and darkness. After the war broke, centuries passed. The five elements that cultivators can control changed into seven elements. As for the reason of this changes, makes Yang haven't yet unlocked this part of the library. Ancient beasts are rare and for us to have a chance to witness this phenomenon. We have to grab the opportunity to contract it. Xi'an Jishifad nods stiffly. You are too weak for you to be able to tame those strong and arrogant spiritual beasts, you have to conquer them first. Thus, ancient beast is the best partner for you. Still seeing Xianjia's unsure face, Mei Xiang didn't think too much and continue her discussion about the divine beasts. They are the pets of the gods so compared to ancient beasts, divine beasts are much stronger, naturally. If they wanted to contract a human, that is only by same fate contract. Now, we are out here so I can show you how to tame a beast. While discussing the particularity of beast taming, makes Yang lead the way to the nearest beast on the site. A snow rain fox came into sight. When makes Yang saw this scene, she can't help but raise her right eyebrow. They only traveled for four days so they are still at the outer part of the forest. The beast with the highest cultivation they encounter so far is in third stage. This snow rain fox they are seeing is on its seventh stage of cultivation. Makes Yang got more interested when she saw what the snow rain fox was holding. Stay here, she ordered Xian Zhi. Makes Yang hides her breath so the beast can't detect her presence. The snow rain fox and Makes Yang's cultivation have a big gap, but Makes Yang can control six element and possess Du Qi. Although her highest cultivation is in fifth stage of Du Qi, too low compared to the snow rain fox's seventh stage, Makes Yang didn't decide to enter the white forest unprepared. She transfer her duchi to her feet and combining with wind element, she run to the snow white fox's side in an incredible speed. The small white beast who is busy in looking at the metal in his hand was too late to feel the presence of Meixiang. Once he felt the other party's presence, it able to put out ice spikes toward Meixiang only to be melted by Meixiang's fire. Meixiang grabbed the beast's small body. The snow white fox was about to make its second attack using water magic when it noticed the thunder attribute of Meixiang. He stopped fighting back not because of the thunder element of Meixiang which is a lot weaker than his element but because he can feel the danger with Meixiang's presence. This little girl is not only fire magician but also a thunder magician. Although still weak, his always right instinct can say this little girl isn't this simple. He then just noticed that the hand grasping his small body have Duchi. It squinted its eyes toward Meixiang. Calculating of his next move, without no choice, the snow rain fox suddenly cried like calling for a help. Meixiang just chuckled seeing this show. She looked at Xianji and signal him to come over while the snow rain fox was loudly crying for help. Xianji walks toward Meixiang who is holding the small white animal on her right hand. He hesitantly look at Meixiang and to the beast who is crying loudly for help. Meixiang calmly said, snow rain fox, they are born as fifth stage water element and can only produce ice when they reach seventh stage, this snow rain fox is a seventh stage middle level beast, snow rain foxes are well known for being clever and cunning, just like now, this little creature was pretending to call for a rescue like someone of its kind will come, the snow rain fox, after hearing Meixiang, stops crying for help, when realize he was found out, he then tried to use another strategy and look pitiful at Meixiang. 
makes Yang just smirk. Snow Rain foxes are sly creatures. They work alone and even despise their own kind, least calling them for help. This fox have not yet contracted with someone else. Good opportunity to practice your beast taming. Xianjia was about to confirm what Mei Xiang said but swallowed this question. Yeah, he didn't mishear it. Their young miss really wanted to perform the ancient beast taming technique that she just introduced to him five minutes ago. Mei Xiang turned the fox's body to face Xianjia. Now, connect your mental power to him. Look at its eyes and draw your mental power towards his. Xianjia swallowed his hesitation and do what as he was told to. Draw the totem I showed you earlier using your mental power. Once the spell shines, you can withdraw your mental power. Xianjia's forehead was in sweat. Her young miss instruction is quite simple but that's not the case. The snow rain fox's mental power wanted to damage Xianjia's mental power at first but under the glare of a certain someone, he just let the little boy do his thing. But because of Xianjia's first time doing this, even without the disturbance of the white rain fox, he still find drawing the totem with his mental power hard. After the light appeared on the totem indicating its success, Xianjia withdraw his mental power. His mental power was exhausted thus his physical body follows. He caught his breath. His forehead was soaked with sweat while he tried to stabilize his breath. When the snow rain fox tried to get off Mei Xiang's grasp and run towards Xianjia, Mei Xiang let go of it. The snow white fox jumped towards Xianjia's embrace and act coquettishly. Xianjia who still gasping was surprised with this but still open his arms to accept the small white fur. Mei Xiang raised her right eyebrow with this scene. She ignores it for a while and look at her brother Ji's condition. When she made sure he is in good condition, she just nodded. How does it feel? I, it is good. I just feel exhausted. You must know that without my assistance, your mental power may be damaged by that little beast. Your mental power is good but that fox didn't reach its seventh stage for nothing. You are still in third stage of being a martial artist. Both cultivation and mental power, that fox is superior than you. Now even with the help of ancient beast, you can't make sure taming a beast will be successful. The ancient beast will only help you capture the beast. The beast taming process will depend with the mental power of the beast tamer. Drawing the totem with your mental strength is the most crucial point of beast taming. Once disturbed in the middle, you can damage your mental power and cultivation. Now let's talk about mental power. Summoners are chosen to be summoners because their mental power is high at the age of 10. Beast tamers on the other hand also requires a high mental power but not as high as the summoners. Do you see the similarity of the two? Summoners can temporarily contract phantom creatures while beast tamers can have this temporary contract with spiritual beast. Both profession needs a high level of mental power. At ancient times. People can only contract a single beast regardless of how many elements they can drive. Humans are greedy and curious in nature. Aside from summoners who can contract the spiritual beast and another type of creatures which are known as phantom creatures today, no one else can contract beasts more than once. They then try to research about summoners and their similarities. They then discover that key to this question is their mental power. They then tried any means to have a temporary contract with spiritual beasts with this mental power. This is the creation of the profession of beast taming. Mental power is not the measurement of intelligence but the ability to think clearly and put all parts of a problem together. It was strengthened by enriching your experiences. I can say your mental strength is high and can tame a fifth stage beast with your own ability but the dream I wanted you to reach is far behind from this. While we're inside this forest. Strengthen your cultivation and mental power. I will give you books of all the information of all the beasts existing in this realm and all things you need to know about them. In order to subdue them, you have to know them first. Just like your ignorance with the snow white fox, Xianji's hand, who is lightly patting the small white animal's head, frozen. I just said earlier that this beast is clever and cunning. The moment it feels my immunity towards its pitiful act then he surrendered his mental strength easily to you and now act coquettishly like it's an harmless little thing. The snow rain fox look at Xianji's eyes and shook his head like he's being wrongly accused. Xianji just sigh with this. Of course he believes his young miss words but he can't help to pat the little fox's white fur. Make Xiang ignores this scene when she remember the thing on the fox's possession. An evil smile appeared on Mei Xiang's beautiful face as she looked at the little white fur with her greedy eyes. Now now, 
Let's go back to the real business. Make Xiang look at the terrified eyes of the little fox. Now bring that thing to me. The little fox acts dumb. Make Xiang put out a small ball of thunder from her hand. The little fox raise his head and look at Xiang and act like he's being bullied. 3 2 Let me say the last number and we'll have a snow rain fox for dinner. As fast as anything else, the fox gave up the sweat of his months of hard work to make Xiang and jump back to Xiang's embrace, shivering of fear. He wanted that a lot but he wanted his life more okay. A.N. The reads, votes, and adding this to your reading lists are well appreciated. 21. Black Mayan Stone When they arrived at the camp, Old Leng and Pingle who is guarding the site saw this. The two walks toward them and gave a respect bow to Make Xiang. Make Xiang nodded to recognize them. Gather everyone, we'll have an important meeting today. Make Xiang wave her hand and pile books appeared on her side. Brother Jin, bring these first to your tent while waiting for everyone. I'll accommodate the snow rain fox first. The snow rain fox look up to Xiang's eyes shaking his head continuously pleading to bring him with him. Make Xiang grabs the little white fox's body carelessly. Brother Jin, brother Old Leng, I'll have my leave first. Xiangji nodded blankly looking at the back of their young miss who was holding his first tamed beast with only one hand like she's going to slaughter it. Old Leng and Pingle who barely understood the situation tap Xiangji's shoulder and take a leave to do what they are told to. Old Leng with Tan Ling and Bei Aizihan saw Xiangji who just got out from his tent. Brother Ji Old Leng said you went back with a little white beast with you. Is that your contract beast? Xianjie cough uncomfortably. Bei Aizahan who heard this from the sideline retorted, Dumb little Ling, you know the ancient beast will be Brother Ji's contract beast. Xianjie cough louder with a lot of discomfort. I'm asking so if Brother Ji already contracted it. I'll contract the little Wang. Old oh, Leng and Bei Aizahan can't help but twitch their mouths. Did he just name the unborn ancient beast king just adding the word little? Oh yeah let's not forget Madame Tan naming her two powerful kitchen assistants after her sons just adding word Xiao. Too similar, too similar. When the four entered the main tent, everyone already took their seats. They greet everyone and took their own seats. In the middle of the round table, a little white fox excitedly looked at Xiang he wanted to hop to his embrace but abolish this idea when he sees Mei Xiang's faint scary smile. Brother Ji, is that the beast Old Leng mentioned? Little Little seems excited to see you. Old Leng and Bei Aizahan still heard this whisper from Tan Ling. They both look at Madame Tan. She didn't name that little white fur Xiao Xiao right? When Mei Xiang saw everyone was already settled, just like what she always do, she hit the very point of the meeting. We'll settle our camp here for the time being. No one objected nor doubted their young miss. Mei Xiang was satisfied with this response. She then looked at Tan Ling and asked, Brother Ling, how long will you take to finish all the second stage prescription? Little Xiang, this brother is amazing. I already read every prescriptions and will only scan them for the coming days. Mei Xiang nodded. Good. Then we'll settle our camp here for the time being until Brother Ling can concoct a grade 2 elixir. But little Xiang, what if it will take long? I have a good eye for a talent, right? I believe with Brother Ling, Tan Ling's eyebrow twitch. Did little Xiang just use my arrogant words to her advantage? Staying here is purely not because of this matter, it also because of this. Mei Xiang then pulled out a black stone and put it on the table. Out of my expectation, the white forest is more chaotic than expected. When we will continue our journey and let Brother Ling concoct at a dangerous environment, Brother Ling's expected breakthrough may be delayed. For an heavenly doctor to be able to break through, he must concoct an at least grade F elixir. Concocting pills is a critical moment not to be disturbed by any external forces. This is for the reason why heavenly doctors are usually accompanied by powerful cultivators or beasts. This is to protect them from external factors while heavenly doctor is performing healing or concocting pills. Heavenly doctors on their first to third stage. They are called healer and can only use purely their fire to concoct elixirs. Heavenly doctors on their fourth to sixth stage are called pharmacist. They can already use refining furnace to concoct higher level of medicines and elixirs. Once reach seventh stage, they are no longer called heavenly doctors or pharmacist but alchemist. Alchemist used to refine their elixirs using cauldron, the higher level of refining furnace. Heavenly doctors, pharmacists, or alchemists are air. They have to cultivate their fire magic to be able to break through. 
Not only the fire magic but they also have to learn prescriptions and concoct an elixir successfully to be able to reach another stage. Fortunately to Tan Ling, he no longer needed to cultivate in order to break through but also makes Yang prescribe him herbs to remove the impurities of his body that increases his learning ability. But this doesn't make him different from other heavenly doctors. Tan Ling must focus on concocting an elixir without the concern of danger. Now let's discuss this object first. Mei Xiang swept her gaze to the little white fur who is happily drinking spiritual water. This was called black Mayan metal. It is one of the highest grade of metal used in making scepters and weapons. It also contains high spiritual energy of heaven and earth. This metal is the cause of the major danger inside the white forest. The snow white fox stole this to a group of men who is mining at the west part of the forest. This group's cultivation is with the highest of eighth grade and the lowest of third grade. Xiang er, uh, this must be related to the group of men that Big Guy mentioned. What Uncle Tan said was the burly man who tried to stop them in entering the White Forest. Mei Xiang nodded. It must be, Uncle. The group was mining for half a year. The people of Viandin Pavilion was either their aid or otherwise. Everyone nodded. If they aren't sent to assist then that means these people from Viandin Pavilion are here to take over those resources. The latter is the worst case. If the information reach outsiders then that means the information about the spiritual metal was leaked already. It also means immense danger this coming days inside the white forest. Now, for the next few days, all of you must stay inside the camp. Cultivate, brother, lead and protect the group while I'm not here. Xiang, er, uh, you, where are you going? You, you're not planning to go there, are you? Mei Xiang just smiled. Auntie need not to worry. Mei Xiang is stronger than what you see. Auntie tried to smile. Then, then Auntie will cook a lot so Xiang Er wouldn't get hungry on her journey. Mei Xiang smiled more, thanking Auntie. Now, let's settle our plan here. I'm expecting to be out for half a month at least. Auntie, is our water supply enough for the whole duration? Enough, enough. Mei Xiang look at the little white fur who already had three cups of spiritual water. I will give more to be certain. Brother Ji, aside from cultivation, read the books I gave you. Brother Ling, work harder for your breakthrough. The rest, cultivate. No combat training for now on. Use all the puppets to help brother in protecting the camp aside from auntie's assistance. Mei Xiang slowly turn her head to Tan Ling. I didn't say anything. I'm not thinking anything. I didn't say anything either. Mei Xiang swept her eyes to the little white fur, and about you. Aside from not to consume our water supply completely, don't mess around, brother Ji. You are too soft-hearted. Don't get fooled with it, brother. Kill if it mess around. Don't forget the beast core. Auntie, you must already know the best way to cook a spiritual beast. Consider a spiritual fox. The little white fur who long gone stopped drinking almost choked with their next conversation. Ping Chunhua also added, Xiang Xiang loves beautiful things. Older brother must not destroy its fur when he killed it. Mei Xiang nodded seriously agreeing with Ping Chunhua. She really didn't think of it. Although the snow white fox is small, its fur is too white and soft. A hand towel is a good product out of it. An, I'm not a Chinese. Don't hate me for messing the Yuxia world. And Uk I just demoted Tan Ling from second stage heavenly doctor to stage one. He wouldn't call me little bad wolf, right? 22. Go go. Mei Xiang get inside the sacred book. The first view came into her sight was her uncle Shi Jinhai busy reading a new novel book. Again, the reason behind this unbelievable sight is that Shi Jinhai got tired of educational books. He's writing for the team. Somehow he tried to read literature books from different worlds after reading his clan's history. He tried to read a novel and got hooked with the stories and even got more fascinated after learning different development of civilization in different worlds. Mei Xiang who let her uncle have a peaceful time for the time being went outside the library and go to the mini phantom world only to find out Mei Mai isn't back yet. At the phantom world, almost a week had passed since Strawberry went back to the phantom world when they saw the small girl whom they have not seen for the past six months. The whole phantom world was in uproar. Not only the small girl is still existing but she seems got stronger. Is it really Strawberry? How could she be this strong after leaving for six months? But when they saw the green dot at the middle of her eyebrow, everyone was in turmoil once again. Yes, she was contracted by a human. 
Their eyes are full of hostility but they didn't say a single word, they can only curse mentally. Contracting with humans is not prohibited by their laws, there is just this unspoken rule to them because humans are simply weak, they can only complain silently. The little girl in pink also didn't talk. She calmly walks towards the direction of her apartment but was tripled by a small stone. She calmly stood up and continue walking calmly. Everyone's eyebrow which She's the real plant phantom strawberry okay, who can imitate this clumsiness and can maintain this cute poker face and calm demeanor at the same time. No one, okay, no one. Everyone was in daze at the petite back of the little girl. Everyone is speculating of what may happen to strawberry outside the phantom world. Did that summon a little girl lives at the world with higher spirituality than their world? But the phantom plants can testify when they saw the little girl at the other side of the summoner's portal. They can feel that the little girl is from lower realm. Then what mystery is this? The leader of the plants, weapons, and beasts had an emergency meeting that very day. A week later, Strawberry who is still the topic of the whole phantom world is working hard to earn money so she can buy an interspatial ring. The interspatial ring of other realms is different from the interspatial ring of the phantom world. It is with the same function but only phantom creatures interspatial ring can allow them get things out of the phantom world to other realm. By earning money and by an interspatial ring, it will allow Strawberry pack her things and live at that place full of spiritual energy. She is now planning to stay inside the sacred book. In that case, she can save a lot of money and can absorb spiritual energy even without working. The little girl Strawberry is seriously organizing the papers of the new phantoms when a portal appeared in front of her. She then raised her hand to respond to Mexiang's sudden call. Her small body then entered the portal and in just a second she appeared in front of Mexiang. May I my, you seem busy, I'm working so I can buy an interspatial ring. So you want to stay here for good? Yes, then work hard, do you want to bring water from the fountain to sell? No need. Okay. Oh I'm planning to contract another phantom plant today. When are you free? I'm free now. Then have a time to push the best candidate to accompany you here. Yes. Shi Jinhai who can hear the little girl and the very little girl's casual conversation is already numb for the past six months. Being locked with these two girls inside the sacred book, he can only retain his sane reading novels from different worlds. The casual conversation ended fast and Strawberry went back to the phantom world. When Strawberry went out of her workplace, a little boy who is taller than her of one inch is happily running towards her direction, Big Sister Strawberry, Big Sister Strawberry, the little boy in red stops two steps away from her as he extended his small hands toward her. Strawberry didn't hesitate at all and get the coins in the little boy's little hands. Since Strawberry went back to the phantom world, she started to work for money and the little boy also helps her to earn money without knowing and asking the reason. Strawberry already took her first step but suddenly stops. She raises her head a little to look at the little boy's face. Scanning every details about the little boy, her little hands grab the little boy's little hand and the two disappeared of thin air. They again appeared at the plaza together with all the phantom plants. In front of them is a green portal with the image of Mexiang calmly sitting at a seat inside a room full of books. Before everyone can recover and curse at Mexiang's image at the other side of the portal, Strawberry already pushed the little boy to the green portal. The green portal suddenly closed leaving a small green light floating in the air. They all look at the small green light then turn all their eyes at Strawberry's leaving back. On the other side of the portal, the little boy, who was just pushed by his most trusted big sister Strawberry, is now staring back at Mexiang's gaze. Mexiang nodded with satisfaction. She likes three things in the world and all these are satisfied by the little boy. Third, strong. This is natural to a phantom creature. Second, aesthetics. This cuteness overlies satisfied Mexiang's eyes. First and of course the most important, delicious food. This little boy is apple, with his green hair, pale skin, and red candy apple colored attire. His identity isn't questionable. His big doe eyes are misty staring at Mexiang. The little boy was obviously restraining himself from crying as much as Mexiang restraining herself to poke the little boy's bulging cheeks. Your name is Apple? No response. Mm, strawberry told me about you. The little boy's pale face suddenly looked at Mexiang and asked hesitantly, B. Big Sister Strawberry? Shi Jinhai who is long gone reading novels, who is observing from the sideline how Dan Fairhan's daughter do her modus operandi, 
he can't help but sigh. This scene is too familiar okay. Ten years ago, a certain little girl coax a poor young master of a powerful clan and bind him with a contract. Shi Jinhai once again sigh and no longer pay attention at Meixiang's Xiang's business. After completely coaxing the little apple, Make Xiang show him the way to the small phantom world. Thus, with the help of the sacred book, Make Xiang successfully contracted another cute phantom plant. After contracting the little apple completely, a green dot also appeared between his eyebrow and a ring appeared on Make Xiang's index finger, just like what she did to the contract ring of strawberry. Make Xiang hides it and replaces it with interspatial ring to hide the mark of summoner on her index finger. Make Xiang was full of smiles this time. A summoner can only contract one phantom creature in a span of six months. Contracting strawberry and apple satisfies Meixiang. Although these two are not her target phantom plant to completely remove her brother's poison, she is not in rush. She still needs to reach a ninth level heavenly doctor alchemist to concoct that elixir. Contracting that phantom plant wouldn't be hard with the help of the sacred book. Go go. Older sister Make Xiang will leave first. You go rest here for now and wait for me. A milky voice of a young boy replied, Yes, older sister. Oh, older sister, I, I saw older sister strawberries seeds planted here. W, would older sister also allow my seeds planted here? Yes of course. That would even better. Make Xiang bids her farewell poking the bulging cheeks of Gogo -Go for the last time before she came back to the library. When she saw Shi Jinhai, she greets him respectfully and discuss the matter regarding the Black Mayan metal. You are planning to take the Black Mayan only by yourself? Make Xiang didn't answer but her eyes reflects her unwavering thoughts. Shi Jinhai is familiar with this little girl more than anyone else protecting her at the dark for the past 10 years and even get to know her more this past 6 months. This little girl wouldn't bet if she's not confident to win. Although she have two powerful phantom creatures and him, a commander level beast, she would always consider them as her last resort. She isn't dumb nor impulsive, it means she is really confident to win the black mine alone with her own ability. Shi Jinhai agreed and Make Xiang nodded like she already expected her uncle's answer. That night, the whole white forest seems in peace, but at the very west part of the forest, Strong forces are coming one after another. A N Apple equals Pingo greater than Gogo. -go. 23. Familiar. The next day, Make Xiang departed early in the morning. Make Xiang used her journey from east part to the west part of the White Forest to increase her stamina, endurance, speed, and agility. Of course, between her journey she didn't forget to earn money. She will kill every spiritual beast's shield spot at night. She will climb on the top of a tree and enter the sacred book to cultivate and sleep. Only in a week, Meixiang Xiang arrived at the west part of the forest. She got more vigilant and careful of her action. With the help of techniques available in the sacred book she can only hide her real cultivation and see the cultivator's current level of cultivation but she can't detect a cultivator's presence higher than her. Because Meixiang Xiang was sure strong cultivators will appear inside the white forest. She needs to be careful. The reason why Make Xiang is certain with this fact was all because the information accumulated from the burly man they encounter at the entrance of the forest, and from the Snow White Fox. Snow White Fox said he stole it with a group of people with highest cultivation of 8th grade mining at the west part of the forest. Entering the east part of the forest the burly man said he saw a group of people Tom Vian Din Pavilion entered the forest with highest cultivation of 9th grade. There are a lot of facts that can gather here. First, the people mining at the west isn't with the people of the Viandin Pavilion who entered the east part of the forest. Second, Viandin Pavilion's goal is the Black Mayan Metal sending a ninth grade cultivator and entering the east part it means they are planning to ambush the group from the west. Third, even Make Xiang wouldn't use her ability to check the burly man's cultivator. She can easily guess his cultivator is no lower than the ninth grade. The burly man and the man with him can see a ninth grade cultivation means their cultivation is no lower than a ninth grade. Having this strength, they will surely follow the people from Viandin Pavilion. With these facts, Make Xiang already assumed the probability of leaking the information about Black Mayan metal to the powerful figures from the central. They must be currently at the west part of the White Forest. True to Make Xiang's assumption. Strong cultivators are now lurking at the west part of the forest, the same true to the burly man and his companion now observing a cave from afar, 
There are 15 Earth Magician inside the cave, one of them is only on his fourth stage while the rest are only on their third stage. The other five are also cultivators with unknown ability. Two are on their fifth stage, another one is on sixth stage and the last two are both on their eighth stage. This group of cultivators have unrecognizable symbols, we don't know yet their organization or can't even tell if they are from Central. The other groups arrived are their finer guild, Viandin Pavilion, Ryu Mercenary and Queen Mercenary from the Central. These groups doesn't have a movement yet. The burly man stated all the information he acquired. The thin man just nodded boredly while leaning against the trunk of the tree sitting on the branches too lazy to talk. It must be to confirm the identity of the people in the cave first. The burly man added. Knowing the identity of these people is a must. Offending this group without knowing their background would put them in an uncertain position. What about us? Are we going to wait or leave? Wait. This tedious days shouldn't put in vain. Central is getting boring lately. This would be fun. The burly man just sigh and helplessly nodded. They just completed their mission inside the white forest. When they saw the group of people from Viandin Pavilion. Sensing the importance of the matter, they followed the group and found out everything about the black Mayan metal. Mei Xiang who is a 5th stage peak level martial artist with a sharp 5 senses eavesdropping the conversation of the two slowly nodded continuously learning all the information in one go. Because she can hide her cultivation to cultivators even higher than her, naturally she can also hide her presence to them. What she can't do is to detect the stronger cultivator's presence, hence, she hides her breath and spy the whole west part of the forest. This is until she finds out the other party's locations and so with the burly man and his companion. Knowing all the information of the people from the central, she now observes the group mining inside the cave. Once a day, a man seems on his early twenties wearing all white will exit the cave and seems sending a message in a weird way that makes Yang didn't recognize even possessing the sacred book. This teen and his action is the main reason why these powerful people from central wouldn't attack the cave. First. The man is only in his early twenties but already an eighth stage practitioner, they will firstly assume the man is cultivated by a powerful family. Second, the white robe he wears is with unrecognizable symbol. Third, the unrecognizable ritual the young man is performing seems he's sending a message to someone else. Aside from this young man, no one inside the cave makes Yang saw with her own eyes but she indeed can feel the presence of these practitioners. Third day in a row seeing the same sight from the young man, makes Yang observing from the sideline already confirm the identity of the men inside the cave, makes Yang entering the sacred book, she discuss with Shi Jinhai, Bei I Bei I, and Mei I Mei I, who came back two days ago from the phantom world, the complications of the matter. When Shi Jinhai heard their presence is needed, he can't help but feel complicated, did he read the little girl wrongly? He thought this little girl is too independent and would always put them as her last resort. Seeing the complicated gaze of her uncle Jinhai she then explained calmly, there are powerful organization eyeing this group. Uncle and May I May I's presence are just to restrain them from acting, it's with a low chance they will attack us, no. These people are not dumb. Shi Jinhai sighed and just nodded, Mei Xiang then continued discussing her plans to them, the next day. The powerful organizations from the central observing from the shadow are now baffled by the presence of a little man in white wearing a white mask covering only his eyes and nose followed by a man in black already in commander stage and a young little girl also in white hanfu. They can't feel a fluctuation of chi of young man wearing white mask and the young little girl but they are certain the man following them is with higher than a ninth stage practitioner. Seeing the man being respectful to the young man wearing mask. They can't help but frown, it means this young man in white mask is with identity, also with the young little girl standing one step away on the right side of the young man wearing white mask, it means the little girl have higher position than the ninth stage practitioner. This setup is too questionable. The young man wearing white mask stopped on his track and look at the exact directions where the Viandin Pavilion, Ryu Mercenary, Queen Mercenary and refiner guild so with the burly man's hiding spots, his thin lips arched and a mocking smile appeared. The group observing from the dark can't help but frown, the others hold their breaths. While others are with mixed emotions, the companion of the burly man can't help but curl his eyebrow. This young man in white mask seems familiar, this aura he brought seems too familiar, 
too familiar that he took a glimpse of the image of that little girl's thin pinky lips he only saw twice. 24. No return phantoms. After Makes Yang provoke them, she calmly turned her head and took her steps toward the entrance of the cave. The young man also in white robes exited the cave. When he saw the other party's identity, he was frozen to the ground until he heard Mei Xiang's low voice, The shadow is a fiend, we will seek light. The young man in white frown not understanding Mei Xiang's words until Mun Shijinhai state the same words one after another, The shadow is a fiend, we will seek light, the shadow is a fiend, we will seek light. When he understood what the other party is trying to do, he followed suit, The shadow is a fiend, we will seek light. This slave is thankful the main branch responded to the message this slave sent. This slave welcomes the leader. Mei Xiang nodded satisfied the young man is not dumb at all. Although the resources you discovered is not that outstanding, we can still use it to improve the outer disciples' cultivation. The young man didn't respond more and guide Mei Xiang and the others to enter the cave. They then entered the cave leaving the people in shadows dumbfounded at what they have just witnessed. To be honest. They are not sure of what they have just seen, they doubted more at what is the identity of the young man wearing mask. This is the result Mei Xiang wanted to receive from the powerful figures lurking in the shadows. These powerful people from the central are smart and careful enough not to attack the people inside the cave without knowing their identity. Now, they would be more careful of their action after what they have just witnessed. First, Mei Xiang intimidated the viewers' cultivation with Shi Jinhai's commander level strength. Second, she wanted them to doubt her and them's real strength. She hides her cultivation while they can't feel them's fluctuation of qi simply because she is a phantom creature. Shi Jinhai, a commander level cultivator as a mere follower of a little boy without fluctuation of qi would make them doubt her and them's identity and strength. Third, Mei Xiang simply fabricate a statement that looks like it's a code of their fake organization. Lastly, the exchanges of Mei Xiang and the young man strengthen their assumption that their fabricated organization is indeed a powerful one. Black Mayan metal to just simply give to their outer disciples is not an ability of an unnamed organization right? While the powerful figures outside the cave are questioning their strength. Mei Xiang is satisfied to the view she is seeing. She is checking out the enormous resources of black Mayan metal and different kinds of crystals. With this unending resources, they will no longer be considered poor when they arrive at the capital right? Shi Jinhai who is seeing the faces of the other parties frowning faces towards Mei Xiang, he coughed loudly to pull Mei Xiang to her every. Mei Xiang nodded too satisfied and look at the young man in white and his party. 15 Black Dian Gophers, Stage 3 Spiritual Beasts, their leader is now on his fourth stage while the rest are still on their third stage of cultivation. This is the information in line with the people outside the cave sense but only they are not people but spiritual beasts. Mei Xiang did have this suspicion even before entering the cave. The other five cultivators are with unique identities. They are called unsummoned back phantoms or no return phantoms. Phantom creatures once summoned outside the phantom world, only summoners can close and open the portal for them. Once the summoner dies without sending back the phantom creature, they can only stay at that realm. Phantom weapon will become an artifact weapon. Phantom beast will become a spiritual beast. Phantom plant will remain to its human state and become a cultivator. Once they are disconnected to the phantom world, their cultivation will be the same as the cultivators in that realm and can only cultivate from the start. Because Mei Xiang knows all of these information, she is with idea of the five unsummoned creatures' identities. This little girl is called Mei Xiang. This little Mei Xiang greets the benefactor of this realm. Two are phantom weapons. Their strength is in par with fifth and sixth stage practitioner. One phantom beast now on his eighth stage cultivation. And the last two are phantom plants. The young boy is on his fifth stage and the young man that was going out of the cave from time to time before is on his eighth stage of cultivation. Because unsummoned phantoms needs an abundant spirituality to improve their cultivation that this realm lacks, seeing their level of cultivation that was only earned in a long span of time, Mei Xiang is confident these phantoms participated at the war happened long ago. These phantoms hearing the greetings of Mei Xiang, they can't help but get shocked. Mei Xiang summoned Bei Ai Bei Ai who hurriedly stand at the side of Mu hiding at the back of Mei Xiang when he sees the other party, the phantom plant that is in his little boy appearance step forward calmly walks toward Mei Xiang, 
The little girl must have something on her possession to wave to phantom plants interest. This little makes Yang indeed have this kind of possession. With this, makes Yang wanted to have a consensual arrangement with the seniors. The phantom beasts nodded. Lowly humans, now you know we are now weak, you wanted to steal our resources? Even after you know we somehow helped to retain the existence of this realm you still wanted our resources. Ungrateful lowly human. Mei Xiang just smiled and calmly stated, "That is the reason little Mei Xiang said and consents you will arrangement. Little Mei Xiang is grateful of the seniors, but this lowly human is not with responsibility to give back what this world owes to the seniors. Rest assured, hearing Mei Xiang's proposal would not put the seniors' wasted time in vain. If not agreed, we can all die here in the hands of those people outside. Your group must already know their existence. That is the reason of the show you put off in the past few days." The Black Dian Gophers and the four other phantoms look at the phantom little boy who stands as the leader of their team. The little boy nodded. Mei Xiang stated once, then Senior must wanted to see little Mei Xiang's possession first. The little boy once again nodded. Mei Xiang would appreciate if Senior's company would be instructed first. The little boy understood. He then warned his companions. No one will act rashly. Mei Xiang smiled and waved her hand to summon the little boy inside the sacred book. The phantom beast squinted his eyes and his fangs are showing. He is angrily looking at Mei Xiang. The young man is calmer and tried to calm the phantom beast. Go go seeing this scene. His cute face frowned and pulled the hem of Mei Xiang's sleeve. Bis sister, I don't like that boy. Big system should also not like sharing with him. Mei Xiang just helplessly smiled and pat Go Go's small head. Our resources are abundant. It is enough for all of you. Gogo -go must not worried. Gogo's small cute face make a complicated face. But, but what if big system will be irritated with their presence? Make Xiang understood what's with Gogo's reaction. Mm, who is with Loek just calmly stated. I wouldn't mind. Make Xiang just chuckled and weakly patted the two little heads. She then turned her head towards the other party and summoned back the little boy. When the little boy appeared, his face is still calm but his eyes are no longer gloomy. He raised his head and looked at Make Xiang and said state your arrangement. Make Xiang smiled looking at the unending resources inside the cave. Make Xiang wanted all this resources. In exchange, seniors and your companions are to be covered by this little Make Xiang. The two phantom weapons can't verbally state their emotions, but the pressure they are releasing is obvious of disagreement with Mei Xiang's words. The phantom beast and the young man also frown with Mei Xiang's words, but these reactions are only ignored by the little boy who agreed in just a second after Mei Xiang stated her proposal. Mei Xiang smiled. Go go frown. Mm, didn't care at all and so with Shi Hai, the little boy's companions wanted to speak but knowing their leader's ability. They can only get curious of what did the little girl show to him to surrender the abundant resources of spirituality they just found out a year ago. The little boy instructed his team to prepare all the resources while he's having a conversation with Mei Xiang. Mei Xiang then know how the group have been through. After the war, the summoners summoned them died. They barely survived. The little boy is named Lotus. When the war ended. He started to look for survivors and brought two unsummoned phantom weapons from the battlefield. The sword phantom is named Gwen while the bow phantom is named Yuk Xion. A year later, they cross path with unsummoned phantoms like them named Kiwi and Huang Ai. Kiwi is a phantom plant while Huang Ai is a phantom beast with a body of an jaguar and his teeth are made of the highest quality of jade that had never existed in this realm. The war happened in the higher realm naturally they are from higher realm and only traveled here to the lower realm. The reason behind this is danger brought by the abundant chi in the higher realm. Although they indeed need abundant resources to cultivate, it also put them into danger as they are still weak at that time. They then decided to travel to lower realm and continue their cultivation. Because a phantom creature is with different body constitution. Their cultivation is much slower to ordinary cultivators so even after thousands of years they only reach this level of cultivation. Only last year, they accidentally found this hidden place with enormous resources. They work with it and after 8 months they unlock the place. Unlocking this place is also with the help of the group of the Black Dian Gophers who are now part of their team. 3 days passed and the resources are now all ready. Mei Xiang then hide the spiritual metals and crystals inside the sacred book. She then next look at the phantoms and the group of Black Dian Gophers. The group's outside is undoubtedly persistent. 
The group of No Return Phantoms are not worried at all with the party outside as they all know a single phantom creature on its peak strength can take care of them. Makes Yang although knows Mu can take care of those people alone, she don't want it to kill them here least now, they are here to train inside the White Forest for half a year. If the people from Central didn't go back from their mission here, others would naturally follow that would put the situation uncontrolled. Hua Hua need not to worry, Tao Tao, Gueng, Yuxian, Huang Ai, and the Black Dian go for family just need to relax inside the sacred book. Gogo -Go will take them for a tour. Right Gogo? -Go? Gogo -Go pouted looking at the little boy Lotus who is the same height as his and to make Xiang's face again. Gogo -Go nodded against his will. Make Xiang smiled petting Gogo. -Go. After a while she summoned them inside the sacred book leaving her, M and Shi Jinhai inside the now empty cave. Make Xiang wears the white mask and then nodded to M and to Shi Jinhai. The three of them exited the cave walking in the same setup when they entered the cave. Make Xiang followed by M on her right side and Shi Jinhai on her left. The three of them stopped walking when a group of men on their armor walks toward them. Leading this team are three magicians and two martial artists. Make Xiang is not surprised with their presence. The majority of the group of men are lower than sixth stage naturally she already felt their presence. She only knew the other cultivator's presence when her uncle Shi Jinhai informed her. So seeing this group doesn't surprise her at all. These human sacrifices were also used by them for their advantage. Looking at the symbol of Y Kingdom, makes Yang can't help but curve her lips. Of course one of the group from Capital informed the Y Kingdom to test the water first. They should not disappoint their viewers right? The man who seems on his late forties step forward and stare at Make Yang's eyes smiling slyly. The Y royalty received a news of the resources inside the White Forest under the jurisdiction of the Y Kingdom. Seeing the other party getting out where the resources are hidden, under the power of the Y royalties. This commander-in-chief wanted to invite the young master to the palace. Shi Jinhai released a pressure towards the soldiers from the Y Kingdom. The pressure released by him affects even the five leaders but they still supported themselves while the other soldiers with low cultivation almost kneeled to the ground. The man who stepped forward still retain his smile. A pressure of a commander level is indeed not to be ignored. A pity the Y Kingdom is not to be trifled. A 5-9 level cultivators fighting against a single commander level. I'm afraid the result wouldn't favor the young master's side. When they received the news about the black Mayan metal, they are also warned about a cultivator higher than a ninth stage practitioner. That is the reason the Y royalties call out almost all the ninth stage cultivators of the kingdom and sent them to the location in the letter. When Shi Jinhai released his pressure, they confirmed his level of cultivation. Make Xiang chuckled when he heard the man's words. She leisurely waved her hand. Shi Jinhai then stopped releasing a pressure. Make Xiang spoke. You are still weak. Once you reach a higher cultivation you can be trained by this young master personally. The men sent by the Y royalties who heard this almost choke. What weak? Who's weak? Those words are not coming from a young man without cultivation right? The cultivators hiding in the shadows observing from the sideline gulp. They will also find the young man's words unbelievable but seeing the situation three days ago, they are doubtful about the real strength of young man in white mask. The man, from Y Kingdom who stepped forward first, chuckled after hearing Mei Xiang's words. The soldiers at the back also laugh, but those laughs are to be cut off when a gust image runs towards their direction. At the middle of the forest, silence enveloped the place when the bodies of the ninth stage cultivator and almost all the soldiers' dead bodies knocked off to the ground. Everyone gulped with this change of situation. Even Shi Jinhai and Mei Xiang was surprised with this. Everyone is now looking at the small stature of the little girl Mu who is now walking slowly towards Mei Xiang. Mei Xiang who recovered first, chuckled. That small laugh caused a chill to the onlookers. When Mu arrived at Mei Xiang's right side, Mei Xiang lying without blinking an eye she stated calmly, Mu is still weak, but the improvement is great. This young master's time isn't put into a waste at all. Little Mu thanks the young master's guidance. Shi Jinhai who knows everything, can't help but twitch the side of his lips. This pair formulating lies are too harmonious right? The onlookers on the other side are long gone horrified with the situation. When the little girl make her move, they don't even notice it and even feel a fluctuation of chi inside her. With the young man in white mask words, they are more horrified. If the little girl is weak, then him. They can no longer imagine the strength of the young man in white mask. 
the spared cultivators from Y Kingdom are in worst condition, their comrades are killed in just a blink of an eye without noticing it, who wouldn't get scared to such situation? One of the ninth stage practitioner is smart enough and step forward. Th, this low lowly ones are too rude. This this lowly ones are begging for the Lord's com compassion. Everyone from Y Kingdom followed suit. Even these highly respected ninth stage cultivators get down on their knees. They of course know the rule of the stronger rules as almost in their existence. They play the role of the stronger, but now, in front of this existence, they can only beg for their lives. Makes Yang leisurely asked, Do we still have time to kill them? Young master's time is too precious. The young master's punishment would be severe if not get home in time. Their lowly lives are not worth it. Heard that? This young master isn't idle at all. You see, this young master is punished by this young master's teacher to attend some matters in this realm. Because this young master is too weak, Shi Jinha restrain himself from sighing helplessly. This combo is too harmonious okay, this lies are just formulated just a second ago. This scene is impromptu okay, cough. Young master makes Yang already said what needed to be said. She then stops her act and stated her words for finale. This young master will never return to this realm. Let's have a walk first, young master, about the people from what they said from Y Kingdom and the onlookers. Masked, everyone gulped. They hold their breaths too scared to annoy the young master's mood. Let's spare their lives. When we encounter them again, kill. Shi Jinhai sigh mentally. This is the first time he pity the people from the central. Even his late master, Dan Fairhan, didn't scare these people to this extent. The soldiers look at them hesitantly. Shi Jinhai who have a big heart signal them and also the spectators hiding from the shadows. Everyone took their leave even with their trembling legs as fast as they could. They are afraid the powerful young master would change his mind because of Meixiang's words. They are smart enough to get out of the white forest and not return forever. A N Kiwi equals Mihao Tao greater than Tao Tao, Lotus equals Lianhua greater than Hua Hua. You must have noticed I'm not a Chinese and also English is not my first language. Correcting my grammar wouldn't offend me and would even be grateful to that, messing the world of cultivation. Let's ignore this. I just got inspired by these Yuxia plots so without enough knowledge I wrote this story. 25 will wait. He is only one step away to completely exit the white forest but when the burly man noticed his companion no longer moving, he stopped on his track. He looked back and saw his companion standing in daze looking back towards the white forest. Clouding. Let's go back. What? That young man in white mask, isn't he familiar? What? What are talking about? You saw him with your own eyes. That little girl, are you not sober yet? Did you lost your mind? That's why I'm a sober now, that's why that little girl and that young man wearing white mask, they are the same person. You, the burly man was stupefied to the words of what the man he called Kao Ding, thinking carefully, the body frame, no fluctuation of chi, and that aura, it's too much coincident, he frown and weigh things, if they are mistaken, if they encounter that young man in white mask they will die, but he is familiar with his friend. He would either convince him to go back to the white forest or go alone. The burly man sighed and said, let's enter from the east. If that man in mask is really that little girl, her companions must put out their camp there. Some are without cultivation. They wouldn't be far from the entrance. When the burly man remembered the companions of the little girl, he can't help but be more confident with his companion's conjecture. Their group trusted the little girl and fearlessly entered a dangerous forest even with the accompany of other four non-cultivators. If it's real that the little girl have the ability to hide the fluctuation of her chi, those three he's sure they really are not cultivators. The aura they brought are nothing special compared to the little girl. The two then travel using their mount to the east entrance of the white forest. Once the soldiers from White Kingdom returned, the news of a powerful existence inside the White Forest spread to the whole kingdom. The full story are only known by the Y royalties while the story known by the public are with blind spots. Cultivators who intended to enter the White Forest cancelled their prior arrangement. Some cultivators who doubt the veracity of the news still entered the White Forest. The powerful existence in the story outside the White Forest is currently unconscious being carried by Xi Jinhai to the direction of their camp. Meixiang who is unconscious is actually inside the sacred book, 
Make Xiang is currently asking the conditions of the Phantoms and Black Diengo for family to their new environment. This world is the same with the Phantom world. Even better, we can cultivate here and the resources are unlimited so we don't need to earn points to get better resources. The bow Phantom weapon, Nuke Science dated happily. The sword weapon, Gui agreed. Now that they are back to the world the same as the Phantom world, they, Phantom weapons, can now communicate verbally. This is even better. We can cultivate continuously not thinking of a summoner opening a portal to delay everyone's cultivation. The satisfied phantom beast Huang I added, his rude demeanor is now diminished. HMP, if you said it in first place, I wouldn't be rude to you, I will not apologize. Make Xiang just laugh while petting the jaguar's big head. Huang I who was now stiff didn't move and let Make Xiang do what she's doing. Kiwi the phantom plant. Tao Tao also stated his words of pleasure and gratitude, we are thankful with the master allowing us to enter this sacred place. Rest assured, we will help the master on her future affairs, Tao Tao need not to be formal. Just call me by my name. Little Lotus, Hua Hua then spoke, we are still weak. Once we reach and surpass the human's cultivation, we'll be able to retain our original strength. You seem collecting seeds of phantom plants, once we reach our original strength. We can also produce our seeds, retaining our strength wouldn't take a lot of time with this abundant resources. Go go frown, his plump cheeks squirm when he heard Hua Hua's words, when he saw the little boy Lotus, he can't help but have a bad idea, in the entire phantom world, him and his big sister Ma the only phantom plants with an appearance of a five years old so he stick to her like a younger sibling, although taller than M, he still call her big sister because of the maturity of M. Now with appearance of another little phantom plant, he can't help but get threatened. Make Xiang who noticed this patted Gogo's small head. Gogo must be happy. Now that another phantoms are around, his big sister and big sister Ma now more safe. Gogo didn't speak. His fat cheeks are still bulging. Big sister and big sister hopes Gogo will help his juniors. The four phantoms can't help but feel gloomy. What juniors? This little plant is not yet born when they are still existing inside the phantom world, but thinking carefully, these two little phantom plants are indeed their seniors if they base to this small phantom world, they just helplessly agreed and abolish their plan to voice out their disapproval. Gogo when heard this heavy responsibility was given to him, he reluctantly agreed for the sake of his big sisters. Gogo will not let down big sister and big sister m thanking senior Gogo. Little Hua Hua responded looking towards Gogo. His small face is still stoic. The four phantoms and the black Dian Gopher's family almost choke to this scene. They are with Hua Hua for a long time of course this scene, they almost believe it's just an illusion. Gogo gets shy to this respond earned from Hua Hua, his arrogance and displeasure towards Hua Hua faded like it never existed. He tried his milky childish voice sound mature then said, Little brother Hua Hua, rest assured big brother Gogo -Go will help everyone to be stronger. Make Xiang noticing the funny faces of the four phantoms and black Dian gophers, she restrained herself from laughing then said, Gogo, -Go, just call him Hua Hua so you can be more comfortable to one another. Getting alone with the new phantoms got much easier for a Gogo. -Go. Mm, didn't mind getting close to them. The Black Dian Gopher family is also comfortable inside the small phantom world as they already started digging to build their home. Make Xiang went back to cultivate while Xi Jinhai traveled by feet three days non-stop until he reached the camp. When Make Xiang arrived at the camp, she was welcomed by Ping Lin and Old Leng who were guarding the camp, Tan Ling, who just exited from the main tent sneaking Auntie Tan's cooked foods shouted when he saw Make Xiang. Everyone get out of their own tents when they heard Tan Ling's loud voice. When they saw Make Xiang, they excitedly run towards her and greeted her. Seeing everyone improved, I am satisfied. Let's go to the main tent and discuss some matters. They then all followed suit. When everyone was already settled, Make Xiang asked Ping about what happened while she's gone. We encounter three groups of cultivators. One is on their way out to the forest and the two are on their way to the innermost of the forest. They didn't harm us nor a threat to us. Dot for the past two week, we somehow accumulated 26 beast cores with sixth stage as the highest. This is all thanks to little little. Two weeks ago, without asking the consent of everyone, Tanling named the snow rain fox, little little. Days passed, unknown to them. They started to call the snow rain fox. Little little, 
makes Yang faintly look at the snow rain fox on the sideline who is raising his head full of arrogance waiting for compliment, makes Yang ignored this and turn her head to her right. Auntie Tan, what about our food supply? Xiang er need not to worry. We still have a lot. Oh the water supply is almost gone. Good thing Xiang er is wise to refill the jars before she went out. Make Xiang nodded and look at the small snow rain fox on Xiang's shoulder again, obediently standing there. She then looked towards Tan Ling's direction. Brother Ling, Tan Ling excitedly recited, Oh yeah, little Xiang, your brother Ling is now a second grade heavenly doctor. I already successfully concocted an elixir eight days after you left. Because I can't continue to read my third level prescriptions, I continued concocting pills for level 2 heavenly doctors. It was all successful. Good. I will give Brother Ling later the prescriptions for level 3. Thank you, little Xiang. Tan Ling nodded continuously his eyes full of smiles. Make Xiang inspect everyone and nodded, satisfied with what she sees. The rest also improved a lot. Brother Ji's improvement is the most remarkable. Xian Ji just smiled and scratched the back of his head. Little Little who is standing on his right shoulder raised his head more showing arrogance. It seems the snow rain fox not only behaved these past few days but greatly contributed a lot. Little Little nodded continuously and boast, of course of course. I helped the others to their cultivation by hunting beasts around. I also helped Tang Ling once when he lacks Trianus grass. At night I helped Master Jin reviewing the books you gave him and tell him stories about those beasts so he'll be more interested. Make Xiang nodded. A young snow rain fox that was already on his seventh stage cultivation. You must be the smartest and the most cunning in your entire clan. Using these things to help this group, this young lady will not forget to give you your present later. Little little take make Xiang's words as a compliment and was excited when he heard about his present. He nodded satisfiedly. This group is with continuous supply of spiritual water from this little girl. He must know where did she get the unlimited supply of spiritual water. For everyone's award, Make Xiang waved her hand and a big piece of black iron metal appeared on the table. Everyone was shocked with this sight. Make Xiang smiled. Good thing, your young lady is too good she got all the resources not only the black iron metal but also high grade crystals. Everyone is too amazed to utter a word. Seeing her subordinates faces, she once teased. Now now, how about this as a bribe? Ping Chunhu recovered first and chuckled at Mei Xiang's words. Auntie Tan praised Mei Xiang. The men on the other hand are still flabbergasted at the amount and kind of crystals and metal Mei Xiang harvested. Mei Xiang after stating the properties and the amount of these minerals she said, Brother, start to do the design of their scepters. Old Leng, consider the resources I mentioned if ever it can help your research. To the martial artists, rest assured our weapons are made with this high quality metal. Once I reach the seventh stage I will start to hold our spiritual weapons with the best grade crystals and beast cores. Everyone nodded stiffly. Yes. Their young miss is perverted to this extent. They never saw her practice refining but she sometimes visit Ping way back at Fairhan Mountain when he's still starting refining. Thinking about this, their young miss must have learned refining only by observing right? Ping who don't talk much, didn't mind to explain. Ping Chunhua who knows everything can only chuckled inwardly at the weird faces of her companions. Naturally, she bug her brother till she learns her brother is learning refining from their young miss. Her adoration to their young miss risen to worship starting that day. Now we can only speed this things once we arrived at the eye of the forest to build our permanent camp while we're inside the forest. Rest for now. Tomorrow, we will continue our journey with the same pace as before. Lastly, make Xiang look at the direction of little little. You can all go now, brother Ji. I will borrow the little beast first. The snow rain fox, little little's whole body trembled. The time he saw the black iron metal and heard Mei Xiang's words, he already had a bad premonition. Everyone left. Mei Xiang brought the snow rain fox to her tent and threw her inside the sacred book. When she interrogated the snow rain fox before, he only said the location of the cave and the cultivation of the other party. If he didn't left out the identities of Lotus group, Mei Xiang have not removed the possibilities they are not human cultivators and wasted three days speculating about their identities. When met Hua Hua's group, 
she learned they are scammed and robbed by a small white fox. This is the reason she gave them the honor to punish the snow rain fox. Remembering the black Dian Gopher family and Huang Ai's fury when talking about the little white fox whom they trusted but only betrayed and robbed them. True to make Xiang's thoughts. The snow rain fox is indeed being tortured by the black Dian Gophers with Huang Ai's fangs and claws. Night arrived. Meixiang Xiang was alerted by Shi Jinhai because of the hidden presence of foreigners outside their camp. Meixiang Xiang when learned the identities of the two, she went outside the camp and walks towards their direction calmly. When the two men saw the little girl walking towards where they are hiding, they no longer hide their presence and face Meixiang. Xiang. Junior sees the seniors once again. The burly man look hesitant to Meixiang Xiang and to his companion. Seniors, it means she already knew he's not alone when they first met. Detecting their presence and location, the probability of their suspicion is getting bigger and bigger. They both didn't speak, the incessant flow of thoughts didn't allow them to think clearly. Because our first encounter is not that bad, I will be benevolent to break my words and spare your lives. The burly man gulp. Cowding on the other hand is calmly looking at Meixiang's face but his heart is in turmoil. What Meixiang just said confirmed their goal here, the both of them didn't know what to respond. Make Xiang smiled and look at Cao Ding, willing to sacrifice your life to fill your curiosity. Make Xiang nodded slowly remembering a proverb from the other world she read inside the sacred book. Curiosity killed a cat, but it came back. She murmured that the two still heard. When I see you once again inside this forest, I would not think twice to kill the both of you. Make Xiang turn her back to the two. Before her back disappeared completely she stopped from her track. Without looking back she said, 11 months. Make Xiang's lips curled. The central would no longer be boring after my group's arrival. Make Xiang completely disappeared in the dark leaving the two in days. The burly man gulp once again processing Make Xiang's words. E, 11 months? Is that mean they will go to the capital 5 months from today? Suddenly, the young man Kaoding chuckled. It seems 11 months from today. The central would be livelier. The burly man look at his friend's shining eyes, he can only sigh. Cao Ding, shall we go back? You heard what that little girl said. Yes, let's go back. Oh, yeah, remember not to tell to anyone what happened today or this young master would not spare your life. The burly man's face twitch. This friend of his will always tell him when they are outside everyone's sight. They will drop the formality. What's with this? Using his position to threaten his life? The two left with their mount. While in the air, Cao Ding is in a relaxed position at the back of his mount. He use his palm to pillow the back of his head. His eyes are close and with a satisfied smile. He once again remember Meixiang's Xiang's beautiful face. He then murmur, little girl, this young master will wait. An, thank you for the reads and votes. 26. Mutant. Meixiang's Xiang's group arrived at the eye of the forest only in the span of two days. This speed was explained because of the presence of their amazing mount, Shi Jinhai. Because they stayed in the same place in that two weeks, Meixiang Xiang decided to ask for her uncle Shi Jinhai's help. They will travel by their own in daytime. Once the darkness enveloped the whole forest, they will eat at an open space and mount the majestic back of the patriarch of the three-eyed golden eagle clan. This setup is with a reason of hiding Shi Jinhai's eye-catching beast form. Once they set up their camp. Each of them do their own things as Meixiang's Xiang's instruction. Pingle started refining their scepters, Tan Ling read prescriptions of level 3 heavenly doctors. Uncle Tan improves his speed by roaming outside the forest after his cultivation. Tan Feng cultivate and improves his physical strength by having a combat with his combat partner set as a martial artist. Sometimes he'll join his further or Bei Ai Zihan roaming outside the camp. Ping Chunhua mostly stay and cultivates. Bei Ai Zihan aside from cultivation. He improves his archery skill, he will combat using bow and arrow or his newly practiced sword technique by having a combat with his puppet or hunting beasts. Old Leng study the properties of the resources Meixiang Xiang brought and use it to improve his project. Auntie Tan do different delicacies and cook meals usually the spiritual beasts the others hunted. Xian Jie cultivates and read the books Mei Xiang gave him. After a week, the traumatized little little was set free from the claws of Hua Hua's group. Starting that day, he never leaves Xian Jie's side and will always help him in everything. Mei Xiang on the other hand, she cultivate inside the sacred book and refine weapons for her companions. When bored, she'll roam outside the forest to hunt warlocks. Sometimes she'll bring a companion to observe them. Today, 
After their breakfast, she brought Tang Feng and Ping Chunhua this time to wander the north part of the forest. The two will kill spiritual beasts while Make Xiang is observing on the sideline. Six hours had passed and the two are already tired physically. Make Xiang notice this and allow their three-person group to stop by and have a rest. While having a rest, Make Xiang is saying what she observed on their journey. Brother Feng's physical condition improved a lot. Your stamina and reflex got better. Brother Chan is also good. Your response to your surrounding is outstanding. Your physical condition is not questionable. The both of you are wise. Both of you have your reserves. Both of you use your brains and know when and how to attack. Both of you are strong independently. Too independent that you almost forget you have one another. A while ago, you know that Gloomkin Hummingbird is with a great gap of cultivation compared to the individuality of the both of you. You only think to cooperate after one of you almost got injured. In a battle, you have to know to use the available resources. You have the both of you. Use one another, cooperate. You already knew one another's ability and capacity, you have to use that. See how you easily defeated the Warlock in using the water and thunder element to monopolize the space around to attack it without the concern of its speed? The both are silent and both nodded saying they understand Make Xiang's words. Remember one of our goal here. It is to contract our beasts. You have to know to cooperate with your subordinates and soon to be beast partners. Tan Feng and Ping Chunhua nodded obediently. After 20 minutes, we'll go back to the camp. Recuperate here first. Make Xiang then left while the two didn't waste time and sat in a lotus position to cultivate. Make Xiang wander around and hunt the nearby beasts. In a short span of 15 minutes, she harvested three beast cores. She was about to go back where she left Tan Feng and Ping Chunhua when the noise she heard long ago approach her direction. A scream of a girl was heard. When she saw the faces of the people running towards her direction, she can't help but raise her left eyebrow. When she saw a cackle of odd spotted hyena chasing these people, make Xiang's A's brighten. This clan of hyena is with only 6th grade as the highest but there is something more about this cackle. Odd spotted hyena are born as 4th grade with dark magic attribute. This means these are piles of dark magic beast cores. Not only that, the leader of this hyenas is not an odd spotted hyena but an odd striped hyena. This leader is only on her 6th rank cultivation but it is not an ordinary odd striped hyena but a mutated one. It means not only a dark magic attribute but with another element attribute. When the group of people saw Make Xiang, the girl in front runs toward her and shouted, Help, help. When she recognized Make Xiang, she ran towards her faster and said, You're that girl. Yes you're that girl. Where are your companions? Help us. Where are they? Please help us. This girl in disheveled appearance is called Yin Wian. It is the young lady joined by her younger sister Yin Dai and a mercenary group from Central lead by the man they called Uncle Min. This group are met by Make Xiang's group on their first night inside the White Forest. They are remarkable to Make Xiang because of the hidden discord between the two sisters. When Uncle Min saw this scene, he pulled Yin Wian and said, Sorry for putting your life into danger. This old man will take the responsibility. He looked at his subordinates and said, We can no longer run. It's we kill them or we'll be killed by them. Uncle Men's subordinate put out their weapons and scepters. They firstly encounter the odd striped hyena. A mere six grade warlock is not a problem to them. Uncle Men with the highest cultivation among them is an eight grade beginning level magician. They firstly wanted to kill it for its beast core because of the high price of a dark magic beast cause. But when they found out it is a mutated odd striped hyena with dark and earth attribute, Yin Wian wanted it alive and to contract it. Instead of killing it directly, they then planned to subdue it but before they succeeded, it escaped and even came back with a clan of odd spotted hyena. They then found out the mutated odd striped hyena is part of a clan, not only a member but a leader of a clan with 20 and counting members of a dark attribute odd spotted hyenas. Their only choice was to run until they encounter an aid but unfortunately they met the local tyrant but weak little girl they encounter before. Unluckily to them, this weak little girl seems wandering around and lost a contact with her subordinates. They can only swallow their frustration and pull their weapons and scepters. The strongest among them is Uncle Min with 8th grade beginning level wind attribute. Two more magicians, 6th stage middle level water attribute and 5th stage peak level fire attribute. Four martial artists, two 5th stage middle level, one 5th stage peak level, and lastly 6th stage beginning level. 
the two young ladies with them are both on their fourth stage beginning level also both earth attribute, they can help them or at least protect themselves, but this local tyrant young miss they encounter for the second time around, she not just can't contribute to them but also would hold them back. Mei Xiang didn't mind what others think. The group of men are gripping their weapons and scepters tightly while the odd spotted hyenas are surrounding their team. Mei Xiang's eyes are brightly shining towards the leader of these hyenas. The leader notices Mei Xiang's gaze and return it with a glare. She's somehow irritated with Mei Xiang's stare. One of the odd spotted hyena notices this. He directly attack Mei Xiang with two small ball of dark magic flew towards Mei Xiang's eyes. Mei Xiang didn't counterattack nor avoid the attack, she openly accepted it. Everyone although anxious with their situation, they are still aware with what's happening. They openly stare at Mei Xiang receiving the attack. They goggle at the situation full of disbelief when Mei Xiang accepted the attack and nothing happened to her. The leader of the odd spotted hyena frown. She didn't panic and think deeper of the possibilities. A glimpse of interest appeared on her eyes. Mei Xiang smiled. Light magic and dark magic are two contradicting magic that can never be together, they represent creation and destruction, whatever light magic creates, dark magic can destroy vice versa, but dark magician himself can't be healed by a light magic and so with light magician can never be destructed by a dark magic. The odd striped hyena concluded Mei Xiang is a light magician. She then gave her order to kill the others, the battle against Uncle Min's group and the odd spotted hyenas started. The leader only watch from the sideline while Mei Xiang stand still, smiling at the battle happening. This is to make her harvest easily right? Not long after, Uncle Min's subordinates died leaving only Uncle Min and the two young ladies no better than dead. On the odd spotted hyena's side, because most of them are with low cultivation, only ten are left including their leader who didn't participate in the battle at all. Mei Xiang on the other hand is still neat and clean like no battle occur on where she's standing just now. You, you have this ability but you didn't help. You are so heartless. Uncle Min is even promised to protect you with his own life. Yin Wei shouted even she is in no better situation. Oh? Do you think this young lady is dumb like you? Mei Xiang chuckled. You must be thinking in your entire journey. You are playing the role of manipulator, them as your puppets, and your sister as your victim. Do you think a mercenary survived in the central Ladam and didn't know how to read a person especially a young lady with a low level tricks like you? Mei Xiang's lips raised with a mocking smile. Do you think you are using them to enter the central? A little girl with a great potential, you didn't think the possibility of them using you to strengthen their mercenary, are you? Indeed, central is full of geniuses. These geniuses will undoubtedly choose the best organization. Uncle Min's mercenary is only an E-grade mercenary, although highly look up outside the central. They are looked down by the geniuses who knew the overall view of the organizations in the central. Uncle Min's mercenary have been long stuck in being a grade E mercenary, adding that there is no sign of great potential. It's been a long time they recruited a talented member when they received this mission. They have this goal to woo the little girls to their mercenary. When they saw the discord of the two sisters, they play along and will choose who among them is with better potential. Mei Xiang noticed this irregularity when this Uncle Min, the leader himself of their mercenary attend to this mission personally and even too patient and kind with these two young ladies. Mei Xiang find this desperation interesting and funny at the same time. Promise to protect me with his own life? Mei Xiang chuckled and look at Uncle Min's disheveled appearance. This young lady isn't dumb to believe in just mere words. When one of the odd spotted hyena attacked Mei Xiang, she didn't act because of two reasons. One, she knew a dark magic can't harm a light magician. Second, she wanted to see if this Uncle Min is although pretentious is a man of his words. Mei Xiang can only laugh of how this called Uncle Min said those words with a reason of wanting to recruit her subordinates to his mercenary and wanted to learn her, Mei Xiang's, identity. And one more thing, I don't need protection. A fire appeared on her palm and flew towards one of the hyena. It directly killed it with just one blow. The odd striped hyena frown when she sees Mei Xiang is not only a light magician but also with a fire attribute magic. The other odd spotted hyena attacked Mei Xiang with their dark magic but only to be failed. By only using her fire magic, she defeated almost every hyena alive leaving only two, the five grade hyena that attacked her a while ago and their leader, the odd striped hyena. 
the fifth grade hyena is smart enough not to use her dark magic so he runs toward Mexiang and attack her physically. A pity, Mexiang is already a sixth grade beginning level martial artist. Before his claws reach Mexiang, Mexiang already moved using her bare hands. She harvested the odd spotted hyena's beast core. A two men suddenly appeared at the scene and ran towards Mexiang's side. Ping Chunhu gave Mexiang a piece of cloth that she used to wipe the blood on her hands. The both of you are late, there is only one left. It's a sixth grade peak level warlock with both dark and earth magic. Defeat it but don't kill it. The two nodded and faced the odd striped hyena. Ping Chunhu and Tang Feng nodded to each other having a mutual understanding of how to attack the warlock. Mexiang on the other hand waved her hand and a puppet from Sacred Book appeared. She ordered it to collect the beast cause from the dead bodies of the odd spotted hyenas while Mexiang sat calmly watching from the sideline how Ping Chunhua and Tan Feng subdue the mutant warlock. An. The flow of this chapter shouldn't be on this way but may let it be. It's not that bad though. Maybe I'll just reserve that set up to that young lady and Peach Lol. 27. Want. When the three went back to the camp with a warlock with them, Everyone was intrigued with this situation. When Mexiang saw everyone already appeared, she especially mentioned Xianji's presence. Brother Ji, Xianji stepped forward with little little being idle on his shoulder. Mexiang signaled him. Xianji who understood Mexiang's gesture. He recited the information of the warlock on Mexiang's side. Odd striped hyena are dark magic attributes. Warlock born with fourth grade cultivation. They usually don't work in group unlike hard spotted hyena. Their lifespan is only 200 years so compared to other beasts. Their cultivation is faster. Their weakness is a short range combat as their body is fragile. Their strength is their rare dark attribute magic and their speed. Seeing the pattern and color at this odd striped hyena. It is a mutated warlock with dark and earth attribute. On its sixth grade peak level cultivation. Little little added. Mexiang nodded satisfied with Xianji's performance. Good. Now, everyone heard about the information of this warlock, although it's still on her sixth grade cultivation. Its cultivation is a lot quicker than other warlocks. Improving its cultivation with our resources is not a problem. A mutant's warlock is rare. Dark magician at that. In line with my suggestion before, Brother Chun and Brother Zihan is suitable with this warlock. Think about it. Bei Zihan said without hesitation. Little Xiang, I didn't hunt this warlock, just give it to Little Chun if he wanted it. Make Xiang then look at the undecided Ping Chunhua. You have all the time, Brother Chun. Everyone can go now, Brother Ji. Please stay, Xianji. Make Xiang, and the two baffled spiritual beasts remained on the courtyard. Little Little is the first one to react and express his confusion. What happened just now? What did you all just discuss? Ping Chun a water magician to contract this mutant with dark and earth attribute? No. 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 You asked first if who wanted to contract it. It means anyone can contract it. What is happening here? Huh? Huh? Turning his small head to make Xiang and Xianjia with puzzled confusion. Xianjia didn't respond without make Xiang signal. Little little notice they wouldn't spill the beans. He always know this group is odd. This frightening hair raising spine chilling little miss is for sure the culprit. Weighing things, his face full of determination and shouted. Then I wanted to have a contract with Master Ji. Make Xiang raised her left eyebrow with what she heard. Xianji felt a tint of excitement but when remembered something he didn't respond. Make Xiang saw this scene. Brother Ji, what do you think? Xianji lower his head. He hesitantly responded. Little Xiang, I, I know little Xiang only wanted the best for me but, but, I really didn't dream of becoming the strongest. I enjoyed with little little's company. But of course I decided to follow little Xiang. I would always follow little Xiang. Little little let out a sigh of relief. He somehow felt proud of this. It means his master Xianj also likes him right? You choose a mere 7th grade warlock over an ancient beast. Little Little's arrogant posture limp. What ancient beast? What is this again? What are they talking about? What the heck? Xianj with unwavering eyes, nodded. Make Xiang just sigh inwardly. This dumb brother of her somehow amaze her sometimes. The both of you are weak. If you fully decided then you have to work harder. Cultivate more and do your combat training again while reading those books I gave you. Are you willing? Xianjia was startled.
He thought Mei Xiang wouldn't agree that easily. The little fox gets down from his shoulder to his embrace looking at Xiang in a complicated mood. Xiang lower his head. He pat the little fox's little head. He turn his head to Mei Xiang. His bright eyes full of colors tell everything. Without hesitation he said, Little Xiang, brother Jis thankful. Mei Xiang smiled faintly. His brother Jis bright eyes and full of a smile face returned. This face reflects happiness just like before but no longer mirrors any carefree behavior. She indeed plan him to contract the ancient beast but what she wanted him really is to be the best and happy of what he's doing. His brother is like an innocent child while the snow rain fox is a cunning and smart. With a contract binding them, the snow rain fox wouldn't dare to betray Xiang Ji. Mei Xiang nodded. Let's do the contract a month later. I'll observe the performance of the two of you. If convinced, we'll execute the contract. Mei Xiang before took her leave. She stated her real intention. I'll leave the care of this hyena to the both of you. Tame her without my assistance when you think you're ready. When Mei Xiang completely departed, Xian Jian little little look at the yard striped hyena. Little little's face full of malice. An, or thanks for keeping up until to this chapter. Your votes flutter me a lot. 28. Changes. An, again, I'm about to mess the world up Uxialol. I'm really not educated with this cultivation levels and all. Just ready your Xian Xia heart. It would hurt a lot. A year passed since they left the Fairhan Mountain. Their progress increased greatly not only their cultivation but also in other fields they are working. Pingle, age 22, magician, element, dark currently at 7 stage middle level. He refines three scepters of his, Tan Feng, and his sister, Ping Chunhe. These scepters are also held by him, Tan Zai, now age 36 from martial artist from stage 6 early level to 7th stage middle level. In the past months, he improved his speed greatly. He also practiced his combat skill with different spiritual weapons refined and hold by Meixiang in line with his physique and fighting technique. His specialty is sword fighting. Tan Feng, age 17, dual element magician, first element. Far from 3rd stage peak level to 5th stage early level, second element. Thunder from 4th stage peak level to 5th stage middle level. With Mei Xiang's suggestion to increase his fire attribute, he tried to cultivate his fire magic more these past few months to be in par with his thunder magic. Tan Feng's physical condition also gets better. His scepter's first spiritual beast core is with a dark attribute of a beast in commander level that was digged by Black Dian Gophers when they wandered around the White Forest once. Bei Ai Zihun, now age 22. Martial artist from 4th stage peak level to 5th stage peak level. His archery skill is now better than Uncle Tan. He also had his spiritual weapons refined and hold by Mei Xiang using the best quality resources. Xian Ji, now age 19, martial artist from 3rd stage early level to 5th stage middle level. Among all of them, Xian Ji's cultivation progress is the most remarkable. He also contracted Little Little three months ago who had promoted from 7th stage early level to middle level. This beast partner is also the culprit of his great progress. They learn together about the books Mei Xiang gave and also Xiang Ji learned to use hidden weapons. Mei Xiang refined. This is with a reason of Xiang Ji's weak combat skill and his chosen profession. Beasts are more vigilant when they saw weapons. These hidden weapons are to be used to subdue warlocks if needed. Ping Chunhe. Now age 18, magician, element, water from 4th stage peak level to 5th stage middle level. She already contracted the Ard striped hyena, a mutant's warlock with dark and earth attribute a month ago. Her hesitation in contracting it at first is with a reason of wanting to know the side of the warlock if it wanted to contract her, so they waited until it reaches the 7th stage so it can communicate with them in human language. Also this Ard striped hyena was tamed by Xianji long ago with the help of unending threats of a certain little fox. The Ard striped hyena was named Kiai by Ping Chunhua herself. Their partnership is great and often hunt beast cores together. Tan Ling, age 17, he had long gone promoted from first tier heavenly doctor to second tier. He is now reading prescriptions for third tier heavenly doctors. Completing the prescriptions for tier 3 heavenly doctors takes time as it is one stage away to become a pharmacist. Aside from ascending to third stage, 
Tanling also improved the grades of the elixirs he concocts from the usual grade E and D to now grade A to C pills. Old Leng's research greatly improved with the additional resources Make Xiang brought while Auntie Tan lives her life to the fullest living mostly idle but Make Xiang's favor towards her didn't diminish and even become likable to Make Xiang's eyes as she not only cooked the recipes Make Xiang gave but also invent her own recipes with the unending supplies of spiritual beast meat and wild plants. Dan Makesiang, now age 12, martial artist from 5th stage middle level to 8th stage early level, multi-element magician, 1st element, fire from 4th stage middle level to 5th stage middle level, 2nd element, wind from 3rd stage peak level to 4th stage peak level, 3rd element, water from 2nd stage peak level to 3rd stage peak level, 4th element, earth from 3rd stage middle level to 4th stage peak level, 5th element, Thunder of Tom 3rd stage middle level to 5th stage beginning level, 6th element, light from 4th stage peak level to 7th stage early level. This unbelievable progress is with a reason of her natural talent and not to forget the sacred book, not only that she is abundant inside the book but also her cheat with time. This also gave her great opportunities to excel in different field have more time in reading books, do refining, concoct elixirs and other more. The small phantom world is also full of phantom plants planted inside with the help of Gogo's past behavior before he contracted Meixiang. Because of his friendly and bubbly demeanor, the phantom plants gave him their seeds that he usually hides for keeps. This accumulated phantom seeds are planted inside the small phantom world. The small phantom world also grew bigger while Meixiang's cultivation improves. Not only the phantom world but also the other facilities inside the sacred book. With this, the phantoms and beasts inside the sacred book also improved. The Black Dian Gophers with 15 members risen their cultivation from 3rd grade to 4th grade while their leader risen from 4th grade to 5th grade. Hua Hua, the Lotus Phantom Plant, from 5th stage to Commander level. Tao Tao, the Kiwi Phantom Plant, his strength is in par with 8th stage cultivator. Now he already got back his old condition. He can already transform from his plant appearance and already can produce his seeds that is now planted inside the small phantom world. Huang Ai, the Jaguar phantom beast, from 8th stage, the same as Tao Tao, he already earned back his phantom strength. Gweng, the sword phantom weapon, from 5th stage to now venerable stage. Wuxian, the bow phantom weapon, from 6th stage is now on its saint level. The levels of cultivation are in order from 1st to 9th stage, next is Commander, then Emperor, Venerable, Monarch, and lastly Saint. Phantom strength are at the peak of Saint level. Naturally when a phantom creature was not able to continue absorb enough spirituality, they will get weaker and soon disappear. Their cultivation is not to make them stronger but to retain their cultivation in Saint Peak level. This is the reason it's necessary for them to stay inside the phantom world with overflowing spirituality. Phantom's cultivation is fast but their cultivation is easily drained. Once completely drained, they will disappear and would no longer exist. With the small phantom world, the cultivation of these no return phantoms are in amazing level and earned back their peak strength in just a short period of time. Phantoms have the same level of strength but their abilities are not the same. Unlike the spiritual beasts and human cultivators that distinguish their abilities with martial arts or, or element magic with different levels of cultivation, all phantoms cultivation strength are the same saint stage on peak level while their abilities are different from one another. They have their own specialties that is unique to one another. Shi Jinhai on the other hand can't continue his cultivation because of his injury. He often read novels, write books for Meixiang's team, or have a contact with the phantoms and gophers inside the small phantom world. Five months have passed. Their most awaited ancient beast is about to be born in the coming days. Little did this group know, a lot of unexpected things will happen in their most awaited day. 29. Ancient Beast the spiritual beasts nearby are acting differently, the sky is getting dark and it seems a strong typhoon is about to occur, the chi around the white forest is getting denser, the spiritual beasts are advancing to a certain direction following the flow of chi. This phenomenon is not noticed by cultivators as the cultivators present inside the white forest are ignorant to this kind of event. The cultivators from the central are not present with reason of the news spread to the powerful figures of the central four months ago. This news is a little bit exaggerated, 
formulated and spread by a certain bored young master. Maxiang's team on the other hand took this opportunity to be rich and get stronger. They kill spiritual beasts and harvest beast cores. This setup continued for two days straight. At the White Kingdom, the phenomenon inside the White Forest was just noticed by spies of different organizations from Centrals on the second day. Unfortunately, even the news about ancient beast is to be known by these people. Central is too far from the Y Kingdom. With this reason, the spies themselves whom are not with the best cultivation among their organizations entered the White Forest by themselves. On the third day, the ancient beast has not yet descended from the sky but makes Yang's team encounter a great luck. A ninth stage warlock with a wind attribute again Willy Cheetah was spotted nearby. Make Xiang instructed Uncle Tan, Bei Aizahan, and Tan Feng to subdue it. Tan Ling, Auntie Tan, Old Leng and the Make Xiang are watching from the sideline while the others continue to harvest beast cores. The cooperation of the three are successful. It only took three hours to subdue it. Because it's already in its ninth stage, Make Xiang tamed the beast herself as Xiang's mental power is not yet well established. The Gan Willy Cheetah was contracted by Uncle Tan that night. Part of the sky turned gold and a sudden loud clap of thunders rang. The rumble of thunders can be heard in the distance and even outside the Y Kingdom. When the thunders are gone, the part of the sky brightly shine in a golden color. That gold light then accumulated in one spot and a golden ball of light appeared in the sky. A round golden light descended slowly from heaven. The people of Y Kingdom saw this occurrence. The brave enough cultivators run to the white forest without any preparation. The Y royalties also sent their people to the White Forest. Make Xiang's team on the other hand are already on the exact location where the golden light is about to land. Tan Link up when he saw the golden light in egg shape closing the distance towards him slowly. Three months ago when Xiang contracted little little, Make Xiang discussed the matter of the ancient beast to the whole team. Tan Link volunteered with a reason of the central is dangerous place for a weak youngster like him who doesn't have strong puppets as his bodyguards. No one refuted with his shamelessness. Everyone is three step away from where Tan Ling is standing to give him his own stage. Tan Ling gripped the dagger on his hand tightly. When he saw the golden egg is about to land near where he's standing, he wounded his finger and ready to drip a blood on the shell of the ancient beast but suddenly the golden egg split vertically and two small figure flew passing Tan Ling emitting his existence. Everyone was dumbfounded. Everyone's gaze follow where the two figures landed. Everyone is in days when they saw a white fluffy ball was jumping up and down to old Leng's head and another black fluffy ball was on Auntie Tan's embrace. Make Xiang raised her left eyebrow when she saw the two little balls of fur. These creatures are called Qian Yi. At the War of Gods and Demons, Qian Yi is the contract beast of the right hand of the human's representative. This man who leads the human race wasn't named and only labeled as the legend in the books inside the sacred book. The legend's most trusted man have this Qian Yi as a contract beast. This beast didn't fully participate in the war but was given a task by the legend. This task was not stated in the books and only vaguely mentioned in the ancient beast books. Make Xiang can only know this task if she can only unlock that part of the library about the war of gods and demons. Qian Yi, aside from its powerful strength was also known having a good instinct and can detect the luck of a being. This ancient beast have an exclusive role to that war so the other information about it was not stated completely. Make Xiang can't explain how this ancient beasts are two creatures in one egg and can choose their own masters without dripping the blood to the eggshell. She can only guess with the information she know that the Qian Yi chose the people nearby with the greatest luck as they have the greatest instinct on whom to follow. Make Xiang knows there is a deeper meaning about this two creatures that is related to their ancestors' role in that war. Everyone was still dumbly looking at the two small balls playing around Old Leng and Auntie Tan. Make Xiang didn't mind to explain what is happening and said, Let's get out of the forest for now. Other cultivators are approaching this direction. An. Thank you at Nwaza Vivian 5 whom commented in this story, at last. Lol. And yes also to at Sophia Menace is 590 whom I received my first vote and also thank you to those who constantly voting this story. I really appreciate it. You guys rock. Be safe everyone. 30.
to the central. The news about the powerful majestic ancient beast born in the Y Kingdom descended from the sky landed inside the inner layer of the White Forest was spread to the whole Y Kingdom and to their neighboring kingdoms and soon this news was received by the powerful figures of the central. The so-called powerful majestic ancient beast in the sensational topic in the whole cultivation world is now being cute and rubbing their round hairy body to their master's cheeks. A week had already passed and they are already used to this view. Tunneling on the other side of the carriage is still with complicated emotions. He can't accept Meix Yang's explanation that these ancient beasts will choose their masters whom with greatest luck. Thus that mean his luck is something can't compared with her mother and old Leng. He can't cultivate but with Meix Yang's help he can now become a heavenly doctor and now soon to be a tier 3 heavenly doctor. Is this luck not enough? Then he found out the whole of this plot. Meix Yang, his little Xiang. They are all lucky because of Mei Xiang. Then the two are the luckiest because Mei Xiang favor them more. Even the ancient beasts is wise enough and consents little Xiang's favoritism. But why not directly contract Mei Xiang if they can detect luck? This is one of Mei Xiang's thought this past few days. Not being narcissistic. Among them she herself Mei Xiang is the luckiest possessing the sacred book alone can tell in one sight. So why not her? Although happy for old Leng and Auntie Tan, Mei Xiang can't help but become curious. She can only wait to unlock that part of library and find out the truth. Tan Ling was in depressed mood the whole journey. He can't become completely happy about his further who contracted again Willy Chi Tu and her mother contracting an ancient beast as he is still thinking of his little Xiang favoring old Leng more than him. Her brother slash her childhood friend. Is he no longer the best in the whole world in her little sister's eyes? Did she chose old Leng over him because of those machines he builds? Did he chose the wrong field and should follow old Leng on his workshop? The carriage stopped when they are far enough to the boundaries of any kingdoms. We'll build our camp here and travel through air tomorrow. Brother Ling, come inside my carriage. Tan Ling weakly walks toward Mei Xiang's carriage and entered. Little Xiang? Mei Xiang gave a piece of cloth to Tan Ling. Tang Ling opens it and saw a ring, a green crystal and two small white pearls. Mei Xiang explained it's an interspatial ring already full of beast cores and crystals. The two small pearls are where your puppets can be recharged and be summoned back when not needed. The green crystal is with my breath inside. Break this when you're in immense danger. This will not only alarm me but also alarm the opponent when felt my pressure. Central is a dangerous place but with a great opportunity. Once you reach the pharmacist level, we'll find the best refining furnace for Brother Ling. Tan Ling's A's brighten. He left the carriage with full spirit and was about to boast his interspatial ring to the others when he saw them all wearing their own interspatial ring. His high spirit didn't fade away thinking of the best refining furnace his little Xiang mentioned. The best refining furnace for the best person in her eyes right? HMP you are little Xiang's favorite but in his little Xiang's eyes, he's the best okay. He walks toward his further and was startled when he saw a little boy. Who who is that kid? Bei Ai Zihan laughs at Tan Ling's reaction and explained. Good thing little Ling's mood got better and can already notice Uncle Tan's contract beast. F father's contract beast. Uncle Tan can only sigh with his son. They are together inside a one carriage in that whole week and didn't even see this child eating his wife's cooked meals most of the time inside the carriage. Ping Chunhua then explained, brother Ji and Xiang Xiang already explained, Gan Wuli Cheetah are with wind attribute and once born their rank is already in eighth stage. The warlock is talented and with fast cultivation and was promoted to ninth stage middle level. This explains one transformed to his human form. He's in a child appearance, although still young. His beast form is already large in par with the odd striped hyena's adult beast form as its kind is with much higher cultivation and larger size. The child Gan Willy Cheetah didn't care he's the topic of their conversation and continue chewing the jerk your teeth and prepared. Bei Ai Zihan added, we didn't even name it so you can give it a name. Little Meat. Bei Ai Zihan's eyebrow twitch. Is this naming too fast? Did he not needed to think of it first? What little meat? What's that name? Is that even the name? Ping Chunhua on the sideline pitifully look at the now little meat. She somehow was relieved when she thinks of naming Kiai herself. She then rubs the big head of Kiai who is sitting obediently on her side. Uncle Tan cough. Little meat then. 
He then stiffly patted the pitiful child's head and added more jerky to his plate for a silent apology. Another two child appeared on Tan Ling's site and was eating happily not far away from them. Without waiting for Tan Ling's question, Bei Aizuhan answered, those are Auntie Tan and Old Leng's cough contracted ancient beast. The little girl is Auntie Tan's beast named Little White while the little boy is Old Leng's beast named Little Bao, Tan Ling frown, why not Little Black? Bei Aizuhan expected this question. Auntie also suggested this name but Old Leng didn't follow and named it Bao himself. A deep frustration was visible on Tan Ling's face. Bei Aizuhan almost choked. Uncle Tan when saw Little Meat's jerky was almost gone, he bring him to where the two ancient beasts are eating and went to his wife to ask for more jerky. The three powerful beasts on their human appearance, three children are eating obediently without talking while the people around them can't help but watch them once in a while. Their harvest on their journey inside the white forest is considered great, their cultivation risen and their skills greatly improved. They earn beast cores, spiritual crystals, and black iron metal that they use to create their weapons and scepters still leaving them a large amount to be spent when reach the central. They also contracted spiritual beasts and ancient beasts. Not only that, Black D and Gopher family and five phantoms are also added to their family. With this, not to mention passing the mercenary test but also winning the upcoming mercenary tournament is an easy task. The next day, they traveled through Air and Shijinhai's back. They will stop by a nearby forest at night and set to leave early morning. Their travel from Y Kingdom took them three weeks to completely arrive at the gate of the Central. 31. The Central A.N. Dedicated to at Rabi Takuzu. This crazy update is for you. Before entering the central, unlike the Y Kingdom and other kingdoms, you have to display your cultivation. When it's astounding, you'll enter the gate without concerning yourself with entrance fee. When it's only mediocre, you have to pay. When a person with no cultivation, you have to pay a great amount of beast cores and spiritual crystals and have to be at least accompanied by two cultivators. This system alone displays the importance of the strongest in the central. When Meixiang's team entered, their real cultivation are displayed while Meixiang only showed her fire attribute only in an ordinary level. The possess given to them are with grades. Red are given to those with exceptional cultivation. Yellow with above ordinary, blue to those with ordinary level of cultivation. Violet are given to those with no cultivation. Maroon on the other hand are those with an exceptional ability except cultivation. Among these are Beast Tamer, Refiner, Master Refiner, Healer, Pharmacist, Alchemist, Scribe Master, and other profession that was highly look up in the Central. The Summoner on the other hand is with a Golden Pass. When they enter the gate of the Central, they are greeted by a nine years old boy named Jin whom guided them the ins and outs of the Central. The Central have five powerhouses, the Mercenary Group, the Beast Taming Organization, the Heavenly Doctor Association, Refiner Guild, and the Central College. Once you enter the Central, you have to know these organizations and their emblems so you wouldn't mess with them. The Beast Taming Organization, the Heavenly Doctor Association, Refiner Guild, and the Central College are led by the appointed president while the mercenary group is represented by the strongest mercenary group that was chosen in mercenary tournaments celebrated once every five years. The young boy named Jin is non-stop talking about the particulars of the Central while they are on their way to their inn. When they reach the plaza they stop B when they notice the unusual crowd. Everyone are looking at the elevated platform in the very middle of the ground. The young boy Jin whispered but in an audible voice. It seems the daughter of the beast taming organization is going to test her aptitude today. In the Central, it's a mandatory to test the aptitude of a child in public. You see that girl, she is the young miss of the Shin family, her name is Shin Ai. The current patriarch first son of the Shin family is also the current president of Beast Taming Organization and also the young miss Shin's father. Everyone are looking at the figure of a little girl in the middle of the elevated platform when a sudden character appeared on her side. Magic. A blue ball of light and brown ball of light appeared dancing at the magic character that soon floats toward the little girl Shin Ai's body. When the light fully entered her body. Another character suddenly appeared in front of her. Stunned, the crowd gone dumb. Summoner, a young boy shouted from the crowd. Everyone woke up from their reverie. The little boy Jin accompanying Meixiang's group is also full of amazement. Another summoner was born. And not only that, she is a dual element. This, 
this, the powerhouses would be in uproar for sure. When he saw the unsurprised faces of Meixiang's group, he restrained himself to shook his head and just helplessly sigh with the ignorance of these people. He then patiently explained, that girl, no no the great summoner Shinai is the first dual element magician summoner in the whole realm, not only that, you see the color gold of that character summoner, it indicates she's a rare beast summoner, let's not mention how bright that magic character is that indicates her aptitude is of a genius, a perverted genius, everyone simply nodded restraining themselves looking at Meixiang's way, they can only shout inwardly, what amazing dual element summoner that brightness is just like an old lamp's light compared to their little xiang's results a year ago okay suddenly tenling innocently asked what about if the summoner character is in a green color jin tilted his head trying to process tenling's question green summoners are only gold and silver in color silver for weapon summoners and gold for beast summoners there's no such existence make xiang's subordinates suddenly felt a weird sensation creeping toward them they slowly look at their little Xiang who is standing at the side nodding her head slowly like she's learning a new thing from the little boy Jin's words. Yes they never saw their young Miss Summoner Phantom, they don't believe she's oblivious with this topic, they then just helplessly sigh inwardly, again, they then look around how the crowd is still in uproar with the little girl Shinai's result, did they look too highly of the people of the central? They look dumb okay, that's your perverted genius, that is just a fart of our little Xiang okay, 32. You again, an, you see guys this reader right relationship is getting healthier and healthier lol. Really seriously I recently getting visible feedbacks from you guys and it really made my day. Thank you, everyone, enjoy. The little boy Jin accompany them to an inn and before he leaves, he was paid by auntie Tan as the team's treasurer. He was also asked to be their guide tomorrow which he happily accepted. Being a guide is one of the lowest occupation in the central. They barely survive by doing menial jobs and paid in a low rate that they use to buy their foods. The next day, early in the morning, the little boy was already waiting outside the inn and was called by Bei Aizihan inside their room instructed by Meixiang. When Meixiang saw the little boy, she raised her left eyebrow and didn't talk. They then accompanied by their little guide to stroll around the central, they went to buy their essentials first, then wander around the plaza, a place where small trades usually takes place, Tanling pull the whole team to where the people are gathered most, the stall they went to is currently organizing a stone gambling, two players will put down the same amount they agreed to, they will choose one stone each. The onlookers can also bet whom among the two picked a stone with higher value or inside. After the bet are placed, the mud around the ore will be removed and the ore appraiser will judge the ores. Whoever have the higher value of ore inside is the winner. The winner will earn the bet money placed by the other player and the ore he paid. On the other hand, the onlookers who placed their bets in the winning player will gather the amount placed by those who placed their bets on the failed player and will divide it according to the rate of the money they bet. When the aura appraiser gave his judgment, Tanling shouted when he won the bet. He is the only one who put a bet on the second player so naturally, he won all the gambled money of the onlooker who placed their bets to the first player. This is all thanks to Meixiang. The next game, Bei Aizahan, and the others also placed the bet where Meixiang said, another round was won by them once again. The other onlookers are observing this and some doubtedly follow Tanling's bets starting with just small amounts. When they won one after another the gambling of the onlookers are no longer profitable as everyone is betting on where Meixiang instructed. Tanling frown and look at the crowd full of hostility. Little Xiang, let's go to the other stalls. These people are starting to eye on you. Meixiang was about to nod when the tray of stones are replaced by another batch of stones. When the organizer of the stall asked of the next players, Meixiang stepped forward without any hesitation. The people who is present and saw Meixiang's luck on the past bets unknowingly took a step back. No one stepped forward to be her opponent. Part of the crowd started to recruit other people. The crowd gets bigger and the new people joined the crowd. The old part of the crowd didn't speak and grip their betting monies looking at Meixiang, ready to earn a lot today. Not far away from the stall where the stone gambling is operating, a girl in Lila Kan Fu gets down from a carriage went straight to the crowd. The crowd voluntarily give way when they saw the lady in Lila Kan Fu and her entourage. 
When they saw the emblem on the armor of the soldiers, they all recognized the origin of the lady in lilac. This is the symbol of Y Kingdom, a grade A kingdom. Kingdoms are graded from highest to lowest as S, A, B, C, D, E, and F currently. There are only four S kingdoms which are ranked as four most powerful countries. A grade A kingdom is only one step away to become an S grade and this Y kingdom is the strongest and best candidate to become the next S grade nation. Make Xiang's lips arched when she saw the lady in lilac dress. It is the little girl whom they encounter way back at the Y kingdom. It is the day before they get inside the white forest. It's the lady in peach dress whom wanted to buy the entire collection of the newly out dress and ended up buying the entire shop. The lady in lilac dress gets irritated with Make Xiang's smile. She is named Wai Manren, a princess of Wai Kingdom. She just arrived here at the Central a week ago to participate in the entrance exam of the upcoming enrollment at the Central Academy. She was strolling around the plaza of Central when she saw a familiar face outside her carriage window. That time when they met, she can't reveal her identity and can only use her resources to insecure Xiang. but the situation went the opposite of her expectation. She didn't expect to meet her again but luck seems on her side. This princess will play, when Wai Manren said this. No one refuted. Wai Manren walks toward Meixiang's direction. This princess didn't expect to see Dan Meixiang. Meixiang faintly smiled. Meixiang didn't expect the princess of Wai Kingdom would remember Meixiang's name. This princess remembers every single debt. Meixiang asked innocently, a debt? Meixiang didn't know the princess of Wai Kingdom considered such debt. Is it a debt of losing face or losing money the princess is talking? Please enlighten this ignorant Meixiang. Why Manren was about to faint in anger. This peasant is really deliberate. Would the princess want to bet the same amount she spent when she bought the whole shop? Why Manren tried to sound herself calm. Let's bet the biggest amount you have. Meixiang didn't oppose and estimated the amount of one of her other interspatial rings contain as she can't remove her currently worn interspatial ring which is hiding her summoner's sign. Ten millions of plus then. The crowd was dumbfounded. This makes Yang have few golds and silvers. Ten millions of plus worth of beast cores and spiritual crystals. Is it a bet then, princess of Y Kingdom? The crowd look at makes Yang in days. Is this a tycoon in disguise? They then slowly look at Y Manren who was also caught off guard. Although she's a princess of an A-grade kingdom, she never had such amount of money. Y Manren then tried to stabilize herself and find her momentum. Ten million? Who would bring such amount outside? Make Xiang didn't mind to explain and put out three interspatial ring. She feel one after another which of it contains the amount she said. She put down one of it on the table and hide the other two. The crowd almost spit blood. Three interspatial ring? No. There's another interspatial ring on her index finger. Interspatial sack is a luxury to other kingdoms but it's not that extraordinary sight seeing a person with interspatial sack in the central. On the other hand, interspatial ring is owned by those really can afford. These are members of powerhouses or leaders of other organizations. But this little girl have four. Why Manran gritted her teeth? This princess didn't bring such amount. This princess is not ignorant to make herself be a target of delinquents just to boast around. Makes Yang chuckled. Central is a place with a single rule of the strongest train. Killing isn't a crime. Why would the princess have such a small concern? The crowd is eating popcorn with the two ladies fighting through words. The princess of Y Kingdom just called the little girl an ignorant of bringing such possession and showing it off to boast but the little girl named Dan Meixiang just wisely answered that these delinquents are small concern to her. Not only she blatantly said she and her confidants are strong but also said the Y Kingdom can't afford to solve such a small concern. This Meixiang understood, the princess of Y Kingdom didn't bring such amount. The princess is from an A-grade kingdom of course such small amount is not a problem to a princess of Y kingdom. The princess, when this makes Yang first time saw her, got to know her she's with a hobby to buy a whole shop in ordinary days. Everyone choke. Then this can only negotiated by A. Makes Yang smiled more and look at Y Manren in a challenging gaze raising her chin. Waver? Not only she continued to mention the status and Y Manren's origin but she also gave her a challenging gaze. This gaze was understood by Y Manren as a challenge towards not only to her but also to the Y Kingdom. Yes, a waiver then. Y Manren's confidant are too late to stop their princess quick response. If they did, 
they can only lost their faces as a people of Y Kingdom, they can only hope she will win the bet. After some minutes, the waiver is done in together with the interspatial ring of Mexiang. It was put on the betting table. Mexiang and Y Manren gave a hundred dollars each for the price of the stones. The both of them wrote the number of the stone they chose. The organizer of the small event then showed the numbers to the crowd. The assistants of the stall pick and place the chosen stones on the table in front of Mexiang and Y Manren. The audience can now start to place their bets. Tan Ling gave a signal to Bei Aizihun. Bei Aizihun looked at Old Leng. The both nodded and followed according to Tan Ling's script. I -u 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 is that the genius princess on the news who is known to recognize Stin? Grandpa. What? What? Old Leng who seems to realize something coughed loudly and simply gave an interspatial sack to Bei Aizihun and whispered in an audible voice. Bet everything to the princess. Quick. Why Manren smiled arrogantly when she saw Bei Aizihun put his bet on her side. Part of the crowd who knew those two are Mexiang's company can't help but twitch their faces. If they are not here earlier, they would be in rash to put their bet on the princess of Y Kingdom. They then smartly go with the flow and also put an act nodding their heads continuously saying good things and fake testimony about Y Manren in an audible voice to be heard by the newly appeared crowd. Y Manren raised her head more showing full of arrogance. The newly appeared part of the crowd then bet on Y Manren's side. Before the bet ended, Tan Ling put his bet on Mexiang's side carrying Old Leng and Bei Aizihun's real bet. The smart side of the crowd followed when the aura praiser appeared. The crowd is not at ease, Mexiang is the most relaxed. Y Manren and her confidants are the most anxious. They remove first the mud and sand of the chosen stone of Y Manren. When a cyan colored stone appeared, everyone is in uproar. When they heard the aura praiser's voice, they confirm that they have seen right. Serendibites and awe. Only two is existing in the whole realm. One is in the Museum of the Kuan Nation, while the other is possessed by the Lady of Lian family of the Central. Although this is in small size, it's still the rare Serendibites and awe. This one is priced as one and a half million of tls. Everyone is in turmoil. That's one and a half million worth of tls. Those who placed their bets on Y Manren is now fantasizing they're not yet one tls. Y Manren is now hundred times more arrogant than before. Her confidants gave a sigh of relief inwardly. The awe appraiser then moved to make Xiang stone. When the awe was cleaned and a white sphere appeared, the appraiser can't help but frown thinking of something. He moved his apparatus in checking the stone completely and suddenly he stood straight. Gulping, he moved away his heavy apparatus away from the white ball like he's scared it would break the ore. He tried to stay calm but his palm is in sweat, he explained in an unhurried voice for everyone can understand. This ore is called Moon of the Sea. In ancient times, when mermen are still existing, they said the cries of these creatures turned to become pearls and can heal creatures aside from their own kind. If their tears can heal creatures, their own eyes can bring back a person who is almost dying. This item that can bring back the dead is called Moon of the Sea. The crowd is in silence. They gone dumb. This thing. I'm scared I can't place a price to it. It's priceless. Ow. Then did I want everyone turn their heads to make Xiang. Can you wait for us to process things, little miss? We're about to spit blood here okay? Why? Yes. Good. Make Xiang then threw the moon of the sea casually inside the sacred book and get back her interspatial ring and the waiver Y Manren signed. You, you dare. Y Manren suddenly shouted. Make Xiang smiled. I dare. Throwing the waiver inside her interspatial ring, she said once again in a challenging smile but lazy eyes. Oops, I just dare. Can you afford to offend this princess and the Y Kingdom? Make Xiang faintly smiled. The princess must not know the unspoken rule inside the central. Why Manren said in a challenging voice but still in a calm manner, the little girl must think this princess origin, Y Kingdom, is weak. Make Xiang slowly shook her head still looking at Y Manren and said slowly, Offend no one whom you don't know his origin. You seems no ignorant at all. Have this Make Xiang gave you a sign this Make Xiang is from an ordinary background? She asked but not asking. Why Manren unconsciously step back when she saw the now cold and indifferent eyes of Make Xiang. This is to give Why Manren and the crowd a warning. She is now possessing a priceless mineral naturally Make Xiang needs to plant fear to them so they would think twice before they mess with her and her subordinates. Make Xiang only use the unspoken rule of the capital. Strongest train. Strength. Two things can define your strength, 
your own strength and your backer's strength, makes Yang just use their unknown identity to their advantage and will continue to use this until they can already afford to offend everyone in the central. 33. Viandin Pavilion When the group of Makes Yang left, the part of the crowd suddenly realized something. That old man and that young man is a scam. Old Leng and Bei Aizihan scolded and cursed by the crowd on their heads are oblivious to this. Tan Ling who is the mastermind of their act is currently on his reverie fantasizing of what items he'll buy with his loaded treasury. Tan Ling with a good mood follows his little Xiang. Tan Ling started to point at the different gambling stalls but only ignored by Mei Xiang. The whole team also didn't care at Tan Ling's persuasion. They are not as thick-skinned as him. Tan Ling who was ignored by everyone then started to tease their little tour guide when he sees his pockets bulging with coins. I it seems little Jin earns a lot today. The little boy didn't bring any amount today but Mei Xiang gave their little tour guide a money while the bets are going on. Mei Xiang said it's his salary in advance, without hesitation. He cast his bet where Mei Xiang pointed again and again gambling all the amount in every bet. Their little tour guide didn't care of Tan Ling's words. He continually guides the team and only talks when he answers questions regarding the central. They are still strolling around the plaza when a sudden shout rang. A man with well-built body is weakly running and pleading for help. Around his neck is a thick metal that the man is trying to remove but only fails. The people around are indifferent towards the man and try their best to ignore him. Makes Yang just observe from the sidelines so her subordinates did so. A man in a gold attire appeared accompanied by his entourage the same as the disheveled man. Their necks are with thick metals around. The man in gold attire is laughing like enjoying the scene he is seeing while he's playing a small object on his fingers. The ticking sound gets louder and quicker. When the man in gold attire clicked the item on his hand, the head of the disheveled man suddenly exploded. His flesh and blood spurted and his headless body is lying on the ground. The people around are with mixed reactions. Others continued walking like they are strolling at a beautiful place and everything is going fine. Some diverted their gazes and some those brave enough are looking at the now headless man's body. TSK 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 I keep on suggesting Viandin to change these neck rings into something neat that no blood will spill. Now this young master needs to clean this dirt. He then gave a signal to his slaves to clean the mess on the ground in central. Killing is not a sin but cleaning the mess is a must. Some people around are in a complicated mood with the casual remark of the man in gold. They gripped their possess and tried their best not to be noticed. When Mei Xiang's team returned to their inn, they then bombarded their little tour guide multiple of questions. It's Viandin Pavilion. They are operating in the capital for only a hundred years but their roots are deeper than some of the powerhouses of the central. It's hard to enter the central but it's harder to stay in the central. This hundred of years seems short but the Viandin Pavilion's strength in that span of hundred of years establishing inside the central never diminish and continue to get stronger day by day. They can offer multiple services that the five powerhouses provide. Beast taming, refining scepters and weapons, pills and elixirs, special services, and they also provide trainings exclusive to their employees, although not the best as the powerhouses provided. It's all in good quality. They also own the biggest auction house in the central. In this auction house they auction their higher eight items and also servants. This is their main service that is not available to other powerhouses they hunt servants and sell them. These servants are mostly captured outside the central. Ten years ago, the five powerhouses gave an order to not allow the Viandin Pavilion hunt servants that is a citizen of the central. Fifteen years ago. Viandin Pavilion entered slave trade and become unique with these neck rings they put on their slaves to sell. Five years later, the five powerhouses prohibited the Viandin Pavilion to not hunt citizens of Central as the members under them or at least their families are implicated with this trade. Mei Xiang then understood the other people's reaction with the casual remark of the man in gold robe. Once you entered the Central. You are not yet recognized as a citizen but only a tourist. The possess given on the entrance of the central can be soon processed and have your citizenship once you establish an organization or join organization established in the central. Mei Xiang no longer have concern with it after understanding everything. The others keep on asking the little boy unending different questions about the central that their little tour guide easily answered still in a calm manner. Hours passed and it's almost dark outside. Mei Xiang who is quietly eating Auntie Tan's delicacies talks once again when the little boy bids his farewell. What is your name? 
The little boy was not shocked they'd been exposed. Observing the young miss leading this group, he can tell she's not ordinary in any way. The little boy calmly said, Kin. Only the two of you? Yes. We are planning to settle a camp here and we are not yet familiar with the ins and out of the central. Your brother seems no dumb and you are smart. I want the both of you to work with us. Make Xiang when she saw the boy early in the morning she can tell he's not the same boy as yesterday. She observes this little boy while their group is strolling around and fits perfectly to her taste. He's calm, observant, smart, and most importantly, he knows the ins and outs of the central. The little boy kin just like earlier, when he bets everything again and again following Mei Xiang's words. He didn't hesitate and said we'll do it. Earning money in the capital is hard especially to them who can't cultivate yet money and strength. They don't have it. They barely survive in the central with the money they earn to buy food and their citizenship card to ensure their safety from slave trade. Three months. They only need three months. Three months later, they can already test their aptitude and will surely be accepted by any organizations to be their disciples. Meixiang Xiang did expect his answer, nodding she said then sleep here tonight. Brother Ling, add a room for two. Brother Zip, brother Feng, and brother accompany little kin to their home and escort them back here. Auntie Tan, cook a big meal for dinner. Everyone, we'll have a discussion later after dinner. Dining hall. Everyone is in a good mood with the profit they earn today so they give their two little tour guides a welcome money. Although they are not officially part of their team, they consider the two like their little juniors. The dinner ended and they started to talk about the important matters. Three months later, the mercenary organization would open a test to accept new mercenary groups. Before this three months, we need to establish our camp in the central. Auntie Tan, you are in control of our financing. Follow Jin tomorrow to the east to see the best location to build our base. Bring brother and uncle Tan with you. The four powerhouses have their own territories. Mercenary organization is in the east. Refiner guild in the north. Beast taming organization in the south. Heavenly Doctor Association in the West and the Central Academy at the center. The four powerhouses are in control of the four gates to exit and enter the Central. Central Academy being at the center, although they didn't control one of these gates, Central Academy holds power as they are responsible of nurturing the cultivators of the entire Central. Old Leng, Brother Zip and Brother Ji. The three of you are responsible to do the transfer of the manor we saw earlier. Meixiang Xiang doesn't worry much of their safety as the combat puppets that they call now their shadow guards are with them. Because of Meixiang's Xiang's risen cultivation they can now reach up to ninth tier of martial artist and light magic, and sixth tier of the other Meixiang's Xiang's elements. This level of strength is considered strong in the central, not to mention the two ancient beasts Auntie Tan and Old Leng contracted, Brother Feng, Brother Ling, Brother Chun, follow me tomorrow. A week later. The three of you will participate in the enrollment of Central Academies. Central College of an eight academies under them. These eight academies accept students from age of 10 to 19. Once reached 20 years old, they will be assessed by the Central College. They all nodded without any hesitation. Their two little tour guides didn't respond. Jin is dumbfounded and Kin is thinking of something deeply. 34. Painting. A.N. Dedicated to Silent Underscore Angel 512. You made me remember of the genius doctor, one of the best cultivation book I read. I recommend North Knight's works, everyone, Make Xiang, Tan Ling, Tan Feng, Ping Chunhua, and Little Kin arrived at the center of the central where the academies are located. Although the central academy is distance away from where they came from, it's not impossible to arrive in a short span of time with the transportation array. The central is with total of five transportation array station located at the five territories of the five powerhouses. Although it's not owned by these powerhouses, they also profited by collecting taxes from the owner of these transportation arrays. Make Xiang and the others check in and in near the central academy. Make Xiang instructed Tan Feng and Ping Chunhui to cultivate, and Tan Ling to read prescriptions while she and the little tour guide Kin went out that day. You said yesterday Viandin Pavilion's auction house is located here. I wanted to go there. Viandin Pavilion have quarters to each of the five territories of the five powerhouses. Their main base where their auction house is located is at the center which is the territory of the Central Academy. Little Kin nodded and lead the way to Viandin Pavilion's base. Because auctions are held at night, the auction house is not yet open when the two arrived. 
The closed auction house is with a big signage outside of their grand auction tonight. This is the same information in one of the poster makes Yang saw when they stroll at the plaza yesterday. This is also the reason she decided to go here in advance. This grand auction only takes place when a unique item is to be auctioned. This is the reason Meix Yang was looking forward to this. Although the auction house is still close, their base is open. This is where Viandin Pavilion receives missions, accommodate their clients, and also where they sell their items. Meix Yang entered and her little tour guide follows. One of the employee accommodate them explaining them everything. The first floor is where they display their current available items, there is also lists of other items available to their other branches ready to be delivered anytime. From weapons to scepters, elixirs, martial artist scrolls, books of techniques, they indeed have it. The second floor is where the slaves are displayed and on the third floor is where they accept requests and special services. This special services are in high sky prices, Meix Yang said. I'm interested in one of the VIP rooms for the tonight's grand auction. The employee smiled and with apologetic tone he said, apologize to the young miss, the VIP rooms are long gone booked and even the ordinary seats are already taken. Meixiang already expected this, she calmly said, you must have special rooms for your special clients, miss. I have a rare item here and wanted to auction it. The employee seeing the serious demeanor of the little girl. He straightened his back and respectfully lead the way to the fourth floor. Meix Yang was taken to a large room full of apparatus on the walls. Looking at these, Meix Yang already know the functions of these equipments. She was greeted by an old man in pure white robe. When seated, Meix Yang put down a small bottle to the tray provided. The appraiser wore his white gloves and carefully examined the small bottle with water inside. The spirituality of this water is indeed abundant. This thing. You obtain it from the Nyon Mountain? Meix Yang was a little dumb with the old man's words. She already formulated a lie where did she get the spiritual water but the old man suddenly mentioned the Nyon Mountain. Of course, Meix Yang knows that Nyon Mountain the old man is talking about but she can't tell why this old man connects it to the spiritual water of the phantom world. Meix Yang then changed her direction and asked, I don't know how the senior knows? The old man was shocked when the little girl confirmed the origin of the item. Everyone knows the Nyon Mountain is with a cave at the very center where at night, a drop of spiritual water will descend almost the same existing in Phantom World spiritual water. This drop of water contains the accumulated spirituality of the whole Nyon Mountain. Meix Yang nodded understanding what is happening. She read about the Nyon Mountain before naturally she knows almost everything about it. Nyon contains five peaks and these peaks surrounding a forest that this old man and others believe where the spiritual water descends. This is the reason Meix Yang is ignorant with this issue because the books inside the sacred book contains only facts and not gossips. Meix Yang look at the old man almost worshipping the bottle of water in front of him. If Meixiang's subordinates saw how the old man almost worship this spiritual water they casually drink and sometimes use to bath, they will spit a mouthful of blood. Seeing the perfect spirituality of this, I can only say the news about it seems unreliable. It's not almost the same as the phantom world's spiritual water but I can say it's the same, the old man appraiser said seriously. Meixiang is indeed with the greatest mental power for keeping that stoic face in such situation. I'm just curious, the Nyon Mountain is protected by a powerful beast. How can you possess the spiritual water only seen at the very center of the mountain? True to the old man's words, Nyon Mountain is guarded by a powerful beast that even Meixiang can't tell what beast it is as the sacred book concealed it. Meixiang's eyes reflect sadness and said, our group is powerful ready to confront the beast but didn't expect contains that kind of power. Most of our subordinates died and we who are still alive barely survived. This drop of spiritual water, I want to auction it to forget the painful journey of our team and also to not put our subordinates deaths in vain. The old man understood. Seeing the hardship your group confronted, this old man will request to the higher ups to only get 5% of the profit. Meix Yang nodded still her eyes reflect sadness. Do you have any request for this item? Meixiang shook her head. 
They then sign the papers and about to lead Mei Xiang out the room when a playful thoughts appear on Mei Xiang's mind. She stopped and looked at the old man in an hesitant manner, she said. This, if the transaction went well, I will persuade my subordinates to also auction the spiritual water they possess in the same auction house. The old man was startled. You you mean you still have more of the spiritual water? Mei Xiang nodded weakly. The show was done and with all the important figures of Viandin Pavilion currently present, escorted Mei Xiang out of the premises full of respect. The little kin following Mei Xiang restrained himself from asking of what item Mei Xiang offered to the Viandin Pavilion. Before it gets dark, Mei Xiang together with Tan Ling, Ping Chunhua, Tan Feng, and little kin, arrived outside the Viandin Pavilion's auction house. The parking area is full of grandiose carriages with different emblems stating which clan or organization they belong. There is only a single space available. The carriage where Mei Xiang and the others rented was about to accommodate that space when another carriage was with the same plan. The both carriages stops. When the commotion was heard, Mei Xiang stops from her track and look back only to see the coachman of their rented carriage was talking to a driver of another carriage. An employee of Viandin Pavilion meddling in between suddenly a man in aristocratic attire appeared. Mei Xiang and the rest went near where the commotion is. When Mei Xiang's team appeared, the employee once again explained what is happening. The space is prearranged beforehand. It is according to the seats and rooms booked by the costumers. This servant wanted to see the two parties' tickets. Even the appearance of the two carriages are in obviously heaven and earth difference. The employee don't want to take the risk of offending anyone. This is a lesson a smart employee knows while working in the land full of deception. A lot of low car around the corner and being rich is not at the top of the pyramid. A pale young man appeared and walks toward the man in an aristocratic attire. The man in aristocratic attire respectfully said, Young master, this matter is yet to be solved. Please enter the VIP room first without this confidant. The pale young man didn't mind his confidant's plea and showed his ticket to the employee of the Viandin Pavilion. The employee confirmed the authenticity of the ticket and politely informed Mei Xiang's side. Mei Xiang didn't receive such ticket when she's having a transaction with the old man earlier. She then casually showed the token jade the old man gave her after they signed the papers. The employee was baffled when he recognized the jade. He then bowed his head respectfully and carefully said, The distinct guest arrives. The employee apologized from not recognizing the jade member of the Viandin Pavilion. The employee is calm outside but his heart is in turmoil sighing in relief inwardly. Good thing he didn't offend them even with such ordinary carriage. The employee signaled the other employees around to guide the rented carriage of Mei Xiang to the locked parking space. Mei Xiang nodded. She then looked at the pale young man and his confidant. It's this little girl's mistake for not giving a notice to her servant. The pale young man who is observing Mei Xiang's face thoroughly replied, This young man doesn't mind. Mei Xiang nodded and was led by the employee of the Viandin Pavilion on their way to their exclusive room. When Mei Xiang's back was no longer in view, the pale young man curved his lips still looking at the entrance of the auction house. She's way better looking than that scumbag's painting, Crown Prince, let's go inside. Yes, 35. Shopping for brothers When the manager of Viandin Pavilion exited the room, the two, Tan Feng and Ping Chunhua, Cough stiffly one after another looking at Mei Xiang's way, tumbling on the other side, just like always, he checks every nook and cranny of the luxurious room given to them. He gave a thumbs up to Mei Xiang and said with a tone full of devotion, Little Xiang, you're too amazing. I'm always amazing. Mei Xiang casually state while eating the delicacies provided. Tan Feng and Ping Chunhua helplessly sigh with the stories of their little tour guides. Naturally they know how powerful this Viandin Pavilion is. Earning this kind of treatment from their main branch is not a simple thing anyone can achieve even the royalties of top kingdoms. Even without knowing the specifics of this Jade member, they can say their little Xiang is regarded as a very important guest. They really overestimated the people of the central right. The host appeared on the stage and announced the beginning of the auction. One after another, the items are auctioned and bought in a high sky prices. Mei Xiang and the others are not interested with any of the items displayed. They have better scepters, books, and technique scrolls their little Xiang provided. Even the interspatial ring they auction is worthless compared to theirs. Aside from bigger space, 
The interspatial ring they possess can also be invisible once you wore it to protect from delinquents. As the auction goes on, the items are getting more and more valuable but nothing catches Meixiang's attention until a big cage was delivered to the center of the stage. When the cloth covering it was removed, a big black cat appeared, restrained by shackles and special metal made the warlock weak and helpless. Bayonet Black Panther with current cultivation of ninth stage of peak level possessing dark magic. The audience once again in uproar, it's a dark magic warlock and in ninth stage at that, a pity. A pity dark magician is rare so contracting it would be impossible. While the people below are helpless, Meixiang and the others are thinking of their brother Zihun, a martial artist, to contract that dark magic warlock. Meixiang was looking intently at the warlock, it's a bayonet black panther, born as a ninth stage early level dark magic warlock. It means this beast's clan is powerful that once they are born, they can already change to their human form. The Bayonet Black Panther is with a long lifespan that's the reason their cultivation is much slower. This explains the panther on the stage is only with ninth stage peak level even with his current age. With a minimum of a million tills and no lower than a hundred thousand tills to add. The auction for the Bayonet Black Panther starts. You may cast your bids. Silence. No one bids. The audience understood. This is a dark magic attribute and dark magicians are rare. A million from room 2H. Everyone below look up to see the private rooms at the second floor. They are shock first then started to speculate the identity of the man inside the room 2H. When everyone thought no one would follow, the host once again announced. A million and a hundred from room 2B. 2 million from room 2H, 3 million from room 2B. While the bid is getting higher and higher, the onlookers already speculated the people behind these rooms. One must be the Ryo Kingdom. Ryo Kingdom is an S level kingdom, just like the powerful kingdoms. Ryo Kingdom already established their mercenary inside the central named Ryo Mercenary. Everyone knows the crown prince of Ryo Kingdom is a dark magician and a talented one. They also know he had not yet contracted a beast yet so the probability of their suspicion is great. The other room to be, they speculated it's the beast taming organization. Among the five powerhouse, this organization is the hottest lately as their young lady just test her aptitude resulted as a dual magician and summoner. All the few dark magicians they know are already with contracted beasts removing the Ryo Kingdom Prince from the list. The only one who can use this warlock is the beast taming organization. This warlock can be tamed and trained by the beast taming organization. Room 2B bids 5 million tils. Everyone can only sigh helplessly. Even possessing a dark magic, they can't still contract that warlock. They are not willing to spend much for only one item okay. They don't even have that kind of amount. Room 3C bids 10 million tils. Everyone look up at the very top floor of the auction house. 3C, it's a jade member of Viandin Pavilion. And the man bids 10 million right? Going once, going twice. Silence. The men inside the rooms 2H and 2B no longer bid. Sold. The Bayonet Black Panther was sold to the jade member from room 3C. While the people below are still speculating of the identity of the man in room 3C, Meixiang is contented with where the unpaid 10 million debt of Princess of the Y Kingdom spent. Little Xiang. The central is too expensive. Yeah, so the three of you have to get stronger faster so this young miss can collect your debts. Xiang Xiang, our bribe soon to be delivered to you. Little Xiang, can mother's bribe be considered as our bribe as a family? I'm not included. I will earn the bribe myself. I, ooh, ooh. This big brother is just joking. This big brother will soon be promoted as a pharmacist naturally can earn his own bribe to little Xiang. The little tour guide on the sideline is obediently sitting at the side. He can't help but wonder this group's identity. The bantering of the people at the room 3C stops when they heard the next item. This item is supposed to be the main event of the tonight's auction but demoted and only ranked as the second with the reason of the arrival of a more valuable item. But this doesn't decrease the quality of this item. A young man with thick metal ring on his neck and shackles on both hands and feet appeared on the middle of the stage. This young man with red hair was looking at the crowd full of hostility with his purple eyes. The crowd is in uproar even without mentioning the details of the item. A red hair means this young man is a wilt. Wilts are with red hair and are known as strong people even before turning 10. At the age 10, just like normal people. 
they can start to cultivate duchi but a lot stronger than normal cultivators as their physiques are stronger than normal people. The history of their clan puts them to become slaves and are used for heavy labors. Although in the central, stronger reigns, wilts are considered lowly beings by everyone. The uproar of the crowd isn't about this young man being a wilt but his eyes, the color purple eyes are considered bad luck that would bring calamity to whoever he's with. The auctioneer calmed down the crowd and explains the description of the young man. This wilt is no ordinary wilt but with a body of Xenia constitution. The crowd is in uproar. Xenia constitution. This is only seen in the ancient books. A man with Xenia constitution is with ability to change his body with any minerals he holds. It means he can adapt and change his body with any strong ores. Adding the young man is a wilt that is strong and for surely can cultivate duchi. His ability will surely be deadly, after the auctioneer stated the specifics of the young man. He added, the neck ring and the shackles are especially made for the wilt so there would be no worries of owning and slaving it. He then started to announce the bid is now open. Silence. No one bids. Mei Xiang inside the top room is now looking at the young man full of interest. Little Xiang, do you want to buy the red-haired man? Mei Xiang hum. It's a wilt with Xenia constitution. The young man's strength would be a great help to them. And most importantly, the young man is such a beauty. The auctioneer then announced, Room 2A bids 5 million for the wilt with Xenia constitution. The audience is in uproar. A rich tycoon once again appeared, and even willing to buy a wilt that will bring calamity to him. No one bids again. Everyone understood, the man in Room 2A is the only crazy man present. They are not crazy enough to buy a bad luck okay. Going once, going twice, Mei Xiang at the top floor who also aims for the red-haired young man raised her left eyebrow to the direction of room 2A. Little Xiang, should I drop our bid now? Mei Xiang smiled and shook her head. No need. Little Xiang, Mei Xiang no longer speak. The wilt with Xenia cultivation was sold to the gold member of room 2A. Mei Xiang rang the bell and the employee of Viandin Pavilion outside entered. Mei Xiang gave him a small note and said some few words. The employee bowed respectfully and exited the room. Outside Mei Xiang's room, the stage is once again in uproar with the last item the auctioneer introduced. It's a spiritual water in par with the spiritual water of the phantom world. The bid started from 10 million and even the audience from ordinary seats bids. Until it reaches 20 million the people from the private rooms started to rise the offer. The man in room 2A was about to bid when the employee of the Viandin Pavilion delivered a message. 36. Too beautiful. A.N. Dedicated to at Divinum again. Yep. Yep. I saw you on my note ifs every time I update a chapter. I already memorize your username TBH. Thank you so much for the consistent votes. Enjoy and be safe, everyone. The spiritual water from Nyon Mountain was sold to the Jade member of Room 3B. While the whole auction house is in uproar, the 3C private room is in silence. Inside the room is the man in aristocratic attire and the pale young master looking at Mei Xiang who is seated on the opposite side with her subordinates. Little Mei Xiang greets the young master. This young master is called Gan Junji. This little girl is grateful to the young master Gan Junji for accepting her invitation. Gan Junji nodded and put down the piece of paper the employee given to him. The employee said this was sent by the young Miss Mei Xiang. This was indeed written and sent by this little Mei Xiang. When Mei Xiang saw Gan Junji at the parking area earlier, she can tell at first glance his body is with poison and its complications. The paper sent to him is the detailed symptoms of the poison Gan Junji's body must suffering to catch his attention. The poison inside young master Junji's body is called Yuin Pin. It is to kill the host slowly and painfully, although it wouldn't affect his cultivation. The poison will torture the host with pain all over the body at night and weakens at daytime. The man in aristocratic attire retorted, and you know the right medication for the young master? He didn't read the paper Mei Xiang sent and only ordered by his young master to go here abandoning to bid the spiritual water that may heal his young master. Naturally he is full of hostility towards Mei Xiang. When he notices his young master's gaze he bows his head and said, The slave apologize for lacking of respect. The slave is with young master looking for help from pharmacist even alchemist but only failed. The young master even asked the help of a light magician. Mei Xiang didn't mind his last statements and said, this Mei Xiang can indeed heal the young master. 
Gan Junji was calm still looking at Meik Xiang intently, it's like what that scumbag's words, this little girl is not only a beauty but also interesting, he then asked, then this young master must possess something the young Miss Meik Xiang took interest, Meik Xiang smiled and blatantly said, the young master indeed have it, it's the red haired young man the young master just bid, Gan Junji raised both of his eyebrow and asked in a teasing voice, Oh, the young Miss Meik Xiang wanted a wilt that can bring calamity to be her servant? Meik Xiang smiled and said, Indeed, this little Meik Xiang wanted a beautiful wilt with Xenia constitution to be her subordinate. Gan Junji chuckled, This little girl is indeed interesting. It seems he's not the only smart person here to be interested with that wilt with Xenia constitution. If the young Miss Meik Xiang can heal this young master, then it's a deal. Meik Xiang nodded. Then can this little Meik Xiang do it here? Gan Junji caught off guard. Here? Now? Little Meik Xiang can't wait and take the young man with Xenia constitution tonight. The young master wouldn't mind? Gan Junji's eyes are deep. If the young Miss Meik Xiang can solve the young master's poison tonight then this young master wouldn't mind and would even be grateful. It's here then. The others may take their leave. Tan Ling, Tan Feng, Ping Chunhua, and Little Kin understood. They took their leave without hesitation. Gan Junji gave his signal to his confidant, the man reluctantly follows. When only the two of them left inside the room, Meik Xiang expanded her mental strength at the entire room to hide her power to be detected from outsiders. She then started to do her business. A small ball of light appeared on her right hand. Gan Junji's relaxed face is now in disbelief. A light magician. Not only that, the little girl is in seventh stage middle level. Meik Xiang can indeed hide her cultivation to other cultivators if she wanted to. But once she performs a certain element or martial arts, the cultivator with stronger cultivation compared to that certain magic she performed, can feel her real cultivation in that certain element. It means Gan Junji is with a cultivation in par or higher than 7th stage middle level. The small ball of light floated towards Gan Junji and entered his body. When the small of light ball expanded to Gan Junji's body, Make Xiang's eyes shines and restrained herself from smiling. While controlling the small ball of light with her right hand, Make Xiang put out another small ball of light on her left hand and do the same. The process is too quick that Gan Junji didn't notice Make Xiang's sideline work. It only took five minutes and everything was done. Make Xiang surrendered her mental power and look at Gan Junji who is still in daze. Meik Xiang smiled and said, Young Master Gan Junji must already felt his condition is better than before. Gan Junji coughs waking himself for being dumb and then stabilize himself. He nodded and didn't speak. Still mesmerized with what just happened. Then Young Master Gan Junji must be a man of his words and willing to give up the red-haired boy to this little Meik Xiang. Yes, indeed. This young master is just surprised with the young Miss ability. Meik Xiang just smiled. The two then exited the room. Tang Ling and the others didn't ask so with the follower of Gan Junji, they went where they can check out the items they bought. Before their group can show their cards to the employee, a voice rang in the hallway, it's a beautiful young girl in white Han Fu walks in hurried pace towards Gan Junji, brother Ji must be here to obtain his item, Gan Junji didn't give a glance to the young miss in white and ordered his confidant to pay for his item. Only few are at the area and didn't mind such view. Although they know the identities of the two, they themselves are not with low identities. The people present are here to claim their high sky prized items naturally they are not from ordinary backgrounds. The young miss in white hand food didn't mind the indifferent treatment of Gan Junji as she's already accustomed to it. But when she saw Gan Junji's treatment towards a little girl, she can't help but frown. She look at Meik Xiang's beautiful face and feel threatened. She is Gan Junji's betrothed. Naturally she feels hostile towards any young miss her betrothed will give this kind of gaze. She didn't care before as her fiancé is cold to everyone but now seeing how her betrothed smile to the young miss, she can't help but felt hatred. When Gan Junji's confidant came back, he gave the already paid token to his young master. Gan Junji then gave it to Meik Xiang and said a few words. Meik Xiang bids her farewell. Carrying two tokens with her, she was accompanied by an employee of Viandin Pavilion to a door. The Jade members Bayonet Black Panther is here. Meik Xiang nodded and entered the room. She asked the key of the cage and shackles of the warlock to the employees inside the room and asked them to get out. 
they follow her order full of hesitation. When the only two of them are left inside the room, Meixiang Yang walks toward the cage and opened it without any care of the killing intent of the warlock inside. The beast is caught off guard with the little girl's courage. He then thought it's not a courage but stupidity. He was about to attack the little girl when Meixiang's Xiang's mental power runs towards him. He only noticed what the little girl is trying to do when Meixiang Xiang already completed her beast taming. The Bryonette Black Panther noticed the unique totem the little girl drawn to his mental ground. He was tried to tamed multiple times by the different beast tamers of Viandin Pavilion. Naturally he can see the difference of the young girl's technique. He can also now see the fluctuation of qi inside the little girl's body that makes Yang didn't conceal. He's in disbelief when he saw her current cultivation. Six elements. Not only that, she can also practice martial arts. Can cultivate both magic qi and du qi. This body constitution only existed in ancient times. The Bryonette Black Panther changed to his human form so as the shackles adjusted and get smaller to lock his now smaller legs and wrist. Meixiang freed him to his shackles. My name is Han Mu. Mine is Dan Meixiang. You must not have a good experience here. Let's get out of here now. The young man nodded. Meixiang exited the room with a young man who looks like in his mid-twenties. The employees of Viandin Pavilion are in France. Tan Ling, Tan Feng, and Ping Chun who are not shocked. Tan Ling just whispered in his mind how lucky their brother Zihan is. This young miss pitied the warlock and released it. I didn't expect he likes a beauty to follow and decided to follow me. This young lady is curious why would Viandin Pavilion lock a warlock with such a good judgment. The employees are dumb. Tan Feng and Ping Chun pursed their lips and look at the warlock whose face is now with a very weird expression. You'll use to it. You'll use to it soon. Now now. This young miss wanted to see the red haired beauty. The employees are still in daze and now need to process what's this red haired beauty the little tycoon just mentioned. They then realize it's her second item. The employee then lead the way to another door. Just like in the first door, Meixiang Xiang entered and the employees guarding the item are ordered by her to get out after surrendering the key. Meixiang Xiang was looking at the young man who is in disheveled state. His purple eyes are looking at her and so with Meixiang. Xiang. Meixiang Xiang walks towards him and whispered full of amazement looking at his purple eyes. Beautiful. The red-haired boy was startled. I like beauties around me. What about following this young miss? The red-haired boy didn't speak. I was named Dan Meixiang. Xiang. And you? Meixiang, Xiang who casually asked this question is oblivious what her question brought to the young boy. It's the first time outside their clan asked what he's called. He almost forget that name. The young boy whispered but still heard by Meixiang. Zukai. Meixiang frown. Zukai, go away. Such a weird name. What about changing your name? The red-haired boy was startled once again. He was named Zukai because he thought that was his name growing up. After seeing his purple eyes, his own kind shouted this to him. When he was captured and do heavy labors, he no longer have this name and was labeled Slave Wilt or that. Then that label was changed when he was captured by Viandin Pavilion and called item number one soon changed to item number two. Do you have a name you wanted? The red-haired boy shook his head. What about Fei I? The red-haired boy whispered the word Fei I. It means beginning. Dan Fei I. Such a beautiful name. Meixiang Xiang said nodding her head slowly. When she saw the red-haired boy's blank face she chuckled and said, Me and my late mother are the only member of our family. I'm sure she wouldn't mind her beautiful daughter adopts a beautiful son for her. The red-haired boy didn't speak. How old are you? Nine? Meixiang Xiang nodded. Meixiang Xiang walks toward the boy and pat his red hair like petting a small child. So I just adopted a younger brother. The boy stiffly stand there blankly letting the little girl pat his red hair. He can't even look down to see Meixiang's face. She's holding the red hair these people should despise. She called his purple eyes beautiful instead of cursing him. She gave him a name and even wanted him to be her little brother. The young boy can't explain the emotions bursting inside him. Meixiang after patting the boy's beautiful hair, she threw the key on the ground and with a swish she unlocks the shackles of her newly adopted little brother with her own ability. At first, Meixiang didn't plan this but when she heard the little boy's so-called name, she had a brief understanding of the little boy's life. A wilt with purple eyes. No one must wanted him before. Not now. She's not compassionate but adopting a good-looking powerful little brother is a good catch. When the two exited the room, the employees are in daze once again. 
Little Xiang, the red-haired boy also wanted to follow because Little Xiang is too beautiful, Brother Ling is too smart, the Viandan Pavilion is indeed have a hobby of capturing people with good judgment. I, I followed Little Xiang since young I'm scared I would be captured. Ping Chunhua twitched the side of her lips. This combo's conversation never failed to amaze her. After the compliment self-praising conversation of the two, Meg Xiang didn't wait for the employees to escort them back, they went out on their own. Mixing didn't notice her mistake that night, the key given to her is only to unlock the shackles of Dan Fei Ai's legs and wrist and not the metal ring on his neck. Because the only one who should have the ability to unlock this is Viandin himself. Outside, Gan Junji who is observing Mixiang and her now six companions in the dark can't help but raised both of his eyebrows. When he saw the red-haired boy, he then had a hunch of the identity of the other man. He was once again amazed by the little girl for taming a ninth rank beast. Make Xiang before going in the carriage nodded to the direction of Gan Junji and left. Gan Junji was startled at first then chuckled while looking at the leaving carriage of Make Xiang's team. Like that scumbag's words, the little girl is indeed interesting. A sudden realization hits him. His reaction suddenly froze. The red haired boy is free from his neck ring and Viandin is outside the central. Inside the auction house, the employees are already sober and entered the room where Dan Fei was locked before. When they saw the neck ring on the floor, they are once again dumb. The Viandin pavilion's main base that night is not in peace, thanks to a certain little girl who is now oblivious of the commotion she brought. Again. 37. Enrollment. Make Xiang's team went back to their inn and had a peaceful night. But this is not the case with the main branch of Viandin Pavilion. Make Xiang was reported to the higher ups of the pavilion and accumulated information about her. The little girl is called Make Xiang, who sell the spiritual water that was obtained by her and her team from Nyon Mountain. This Make Xiang bought tonight's ninth level dark magic attributes warlock that she easily tamed. Even before earning the profit from the spiritual water, the little girl bids for the bayonet Black Panther and paid it with a waiver of 10 million till signed by the princess Y Manarin of the Y Kingdom. They then connected her to the story happened at the South Plaza yesterday. The little girl is also the young miss in the report who picked the moon of the sea in a stone betting and earned 10 million waiver from a princess of a powerful grade A kingdom at the same time. They naturally know this story as they have eyes and ears in the entire central. They have the plan to buy the moon of the sea from the little girl at first but hesitated with young miss unknown backer. Now, knowing the young miss have such ability, they hesitated once again, they can only send a letter to their owner and wait for his instructions, they didn't even send people to follow the young miss in secret avoiding to offend her. At a luxurious inn somewhere, Meg Xiang who is counting her profit that night didn't know the commotion she brought, 39 million profit from selling 10 droplets of spiritual water. Buying 9th grade peak level warlock with dark magic attribute and disposing the 10 million waiver of the princess of Y kingdom at the same time. A beautiful little brother with mesmerizing purple eyes with Xenia constitution. Lastly, a fire of heaven and earth, the latter is earned inside Gan Junji's body. At first, Meg Xiang didn't notice its existence until her light magic expanded on Gan Junji's body. She simply removed it and threw it inside the sacred book without being noticed. This fire is also the reason a low level light magician can't deal Gan Junji's poison. It's because this powerful fire intervenes. This fire is called fire of heaven and earth because it was developed by the nature itself. This fire is indeed powerful although the fire makes Yang found inside Gan Junji's body is not yet fully developed. It's still created by nature himself naturally it's powerful. Removing the fire from Gan Junji's body is also good for him. This fire can kill him if not removed. This is with no benefit with him but not with Meik Xiang. With Meik Xiang's knowledge and ability, she can make this fire under someone's control. She thought of giving it to her brother Ling at first so he would have his own fire to concoct and protect himself. But with little Fei Ai's appearance, the first plan is abolished. A strong physique with Xenia constitution adding the fire of heaven and earth. Her little brother would be omnipotent. Plus if the fire is given to Tan Ling, he can't make the fire powerful than its current state as he can't cultivate himself. Not only Meg Xiang is the happiest that night but also a certain powerful patriarch. When Meg Xiang brought Han Mu inside the sacred book, before Han Mu enjoyed the facilities, Shijin Hai already passed his secretarial job to the pitiful warlock. 
Make Xiang didn't mind. That night, she cultivated her light magic so he can have the ability to heal her uncle Jinhai's past injury. Days goes on. Make Xiang and the others didn't leave their room. They cultivate and train. Make Xiang nourished little Fei Ai's body with spiritual water and medicinal bath to remove his impurities. Five days quickly passed and the entrance exam of the eight academies had arrived. Little Fei Ai, don't want to go? Dan Fei Ai nodded. Make Xiang understood. It's his red hair and purple eyes. Are you sure? Dan Fei A nodded hesitantly. But your weak older sister would be alone once your older brothers test their aptitude. The three hearing their Xiang Xiang's words are in complicated mood. Is she mocking us? What weak? Who's weak? Dan Fei Ai's eyes are now complicated. Little Fei Ai should not worry of the outsider's gaze. Ping Chunhua consoled. Yes, yes. You see little Fei Ai? This brother Ling is amazing and would never let you get hurt. Brother Feng would fight those will harm you. Brother Feng didn't mind his brother's nonsense and just nodded to Dan Fei Ai. Dan Fei Ai pursed his lips and agreed with the four's persuasion. Little Kin watching from the sideline is in complicated mood. He thought these people are not ignorant. It seems he's wrong the whole time. The six arrived at the gate of the Central Academy. The moment they get out of their inn, everyone is looking at their team. It's no different now. Everyone is looking at the boy with red hair. It's not unusual to see a wilt at the central but this wilt is without neck ring. Adding to this, his eyes are purple in color. Make Xiang and the group didn't care of these gazes. Dan Fei I only cares about his older sister Make Xiang. Seeing she's not affected with the outsider's eyes, he's now calmer. Because today is the first day of the entrance examination. Everyone can enter the Central Academy. The students of the Central College and other academies can easily distinguish from the aspiring students with their uniforms. Students or not, they are all looking at Make Xiang's group. Ping Chunhua, Tan Ling, and Tan Feng get inside the enrollment ground leaving Make Xiang, Dan Fei Ai and Kin at the waiting area. Not long ago, the crowd outside the enrollment ground are in silence when students of Gan Academy arrived. It's with a reason of the identities of the familiar faces. The young ladies in Gan Academy uniform is named Fian Both Hai and Fian Bei Ailan. Both are princesses of Fian Kingdom, an S-grade kingdom. Princess Bei Ailan is popular for being a genius in cultivation with the rare light attribute while Princess Bzhai although have an average aptitude, is the well-known betrothed of the talented crown prince of Gan Kingdom, also one of the four S-grade kingdoms, Gan Junji. The princess named Fian Bzhai is the same girl in white at the auction house who have seen her betrothed with Meixiang. Xiang. Princess Bzhai noticed the wilt at first but when she saw the familiar face of the little girl the wilt is talking to, she can't help but stop on her track. Her companies also stopped and follow the princess sight. Fian Bei Ailan noticed the irregularity of the sight. A wilt with purple eyes, it's the same wilt with Xenia constitution that was circulating in their circle. It was sold at the grand auction of Viandin Pavilion bought by a gold member with the amount of 5 million tls. It's a gold member in room 2A. They already expected that their brother Gan Junji bought the wilt as they know room 2A is owned by him. Seeing the wilt owned by a beautiful young lady and the gaze of her younger sister Bzhai towards the young miss, Bay Island understood the situation. Sixth sister. It seems the wilt was with the Xenia constitution the crown prince bought at the last grand auction. Fian Bzhai who just noticed this was fuming with anger. Fian Bailan who noticed her sister's late reaction can only chuckle inwardly. It seems her dumb little sister just noticed the wilt owned by the young miss. It seems she already saw the young miss that night's auction with big brother Gan Junji. Realizing this, she also frowned. Big brother Gan Junji giving up an item he took into his liking to a little girl and personally give it to her. It seems this isn't simple. Hitting two birds with one stone. Bay Island smiled and said to her younger sister, The young miss must be a family of the crown prince. Does sixth sister wanted to greet her family? She herself have seen all the Gan royalties. This is to let her younger sister clean this young miss herself. Fian Bzhai's end limit was reached. She walks toward Meixiang, Xiang her eyes full of anger. Fian Bei Island smirked and followed suit. Meixiang, Xiang with sensitive senses of an 8th grade martial artist was now smiling full of interest with this drama. Two sisters. Fire and Light Magicians, Crown Prince Gan Junji and his Poison, two different S-class kingdoms, indeed interesting. When Fian Bzhai saw Meixiang's unparalleled beauty in a closer distance, she was more irritated. 
makes Yang look at Fianbs High and Fian Bay Island and with questioning gaze she asked, the young ladies are here for? Fianbs High is now a little dumb. She don't know what to say. She can't just confront her of what is her relationship with her betrothed. This princess is named Princess Fian Bay Island and the other is my sister Princess Fianbs High, also the future crown princess of the Gan Kingdom. Makes Yang gave a slow unsure nod like she really don't have an idea why they are introducing themselves out of nowhere and gave them once again a questioning gaze. Princess Bay Island is also a little dumb. Aren't she going to introduce herself? Princess Bzhai was also angered also don't know what to say. She can't ask why the wilt her betrothed bought at the last grand auction was now on her possession. Only few knows who own room 2A and would get the situation uncontrolled if the news of his betrothed giving the wilt to this girl would be disclosed to the public. Bay Island found her momentum. We are just surprised to see a wilt with a purple eyes. This must be the wilt with Xenia constitution bought by the gold member of the Viandin Pavilion at the last grand auction. Those with ordinary background are nodding their heads just knowing about this. Then they look at Makes Yang like she's a tycoon with a load of bulls. The students with background who knew everything behind the scenes are now watching from the sideline full of interest. Of course they know the man who owns room 2A. When the wilt with purple eyes was bid by room 2A that night, it doesn't surprise them. The crown prince who have different circuit of brain with the others must not care of his purple eyes but his strength. When they saw the wilt with a little girl, the little girl already catches their attentions. The young miss must be the gold member that night that bids the item. Bzhai who was now a sober, added, makes Yang look at Dan Fei and look at Bzhai again. The item circulating in your circle is now with a name. This Dan makes Yang's little brother is called Dan Fei. Everyone was startled. Little brother? Not a slave, not subordinate, but a little brother. A wilt with purple eyes as a little brother? Not only that, she didn't think twice and gave up her identity to protect this wilt. Bay Island see the irregularity to make Siang's statement and asked full of contempt. So the young miss is named Dan Make Siang. The young lady Make Siang stated your circle not in culding herself. The lady Make Siang is not familiar with the upper circle of the central? Make Siang just smiled. The circle this makes Yang just said are the gold members of Viandin Pavilion. Bzhai understood her elder sisters trying to say then added, so the young miss makes Yang isn't a gold member of Viandin Pavilion? Makes Yang smiled and like understanding things, she said. Now this young miss makes Yang understood, it seems the princesses wanted to know how the gold member of the private room 2A's possession was given to this Make Siang. Remembering your introduction the princess Fian Bzhai is a betrothed of the crown prince of Gan Kingdom, the two are dumbfounded. So she didn't know the identity of big brother Gan Junji? Gan. That young master is indeed named Gan. Is it named Gan Junji? The onlookers with ordinary backgrounds are startled with the mention of Prince Gan Junji. Presumptuous. Calling the crown prince my betrothed with his name, Meik Siang raised her left eyebrow and said indifferently, the young lady must forget this is not your or his kingdom, this is the central. Your titles must be addressed by your people but not this Meik Siang and not in this place. Not ever. Everyone was taken aback, Meik Siang is with point them with the roots of central are addressing them their titles and gave them the treatment of the royalties because they are with that title, but this is central, they are not their people and this is not their kingdom, but everyone didn't put this too much into their heart, a royalty of an S-grade kingdom, they can't afford to offend them, they can only look up to the little girl as a courageous tycoon, and answering young lady Fian Psai, this makes Yang isn't a mere gold member of Viandin Pavilion. Not only Meik Siang started to address Bzhai from Princess the young lady twice but stated a mere gold member like being a gold member of Viandin Pavilion didn't put her into her eyes. The onlookers with background look at Meik Siang trying to solve her words. A man from afar was watching Meik Siang with greater interest. Only few knows about the neck rings can only be removed by Viandin himself. He is part of this few people. 38. Interesting. Not far away. Man in Liang Academy uniform walks at a lazy manner yawning without care of a tea case. The way he walks can say he's uncouth. This young man is named Zi Kang. Soon be 19 this coming school year. Although from ordinary background, he is one of with outstanding talent and was long gone wanted to recruit my multiple mercenary groups. When Zi Kang saw Dan Fei's red hair, his eyes are beaming. 
he didn't notice the three ladies at the background and run fast to attack Dan Fei. Dan Fei without cultivation didn't notice this but makes Yang on her 8th grade martial arts quickly summon Han Mu. Han Mu with a pen on his right hand responded to Zikang's attack. The ground Han Mu's standing is in black smoke that runs towards Zikang. Zikang who is about to punch Dan Fei was held by a black smoke and can't move his limbs. The onlookers are now in chaos with this view. They are just looking at the three young ladies fighting with words but now. What is this actual fighting scene? Is that the well-known Zikang of Liang Academy that every mercenary groups wanted to recruit? Why would he attack the wilt out of nowhere? Wait, and who is that dark magician? Han Mu, don't kill him, Mei Xiang said in a very lazy manner. Everyone look at the young lady who just ordered the powerful dark magician. Han Mu withdraw his dark magic. Everyone is now in complicated position. He just followed her. The powerful dark magician followed the young tycoon. Why would you show yourself for a such weak movement? You're supposed to be incognito. Now that you showed yourself, then stay with little Fei and not let flies act and spout nonsense to my little brother. Han Mu twitch his eyebrow. Little miss, you just summon me okay. I'm in peace copying books a minute ago okay. The onlookers are now stupid incognito. So it's a shadow guard, a rare dark magician as a shadow guard. This young miss is really a tycoon okay, it's a powerful dark magician as her shadow guard, the onlookers lurking from the shadow saw the irregularities of the scene, the dark magician just appeared at that position, it was summoned, they look at the little girl, she must be a dark magician, but they can't see the fluctuation of her magic chi, is she powerful than them? Impossible, that little girl seems just tested her aptitude test. The smarter side of the onlookers already had a hunch that Dark Magician is actually a warlock that was bought at the last grand auction by a jade member of Vian Den Pavilion. The two princesses, Fian Bzhai and Fian Bei Island, are now dumbfounded. They look at the Dark Magician and the Mei Xiang in horror. Did they just offended someone they shouldn't offend? They are still empty-headed when a man in his late fifties walks toward Mei Xiang. Greetings to the young lady. This old man is watching from the sideline and is curious if the young miss is here for the entrance exam of the academies. Mei Xiang sized up the old man. Greetings. This Mei Xiang just accompanied her friends to their enrollment. A pity. This old man don't want to waste a talent. The old man then handed Mei Xiang a token. This old man is a member of one academy. If the young miss change her mind, this man would be grateful if she consider the Huan Academy. Mei Xiang nodded and put the token inside her interspatial ring. The onlookers are with complicated feelings. What talent? Becoming rich at a young age? They can only sigh looking at the interspatial ring of Mei Xiang and his powerful shadow guard then to her little brother Wild. The rich little girl is too bored and adopt a Wild to be her little brother. Does the little tycoon also want it to adopt a poor cultivator? The old man bids his farewell and the two princesses are completely ignored with the arrival of the three. Little Xiang, how is the entrance exam? The three reported. The three received the tokens not less than four tokens of the eight academies. Mei Xiang nodded. She already guessed this. Ping Chunhu is only 18 and now a fifth grade peak level water magician. Tan Feng is with dual elements not to mention the rare thunder attribute. The level of both of his elements are great adding he's only 16. This is undoubtedly considered a high grade genius in the central. Tan Ling is a third tier heavenly doctor at the age of 16. After the ancient beast incident, Mei Xiang let Tan Ling concoct a third grade elixir and was completely promoted to become a third tier heavenly doctor. Although already third tier healer, he haven't practiced fourth tier as he still needs to finish reading and studying all the third tier prescriptions. Little Xiang. Who's that old man just now? Oh. He just gave me a token. Ping Chunhua recognized the uniform of the old man. It's a bit similar of those teachers of the academies who judged their aptitudes. She can only sigh inwardly. Their little Xiang is too amazing that she only needs to stand here and be accepted of one of the academy. Why is Han Mu here? Tan Feng suddenly asked. The two just noticed Han Mu's presence. They then look at the weird eyes of the onlookers. Obviously, something happened while they are gone. I ooh, ooh, did someone wanted to bully our little Xiang and little Fei? It's just a small matter. Let's get out of here. The group of Mei Xiang left leaving the crowd in a weird ambience. They look at the two princesses and Zikang who was just called by the little tycoon. A small matter. When the two princesses recovered, 
They walked out of the scene. Zikang who is still in daze looking at the leaving back of the red-haired boy, stood up and followed Meixiang's group. Meixiang's team went to a restaurant first to eat before going to the transportion array station. They are still waiting for their food when Meixiang asked for a moment and leave the others. She walks to the direction of a young man who was observing them from afar. Why you? How did you not? Are you going to do this the whole time like a predator hunting my little brother? Little brother? The wilt? Meixiang just gave him an indifferent look. If you attack my little brother once again, I would no longer be merciful. I, I just wanted to have a battle. It's the first time I saw a wilt without neck ring so I thought it's with his own. It's just I got too excited. Meixiang didn't talk. She already know this, unlike the gaze of everyone towards Dan Fei I, this young man is a little better. My little brother still haven't tested his aptitude. If you want to fight one on one, at least wait him to be stronger first. Ha! Huh? Zikang is dumbfounded. He just noticed the little girl called the Wilt little brother. So the Wilt he's eyeing to become his combat partner is not yet ten? And already in that physique, his eyes are beaming. Wilt is indeed the best combat partner for him. Zikang is considered a martial artist genius of the central that at the age of eighteen, he's already in sixth stage peak level. It's a dream come true for him to have a combat with the well-known Duchi geniuses, the Wilts. A year from now, you are free to challenge my little brother without my intervention. But for now, if you don't behave, this young miss would not spare your life. Meixiang leaves the dumb Zikang without waiting for his reply. Back at the Central College, in a large room, a young man excitedly narrates the story of what just happened at the enrollment ground to the idle young masters inside. After hearing the story, they all look at Gan Junji who is with lazy demeanor before but when heard makes Yang's name, he raised both of his eyebrow and drank his tea covering his curving lips. It seems the crown prince of Gan kingdom found an interesting lady. What's special with this makes Yang, Junji? The young man who narrated the story about makes Yang look at Kao Ding who is immersed with his own world doing his hobby not caring of their topic. Come to think of it, that makes Yang is a bit similar with Kao Ding's paintings. Kao Ding's paintbrush stops, Gan Junji's smile froze. The young man in blue robe laughs when he saw the irregularities of the two, Meixiang, right? Now, that Meixiang also have the interest of this young master. 39. Hierarchy A.N. Dedicated to Ad Catcher Wolf Thank you for the sweetest message an author can receive and for reading and loving my books. Cough. Books. Not book. Books. Promotion. Everyone. Enjoy. Dan Fei I gulp at these people's gaze, he now only care about his sister and no longer care of the outsiders, but these people are not outsiders at all, these are his older sister's subordinates, he was about to bow his head to hide his purple eyes when auntie Tan said excitedly, I Uxiang oh is too lucky to adopt a younger brother this beautiful, look at that cute and manly face with purple eyes and red hair. He's like a deity strolling at this realm. Auntie Tan is good. I indeed wanted him to be my little brother at first because of his beautiful purple eyes. Dan Fei I was startled with Meik Xiang's remark. This time, it's no longer just a casual remark. Although her statement is true, this remark is with a purpose. The group first time seeing their young master slash little Fei I they gave their individual introduction gifts. The baffled little boy receiving this different attention can only nod and accept their gifts still thinking of her elder sister's words. After dinner, Meixiang dismissed their little tour guides. They then started to discuss the important matters. Meixiang summon Han Mu with Meixiang's words. Han Mu transformed to his beast form without concealing his level of cultivation. Xianji, like always, recited the warlock's information, Bayonet Black Panther with dark attribute magic. Born with ninth stage early level cultivation that's why once born, they already have a human form. Their lifespan is with approximate of two millennium. This long lifespan is the reason their cultivation is much slower than other cultivators. Seeing the mid-twenties human form and his current cultivation, I can say the warlock's cultivation is much slower than his clansman. Han Mu's eyebrow twitch, did this weak human just blatantly say he's with slow progress cultivation? Good, everything brother Ji said is true, Han Mu's dignity collapsed, although it's true, you don't have to discuss this matter like I'm not here okay. With our resources, Han Mu's cultivation's speed and quality would be better, brother Zip. Once you convince Han Mu to be your warlock then inform me. No need. I agree, 
Han Mu transformed back to his human form and said without knowing which of them is this brother Zhu. When he heard Mexiang's words that the resources will be provided even without entering that sacred place, he agreed thinking of saying goodbye with those load of books he needs to copy because of a threat of a certain powerful patriarch. Xi Jinhai inside the sacred book currently choosing his next novel to read sneezed. Bei Aizihan stood up and stiffly greets his powerful warlock. This, you would be my master, but you're a he's martial artist. Mexiang didn't mind to explain and started and ended the process while Han Mu is still in days trying to process things. Yeah, as long as this little girl exists, everything is possible right? Because Ping Chunhua and the others didn't let Mexiang summon their warlocks with the presence of their little tour guides. Han Mu didn't know this matter and can only know this just before, while, and after their contract is done, the contract is executed quickly. Han Mu is doubting Mexiang's existence the whole process. Mexiang started to discuss other matters. Old Leng's temporary workshop would be on the east part of the manor. Old Leng, please give brother the plan for our base. Brother, you'll be responsible for the construction of our base. Ask Old Leng's help if you don't understand something. I will also let the Black Dian go for family to dig the area. All the shadow guards aside Old Leng's and Auntie Tans would be given up to do the construction of the underground of our base. This is to not leak the information of our future secret place. Ask Auntie Tan for the finance. Auntie, you're also responsible for hiring construction workers for the upper layer after the shadow guards do the underground floor. The rest, Cultivate, will participate in the mercenary qualification three months later. Get stronger. When dismiss everyone, Mexiang gave her instruction to little Fei I privately. For the past few days way back at the center part of Central, she's teaching him to read and write, not only this but to control his senior constitution ability. Currently, he can only adapt the properties of the ores turning only small part of his hand into the same property of the mineral. Mexiang summoned all the phantoms inside the sacred book and introduced them to her little brother. Because it's their benefactor and master's little brother. They courteously greeted him. Mexiang gave the plant phantoms a chores to teach little Fei I once in a while. No one disagreed. No one can disagree. Everyone was asleep. Mexiang entered inside the sacred book. She greeted her uncle Shi Jinhai who is currently reading a novel again. Mexiang started to discuss her real intention. Uncle, I just actually break through to the eighth stage of light magic, the past days after the ancient beast incident. Mexiang didn't cultivate her other elements and focus on her light attribute magic. With this, her light magic is now on its eighth stage and can already heal Shi Jinhai's past injury. Shi Jinhai look at Mexiang. He can only remember the stories he read the past few months. The other worlds also wrote about the cultivation realm, a bit similar with their world. It's just seeing this little girl. He can't help but see the similarities of those female protagonists to this little girl. A beauty that can ruin countries, a perverted genius with an abundant luck and encounter every good items in the area, good opportunities with undefeatable cheat, and in the end she'll be at the top of the world, not forgetting the cliché parts, being unwanted at first, done, have a talented prince as betrothed and soon the contract marriage would be disposed, done, her known parents are not her real parents, no, he saw everything with his own eyes, his idiot late master, Dan Feihan is this little girl's mother and that waste is her father. Have a special body constitution. Done. Recognized master of a powerful item. Done. With powerful beast companions. Cough. Done. Heal the sickness of the people important to her. This thing is about to happen now. Shi Jinhai no longer shock how and why or when did Mei Xiang know about his injury. She's the protagonist of this world. Shi Jinhai shook his head. What is he thinking? Did he just read too much of those nonsense? Shi Jinhai shook his head again to wake himself from his nonsense reverie, signing he surrender to reality. That night, Mexiang healed Shi Jinhai's injury without her expected questioning and drama from her uncle. Shi Jinhai just gave up himself and let her heal his injury like he expected this long ago. Shi Jinhai didn't talk about his injury. Mexiang didn't ask. Mexiang was about to depart when Shi Jinhai said, Little girl. This uncle realized you cultivate your light magic above all because of this uncle's injury. Thank you. Mexiang just smiled and nodded. Oh yeah, before you go, where's that weak panther? Why is he not here yet? 
Han Mu wouldn't go back here. He's now already contracted by brothers. His uncle would have a workload this coming days. Shi Jinhai's face sank. Make Xiang cultivated only her light magic for uncle and abandoned the other elements. Now the level of Make Xiang's cultivation is now late. Make Xiang knows uncle is with big heart and with deep understanding. Uncle for sure will help Make Xiang to write those books for our subordinates. Make Xiang once again giving up this great responsibility to uncle. For this, Make Xiang is greatly grateful to uncle. If mother is only here. Shi Jinhai's face sank again and again questioning his existence. His role to this story. No. He made a mistake. What female protagonist of Cultivation World? She's that witch is on the fairy tale books. A wicked witch that will give apples to her victim let them taste the sweetness first then torture them then kill them afterwards. Gogo -go at the small phantom world is now harvesting apples to give it to his older sister Meixiang for tomorrow's supply. Meixiang left the library and went inside the small phantom world. She soaked her body inside the hot spring, leaning her back at the wall. Her eyes are close while her lips are curved into a smile full of interest. Those people are indeed interesting. One of the books she's interested lately is studying people's behavior and these people are good pieces to watch. In just nine days, she accumulated information of the overall power of the central. The five powerhouses are the most powerful overseeing their own territories providing top services of their expertise. Although they have their own expertise, these powerhouses are not monopolizing their fields. This is the reason, the other powerhouse can also provide the services offered by other powerhouses. Although at the outside these powerhouses are in peace, at the dark they are in struggle of power resulting to their competitions starting in recruiting young talents. First, the beast taming organization located at the south. Lately this is the most talk of the central recently earning a summoner with two elements of earth and water, Shinei the little girl who just tested her aptitude to be tested as a summoner, the little girl Shinai naturally have a strong mental power. Make Xiang can tell that Shinai is with intelligence of using the people around her. In that short span of time observing her, Make Xiang can see the acts of the little girl, she knows what to act towards whom. That innocent and righteous act is possible but didn't escape from Make Xiang's scrutiny. Second, Refiner Guild of the North. The most promising of this powerhouse is a dark magician the current leader adopted. Although still 14, they cultivate this dark magician to become the best. With a dark magician to hold a beast cause of the scepters, the owner of those scepters would be powerful. Third, the Heavenly Doctor organization located at the west. Their most promising junior is a fire magician only 17 but already a pharmacist fourth stage of Heavenly Doctor. Also they are eyeing for a light magician soon to be graduated from Gan Academy, Fian Bay Island. Make Xiang can only smirk remembering this Fian Bay Island and the doom she entered herself. Make Xiang would wanted to see that dramatic scene. Fourth, the mercenary organization of the East, currently with 50 mercenary groups adding the current mercenary group representative of the organization. It's in total of 51. This powerhouse is the most complicated as it's with division of the mercenary groups with their own leaders. Although with representative, choosing this representative alone greatly affects the resources of the mercenary organization. The tournament where the representative of mercenary organization will be chosen will cause a great injury to the mercenary organization powerhouse as killing at the tournament isn't prohibited. Although with this impact, it also gave a great benefit as these kind of activities open for the public, the mercenary tournament and mercenary qualification, the reputation of mercenary powerhouse is the most visible to the outsiders resulting to recruit numbers of young talents. If the mercenary organization is the most complicated, Central College located at the center is the simplest and had the safest position among the powerhouses. It's with a reason they accommodate all the cultivators of the central but they are not a threat as these cultivators is not under them but only cultivates this young talents to be part of the four other powerhouses. This central college powerhouse is with eight academies under them. These eight academies are established and owned by the eight great families of the central. These families although only hold power only limited to their owned academies, the four powerhouses wouldn't provoke them with a reason of. These eight academies cultivate the young talents and can influence them what organization to choose in the future. Among these eight families is the Gan Kingdom and Kian Kingdom, two of the 4S Grade Kingdoms. The 4S Grade Kingdoms are Kian at the top and the most powerful, Fian and Ryu with equal power, and at the last position is the Gan Kingdom. 
Mexiang found this interesting. The Gan Kingdom is with the least power but already had established fully to the central even established an academy. Then she got more interested when she learned Gan Kingdom maintains that position for the past five century. The kingdoms earning the S-class profile comes and goes but Gan Kingdom maintain their position in a consecutive millennium. With Gin's past observation and the Mexiang's careful scrutiny and paying attention to the small things, Mexiang can guess the great fact of the Gan Kingdom is in power up to this date. Information Mexiang started to have a hunch of this when she saw the emblem owned by Gan Kingdom that night of grand auction and the familiar gaze of Gan Junji towards her. Then Mexiang started to doubt that day that the people following them on their second day here at the central are the spies of Gan Kingdom. Revealing the information about the real cultivation of her subordinates, their team is enough to catch the attention of the long-sighted crown prince of Gan Kingdom. True to Mexiang's conclusion, Gan Kingdom is powerful and maintain their spot because of the information they seek and hold. They have eyes and ears from the gates and the every sides of the central. First. Mexiang team are already eyed when their cultivation are exposed with Tang Feng and Pingle's rare and top-notch cultivation. Next, they are observed when they entered the gate. They also notice the peculiar unsurprised reactions after seeing the result of Shen Ai's aptitude. Lastly, they got more interested to their team when the little girl leading them highlighted her ability at the stone gambling with the princess of Wai Kingdom. When the portrait of Mexiang was seen by Gan Junji, he went to check the little girl by himself in person knowing it's the same girl his friend, Kao Ding, was interested to. Mexiang who didn't consider the connection of Kao Ding and not bringing him to the formula can't tell why those gazes from Gan Junji from the start at the parking area is already in deep interest towards her although she just showcased unworthy things before that. She don't believe those things will make that smart prince who have seen a lot would be immersed in deep interest towards her just because of those simple things. Not putting such into mind, Mexiang again remember Fian Bei Island. She can only smirk with the situation of those three royalties and their two kingdoms. Mexiang smiled deeply immersed with the comfortable sensation brought by the spirituality of the hot spring and her thoughts. She only met few of these people but all of them. She can tell they're all good pieces to watch, if provoked. Mexiang wouldn't think twice to not only watch these pieces but would happily play them. 40. Double Constitution AN, dedicated to at Maralita 22 an update for you. Thank you for commenting and waiting for my update, little girl. The next morning, Kin waited Mexiang outside her room. Mexiang spare time for the little tour guide. When already seated, Kin put down the two interspatial sacks on the table and slide it to Mexiang's direction. These interspatial sacks are their welcoming gifts to their little tour guides a week ago. You are leaving? Little Kin nodded. No need to return these. I will inform Auntie Tan about your salaries. This past few days, you've worked hard. Mexiang without the information given by the little kid, she would oblivious to some of the information of the central. Some of the information given by him are not easily accumulated by a person with ordinary background. The kid is with keen observation not being idle in ordinary days. A pity. A pity this kid is not smart enough. She had shown enough. It's a pity the kid understood her behaviors in a different direction. Mexiang waved her hand to dismiss the kid. Little Kin got to his feet but didn't leave. He frowned his face is full of hesitation. What do you want to ask? I'm just curious why did you chose them to be your subordinates? At first, Kin saw the peculiar combination of the group. They are different people but bind by their young miss who is smart and have ways to deal with things. It's just they are weak and simple-minded to be a subordinate with a smart full of complicated ideas like her. Mexiang's lips curved. I didn't choose them. They chose me. They take the risk. I took the responsibility. Kin was not satisfied with her answer. Mexiang ignored his unsatisfied face. My turn to ask. You have seen enough. Why not stay? Little Kin shook his head. I had seen too much. You are crazy. Too impulsive. You are smart and powerful in some ways but look too highly of yourself. The central is not a place for a people like you. You are still weak but you already provoke those who you can't afford to provoke. Kin knows they are from a small kingdom overheard some of Tenling's casual remarks about the Long Dynasty. At first he thinks the group is wise enough to use their unknown background to their advantage but when Mexiang provoke the Fian princesses, Kin's judgment reversed. Before provoking the Fian kingdom, 
She was no longer low-key for bringing the purple-eyed wilt that is already enough for others' attention to divert to her and soon the lies they established to protect themselves will soon be found out because of her living in high profile. Makes Yang chuckled, it seems she looked too highly of the little boy at first and gave her judgment too quick. She then lean on her seat and look at the little boy her lips are curving but her eyes are lazy. A piece of advice from this crazy impulsive young miss, at your age and with this level of mental power. Your future would be boundless, careful with your decisions which decide whom in the future. Your observations seems not bad but how you see through things isn't great. You think you've seen through things but think twice if that's really the inside or only just another outer shell. I gave you a chance to choose and you rejected it. This young miss never gave a second chance. Makes Yang chuckled when realized something. Now I already remember why they are with me. It's because they are too simple minded too simple-minded and didn't try to see through things only to be deceived of what his naked eyes is seeing. Makes Yang stood up and left the little kid who is still in days. A summoner? Hey, a great talent but she's not willing to accept a subordinate who is full of doubt and scared to take the risk of the unknown. That day, their little tour guides left their manor. Three months quickly passed. The construction of the future base of Makes Yang's group is completed. The still empty facilities only needs the appliances and equipments of old Leng's works which are now already inside his interspatial ring. The cultivation of the rest also improved although not as great when they are at the white forest as the stages they need to break through are now higher leaving them to rise their cultivations only one or two levels but still, for outsiders this is still a great improvement. Just last week. They are celebrating Dan Fei Ai's birthday who just turned 10. Because the first aptitude test of the people of the central needs to be tested in public. Dan Fei I have not yet tested his aptitude but already started to cultivate with Meik Xiang's guidance. At the last three months, Dan Fei Ai was taught by the phantoms to read and write. Not only that but to increase his concentration in order to improve the ability of his senior constitution. On his 10th birthday, Mei Xiang planted the fire of heaven and earth inside his body recognizing Dan Fei as his master, with Xenia constitution and the natural power of wills, adding the fire of heaven and earth, Dan Fei's strength would be unimaginable in the future. Today, the aptitude test of the children that just turned 10 is going on. Children with powerful background usually test their aptitude the first time on the exact day of their birth. On the other side, Children with ordinary background are set to test their aptitude together at the 15th day of every month. This month's mass aptitude test is today. Make Xiang's team accompanied Dan Fei on his aptitude test. The plaza is full of people. There is an elevated platform above the others where the patriarchs of the eight great families and at the highest platform are the leaders of the five powerhouses and their most remarkable juniors on their sides. Everyone is looking at Meik Xiang's team. Although there's a news circulated three months ago that a wilt with purple eyes is adopted by a bored rich young miss as her little brother, this is the first time they saw the purple eyed wilt as Meik Xiang and the others didn't get out of their manor the past three months. When they reached the area where the children have to line up to test their aptitude test, Meik Xiang and the rest left Dan Fei Ai on his own. From a distance where Meik Xiang was seated, Kin is looking at her small stature from afar. The moment the plaza was in turmoil of the appearance of a purple eyed wilt, Kin quickly followed everyone's eyes not to look at the wilt but the petite girl who is walking side by side of Dan Fei Ai. Kin realizing what he'd just done shook his head and turned his attention to the array. The man monitoring their line signaled Kin to go next in the now empty array to test his aptitude. At the upper platform where the patriarchs of eight great families and leaders of the five powerhouses are seated, their attention is also at the only red-haired child below, Dan Fei Ai. On the other side the principal of Central College is looking at Meik Xiang who is calmly seated at the ordinary seats for the audience only looking at Dan Fei Ai, he had heard of what happened at the Central College's campus, his territory, three months ago naturally he was most interested with the little girl who can summon a dark magic attribute warlock even though she can't cultivate, or she have the ability to hide her power. He didn't know. One thing is for sure, the little girl isn't simple. The news about Meik Xiang summoning Han Mu three months ago didn't spread thanks to him. The attention of everyone was suddenly diverted in one direction. Everyone look at the corner of the plaza where the chaos started. 
when they saw a character of a summoner in silver color, the powerful figures almost stood up. The people near where contested his aptitude is now looking at him like he's a deity. This is the first time they saw a child in ordinary background tested as a summoner. While everyone is in chaos, Kin was startled at first and when he realized things he once again looked at the direction of that petite figure from afar that is not even looking at him. Did she knew it before? Then those words, he can't help but be immersed on her words again. Make Xiang who didn't even diverted her attention to other people is looking at her little brother. When Dan Fei I was called to test his aptitude next, he looked at Make Xiang again. They both nodded to each other before Dan Fei I entered the array. The other people are still in chaos because of Kin's result when their attention was diverted again to a direction where a bright light suddenly appeared. When they saw it's the Wilt with Du Qi attribute, they are no longer surprised. Wilts are naturally strong and with a great talent of cultivating Du Qi. Although this is the first time they saw this brightness from an aptitude test, they already planted to their mind that that brightness is just ordinary in the case of the Wilts who are bound to do heavy labors. That is not the situation of the young man Zikang watching from the sideline. His eyes are shining brightly looking at Dan Fei I like looking at a long lost treasure. When they thought the Du Qi character will flew on Dan Fei I after some time, another light appeared. It's a fire. A fire that is floating and dancing at the Du Qi character. Everyone's eyes bulge. Fire? Fire attribute? But he's a martial artist. Is the aptitude test of Wilts are different from ours? That that is a dual constitution. Everyone was shocked. Dual constitution? A man with dual constitution can practice Du Qi and Magic Qi at the same time. This constitution only exists in ancient times. Wait, did this purple-eyed wilt a near constitution already? Then why is it with dual constitution this time? What is happening here? Make Xiang's subordinates are also dumbfounded. What dual constitution? They have seen an aptitude test of a dual constitution but the element wouldn't circulate to the Du Qi character. That's impossible okay, these idiot people of Central are too ignorant. Then they think of a possibility, they gulp and look at their little Xiang whose gaze is on little Fei I like she's looking at her work of art. My little brother is too powerful his Du Qi is even brighter than mine. It's just his fire is a little dumb and went at the wrong character. Everyone's face features twitch one after another. Now now, let's get out of here so we can celebrate little Fei I's result. Dan Fei I after his aptitude test, he went to make Xiang and the others, make Xiang raised his hand and gently pat Dan Fei I's red hair, my little brother is too powerful, let's go home and you'll personally report your result to your masters, make Xiang's team left leaving the whole plaza in a weird atmosphere, the powerful people at the elevated platform are also in complicated situation, would they accept that mere will to be part of their academy? Would they ask that lowly Wilt to work under their organization? Yes he's powerful but he's a Wilt. A Wilt with double constitution. A Wilt with double constitution with purple eyes. A Wilt with double constitution with purple eyes and also with Xenia constitution. They're calculating the pros and cons of the situation their heads are almost exploding. Little did they know they need not to decide at this as they don't have the ability in the first place. Tomorrow, the battle to become a qualified mercenary starts. 41 first bribe an dedicated to at miami goal 404 hope you'll like this update also thank you everyone for the votes and comments i'll be in a secluded area for three days just stop by to drop this appetizer enjoy and be safe humans when makes yang and the others arrived at the area where mercenary qualification takes place the whole ground is bustling of different activities of the mercenary groups the mercenary organization officiates this event day after the mass aptitude test to exhibit their ability especially to the young talents. This is to the newly tested cultivators and to invite the powerful cultivators to be part of their powerhouse. Mercenary groups have their own booths around the area. This event is in a span of a week. The aspiring qualified mercenary groups are to sign up on the first day of the event. The exciting part of the celebration started on the second day where as the participants are to test their abilities to become a qualified mercenaries. Within the last three days of the event, the mercenary groups can challenge higher class mercenary groups to improve the grade of their group. Today is the first day of the event so Make Xiang and the others are now to register their team to participate in the mercenary qualification test. Because it's still early. 
The line for signing up for the event is still busy so Make Siang's team decided to stroll around the booths first. These booths are owned by the mercenary groups. This is also an opportunity for them to exhibit the strength of their group and to cajole talents to become a member of their mercenary group. Each booth have their own activities and small events not only to entice talents but also to earn money. While Make Siang's team are wandering around, the people's focus are with them as Dan Fei who is now a sensation to the whole central since he was tested as a double constitution that can practice both martial arts and fire element magic adding he's also with a senior constitution. This purple-eyed wilt was bought by a gold member of Viandin Pavilion who is also a sensation to the whole central. After looking at Dan Fei, they can't help but look at the little girl on his side. It's the well-known bored little tycoon in the stories who bought the wilt with five million dollars worth of beast cores. Not only that, she adopted the purple-eyed wilt even before the wilt's aptitude test as her little brother. Not only that, the bored little tycoon is too rich that her shadow guards is a dark magician. A powerful rare dark magician as her shadow guard, they can only sigh and envy Dan Fei from afar. When will the little tycoon be bored again and decide to adopt a black-haired cultivator this time? Tenling saw a signage to one of the booth with Heavenly Doctor event, when they saw the rules of the game. Tenling look at Meg Xiang with shining eyes, little Xiang, do you like any of the prices? Your big brother Ling will win it for you. Meg Xiang look at the three items displayed, the purple leaf zoin is not bad, Tenling nodded happily and so the group proceed to the booth, Tenling paid a beast cause to participate, you're the one who will participate, Tenling nodded. You're a healer, a third grade healer? And only 16. The spectators look at Han Ling. Their eyes are bulging. 16 and already a third tier healer? It's a one stage away to become a pharmacist. They know the talented Rejunior of the Heavenly Doctor Association is already a pharmacist, fourth tier, and currently 17. This young man is a third stage healer and only 16. That means he's in par with the treasured junior of the Heavenly Doctor Association, right? Everyone look intently at Tanling who stood up in front of the first elixir. The game is only simple. The participant only needs to tell the name of the elixirs because Tanling is only a healer. The elixirs he'll inspect is only for healer level. It's a class C first tier goons in elixir. The onlookers then look at the organizer of the event. When he approved Tanling's answer, they can only gulp. The young healer only look and inspect it in a short time right? And he can even tell the quality of the elixir. Tanling went from one pill to another and guess all the elixirs correctly. When it's time to choose the item, Tanling pick the purple leaf zoin just like what Meik Xiang said. After the organizer gave the herbal plant to Tanling, he congratulated him again and didn't forget to advertise their mercenary group. Our mercenary group is named Bluebird Mercenary, a class B mercenary. Our group is famous for missions for finding rare herbs and we are in need of talented heavenly doctors. The well-known alchemist Yan Mu is also part of our mercenary. The man then look at the lady on his side. The lady in white robe gently smiled. I am alchemist Yan Mu of Bluebird Mercenary. Not needing to see the young talent concoct elixirs, I can say your talent is top-notch. Recognizing the name and the class of the elixir only by looking and smelling only in a short span of time. This alchemist is greatly impressed. The supposedly fluttered Tanling is now in complicated position knowing his little master can hear these nonsense praises. Tanling can only scold them inwardly. What greatly impressed. What top notch. What young. My eleven years old little teacher can recognize the grade and name of an elixir from afar by only its smell okay. He still remember when he concocted his first successful elixir. Tanling excitedly informed their little Xiang of the good news and invite her to see it herself. Can you guess what the perverted genius said? Their little Xiang said casually, Brother Ling is good. An E-class elixir of Jinian Kin is a good start. She didn't even stood up and enter the room where he concocted the elixir to see it herself. Make Xiang's subordinates can only sigh inwardly. This people of Central is too ignorant and haven't seen the world. If you still have not yet part of any organization, this alchemist is inviting you to be part of our mercenary group. This alchemist is also in need of an apprentice. Cough. I am already part of a group and also already cough have a master. An amazing beautiful talented master. And she's five steps away from us okay. Tanling after rejecting their offer, walks toward Mei Xiang. Little Xiang, big brother Ling took a long time. This is my first bribe to little Xiang. 
Meg Xiang simply nodded and let Tan Ling carry the herb first. She can't place it inside the sacred book as it's a basic knowledge for everyone that living things can't be placed inside the interspatial rings. The onlookers are paying attention the whole time. Did the little tycoon also adopt this talent? Did the little tycoon provide the resources and also bought a master for the young third stage healer to achieve this level of talent? We're envious, we're very envious. Make Xiang's team didn't stay long and wander around. The other onlookers simply followed their team. Bei Aizihan also wanted to give his first bribe to Make Xiang so when he saw an archery booth, he also asked Make Xiang if the price bow and arrow is to her liking. The item used for the head and the arrows is a rare ore. It is good to little Fei Ai to adapt it in the future and the rest can be Meg Xiang's accessories. Then your older brother Zihan will get it for little Xiang and little Fei Ai. Bei Ai Zihan then participated to the archery contest and easily defeated the other contestants. Just like at the first booth, they ask Meg Xiang's subordinate to participate on their mercenary group and the same answer of Tan Ling. Bei Ai Zihan rejected it without a second thought. When Meg Xiang put the high-grade weapon on her interspatial ring, the onlookers can only feel complicated once they remember what is the little tycoon planning to do with the spiritual weapon, an accessory. She'll dismantle the spiritual weapon to turn the head of the arrow to become her accessory. Meg Xiang's team once again wander around the booths. During these walks, Meg Xiang's subordinates tried their best to show off and bribe their little Xiang. Xian easily tamed a fifth deer warlock using a simple beast taming technique. Ping Chunhua and Tan Feng easily won a pair battle against two members of Bullion Mercenary. Uncle Tan easily won the prize for the weightlifting contest. All of them are invited to these mercenaries. All of them rejected these offers. The followers of Mei Xiang increased from one booth to another and witnessed the talents of her adopted brothers and uncle. Can you adopt an uncle? The little tycoon is too bored and adopted an uncle. Their followers are now in a noticeable number. When their team encounter a booth with a contest for refiners, their followers gulp and didn't make a noise even lower their breath to hear if ever one of the little tycoon subordinate includes a refiner. Tan Ling excitedly said, Brother, brother look at the booth and to make Xiang. A pity the booth for the registration for the tomorrow's event is now soon to close. When they heard Meg Xiang, they almost forgot they are here to register for the mercenary qualification test. Meg Xiang's team left the area leaving their followers at loss processing the little tycoon's words. Register? Register. They are here to participate in the mercenary qualification test. Words spread. The next day, the mercenary organization's event is an unusual number of audience. 42. Protect who? A.N. Wow this book creature numbers of reads the past few days. Thank you for the votes, comments, and messages, everyone. Sorry late update I'm reading this novel of Madam's identities shocks the entire city once again. I'm hook lately with these Mary Sue at the present era. I'm just a newbie in Chinese novels so if you have some good recommendations just let me know. The headmasters who are seated at the highest platform are now looking at the unusual crowd below. They are speculating of what's this year's event is to for last year to attract this number of spectators. The confidants of the headmaster at the mercenary association passed a message to him. When the headmasters of the other powerhouses heard the matter about, they then all realized the suspect of this crowd. The principal of the central college when heard the mysterious little girl's name, he can only purse his lips while his grandson on his side, Kaoting suddenly straighten his back while his eyes are with a glint of expectation, his eyes can't help but look at the lower platform where the great families are seated, when he remember again Gan Junji's words, he can't help but frown, his face darkened when he saw the other young masters on the side of their old men are smirking looking forward to the appearance of Meik Xiang whom they learn is not just interesting but also a beauty. Meg Xiang who is oblivious to the attention of the young masters and the audience outside is now sitting comfortably eating apples cut by her little brother. The others are also sitting comfortably eating spiritual fruits fresh from the small phantom world. The people around Meg Xiang's team can't help but twitch their faces. They wouldn't mind this view but not in this place. We're a doorstep away to the ring okay? We'll about to be in a battle later right? How did this group can even swallow their foods? Where did this group even get this dining table set? At the arena. 
The announcer is now explaining this year's rules. This year's mercenary qualifying round is with unexpectedly too many participants so the organizers did put an elimination round to cut the numbers of the participants. One of the organizer inform the participants in the second door while she's looking at Meixiang's group from time to time unsure if she entered the right room. Meixiang when learned the mechanics of the game, she lazily wave her hand and ask her subordinates to get ready. Auntie Tan and the others moved the untouched fruits to Meixiang's side. After Meixiang put them into the sacred book, Old Leng ready his interspatial ring while the young men are carrying the foldable tables and chairs to him as Old Leng carefully put them inside his interspatial ring. The people around are in complicated mood, so they bring their own dining area one after another. The aspiring mercenary groups are introduced at the arena. When Meixiang's groups turn, the host is a little dumb at first hesitant if the written name is correct. A amazing, amazing mercenary. Ha! The audience are dumbfounded. Isn't this name too shameless? Everyone is looking at Meixiang and her subordinates on their way out from the door walking towards the center of the ring. Ping Chunhua tried her best to ignore everyone's gaze. She can only sigh remembering how the name of their mercenary was created. When they are filling up the registration form yesterday, their little Xiang stated she didn't know their group's name yet. Everyone are still dumb of how unbelievable their little Xiang is. She have been planning this mercenary group more than a year right? And that whole time it's a nameless mercenary. She prepared their top-notch weapons to techniques to their training grounds carefully but not their name. Everyone was awakened from their reverie when Tanling said casually what about amazing mercenary? Their little Xiang nodded and said, it's shorter with beautiful and strong mercenary that I thought. Ping Chunhui can only blame herself for not thinking of Tanling's naming sickness. But this is better than beautiful and strong mercenary right? When arrived, the host started to disclose their available information. A amazing mercenary is with only 11 members. This mercenary is this year's fewest members but the most intriguing group. The host close her gap to make Xiang and ask. Everyone was curious of the group's identity. Can you give us a brief introduction to your group? Make Xiang just casually said. Our group's name said it all. Why need to explain? Everyone's face twitch. The host can only cough and laugh awkwardly. Meixiang walks away and the others follows until they reach the side of the ring. After the introduction of all the mercenary groups, they are now standing at the area near the edge of the stage. While the announcer explains the rule of the elimination round to the audience, each group will choose five members no higher than seventh stage of cultivation. The five members will be given five necklaces with their respective mercenary group's emblem. To be able to enter the next stage, these five members should accumulate 20 points in total, retaining their own necklace is 2 points. Earning a necklace of another mercenary is 1 point, the game will be in 30 minutes. Killing and using weapons is with no prohibition, they can only summon their beasts 5 minutes before the time ends which will be signaled by the host. Meixiang gave one necklace each to Tan Feng, a fifth stage peak level of thunder attribute and fifth stage middle level of fire attribute. Ping Chunhua a sixth stage early level of water attribute, Xianji, martial artist at fifth stage middle level, Bei Aizihun, martial artist sixth stage of middle level, and Dan Fei Ai, martial artist with fire of heaven and earth currently at the second stage early level, make Xiang look at Dan Fei Ai and to the fore, take care of little Fei Ai, although little Fei Ai is stronger compared to a second stage practitioner, there is no weaker than a fifth stage in the arena. Dan Fei I pursed his lips, although Mei Xiang cultivated little Fei I with the best resources adding his masters are extraordinary, she can't help but get worried, his little brother just had his 10th birthday a week ago. Although her little brother had not been idle in the past 3 months, he just started to cultivate a week ago. He is still weak in her eyes, and little Fei I, this would be your first official battle. Don't get hurt, Dan Fei A nodded like an obedient kid. Good. Now. The five of you, use this opportunity to practice. They all nodded. This isn't their first battle but this is their first battle against real human cultivators. Even before the ancient beast incident, their group had been in a battle against the shadow guards to practice their cooperation and see their individual ability in a mass battle. After that, 
they had a real battle against multiple warlocks. Adding the top-notch resources Mei Xiang provided, this elimination round is nothing compared to their training. The five participants of each group stood on the wide platform while the other members not participating the battle are standing outside the ring. The stage is large enough to accommodate a war of these more than two hundreds of cultivators. With the hint of a bell, the thirty minutes of earning twenty points started. Because the cultivators are everywhere occupying the stage, audiences A's can't focus on a certain battle ending up to Dan Fei as his hair is the most eye catching on the stage. A man on his fifth stage middle level martial artist started to attack Dan Fei who simply dodge and counter attack. Because wilts are stronger than a normal cultivators, adding Dan Fei is now a second stage cultivator with a wilt strength. The lethality of his attacks are in par with the fifth stage martial artist. He easily defeated the opponent with only three simple moves and didn't forget to collect his necklace. Dan Fei's appearance didn't only catches the attention of the audience but also the cultivators inside the ring. The cultivators nearby eyed his necklace and the other necklace on his hand, adding the fact that he just turned ten and still weak. They can easily steal those necklaces from him, right? Two cultivators from the same group nodded to each other and attacked Dan Fei at the same time from different directions. Noticing the incoming attacks, Dan Fei touch one of his index ring with his thumb and adopt to the property of the ore of the ring. His entire right leg change into black hard metal as Dan Fei kicked the one of the cultivator on his right while grabbing the leg of the other cultivator on his left with his bare hand. His left knuckles adapt to the ore he just touched earlier and harden his grip to the cultivator's leg until his bone made a cracking noise. The man on the floor Dan Fei I just kick with his metal leg was now with broken backbone and can't even get up from the floor. Other martial artists used this opportunity to attack Dan Fei I while he's still busy taking care of the one of the martial artists. Five martial artists nearby from every direction attack Dan Fei I. Dan Fei I quickly responded and throw the cultivator on his hand to the three cultivators and take care of the two other by his new learned martial arts technique last night. Before the three can attack Dan Fei I, he already took care of the two martial artists and now free to take care of the other three upcoming attacks. Make Xiang's subordinates outside the ring watching this scene can only look at the floor where their little Fei I's victims are lying. Their little Fei I seems no need of protection okay. Dan Fei was about to harvest the necklaces of the martial artists when a fire suddenly flew towards him. Dan Fei simply dodge it. A faint image runs to the bodies of the martial artists Dan Fei just defeated and went back to the direction where the fire came from. It's two magicians with fire and wind attribute. The two are with challenging gaze towards Dan Fei as they are playing the necklaces they just harvested from Dan Fei's defeated opponents. Dan Fei put out small fires in a needle form and quickly attack the vital points of the wind attribute cultivator. When the fire magician saw his companion collapse after Dan Fei's small movement, he can no longer smile. He's now vigilant towards Dan Fei. He put out a ball of fire that flew to Dan Fei's direction. Dan Fei didn't move but instead put out a small fire and attack the fireball of the fire magician out of everyone's expectation. The small ball of fire of Dan Fei swallows the fire ball three times bigger than its size. Dan Fei's fire didn't stop there and continued to attack the fire magician. The audience sculpt with this scene. Is this the power of a dual constitution? Make Xiang's subordinates are also in complicated situation. He really didn't seem needs of protection okay. Make Xiang just calmly watch from the sideline. This view didn't surprise her. It's a fire of heaven and earth. A mere fifth tier fire magician's fire can't compare to it. Make Xiang is thinking different thing. Her little brother learns to be playful and tried the different lessons his masters taught him in this arena. The three months seems not put the phantom's teachings in vain. It's just they teach him a lot and different techniques so her little brother seems don't know which is to use. She needs to fix this afterwards. While Mei Xiang isn't surprised to this view, that's not the case of the people at the highest seats where the eight great families and five powerhouses are located. First, the Wilt is already at the second stage of martial artist but he just had his birthday a week ago right after his aptitude test two days ago. They accumulate as much as information they can about the purple-eyed wilt. Naturally they know his date of birth. 
he just cultivated for a week but already a stage 2 martial artist. Wilts are with marks of their date of birth on their chests naturally knowing his birthday isn't hard. They just ask the records of the slave trade transported Dan Fei to the central. Second, the fire of the wilt is peculiar not only it's too strong but they can't detect the fluctuation of his magic chi this is with a result they can't detect the level of his fire magic, but if it can swallow and subdue a fifth magician's fire, this would explain he's stronger than a fifth stage cultivator right, but he just started to cultivate a week ago. Not to mention he's now a second stage martial artist. Third, these fighting techniques are too peculiar and they are all foreign to this moves. No one can explain this phenomenon even the old masters around. When the participants notice the attention of everyone outside the stage is at Dan Fei, they also turn their focus to him. When they saw the martial artists and magicians he defeated, everyone eyed for the necklaces of those unconscious cultivators. They look at Dan Fei their eyes full of greed. Ping Chunhua, Bei Ai Zihun, Tan Feng, and Xianjia then run towards Dan Fei, their eyes are full of hostility towards the cultivators around. Everyone stopped from their battle and eyed for the group of Dan Fei. Hey, it's like we have to take things seriously from now on. The three nodded with Bei Ai Zihun's arrogant remark. Ping Chunhua and Tan Feng nodded to each other. Because this is a mass opponent they have to eliminate a great number first. The two summon their scepters ready to play for real. Ping Chunhu after her incantation, she wave her scepter and a heavy rain pour on the cultivators inside the ring aside from their team. The cultivators expect it's a killing attack and was a little dumb of the rain. They didn't notice Tan Feng started his incantation summoning his thunder magic at the sideline. As the cultivators are completely soaked with water, Thunders one after another attack the cultivators in the middle of the rain. This is the same combo attack Ping Chunhua and Tan Feng used to subdue a wind attribute way back at the White Forest. They occupied the space with the help of Ping Chunhua's water no longer needing to directly attack the warlock with unbelievable speed. This time, they use it to occupy a large space to attack numbers of the cultivators around and also to highlight the lethality of Tan Feng's thunder attack. Now that their cultivation rise by bound compared to that day inside the white forest, naturally the lethality of this attack is greater. After this combo attack, the number of the cultivators greatly declined. The two put out their weapons. Bei Ai Zihun and his eight-hold bow, Xianji and his eight-hold boomerang. His hidden weapons are just around the corner ready to be used if needed. They started to attack the nearby cultivators. Dan Fei used his martial arts rather than using his fire to be able to practice his martial art moves and his xenia constitution. Tan Feng and Ping Chunhua when recovered after using massive amount of magic chi, they join the battle. The audience around are in days of the five versus all the participants below. From the magic incantations and martial arts techniques to their scepters and weapons of the five members of the amazing mercenary are all top notch. The center beast cores used on the two scepters are high-grade dark beast cores, and the weapons of the two martial artists are both eight-hold weapons. These are too luxurious right? They then look at the little girl outside the ring who is observing the battle of her subordinates while leisurely eating fruits. They can't help but twitch their faces. When did a dining table was set up on the arena? They can only look at the little tycoon eating fruits while talking to her subordinates from time to time like commenting on the battle inside the ring. The subordinates are nodding their heads like learning new things from the little tycoon and didn't forget to eat fruits from time to time. At the special seats for the leaders of the eight great families of the central, their focus is also on the high-grade weapons and scepters of Mexiang's subordinates. Those spiritual weapons are high-grade weapons especially made for their owners. This grade of weapon, I myself need no less than a year to be in seclusion to refine the bow alone. The patriarch of one of the great families honestly stated, Do you think it was bought from the refiner guild? The armament master refined and hold the weapons, this top-notch armament master may be in par with the headmaster or better than him. Let's not forget the master refiner created the scepters and hold those beast cores. The lady in red said, it's a dark magician. The patriarchs of the great families are taken back. A dark magician master refiner? It means a stage 7 dark magician that learns to refine and hold scepters. The style of their scepters also have not seen by this old man. None of these weapons and scepters are created inside the central. It seems the mercenary organization earn a good deal this year. 
the little girl seems a little troublesome. The patriarchs look at the little girl outside the ring eating her fruit leisurely. It's the little tycoon in the stories. It's a beauty with resources. It's a good catch. A lazy laugh suddenly rang at the end of the row where the leaders of the eight great families are seated. Hey let's see if Hurtles can protect her people. Everyone turned their heads at the young man in robe full of gold embroidery. He is smirking like a madman looking at Maxiang's petite figure below. The man in robe full of gold embroidery is the same man Maxiang and the others saw on their second day at the central whom killed his slave with neck ring bought from Viandin Pavilion. The man who is always in gold robe is named Jin Lang, the youngest patriarch of one of the eight great families of the central. Only at the age of 14, he started to lead the Jin family, now 24, he is still the leading figure of the family. This is with the main reason of him being one of the only ten known summoner in this realm, now twelve with Shin Ai and Kin added in the list of the rare summoners. Jin Lang stared at Dan Fei as his mental power started to form into a hand and move towards Dan Fei Ai's direction in an inexplicable speed and strength. Suddenly when it was about to touch Dan Fei Ai who is currently taking care of two cultivators at a time, a strong mental power barrier stops Jin Lang's attack. Jin Lang who was smiling a while ago is now taken aback. He frowned while trying to detect the barrier his mental power just encounter. It's too strong that he can't detect who is the owner of it. When he was about to explore the barrier, his mental power started to weaken like a whirlpool is sucking dry his mental power. He had no choice but to withdraw first. The leaders of the other great families are now at loss looking at Jin Lang's current state. They always see him in his usual arrogant state like a madman who can stop by no one but with this current view. They can't help but wonder what made him frown like this. Suddenly, Jin Lang laughs like a crazy man his eyes are glimmering looking at Maxiang's team. When he's back to his usual crazy state, the other members of the great families through the face of Jin Lang's confused face they just saw earlier at the back of their heads like they have seen wrong, because their mental power is not as strong as Jin Lang. They didn't see the situation of the battle Jin Lang just had been through. This is not the case to the headmaster of the Central College seated where the leaders of the powerhouses are stationed. Among the five headmasters of the five powerhouses, he is the only summoner among them and the only with stronger mental power compared to the young patriarch Jin Lang. Naturally he can see the mental power of Jin Lang who tried to attack the red-haired boy but only defeated by an unknown strong entity. The old man then look at the little girl sitting idle outside the ring curving her lips but her eyes are not smiling. The headmasters on the side are oblivious of the old man's thoughts still talking about the obvious win of Maxiang's team below. It seems this year would only accept a single mercenary group. This year's event would be idle for the two upcoming days. They are talking about the rest of two days where the aspiring mercenary groups should be tested but unfortunately the elimination round that should supposedly only cuts the number of the participants, completely annihilated all the 46 aspiring mercenary groups leaving only Maxiang's team. If there is only single mercenary group then the battle against other group is void. The representative of the mercenary association signaled his comrade and gave his order. His confidant was about to leave to follow their leader's order when suddenly a voice rang, I wouldn't offend her if I were you. This group is not easy to offend, the forehead masters are taken aback at the sudden warning of the headmaster of the central college. Headmaster Cao means, the old man didn't talk. Headmaster Cao is overestimating the group. Although those scepters and weapons are indeed extraordinary, the group's abilities seems ordinaries. They must only have a luck to encounter a high-grade master refiner and armament master. That's all. Summoner Cow must saw something to that group to deserve this kind of protection. Summoner Cow needs not to be overprotective. Headmaster Lishi just said this to keep the event alive. If they can't even survive with this, they don't deserve the great Summoner Cow's protection. The old man Cow shook his head helplessly. This is not to protect them but to protect you. He no longer said what's in his mind. The headmaster of mercenary organization signaled his confidant to continue to deliver the message but was stopped once again. Father, may this daughter welcome and deliver herself the message to our new member? 43. Bet, Dan Fei and the others defeated all the participants. The audience are in uproar shouting and cheering their mercenary. The subordinates of the cultivators defeated are looking at Maxiang's group full of hostility. After their injured subordinates are carried out to the arena. 
They are also escorted out leaving only Meixiang's Xiang's group on the stage. A girl in mint green hanfu was escorted by six burly men to the ring. The announcer and the organizers walked toward the girl and greeted her respectfully. When the audience noticed this, they stopped cheering and looked dumbly at the scene. They recognize the girl in mint green hanfu. She is named Lishi Mayan, the only daughter of the headmaster at the mercenary organization. Lishi Mayan stood at the very middle of the ring. She asked for the device of the announcer for her voice to be audible to everyone present. As the representative of the headmaster of the mercenary organization, I, Lishi Mayan, welcomes the new member of the mercenary powerhouse. Amazing mercenary. The audience cheered. Every year's mercenary qualification test is with three days span to test the new mercenary groups. Unexpectedly this year, Amazing Mercenary defeated all the participants with their top-notch abilities and resources so the higher-ups decided what to do with the remaining two days. The leaders gave a proposal to the newly member of the organization. Lishi Mayan then looked at Meixiang. Her eyes can reflect his indifference towards their group. Meixiang curled her lips. It seems she once again offended a young miss out of nowhere. The supposedly three days for testing the new qualified mercenaries cuts to a day leaving only one team left so decided to use the day after tomorrow of this event to showcase the strength of all the members of the amazing mercenary. This illustration is by doing a battle against the most treasured beast of the mercenary organization. The whole arena is in turmoil. Two years ago the mercenary organization subdued a beast on its venerable level. Although a lot of strong cultivators are killed, the mercenary organization proves their strength by possessing a venerable level beast. That is the reason the same year they had a great loss of strong cultivators they also gain numbers of talents and mercenary groups to their powerhouse. This is the reason of mercenary organizations overnumbered mercenary groups. This, if just the amazing mercenary lives to their name and agree to this proposal. Make Xiang's lips curled. They inform her while announcing this to the whole arena and now they are asking if this is with their consent. If not agreed, the people of Central can only look at them as a coward and their name would just be a laughing stock. Make Xiang would naturally agree but not because of this young miss taunt but because this is good opportunity to earn something today. This makes Yang can only agree if that's the leader's words. It's just this illustration is too risky. The audience nodded their heads inwardly. Their lives for a simple illustration is indeed risky. If we killed or tamed this treasured beast of the organization, wouldn't our group be bullied? Everyone choked. So this is the risk the little tycoon is talking about? What kill? What tame? The mercenary organization didn't even manage to tame it for the past two years. Didn't the little tycoon know this treasured beast is a venerable level beast? Please someone inform her. Lishi Mayan's lips curled. It's the same proud and arrogant image this little girl show off at the Central College that day. Now that she's under their organization, she wanted to let this little girl taste her own medicine. Yes, Lishi Mayan is one of the spectator watching from the sideline when the Fian princesses and the Meixiang are having a conversation way back at the entrance examination of the eight academies. The young lady indeed believes and trusts her subordinate's strength, isn't why the leaders offer this proposal, it's with a reason of believing and trusting this group's strength, or would it be otherwise? Everyone gulp, Lishi Mayan just told how Meixiang Xiang looks too highly of her people and also hinted everyone how dependent she is to her people's strength in entering the powerful mercenary powerhouse. But Make Xiang ignore this and throw a double meaning statement. Although Make Xiang's words may sound the mercenary group is giving this proposal to Make Xiang's team because they believe they will subdue the warlock and will showcase the mercenary powerhouse strength, that is not the real case. Inside Make Xiang's statement, there are two hidden meaning that everyone can decipher but no one can go against as it is hidden. Either the headmaster at the mercenary organization, Lishi Mayan's father believes to their group's strength and was threatened so now trying to dispatch them with this illustration of strength. Or the mercenary group looked slowly at their group's strength and wanted to use them to entertain the audience. Either way, in Make Xiang's statement, their group is being dispatched by Lishi Mayan's father. Of course the otherwise isn't existing. Everyone gulp. Everyone can only relax after Make Xiang's next words. This makes Yang not only trust and believes her subordinates but also the seniors. It's just this illustration would exhaust this group and the group's resources. Lishi Mayan, who is oblivious of Meixiang's hidden meaning of her statements, scoff inwardly. 
Exhaust? She indeed looked too highly of herself as if being killed is out of the possibilities. As my father's representative, the headmaster at the mercenary powerhouse, I, Lishi Mayan promised beast cores and spiritual crystals 10 million worth to the survivors of the amazing mercenary group. The audience gave 10 million of dual worth of beast cores and spiritual crystals. But when they remember they can only earn this amount after a battle against a venerable level beast. They can only step back. This amount will be given to the survivors of the group, if there would be a survivor. With Lishi Mayan mentioning survivor, it approves the latter meaning of Maxiang's hidden words. The mercenary group look slowly of their group and trying to entertain the audience with their lives. Maxiang can only shook her head inwardly, not only impulsive but also an idiot. She mentally note this Lishi Mayan is a low-level piece lower than the Princess of Wai Kingdom. This kind of piece is easy to manipulate and use to make a small discord, but with this small piece position, a daughter of a headmaster of a powerhouse, this low-level piece may bring bigger chaos. This time, Meixiang just wanted to use this low-level piece to earn money. Meixiang smiled. The young miss must not know. My subordinate's warlock is bought with a mere 10 million at the grand auction of Viandin Pavilion. This 10 million is worthless to this group. The audience are dumb. 10 million warlock? And she simply gave it to a subordinate. Wait no. Three months ago a jade member of Viandin Pavilion bought a dark attributes warlock with 10 million pills. Isn't she a gold member who bought the purple-eyed wilt? Why is it she's a jade member this time? Lishi Mayan naturally know about this. Although the group have a dark magician and a warlock with a dark attribute of ninth stage, this is all worthless to the venerable level warlock their powerhouse own. She also thought these dark magicians are the reason Mei Xiang is confident with this battle. Lishi Mayan smiled and got more confident. What about 10 million worth of beast cores and spiritual crystals? To each of the survivors, Mei Xiang nodded, adding the beast if tamed or killed. Lishi Mayan smirked adding the beast if it was tamed and killed. Meixiang smiled deeper. Everyone is in uproar. Meixiang's group went out of the arena. Before entering their manor, Meixiang stops from her track. She look at the old martial arts books and scrolls at the entrance of their manor. Meixiang just chuckled when realize what are these for. She ordered Dan Fei to carry it inside his room. That day, Meixiang and the others had a very important discussion. The next day, Almost all the tents of the mercenary groups turn to become a betting station for the tomorrow's battle of the now sensational amazing mercenary against the venerable level beast, two certain powerful warlocks on their human form carrying multiple interspatial rings are given an important mission to complete that day, the day amazing mercenary battles against the venerable level warlock arrived at the special seats above where the leaders of the eight great families and their predecessor are located. A carefree laugh of a young master was heard, it's all around the central that all the betting stakes are now depends with the today's battle. The bets are only with choices of how long the amazing mercenary would survive with this battle at first but when two crazy rich tycoons going around the betting grounds and made a bet that the mercenary will win against the venerable warlock, a bet of whether the mercenary group will win or loss was created. Almost everyone once again and put their bets with the obvious result. Such bet is happening? Everyone look at the young man with his usual gold robe. In ordinary days, this young patriarch will not give a glimpse unless it's someone he's interested to play and kill. It seems the new mercenary group earns the interest of the madman. Patriarch Jin Lang is interested. What about us? The eight great families have a bet. All gazes are at Jin Lang's smirking smile who is looking at the team of Meixiang who just arrived at the arena. The strongest member of our family are at stake. Everyone frown. They all know this young patriarch is a madman who is crazy for buying and slaving powerful men and kill them if he got bored. What's patriarch Jin's bet would be? Jin Lang look at the young man who just talk. It's the crown prince of Gan Kingdom. Gan Junji. Jin Lang smiled like a crazy man looking at Mei Xiang from afar. The mercenary would defeat the warlock. Everyone was taken aback from Jin Lang's words. Gan Junji. On the other side, isn't surprise, he's observing him the last time, although he didn't see with his own eyes the battle of mental power of the two, he knew something happened that day. A pity, this crown prince have the same bet with the patriarch Jin, Jin Lang then look at Gan Junji. It seems the crown prince knows this people. This crown prince was accidentally associated with a little girl at the grand auction three months ago. Jin Lang knows the Gan family's ability in accumulating information in the dark. 
he naturally knows this accidentally associated was pre-planned by him, it means something was with the little girl that catches the smart crown prince's attention. Jin Lang turn his head and once again focus at Mei Xiang's team, this time, his gaze is on Mei Xiang alone, he smirked looking at her intently like he's eyeing for a prey, so it's the little girl. What about this crown prince and patriarch Jin bet of different thing? ourselves at stake. Jin Lang draw an interest with what he heard, let's bet a fee that they will kill or tame the warlock. Jin Lang raised both of his eyebrow. So she can tame a venerable level warlock, he himself, as summoner with his level of mental power can't tame a venerable level warlock, but thinking of that day's strong mental power, he can't help but get excited, the people around are dumb with the conversation of the two. Are they crazy? Not only they thought this mercenary group can live after today's battle but even bet if ever they will kill or tame the warlock in venerable level, they had enough learning there's two crazy rich tycoons willing to bet a large amount to the small mercenary against the venerable level beast. Then this two crazy madmen on their side are now having a better fee that the small group mercenary will kill or tame the venerable level beast, not even can but will. At the highest seat above the eight great families where the leaders of the five powerhouses are seated, a certain grandfather grandson pair just rush their confidants to bet half of their properties after learning of the bets circulating around the central. 44. Kill or tame? An. Thank you for waiting for this update. The comments overwhelmed me so wrote this chapter first before continuing reading PTSML. Such a weak-hearted author TSK. Hope no one dropped the story. Wow that last emoji is kinda cute and scary. Okay, everyone, enjoy, and be safe. Highly recommended story. Pick the second male lead. Then follow her other stories, a superb author. Mei Xiang and the others are now at the stage where the battle with the venerable level beast will take place. Unlike the past battle. The wide ring is no longer inside the arena but a pure land with few large rocks around. At the large door, a noise of a large warlock can be heard. The audience when heard this can only gulp and look at Mei Xiang's team at the middle of the land below. With a signal of a drum, the large door was opened. A clacking noise of heavy metals can be heard together with a loud screech of a beast. A warlock with the form of a massive geforms bird but it's entirely covers no feather but a scale that is a shining red in color that transformed to blue scales when reflected to the sun. The audience sculpt. When recovered, they once again look at Mexiang's group. Compared to the behemoth frame of the warlock, they are like a group of small ants. When they saw Mexiang's team are just standing there looking at the beast. They thought the eleven people are dumbfounded and too scared to take another step until the little tycoon pointed to a direction. An old man and a beautiful lady went to that direction she pointed and when reached the boundary, they put out a dining table. What preparation is THS? At Mexiang's side, when the warlock came out from the door, she invaded the mental ground of it to restrain their presence in the warlock's view. After that. She ordered old Leng and Auntie Tan to do their big role to this battle. Xianji started to talk even without Mei Xiang's instructions, although felt a little uncomfortable of the warlock's presence he still provided the information accurately, Geforms Lin Qian, a light attribute warlock, although it's light attribute, it's already on its venerable level his large physical attribute is enough to do damage to the human cultivators. Although there's a disadvantage of its large body to be attacked easily, it's a light attribute so healing itself is a small matter, we need to subdue it by injuring it at a time and get its beast core located at the middle part of its forehead. Earning the beast core is not an easy matter as its scale is as strong as Aegean metal. It can only be completely damaged by a cold temperature and hot temperature attacking it alternately to weaken the scale and completely penetrate its body. This is only if we will kill it at my level. It's impossible for me to tame it. Mei Xiang nodded. Her brother Jill though intimidated to the warlock's presence tried his best to be calm and gave the only needed information in battling against it. Mei Xiang then look at Ping. Ping Lu understood. The bones and scales of Geforms Lin Qian is best in forging metals used in making scepters and weapons. The core is also good for little Xiang's first beast core as she have six elements and the consumption of magic qi would be great. Light attribute with effect of healing can recharge little Xiang's magic qi. Tang Ling also recited, Geforms Lin Qian's scale can also use to assure grade of elixirs. Its blood and meat is also good for the body. Mother cooking it would be the best. When he saw their little Xiang's undecided face, he then asked, 
Little Xiang, do you still not know if we'll kill it or tame it? Do you want it to be your beast? Make Xiang shook her head. Its benefit is indeed greater if we kill it. Aside from what you mention, it's also a good training combat for them. It's just this warlock if tamed, Uncle Jinhai would be grateful. Everyone are dumbfounded. Little Xiang, how is this connected to the majestic beast of the great summoner Dan Fairhan? You didn't know. All the books I gave to all you are written and copied manually by uncle. Adding this warlock is with wings. We can also use it as a mount although not as fast as uncle. Everyone's sense of security collapsed. So those books are copied by the majestic hand warlock S.H.I. Jinhai. Not only we use him as a mount but also a scribe. They are all that now weak. That explains the eyes of the majestic warlock when looking at us. We even let him bet for our place yesterday. He wouldn't kill us if little Xiang isn't around, right? Forget it, just kill it, uncle can manage. You have 20 minutes to subdue it, cough. Little Xiang, are you sure? Make Xiang wave her hand lazily and walks toward old Leng and Auntie Tan's direction. Dan Fei I followed, Tan Ling look at the six other people's pale faces and cheer them weakly before following Make Xiang and Dan Fei I. The five are now seated, the six are looking at them from afar. Let's take care of this first and worry of other matters afterwards. The five swallow their hesitation and nodded with Uncle Ten's words. Let's take care of this warlock wrath first and take care the other's wrath after. If the Giforms Lin Qian warlock can see these people's thoughts, his venerable dignity will collapse after learning these people are more scared to a commander level beast than him, a venerable level. The six are now on their positions. Xian Ji stood at Ping Chunhua's side and summoned Little Little a water attribute beast now on his eighth stage middle level cultivation. Bei Aizihan stood at Pingle's side and summon Han Mu, a dark attributes warlock on his ninth stage peak level of cultivation. No one from the audience noticed the peculiarity of this scene. Because none among them is a wind attribute, Uncle Tan cannot summon Little Meat, a wind attributes warlock, and so with Ping Chunhua summoning Kiai an earth and dark attribute mutant warlock. Because it's already disclosed to everyone Han Mu is Meixiang's subordinate warlock, then they can't show another beast with dark attribute to them. Besides, Qian and Han Mu is with a great gap of cultivation. Although their competitor is light attribute, dark magician's cooperation is still needed to this battle. Meixiang and the others, on the other side are leisurely eating spiritual fruits. The audience are dumbfounded at this view. They are really having a feast there while their subordinates are battling with the venerable beast. Is this to let their boss the little tycoon enjoy her last meal? This is too heroic right? At the place where the patriarchs of eight great families are located, Jin Lang is no longer on his seat and was already on his feet long ago when he saw the peculiarity of the warlock. When the warlock came out from the door, the warlock that was supposed to attack Meixiang's group just stood there like they're not seeing Meixiang's group. Although didn't see with his own eyes, he knew Meixiang had a battle of mental power against the warlock. When completely invaded the warlock's mental ground, Meixiang did made their presence invisible to the beast. Jin Lang's both hands are gripping the handle of the balcony his eyes are looking at Meixiang while he's laughing like a madman who just discovered a long lost treasure. Winning the mental battle and completely invading the mental ground of a creature, not to mention it's a venerable beast, that person must have an incredible mental power. Although invading someone's mental ground is powerful, Meixiang don't use it just any time as it consumes a great mental power. Unlike summoners whom their mental power depletes at a certain amount according to the time the phantom is outside the portal opened by the summoner, the consumption of mental power in invading mental ground of the other entity is unique. The mental power will deplete the more the invader's mental power is powerful. Meixiang is with a great mental power meaning hers would deplete faster. This is the reason Meixiang gave an ultimatum to the others for only 20 minutes. Although this is just a short period. Meixiang being able to control the venerable level warlock in that span of time, it means her mental power is too powerful. The other patriarch of the eight great families who is familiar with the young patriarch knew there is something peculiar that made Jin Lang into this reaction. They just thought the young patriarch had this reaction because of the, the venerable warlock. Although it's been two years since the mercenary powerhouse capture it. This is the first time they expose it into a public view. This is the first time they saw this level of warlock as the highest level of spiritual beast they saw in the capital is a commander level beast. Although they found the warlock unusual when it didn't attack Meixiang's team, 
They didn't think this too much, at the seats of the headmasters of the five powerhouses, they also notice this peculiarity, they also can't tell what is wrong with the venerable beast not attacking Meixiang's group. Meixiang when she saw the six are now ready to confront the warlock, she withdraw her mental power and let the six put into the warlock's sight while them, five are still not visible to the warlock so they can have a peaceful time watching the battle. You little scum, why are you eating Xiang Er's apples? Cut your own apples. Mother, little Xiang and little Fei I wouldn't mind. I mind, cut your own fruits, little Xiang you're being rude to this big brother. Little Fei I, can you also cut me fruits? What rude? Who's rude? Why let little Fei I cut you your food? Ah mother your eye you're twisting my ear too hard, the spectators can't help but twitch their faces. What's happening here? Did these people get the situation wrong? Everyone are still questioning the existence of the five at the stage when a loud squawk rang at the whole arena, the geforms Linkian screech. His massive wings moves and was about to fly but was restrained by the shackles. When it landed to the stage, Bei Ai's hand pulls Ping Chunhui to abstain its massive claws. Her body is too light, Bei Eyes Han didn't mind their genders and hugs her waist to carry her like a lady out of the danger. Ping Chunhui get off Bei Eyes Han's grasp when they are both landed far from the warlock, little Chun, you're too light. Bei Eyes Han casually said not noticing Ping Chunhui's peculiarity. Ping Lu runs toward the two, after checking his sister, didn't mind to thank Bei Eyes Han remembering his hands to his sister's waist. Although Bei Eyes Han didn't know his sister's true gender and only do it to save her, he still disapproved Bei Eyes Han's gesture. This world is conservative when it comes to a man and an unmarried lady. Ping Lu's disapproval is not a total unreasonable. The warlock noticed the existence of the eight, he then sway his wings to attack them. When the warlock realized they easily avoid its attacks, he then put out a light to target their eyesight. Pingle started to give a signal to his companions after blocking the light magic of the warlock by his dark magic. Han Yu also put out a black smoke and cover the warlock's eyesight. Father Tan started to attack the warlock's foot so even the warlock is with no eyesight. He's attacking further Tan's location with his beak. The others started to attack the warlock's forehead where his beast core is located. Tan Feng and Ping Chunhua and Little Little will attack it with fire and water and ice to weaken the scale as Bei Eyes Han and Xiang Ju will use their long-range weapons to damage the scale. Mei Xiang watching from the sideline is contented with the performance of her subordinates, her brother's leadership is great, with her brother Ji's information provided, they try to attack the warlock on its weakest point. Brother Zihan's archery is now considered top-notch. Uncle Tan's speed is now better so avoiding the warlock's attacks is with no problem. Giving the boomerang to Brother Ji's his official weapon aside from his hidden weapons is a good decision. Brother Feng's body is now in great shape not only idle in an area while chanting his incantations. Improving his physical body and fire attribute is not wasted especially to the battles like this. Sister Hua's magic's lethality is now greater and her cooperation with Little Little although not her beast partner is synchronized well. The time is almost up. Although this cooperation looks powerful, their opponent is a venerable level beast. Makes Yang Long expected they can't subdue it. Although a light attributes warlocks may look like a defenseless and powerless warlock, its real power is not on its defense and power but with its healing ability. Even how much her subordinates will injure the warlock, it will only heal its own self. Not to mention her subordinates are still with low cultivation and their opponent is a venerable level warlock so injuring it is not that great and if ever injured, it will only heal itself in a great speed. The warlock is only buying time to weaken the stamina of the eight and attack them again. Make Xiang is already satisfied with their performance so started to move. Ping Lu when saw Make Xiang stood up from afar, he delivered the signal to Han Mu. The others stop their attacks and step back. The onlookers are dumbfounded. When they thought the group of the heroic subordinates of the little tycoon are already withdrawing and accepted their fate of death but the dark magician young man and the dark attributes warlock put out dark smoke and soon invaded the stage blocking everyone's view to the battleground. A dark smoke enveloped them. Make Xiang's subordinates look at her. Make Xiang just simply summon the young man phantom plant kiwi, tau tau. Make Xiang knows her limits. She is still weak compared to the venerable beast and if ever have a battle to it now, it will take time adding the powerful people outside the stage though wouldn't see her but would feel the fluctuation of her chi. She have her resources, 
why not use it? All the phantoms are in par with the saint level cultivators. This venerable warlock is just a simple matter to a phantom not to mention to a phantom plant. Make Xiang's subordinates look dumbfounded at the young man seems on his early twenties in his simple white robe, standing at Make Xiang's side. Although the no-return phantoms already regain their peak strength and the two phantom plants can freely change to their plant form, they are instructed by Make Xinan to change into a normal attire from their peculiar plant outfits. This is the reason Tao Tao seems an ordinary young man in Make Xiang's subordinate size. Make Xiang take her seat and leisurely said, just kill it cleanly, from the scales to bones and blood, they are all that needed, just obtain the beast core to directly kill it. Tao Tao nodded. In just a second his image suddenly disappeared from everyone's sight. Another second passed, a sudden sound of a large body collapsing to the ground was heard. The black smoke was easily fanned by the fallen large body of the unconscious warlock as the two dark magicians that were supposedly controlling the smoke are also dumbfounded. When the smoke was completely dissipated, the dead body of the venerable level warlock lying on the ground came into the onlooker's view. The warlock is with no injury a while ago is now dead. Its forehead is opened slice by a sharp object where its core is located. Its beast core is now shining brightly from its open wound and can easily harvest any time. Silence. The whole arena is enveloped in a deathly silence. Everyone only recovers when a clap rang to the whole arena. They follow the sound and saw the little tycoon already on her feet nodding her head slowly while clapping looking at her subordinates and the now dead warlock. A job well done, everyone. This young miss will reward every single of you of this good performance although it take you a lot of time to defeat it. Make Xiang's subordinates restrain themselves from acting weirdly and can only bow their heads stiffly and respectfully towards their little Xiang's direction. They can only shout inwardly. What good job. Who's good job? We didn't even wound the warlock okay, little Xiang, are you humiliating us for not subduing the warlock on your given time? They can only accept the undeserving praise to a job they didn't complete with the onlooker's eyes, they are still in daze, their thoughts are still on the young man who appeared and disappeared out of the thin air killing the venerable warlock with their little Xiang's instruction. The powerful young man followed their little Xiang's order, they can only swallow their thoughts all these time. They are following a god right? Our little Xiang must be a god under incognito. Their gaze are once again risen to a next level of worshipping level towards their little Xiang. 45. Again again. Only the light steps of the little girl can be heard at the whole arena as she leisurely walks towards the behemoth body of the venerable beast. Little little who recovered earlier is wise enough and hops towards the big head of the Giforms Lin Qian laid on the ground, stood near the clean slice on the forehead of Warlock as he carefully removed the beast core from its flesh. After harvesting the beast core, he wisely clean it and offer it to make Xiang respectfully. Make Xiang just smirk with this wise sly fox. Eight months had passed from scared little fur to smart little beast finding his way to curry a favor from her in every opportunity he have. She took the beast core from his small paws and carefully caressed it with her small fingers. After appreciating the beauty of the high-grade beast core, she then threw it inside the sacred book. Still calm and collected, she raised her head where the five powerhouses are seated. She bows her head even not seeing their faces from her view. She said words clearly and slowly. This young lady thanks the elders for this welcoming gift. Her subordinates followed suit, waking everyone from their reverie. They then realize the aftermath of this result. They lost their bets. They are only comforted when they think of the loss of the mercenary powerhouse compared to the mere thousands of kills they lost. They just lost a venerable warlock and 20 million kills looking everyone survived. They can only imagine the unending zeros of that amount. Is this why the little tycoon is a tycoon? That she invests to the family she bought to win these kind of battles and earn a lot? Those with simple minds are now focusing on the kills lost with this battle putting aside how a venerable beast suddenly was defeated in just a second out of everyone's view. Those who are smart enough to look deeper to things are now looking at Maxiang's group with more complications. First, the warlock is purely killed by a sharp object and cleanly separated its beast core from its flesh. Among the eight who are battling with the warlock, only one is with the sword but that eight hold weapon can't be the reason of this clean and precise cut not to mention the martial artist is only a seventh stage peak level. Second, they didn't feel a fluctuation of chi before the warlock was cut guild. Third, the group is trying to conceal something, 
the two dark magicians spread a dark smoke to be able to hide how they will defeat the warlock, or WHO will defeat the warlock. They then look at the little girl intently but instantly withdrew their ideas. They are not desperate enough to consider crazy conjecture. That is not the case of the four people where the powerhouses are located. Cowding and his confidant, the burly man he is with inside the white forest eight months ago, can only purse their lips. The memory of the five years old little girl who seems harmless but killed a ninth stage cultivator with only one swoop once again rose. They can still feel the chill penetrating even to their bones. The great summoner cow who have a hunch of makes Yang's hidden identity just confirm his conclusion. The other person who is in deep thoughts and looking at makes Yang intently suspecting that she is the person behind the death of the venerable warlock is the headmaster of the refining guild. Nine months ago when their powerhouse sent a small group to see the white forest and gather the information of the news leak regarding the black Mayan metal that was found by an unknown party, the group went back unharmed but was not on their good condition. They encounter a powerful entity and gave him the detailed information of what happened that night. A five years old little girl that easily killed ninth stage cultivators and other more in just one attack. The little girl is accompanied by a commander level younger man and was led by a young master in white mask. What other more peculiar with this group, the young master in mask and the little girl's fluctuation of chi can't be detected even the five years old little girl made her attack. Adding to this, based on the remarks of the young master in white mask. He is way stronger than the five years old little girl, the level of cultivation of stronger cultivator indeed can't be detected by a practitioner with lower cultivation unless they release their pressure to or made an attack to her peak. Meven killed the cultivators that night and her fluctuation of chi can't be detected, it's indeed considered peculiar, it's either that's not her peak strength or she have different way of cultivation not using chi. The headmaster of the refining guild can only keep his ideas on his own. F. Father, the stiff demeanor where the headmasters of the five powerhouses are located was soon got heavier with the young girl's cracked voice. Seems we underestimated the little girl. Resources. The little girl's resources. One of the headmaster corrected, the other party chuckled. What would headmaster Lishi's next move? Do we need to know? The little girl have spoken. One of the headmaster stated looking at Mexiang's group below, cutting the venerable warlock into pieces harvesting the parts they can benefited. Headmaster Lishi stood, the pressure coming from him is heavy affecting the juniors around but protected by their own seniors the headmasters. He didn't notice this and didn't care until he heard the calm voice of headmaster Kao. I had warned you to not offend the little girl. You must be wise enough this time. Headmaster Lishi's pressure dissipated a little and was completely disappeared when his confidant delivered a message. The other headmasters had reacted to the message differently. Each of us must had do their own investigation to the group. We are not ignorant to the why Empress real intention. The question is, would Headmaster Lishi would be wise enough just like what the great summoner's cow's words? Headmaster Cow shook his head can only sigh of the ignorance of these old men. He warned them enough, the headmaster of beast taming organization gave a knowing smile while looking below the stage. Headmaster Lishi gave his signal to his confidant. When the confidant of the headmaster himself appeared on the stage, the audience stopped their whispers and focus on the scene below. The man from mercenary organization welcomes the amazing mercenary to the organization and gave them the due amount. The little tycoon give her signal after accepting the first interspatial sack. The others followed accepting their shares, the onlookers can only envy from the sideline. The little tycoon is too generous to her subordinates and didn't claim all the prices. That's 10 million each. Seen by the higher-ups how the group easily subdued the venerable level warlock, the elders decided to give this special mission offered by Y Kingdom to the amazing mercenary. Mentioning the Y Kingdom, makes Yang's eyebrow arched, recently. A royal princess of Y Kingdom came of age appropriate in contracting her warlock. The mission is to accompany the princess herself to the Nyon Mountain to hunt for her contract beast. When heard by the audience the dangerous Nyon Mountain, they firstly thought this is another way to dispatch the small mercenary group but thinking deeper. They will accompany the princess meaning the headmaster must trust the group. He will not risk a life of a princess and the name of their powerhouse to dispatch a small mercenary, right? Mei Xiang thinks differently, the powerhouse and Y Kingdom is colluding to dispatch two threats to them, 
it seems the low-level peace princess is involved on the internal dispute of the harem. Lucky for the Y princess they brought her, Meixiang, to their calculation and would not be killed at least to this journey. The reason for choosing the group to do this mission. The headmaster heard the young Miss Meixiang is an acquaintance of the princess three months ago at the stone gambling at the south. Meixiang smirk inwardly. Now. The mercenary is giving a hint to the audience of what happened to her and the Y princess at the stone bet purposely so the detail of what happened that day will be known by everyone. If ever the princess was killed on their mission, they will put all blame to them saying they purposely let her die. If ever they fail to hunt a contract beast for her, they would be a laughing stock. If ever all of them are annihilated, then all is good. This trick is too dumb. They just showcase killing a venerable warlock in their very eyes and now they are challenging their strength once again? These people of Central are either too dumb or too generous. It's just this makes Yang is curious. What level of beast does the party is expecting this group to hunt for the princess? According to the details given, a seventh grade beast is enough. Everyone in the arena pursed their lips. The highest warlock the Central ever tamed and owned was a commander level. A 7th grade to 9th grade is already a luxury to them even to royalties as these level are not only hard to capture alive but also to tame. This is with a need of cooperation with the beast taming powerhouse if ever had the possession of this high level warlock and the price isn't cheap. If contracted a beast a stage 1 higher from the expected stage, the price 100 million would be doubled and so on. Not only this. The headmaster decided if this mission is completed by the amazing mercenary, the group would automatically promote it from grade F mercenary to grade S. The audience gasped, a hundred million. This is too much. Not only this but they will be promoted to an S grade mercenary, but still, it's the notorious Nyon mountain with a powerful warlock guarding the whole mountain. Their life is in line. If the Y princess is this loved. Then this followers shall oblige and bring back the princess safe and sound with her high level contract beast. She will have her journey to Nyon Mountain anyways. Earning much isn't bad. The man nodded still on his stoic face. The warlock is necessary to be obtained from the Nyon Mountain as the spirituality is denser thus the warlock's spirituality is purer. At the middle of the mountain, a drop of spiritual water the same water flowing inside the phantom. Make Xiang didn't care to hear the facts of the man that was purposely told in public so this mission wouldn't be too suspecting from the ordinary citizen. The nobles and aristocrats around knew what is the powerhouse and the Y Kingdom's real purpose. They can only enjoy this scene and wait how the unpredictable group would surprise them once again. The Y Kingdom wouldn't target the Nyon Mountain. Unfortunately a phenomenon happened inside the White Forest. The White Forest is the second largest and the most abundant forest which is under the jurisdiction of the Y Kingdom. Naturally the high-grade warlock are not lacking. Unfortunately, warlocks are now rare view inside the forest a year ago of unknown reason and soon when the ancient beast descended from the heaven. The warlock 60 makes Yang's subordinates was uncomfortable to the sudden mention of White Forest with their guilty conscience. They can only look intently at the ground not meeting anyone's eyes. They subconsciously feel their interspatial rings full of the beast cause of these missing warlocks. The followers understood, to Nyon Mountain and no other else. That day, another day made the amazing mercenary a topic of the central. 46. Koi Goddess Meixiang's team went home. Her subordinates are strangely silent, not brave enough to ask their little Xiang about the powerful young man they chose to stay quiet. They then look at their brave sacrificial lamb tunneling but the dumbass is smiling silly currently on his dreamland imagining how rich he is right now. Their meal ended. Make Xiang discuss their next step. We're now officially citizen of the central. Everyone nodded. A year ago we aim to be stronger. It's the same goal today and the coming days. But our end objective is not the central. This place. This is just a training ground for all of us. If we can't survive here. It means we can't be at that realm of what and where is that world, you'll know after proving yourself. Ping Lin Ping Chunhua pursed their lips having a hint of this realm Meik Xiang is talking about. Auntie Tan, oversee the diet of everyone especially Little White and Little Bao. Ancient beasts are with peculiar intake to follow so they can advance to adulthood and possess fully their ancestors' strengths. Half of the meat of the Giforms Lin Qian would be a jerky for the little ones. This includes little meat, Auntie. You are also responsible for the financial of our mercenary. Old Leng, 
Our base is soon to open for public. Install the solar panels and appliances three days later. Uncle Ten, you are responsible for the management of the base. Look for manpower to help you oversee the safety of the place. Then she handed a necklace with a small pearl almost invisible to the naked eye. It can absorb the chi for its owner. At night, cultivate for a short period of time and the chi absorbed by the bead will transfer to your body. We only have one of this. Uncle's time for cultivation would be used to oversee our main base so this will be given to Uncle. This pearl is the moon of the sea makes Yang won on the stone gambling months ago. After using her master armament and alchemist skills, she turned it to a precious pearl good for cultivation. A formula she read inside the sacred book. Little Xiang, this is too precious. Uncle will not disappoint little Xiang. Uncle Tan cannot reject the precious item and can only do his best. Everyone knows this. They had accepted the best resources. Not rejecting and not wasting make Xiang's gifts is the best they can do. Brother Feng, and Brother Chun, enroll to the same academy. Brother Ling, enroll to Xin Academy. The academy is where the best students of medicines are currently enrolled. The Central College do a tournament once a year. Prove yourselves by dominating the tournament. The three nodded. Citizen age 19 to 25 are mandatory to study at the Central. Brother Han, Brother, and Brother Jia will test their department at the Central College after the event. Me, Little Fei I, Brother, and Brother Jia would be out of the Central to find one of the ingredient to use on Brother's poison and Brother to continue his beast taming training. The four of us will also accompany the Y Princess to Nyon Mountain. While we are afar, the others should keep your guards up all the time. Summon your shadow guards if encountered danger. If still not solved, summon your beasts and break the crystal. Everyone nodded. Let's enjoy the coming days for now. We have a lot of days to come. Make Xiang's subordinates had a long night that night thinking of the mysterious young man killed the venerable beast. There, now rich life and the powerful warlock Shi Jinhai, their silent hero. The next day, they brought their tickets and roam around the gambling sites to collect their winning stakes. They didn't hide their identity naturally the onlookers around recognized them. They can only curse them mentally envying Meg Xiang from the sideline. The little tycoon must possess a body of Koi goddess to encounter talented and strong subordinates. Also that day, the story of what happened on the stone betting three months ago spread like a flu to the central. The stories are with different versions and most are exaggerated but with similar content. The little tycoon won millions from the white princess and even won a precious stone that can put a decaying person to live once again. They can only sigh inwardly for a hundredth times today. The little tycoon have a body of koi goddess she only needs to pick random stone turns out to be a precious or and can earn millions at the same time. The remaining three days of the event was with the activity of challenging other mercenaries to advance the grade of their mercenary group. Meg Xiang had the initial plan to challenge at least a grade A mercenary to rose the grade of their group but when the Nyon Mountain mission with a promise of hundreds of millions of reward plus accelerating to grade S mercenary, she didn't bother to waste their energy and time. They rent the best and most expensive private seat so they can watch the tournament. When bored, they will roam around to spend money. On the last day of the event, a grand auction was scheduled just like every year. Each mercenaries are mandatory to give up items to the organization to be auctioned. The income would be given to the mercenary powerhouse. All would be ranked according to their end bid. The most precious items price would be given back to the mercenary doubling the amount by the organization. With this, mercenary groups give up the most precious item they possess not only to flex but to win back the amount of the item with additional profit. In this case the mercenary powerhouse won a lot of millions every year. The auction night arrived. Many good items are auctioned. The onlookers are looking at the same direction when the final bidder came from a certain group again and again. They can't help but think of their savings. They know by their hearts at least a part of their small saving was being used by the group to buy the items they like. That certain group is no other than Meg Xiang's group. Brother Chun, why do you buy that item this time? Ping Chunhua just gave a vague answer and didn't mind to explain in detail. The cloth is comfortable and with good absorption. She would sew it for little Xiang to use when her that time of the month would visit her. Their little Xiang is soon to be a lady officially and that month may arrive any time the coming days. If the mercenary who almost died in harvesting this precious cloth see Ping Chunhua's thoughts, they will spit a mouthful of blood. 
Auntie Tan bids for accessories and other good items. Tan Ling bought the rare medicinal herbs to concoct for the group. The others also bought the items they thought are precious mainly for their Xiang Er and little Fei I. The onlookers can only twitch their faces when the members from the same group themselves compete to one another for a certain item. They then realize Make Xiang's subordinates spit items to give it to their boss the little tycoon. Indeed, a koi goddess. When all the 51 items given by the 51 mercenary groups are all auctioned, they all thought the event ends but then one of the little tycoon's subordinate made his way to the stage and present a tray with an item. Yes, they forgot. The amazing mercenary is officially part of the mercenary organization powerhouse naturally they can offer an item to auction tonight. The organizers of the event examine the item. After some minutes with meticulous process, the announcer then carefully and clearly explain the details of the item. Our next and the last item is the spiritual water obtained from Nyon Mountain. At the legend it's almost the same spiritual water flowing inside the phantom world. Once used in concocting elixirs. It would undoubtedly be a powerful pill. Three of our appraisers examined the item and said the same detail. The item is authentic and with pure and 100% of spirituality. The amazing mercenary gave up three bottles of spiritual water. All three would be given to the final bidder. The amount would start at 50 million and can only increase their bids not lesser than a million. The bid starts now. Everyone are dumbfounded. They are still processing the information when they heard the first bidder place his offer. They then woke up from their reverie and started to bid. They can only give their thanks to Xiang's group for buying most of the items so they didn't spend their tills for the unimportant items. The bid risen to a level until reached the same amount of the total of all the 51 prior auctioned items. Headmaster Lishi only had a sigh of relief when the bidding comes to its end only because the time for bidding runs out. The final bid was won by the headmaster at the Heavenly Doctor Association. After the bidding was done and everyone's minds are no longer in chaos for the precious item, they then realize the peculiarity of the event. The amazing mercenary have an item that can only obtain from the dangerous Nyon Mountain. The sleepless night was not only for the headmaster Lishi who promised Meixiang's team to advance directly to S-level mercenary group if the mission is completed but also the Empress of the White Kingdom that thought the group was oblivious to the dangerous mountain and promise an undescribable amount as a reward for a mission that if completed, she will undoubtedly suffer. The night is not only long for the outsiders but also for Meixiang's subordinates. When Tanling wanted to bid for the precious spiritual water after knowing the details, their little Xiang stops him and casually said the water they consume for the past year is the same water flowing inside the phantom world and the same item these people are bidding. They almost explode that moment. Little Xiang, why would you delay to inform us the important details every time? Can you tell us everything now so we can spit blood in one go? They wanted to spank the people of the central of their whispers and murmurs. Our little Xiang is no Koi goddess okay? We are the one who really possess the body of Koi gods and goddesses okay? This luck even becoming a dog for their little Xiang is already undeserving to any of you. Days passed. Amazing mercenaries main base was completed. Make Xiang's subordinates are dumbfounded at the different style of the place and the new equipment surround. What are these precious stone on the ceiling that gave light to the whole room and can even switch on and off? These are not beast cores with light attribute, right? They can even change to different colors. What are these small things that was around every corner that blow smoke? A fragrant smoke that gives calming sensation and even kept the air around not too dry. There are no water attribute magician inside the small machines, right? What are these cooking equipments used by Aunt Eaton that doesn't show a fire but can cook their meals? What about the big equipments that can on and off that can control the temperature of the room? These equipments are with wind, air, ice and other elements, they can only look at old Leng and Auntie Tan who are being praised by their little Xiang. So this is the reason their little Xiang favors old Leng, they can no longer question it. Old Leng is too powerful he can create elements only using the heat of the sun. Their main base was open to the public and soon become the topic of the central. Old Leng, Auntie Tan, and Uncle Tan managed the place while the rest went to the center of the central to study. 47. Two hidden. A N. Advance. Happy birthday, Snow Lily. A you woo. Thank you. You wicked reader who pokes my weak heart. I can only grant two chapters for your special day, cause that's all I can afford with my cough busy schedule. 
Make Xiang and the others went to Jin Academy accompanying Tang Feng and Ping Chun to enroll. Tang Feng and Ping Chun both received token from Jin Academy adding the good reputation of the school for its best facility and education for magic practitioners, they both agreed to enroll to the academy. Tang Ling on the other hand enrolled to the neighboring academy Xin Academy just like Make Xiang's instruction, on the whole process. People are looking on their way. The news about the mercenary tournament had long gone widespread adding the total defeat of the venerable warlock and the latest gossip in the entire central about the powerful group possessing spiritual water. Most of the onlookers wouldn't recognize the group if not with the purple-eyed wilt on the little girl's side. They can easily guess the little girl's identity, it's the little tycoon with peculiar hobbies of adopting powerful cultivators. The stories mainly focus on how rich she is and didn't even mention how her beauty defeated the well-known fairy of the central. Meg Xiang and the others are walking on their way out from the academy when they saw three familiar faces, it's their little tour guides, little Kin and little Jin, and the double element summoner Shin Ai. The three are walking side by side, Kin in the middle as Shin Ai is talking looking at Kin's way from time to time. The others are thinking how unexpected this combination while Meg Xiang and Tan Ling didn't. Tan Ling is actually thinking how their little tour guides are no longer little growing rapidly while their little Xiang isn't. Tan Ling chose to keep his thoughts for himself. When Kin noticed eyes observing them from afar, his eyes searched for those gazes and saw Meg Xiang's group, fixing his sight to her his knuckles tighten subconsciously. Shin I have been talking to Kin to befriend him luring him to their powerhouse. She was being patient even with the two's low birth with the reason of Kin tested as a summoner. She noticed the indifferent treatment of Kin to her. She wasn't offended at all as he is treating everyone the same. When she noticed the attention of Kin is no longer on her which was never in the first place. Shin Ai follows his line of sight stopping to make Xiang's group. She had no time to ponder Kin's connection to the group when the confidant of the owner of the Jin Academy greets make Xiang. Shock. She set aside Kin's link to make Xiang and now thinking the madman patriarch who just found his new toy to play. The patriarch is impulsive whom doesn't care of the power behind a person he took interest to especially he is a powerful summoner. She is curious of this collision. Or would there be even a collision? Thinking carefully headmaster Lishi was angered by the group. Shin I doubt if the mercenary powerhouse would shield the small mercenary against the patriarch. Although unfavored, the small mercenary is still their people. Letting a group under them harmed by a mere patriarch of one of the eight great families would only give a bad reputation to the mercenary powerhouse but this is an easy matter to solve. They can reason out the madman patriarch as a summoner to accept defeat getting in good side of a summoner and dispatch the small mercenary group at the same time. Patriarch Jin Lang is not only well known because of his identity as a summoner and as the youngest patriarch of the eight great families but also his unique collection of slaves and his brutality towards them. Once he laid his eyes to you, you are considered as good as a corpse. Shin I maintain her harmless demeanor but she was smirking inside looking at Mei Xiang now good as a dead person. Little did the little girl playing as a wise observer and genius strategist from the sideline. Her conjecture is wrong from the very first place. When Mei Xiang heard her presence was requested by the patriarch of the Jin family, she agreed without having a second thought. Jin Lang had tried to attack her little brother, naturally, she have to see him with her own eyes. She is leaving the others here alone for a year. A summoner is no match to their current ability even with the help of their warlock and shadow guards. While the others are outside, Mei Xiang was escorted to a private room full of peculiar paintings. When seated, Mei Xiang looked at the man on the opposite seat. Mei Xiang heard the patriarch seeks the little girl's audience. Jin Lang's eyes never leaves Mei Xiang when she entered the room. With his usual smile he answered, this patriarch is glad his request was not denied, naturally. Mei Xiang wanted an explanation of Patriarch Jin's intention of harming her little brother. Jin Lang chuckled with the straightforwardness of the little girl. He drank his wine and then leisurely answered, This Patriarch wonders if the young miss with ability to buy him is with the ability to keep him. That's all. Did this young miss have proven herself enough? A sudden voice rang outside the door. Jin Lang's confidant abruptly entered. He is looking at Mei Xiang full of hesitation before delivering the message. Jin Lang chuckled, his smile didn't diminish even after knowing his people who are instructed to harm Mei Xiang's people are now dead. 
it seems the patriarch is with no right to question this makes Yang if she can keep her people or not if he himself don't have this ability. Jin Lang just chuckled. Those are not considered my people. This patriarch needs no weak creatures. Jin Lang then lazily leaned back on his chair after drinking his tea. Answering Mei Xiang's former question he said, The young miss indeed proven herself once again but this patriarch only knew the word enough if he have seen everything. Mei Xiang smiled, the patriarch can't afford it. This patriarch is now more curious, too much curiosity would do no good. Is the little girl threatening this patriarch? Makes Yang without any hesitation, she answered, yes, makes Yang heard of patriarch Jin Lang's way to deal with his matters that can be compared to a tiger, this makes Yang is too disappointed to see the tiger is with the claws of a kitten scratching a dragon's tail, the same as the young master she met inside the white forest but this cat is not only curious but had the gut of a tiger to test the water even knowing the water is poisonous. The patriarch is no idiot unlike his reputation outside. The patriarch must be wise to know when to move his fragile claws and when to stop. This makes Yang is afraid she wouldn't have the same patience and cut not only the claws but the cat's nine lives. Jin Lang's lips are still curving. Although he is smiling, his eyes are no longer playful. Gan Junji, you must know him? Makes Yang raised his eyebrow. So it's about him. The wise prince wanted to test the little girl's real ability using this patriarch's hands. Jin Lang noticed this but only feign ignorance. Gan Junji deliberately mentioned the little girl to arouse his interest towards her. He can't tell at first who is behind the strong mental power he encountered until with Gan Junji deliberately mentioning the little girl, everyone knows when he was interested to someone. He will obtain it even the person he wanted is protected by one of the five powerhouses. Gan Junji wanted to test the water using someone else poor, or, or had already knew the little girl's ability and wanted to clean this patriarch or is fully aware the water is poisonous and wanted to use it to harm the tiger. Ow? It seems the crown prince looked too highly of this little girl. The young lad overestimated himself. Overestimated himself and underestimated the patriarch. Meixiang continued, but we can't deny the crown prince is a good piece to watch. Would the patriarch wanted to clean him himself? This patriarch's time is too precious to move his fragile kitten's claws. Meixiang chuckled with Jin Lang's remark. The crown prince is a mere newborn rat compared to the kitten. Jin Lang only smirked. Meixiang continued. The outsiders are completely deceived by the patriarch's play underestimating his way of thinking. The patriarch's play is undeniably interesting. Jin Lang replied while playing with his empty cup. This play was only possible with a reason of only few are knowledgeable of a summoner's mental strength. This patriarch's play is with no excitement compared to the hidden summoner's play. Whatever role we are playing, this didn't leave the matter the crown prince wanted to include the both of us to his child's play. This central is with no color without the role played by the crown prince. If he has no shows to perform anymore, this patriarch will clean him himself. Meixiang can only drink her tea silently appreciating this piece. The central is with this kind of hidden piece, too hidden that even the wise crown prince is ignorant of him. Who is manipulating whom? Who is enjoying a show of whom? Who is a piece of whom? The wise crown prince is good in utilizing information, yes, but without a proper facts. He is no different to a puppeteer without a control to a puppet's string. The crown prince didn't even notice he's just a mere performer to Jin Lang's eyes. Although this young miss is offended, the crown prince is soon to move his strings. Makes Yang would spare his life this time. Ow? This move the young miss talking about must be towards no ordinary piece. If an S-grade kingdom is considered no ordinary piece then it is. Jin Lang chuckled. It seems the little girl accumulated information that even this patriarch didn't know. The crown prince is not only good in accumulating information but also in hiding them. Makes Yang just had the luck and acquire it accidentally. The two had a calm conversation although their topics are no ordinary. The two discuss like the people involved are just small matters to them. After finishing her tea, Makes Yang bids her farewell to the patriarch. A tea again, let it be next time. This patriarch enjoys conversing with smart people. Makes Yang just nod, before completely leaving. Her eyes took a glimpse of the paintings on the wall. Her eyes are unreadable. This piece is, too hidden. 48. A powerful confidant. Makes Yang and the others went next to Central College. When they entered the college premise, they already heard the cheers even from the entrance. The college is examining the enrollees level of cultivation and which department was appropriate for them. 
Most of these students are already recruited and was already under someone's power. The college is not mainly to learn from teachers but to compare with other students and accumulate experiences from the mission board. College is a place to earn points and use the facilities of the school to increase their cultivation. When Meik Xiang and the others arrived at the testing area, unlike the entrance exam of the eight academies, the stage is exposed to the public. Not only the students of Central College is present but also the students of the eight academies. Classes are not yet officially starting so almost all the students are present to cheer the alumnus of their respected academies. Zikang, when saw Meik Xiang's team, he scratched his head and hesitantly said a word to the examiner before leaping to the stage. There are nine aligned stones on the stage, the students only have to attack the first stone to the direction of the rest of the stones. The stones will turn to which color according to the abilities the student use while wherever the attack stops can determine their level of cultivation equivalent to their grade. This grade will have a great benefit on their access to the mission board. When Zikang made his attack, the stones move one after another leaving all the first six stones to shake in an incredible level. This indicate he is with sixth stage peak level of cultivation. Of all the freshman martial artists, he is the only one with the sixth stage peak level of cultivation. This is unquestionably top notch among the martial artists. Zikang with a cultivation of a sixth stage practitioner at the age of 19 even with an ordinary background is considered a high grade genius. Zikang didn't stay long but before leaving he looked at Meik Xiang nodding to her. Meik Xiang chuckled to the uncultured but stiff gesture of the young man. The audience's attention didn't stay long to Zikang suddenly diverted to Shin Ai who made her way to one of the stage. Central colleges accommodate not only 19 to 25 five years old talents but also accept students with special cases just like Shin Ai with the identity of a rare summoner, they can enroll to one of the eight academies and to the central colleges at the same time. Shin Ai's attack only reached the first crystal but that doesn't disappoint everyone as everyone knows she was just tested three months ago. Her summoner identity and being two elemental magician are enough to or everyone. Kin was also tested and the same as Shin Ai. His attack only reached the first crystal but the color is too faint to see. Meik Xiang watching from the sideline didn't understand this. They are accepted with their summoner identity, they have to showcase their mental power and not their elements. The audience again diverted their attention to another direction when a burly man greeted Meik Xiang. The burly man is not unknown at all as he is the confidant of young master Cao Ding. The heir of the central college. The burly man stiffly introduced himself to Meik Xiang. Meik Xiang knowing his identity only nod and greeted him back acting this is their first meet. The burly man called Gu Yu gave two token of central college to Meik Xiang and carefully bid his farewell like he is afraid he'll offend him if he'll breath too much air. A room from afar where the test for the new students of the central college is taking place. Group of young masters are looking at the scene below. Why does it seems Gu Yu is scared to the little girl, right? Kao Ding. Did your interest promoted to liking the little girl to be your concubine? Gu Yu seems too careful of his action towards her. Concubine? That beauty deserves a position of a main wife. Cao Ding didn't care of their tease and nonsense. He's even proud of his confidant not collapsing under the powerful girl's gaze. He was warned by his grandfather multiple times to be careful of his words and action to the little girl. His grandfather didn't know he need not to warn them as they will be extremely careful to her. What happened inside the white forest had beat them out of their wits. Just all of you, just don't offend her. Cao Ding can only warn his friend as she didn't want to offend the powerful little girl. He didn't even told what happened to the white forest even to his grandfather no less to them. Oh ooh, 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 does young master Cao Ding just declare his words of protection to his future wife? The others started to make noise. Cao Ding can only helplessly sigh. He can't even warn these idiots not wanting to offend the powerful little girl but he can't help expand his imagination with their tease. Coughing, he diverted his attention below. Bei Ai Zihun, Ping Lu, and Xian Ji had finished testing their abilities that awe the audience. Bei Ai Zihun and Xian Ji used their eight hold weapons to obtain a grade higher than their cultivation. Ping Lu is a seventh stage cultivator and a dark magician that had gone everyone almost crazy. These are three are not only powerful but also too good looking. The audience are still in days when Dan Fei I gave up a token to the organizer and stood to one of the testing area. They then realize the reason the young master Cao Ding's confidant's intention earlier, it is to accept the purple-eyed wilt with double constitution. What they didn't know, 
Mexiang was also given the same token but rejected the idea hiding her token inside her interspatial ring. Dan Fei didn't act humble and use all his power in attacking the aligned crystals using the weapon his sister refined. With an 8 hold weapon and his current cultivation second stage middle level, he made a movement up to 6 crystals. That didn't stop there. When the crystals calmed down, he made his attack using his fire that lighted up to 9th crystals into bright red colors. The audience's eyes bulged. They didn't see wrong, right? Ninth stage. This kid just test his aptitude, right? 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 The fire of heaven and earth owned by Dan Fair is still young but already can store power to this extent. Unlike fire of cultivators, this fire is with own life. The fire of heaven and earth's level of power can tell by what extent the power they can store and how short they can recharge. Its growth on the other hand depends on the density of fire elements of its owner's environment. Only the disadvantage of it is although it's powerful fire of heaven and earth span of use is shorter compared to the normal fire cultivators. The growth of this fire is also takes millennium to reach its peak. Dan Fei I leap down from the stage and get back his badge that is now with a symbol of what grade he is. Dan Fei I strive towards his sister lowering his head. Makes Yang pat Dan Fei I's red hair spoiling him with praises. My little brother is too handsome especially when he swung his new weapon. My little Fei Eye is powerful turning all the crystals the same color as his red beautiful hair. My little brother is too good looking when he's purple. The onlookers felt complicated with the unrelated praises of the little tycoon. Makes Yang and the rest left the area without caring the outsiders thoughts. They went to the mission board of the college and get all the copy of the missions using their badge. With Dan Fei Eye's badge, they are with access of all the missions. In completing these missions, students will earn points that can be used to have an access to the school facilities and can also buy the items sell by the college and other students. A week later, the eight academies officially started their classes. At the same day, Meixiang, Dan Fei Eye, Pingle, and Xianjit took their leave but before leaving, Meixiang give the four a crystal that they should break if encounter immense danger. She also left Tao Tao as Tan Ling's confidant. When Ping Chunhua, Bei Ai Zihun, and Tan Feng learn they will summon the powerful young man who defeated a venerable warlock by just breaking the crystal, they carefully place the crystal inside their interspatial ring too afraid they will accidentally break it. Tan Ling on the other hand is with weak legs. Li, little Xiang. Is this too luxurious? This brother Ling is weak but I already have two shadow guards right? Makes Yang pretend she didn't notice their weird faces. Auntie Tan and the others are safe with the ancient beasts to summon for the worst scenario but these four are far from the main base and only had their shadow guards. Makes Yang didn't hide Tao Tao's identity that made them more uncomfortable with his presence. After leaving, Makes Yang nod to Tao Tao. Tao Tao bow his head respectfully. Tao Tao doesn't care even he is not inside the sacred book. He have the interspatial ring owned by him and the space is in great size that contains spiritual water he can consume for the whole year. On the first day of the school year, the always jolly and confident Tan Ling stiffly walks to the academy with his powerful confidant following him. He hopes no one offends him. He don't want a massacre to happen here okay. He is but only a humble young man wanted a peaceful life inside the academy while the little Xiang is away. Unfortunately to him and the others, this would not be the case in the coming days. 49. Nyon Mountain. 49. Nyon Mountain. 50. Unlock Shelves. 51. Envy and Jealousy. 52. Cousin Makes Yang. 53. Provocation. 54. Mercenary Tournament. 55. Will Follow. End. Note. Titles are not fixed. Chapter 49 to 55 would be edited after unauthorized site publish these chapters. Once the chapters are edited, I will publish a chapter titled Book 2 so you'll still be notified. The contents of 49 to 55 before edited are just the first three chapters of my other stories then at the last part is a sample scene of the book. Note, if you want to take a glimpse of Meixiang's Book 2, you can read a sample scene at the book debut, The Unloved Fiancé with a chapter title. One tenth, makes Yang, cough, I, I, I'm shamelessly promoting my other stories at this unauthorized site, so if you're reading this somewhere else please follow my real accounts. Stories, 1. Genius Summoner Turning the World Upside Down, underscore Sacred Book, underscore Dan Makes Yang, Plant Phantom Summoner, 
underscore ancient cultivation world, book 1, completed, book 2, ongoing, 2, King Adama dominates the whole land, underscore sacred path, underscore Adama, green totem, underscore made up ancient period, book 1, ongoing, 3, the peerless mutant is the apocalypse goddess, underscore sacred clock, underscore quona, mutant fruit soul guide master, underscore post apocalypse period, cultivation world, book 1 ongoing, 4, the wicked which wreaks havoc once again, underscore sacred key, underscore an, plant witch, underscore fairy tale world, book 1, on hold, 10, book 1, debut, the unloved fiancé, status, completed, book 2, quick transmigration, behold, creatures, book 3, space, unveiling the waste young miss shocking identities, underscore sacred door, underscore era, plant system, underscore the current earth, quarantine era lol, she's the representative of our realm, please read her story cough cough, book 1, completed, book 2, soon, book 3, soon, 50, the unlocked shelves, title, the peerless mutant is the apocalypse goddess, underscore sacred clock, underscore quona, fruit soul summon a mutant, underscore post apocalypse period, cultivation world, book 1 ongoing, synopsis, 30 years passed after the apocalyptic period started, the strongest train, cultivators, mutant fruit eaters, and mutants, are the strong existence of the current era, one person is impossible to become these three at a time, not in the case of a little girl, the abandoned waste young miss of the powerful Yun family, she is the recognized owner of one of the mysterious sacred artifact, the sacred clock, underscore, chapter 1, the abandoned young miss, when earth faced a virus that made almost half of the population become zombies, the surviving people learn they are able to cultivate and control the basic elements, fire, earth, water, wood and metal, and the rare abilities are thunder, mental power, and healing. With the existence of the immense danger brought by the zombies, people who are able to cultivate are at the peak of the high chi, they are feared and respected. A year had passed after the zombies existed when another strong existence during the apocalypse period had been discovered. Mutants, they possess a powerful abilities that is unique to one another. Mutants are unable to cultivate elements but they are also considered special existence as they have powerful abilities that is useful at the current era where strength and abilities are well recognized. Fifteen years passed when another powerful existence was discovered, mutant fruits. Once a mutant died, their power will retain to the world invading three fruits. These ordinary fruits possessing the dead mutant's powers will be called mutant fruits. Once a mutant fruit was eaten, the person will inherit the power of the dead mutant. The existence of mutant fruits are discovered after a kid ate a mutant fruit that able to inherit the power of the infamous powerful mutant that just died of a mission. They then study the existence of mutant fruits and their specifications. Once the mutant died, his power will be retained to the world. The power will exist physically invading three fruits in an unknown different locations. Once one of the three fruit was eaten, the power will be inherited by that person which he'll be called a mutant fruit chooser. A person unable to become a cultivator doesn't mean he can become a mutant fruit eater. Decade passed. The existence and rules of mutant fruits are identified by the experts at the current era. The apocalypse period cultivators, mutant fruit eaters, and mutants are at the peak of the pyramid. At age 10 of a child, he can already test his aptitude to know which ability he has among these three. These are three existence are impossible to exist in one person until a little girl would soon break this so-called impossible phenomenon. Thirty years passed since the apocalypse era started. Many bases are established and existed only for a few years. Just two months ago, one of the five major base of the country the Wellian base was destroyed when zombies completely penetrated the area. Not far from the ruined Wellian base is a small base called Ven Base. Most of the survivors with ordinary backgrounds from the ruined Wellian base went to this small base. Among these survivors are five children that was rescued by a well-known soldier called Jim, a man on his forties, a dual cultivator of thunder and water element. Currently, these five children he rescued are at a round table currently having their breakfast. He isn't here yet. 
It's been a month. The room is filled with silence. He's strong. Just eat. I will go out again to ask for an update of their mission. The eldest among them sternly said, although calm outside, he is nervous himself. Uncle Jim saved them four even they are only stranger to him. After saving them five together with the little girl he's serving, they all went here at the Venn base buying a residence to live. For them to survive the coming days, he went to a mission to earn points and crystal cores needed to pay for the rent and foods inside the base. Although they are only with him for only less than two months and they didn't have much interaction with him. The five of them respected him more than anyone else. On his journey to a mission when Wellian Base is still existing, he saved them four in a life and death situation one after another. After succeeding the mission, he returned to the base with them for but just a day inside the Wellian Base. The base was successfully penetrated by zombies. Little Quona, eat, don't worry, uncle will return. The three boys hearing the eldest kid remembering the fragile little girl's existence. They try their best to take back their past statements, although the five of them didn't know one another personally before. They are not stranger to the identity of the little girl Quona even before the Wellian base was ruined. She is the young Miss of Yun family, one of the powerful family at the ruined Wellian base. She is well known not only inside the Wellian base but to the other bases as the members of her family are all top-notch talents and her as a waste who was tested a year ago that can't cultivate any element neither a mutant nor a mutant fruit eater. She is treated as a laughing stock by the outsiders and even her own family. The whole Yun clan was rescued while the Wellian base is in commotion omitting her existence. She was left by her own family at their residence while zombies are invading the area. She was only alive today with Uncle Jim saving her together with them for. Uncle Jim is recruited by her family a year ago before Wellian base was destroyed. The moment he served the family, he accepted a mission outside the base where he encountered the four young men. Them all five have been together for two months now. They all try their best to make her comfortable but the efforts seems not appreciated by the young girl as she never speak a single word to them but all these are understood by the four. The little girl must be traumatized not only with a zombie's sight but with the fact that her own family abandoned her while the base is being invaded. When they saw the little girl is on her usual meek demeanor, they no longer push the matter and continue to eat. Another boy carefully said after their breakfast. Uncle Jim said once he will not return in a span of a month. We must open his room, today, is that day. The room is filled with silence once again. That morning, the five children went in front of the door of the said room. The eldest kid lead and opened the door. Once the five of them entered the room, they noticed the equipment at the very middle of the room which is used in testing a child's aptitude. Their gazes then fell to the crystal cores and different items around the room. The four boys are too immersed with the foreign and luxurious items around not noticing the little girl Quona who stopped on her track at the very entrance of the room. Her body is currently undergoing changes soon her soul was pulled to a dimension she had never been to. Underscore. Chapter 2 The Sacred Clock's Secret The four young men are now looking at the note left by their savior they called Uncle Jim. Mentioning Quona at the letter. They immediately look for the small stature of the little girl only to find out she's standing dumbly at the very entrance of the door. Quona, who had just woken up from being pulled to a different dimension met four pair of eyes looking at her worriedly. Her big dear eyes blink three times realizing where she is at she's back inside the somehow familiar room meeting four familiar pair of eyes that she almost forget after the seems unending period inside a mysterious place. Her soul was pulled to a massive empty room with ten unmoving clocks at the wall. When one of the wall clocks hands started to move, the room instantly filled with different objects. An adult-sized puppet teach her everything she needs to know. Grasping or not the puppet's teachings, the puppets started and ended their discussions one after another. Unknown time passed. She learned different things of ten different realm, including the current world she belong. Unknown number of years inside the sacred clock but at the real world, it only took a few seconds. Now, she was pulled back to the room of the man called Jim meeting the young men's different gazes. The eldest kid stride his way to Rana and asked worriedly what happened only to be startled by the unclouded clear big doe eyes looking at him like studying his face thoroughly. She nodded before saying she's okay. The past few months, 
She was muddle-headed with the incident at the Wellian base so was able to not appreciate the four young men's effort to ease and make her comfortable but that didn't mean she didn't saw their effort. After going through different teachings inside the sacred clock, Rana was put at ease mentally and emotionally to see things clearly. She was able to no longer care for the unworthy things and the abandonment of her family. The man called Jim that she only saw a few times whom she had never talked to, even put his life at risk just to save her when her so-called family left her while the base is being invaded by zombies. These four young men for the past few months even treated her better than the people she called family for the past few years. The eldest among them who is now in front of her is called Alec, a talented young man with control of three elements of fire, earth and metal. He was leading them for the past few months even when Uncle Jim is still present. Among the four young men, he is with the most patient towards Quona on coaxing her for the past few days to open up to them. N. Alec after recovering with the first response he received from the little girl, he smiled and hesitantly pat the little head. When he saw she let him pet her, he smiled more and put his action gentlier. Uncle left a note for little Quona. Does little Quona wanted it to see? Her big dear eyes blinked before she softly nodded. The young man smiled and offered his hand that Quona took after looking at it for a few seconds before the two strive their way to the other three young men. The three seeing the scene was in disbelief. They know among them four, Alec is the most patient to her. Although they didn't act indifferently towards her, Alec is the most gentle whom talks to her from time to time and whom always makes sure she's not uncomfortable in any ways. Now, all his effort is not put in vain. One of the young men seeing the little girl responded at last to one of them. He took the will to approach her full of enthusiasm. Little Quona, are you okay? Big Brother Cleanse is extremely worried. The other young man at the left side of the young boy called Cleanse scoffed to his shamelessness while the other young man just look at Quona calmly with an unreadable smile on his face. Quona look at the other three young men calmly as she simply nodded to them. The young man named Cleanse is a water and wood cultivator. The two are named Shin and Lexia, the latter is the youngest among the four, only fifteen same age as Cleanse, Lexior is a rare thunder cultivator while Shin, seventeen, a year younger than Alec, whom is the calmest among them is a rare mentalist. These four are considered the most talented and with good aptitude among their peers, Rana is in doubt how that mysterious Uncle Jim met them by accident and saved them on their lowest point of their lives. Even her, she was saved by him. He went back to the Wellian base a day before the zombies completely infiltrate their area. Now thinking clearly, there is no such coincidence to that mysterious man. She can still remember the first time she met him. That was the day before her tenth birthday. The stoic man just looked at her and whispered few words before she flick her forehead with his index finger. The same day, she learned the Yun family accepted a double element cultivator with water and rare thunder element named Jim the same man she met that day. The next day, she tested her aptitude and learned she was unable to cultivate element neither mutant nor mutant fruit eater. The very same day, the mysterious man called Jim accepted a Grey Death mission and started his journey but before he left, he announced to the Yun family his protection to her in behalf of his father scaring them with her father's unclear identity. Quona after entering the sacred clock, she found the peculiarity of the man called Jim. The unknown words and the movement of his hands the first time he saw her was now clear to her. It is to lock her aptitude of what is his reason. It's still unclear. Although she know he didn't cause nor wanted to harm her, she can't help but wonder what's his connection to her and also to the sacred clock knowing such spell not from this realm of his made-up reason of his connection to her father. She didn't buy it at all after the four assuring Quona is okay. They then proceed to read the note left for the little girl. When learned it's written in the letter that she have to take her aptitude test today right at this moment at the very room they are standing right now. The room is filled with awkward silence. The four young men didn't know what to say. It's not a secret to anyone at the country that she tested a year ago with no aptitude of the three cultivator, mutant fruit eater and mutant. They wanted to console her maybe Uncle Jim was only mistaken but before any words are said, the young girl already strive her way to the machine in testing a child's aptitude. While the young men are hesitant at the sight, Quona is calmly looking at the machine in front of her. After years of research, people on the current era were able to detect a child's aptitude at the age of 10. When the apocalypse started, 
the technology's further development dropped and was put aside, researchers started to focus on different things related to mutation and cultivation to be able to cope up with the apocalypse era, when people was able to stabilize after few years. Technology continued to exist but not the same as before. With a mix of the available resources, technology once again regarded as an essential at the current era, just like the machine in front of Rana right now, technology is evident to the current world. A monitor of a computer, connected to a vine of a mutant plant holding a zombie core. Quona just like when she took her first aptitude test. She put her index finger on the zombie core where was pricked by the vine. When a drop of her blood was extracted, she withdrew her hand and calmly looked at codes at the monitor, a light from the back of the monitor passing through at the another zombie core, a hologram of images appeared, the five youngsters are looking at the images slowly appearing one after another. Water would. The young men are surprised at first then while the other images appeared one after another. Their faces are no longer simply described as surprised, thunder, mental power, healing. The four young men are no longer calm with what they are seeing even the young man Shin who is always calm among them. She's with the rare three abilities, even the healing ability that is considered the rarest. The images withdrew but the hologram didn't fade. Another image appeared that even put the four more in disbelief, mutant fruit eater. Lastly, a character of mutant was reflected before the hologram disappeared completely. There is a disturbing silence inside the room before the four young men was alerted. Alec in a fast speed pulled Quona away from the machine that was destructed the moment before the codes completely sent away. A, hey, are you okay? The three younger men's attention is to Quona while Shin strive his way to inspect the now unrecognizable machine. It's with self-destructed program. It must be set by Uncle Jim so the main base wouldn't discover little Quona's location. Shin calmly said but was clearly thinking deeper of what just happened. It was all set by him again. This means he already knew her unusual aptitude result. Among the four, Shin followed the man called Jim not because he saved his life but because he already saw the peculiarity of the mysterious man. He was always able to read things without failure but not after he met the man called Jim. He's a young man full of curiosity and Jim is a man full of secrets. He naturally followed him and his group. On their journey, he never leaves his attention to him observing every action to find hints. Although he discovered some secrets that he's unusual among the others, those hints didn't really give any direction of his real big secret. Just now, Shin after thinking deeper, he can't help but shook his head helplessly with a rare real smile on his face, a glim reflected to his wise eyes. He then realized what's happening. Everything is deliberate. The man called Jim had no negligence on his part letting him discover his little secrets. He wanted to follow him and join this group in the very first place. Them five are prearranged by that man called Jim to who knows why. Alec, adopted son of a rich family whom was forced by his adopted family to marry a girl he thought his real sister. Cleanse, a son of a mistress of a businessman. An unfavor son bullied by his older brothers that gone overboard when they almost disfigure his face. Lexia, an orphan whom was almost burn his whole body of a mission, left by his comrades in the mercenary group. Him, Shin, a bored young man from one of the powerful base. He almost died of boredom before he met a peculiar group of three young men following a mysterious man that he can't decipher. A very interesting arrangement. Shin seeing Kona. He can't help but raise the side of his lips. Last but not the least, an abandoned little girl of one of the most powerful family of the country with an unbelievable aptitude that was tested a year ago as a waste. And then five, an aloof mysterious man called Jim saved them all that they unknowingly followed up to this point. Very interesting, indeed. This arrangement, he may really follow it. He didn't like to be manipulated by anyone but this arrangement is just really too unpredictable and too interesting. It would be a waste not to follow it. Shin, striving his way to Quona, he lower his head and like talking to a small kid, he cooed her like a real big brother. Anana must be scared, big brother Shin will bake cake for you and Anana. Cleanse and Lexia's ears perked and slowly twist their head to look at Shin hearing the unusual coaxing voice of the scary man. They shudder unconsciously. When Quona agreed without a second thought, Shin smiled and gently pat her little head before leaving the room with her that was followed by Alec. The two are dumb with what they just saw and heard. Lexia who is the most hot-tempered among them is more acceptable to coax the little girl but Shin is just too unbelievably doing such act. 
Although Shen is always calm and with a smile on his face all the time, they all know by their hearts those smiles are not real at all. Behind those smiles and calmness is with a cause full calculations. Clems, who is the second most patient with Quon of the past few days, throw this matter aside, remembering Shin, whom with the least effort on reaching out with Quona is the second person able to pat her cute little head with a frown. He followed the three to the kitchen. Far from Ven Base, a beautiful woman on her comfortable position is drinking tea with a lot of delicacies at the table that she calmly eats while watching the big monitor. Eh, why did you not unlock completely her abilities? A young man three steps away from her nonchalantly said while also looking at the monitor. The woman acted she didn't hear anything focusing on the foods in front of her until one of the plate emptied in just a second. Blinking her eyes at the now empty plate. Her attention diverted to the young man who was now eating the stolen cookie that if she's not mistaken, it's the last piece from her stockroom. N. You made me realize things, to compensate the weak little girl, what about compensate her something, N. The young man didn't realize the danger of the situation until he saw how the woman look at his hands that is holding the half cookie that if he's not mistaken, it's her least favorite flavor. The frighteningly calmness of the woman made the man hardly swallow the last bite of the cookie. The young man's face collapsed. You, the woman's dangerous silence made the young man's knee weaken. No, you're right, the kid is still weak. Unlocking the three elements would give her focus to cultivate the other. He stopped talking when he saw the woman's frighteningly calm rise towards him. Did you just call her weak? You, you also called her weak. The woman raised her right eyebrow with a challenging gaze. The young man's face collapsed when he realized how ridiculous his situation is right now. The people around the two are looking at the young man full of pity. Among these people are three kids who are identical to one another. With the woman's instruction, one of the kid was taken by a thin man with glasses. The two disappeared out of thin air. Underscore. Chapter 3 Waste Mutant Fruits Cleanse whom wanted to pat Quona's cute little head after arriving at the kitchen was pulled by Shin with a reason of his water ability. While the two are busy on making dessert, Alec and Lexia are at the small counter nearby giving Quona a brief introduction on how to cultivate her elements. Her unusual unbelievable aptitude test was completely thrown at the back of their heads focusing on the important matters, her cultivation. Alec is patiently discussing how to absorb the essence of the zombie core to level up the ability which is actually not needed for Quona as she already learned different things inside the sacred clock not to mention these basic information. Different from the cultivation world of the other realm, cultivators at the apocalypse era are not to sit in a certain position while absorbing chi of heaven and earth but to absorb the essence of zombie cores to upgrade their abilities. After the essence was absorbed by the body. Cultivators have to practice their abilities at an actual combat in order for the power to settle in Denshin to upgrade the level of their abilities. Absorbing the zombie core is a cruel process while completely settling the power to the Denshin took a cultivator's time and effort. Does Nana wanted to try? Alec unconsciously called her what Shin named her that she didn't mind at all. She nodded while looking intently at the zombie core handed to her. Although she already know these things beforehand. This would be her first zombie core to absorb, concentrating at the core on her hand. The symbol of water inside slowly faded until the red color completely dissolves without leaving any trace in just a few seconds. Alec who is carefully explaining to her that it would be hard at the first attempt abruptly stops talking when the zombie core is nowhere to found inside Quona's palm. Lexia who is nonchalant at the sideline almost fell from his seat. D. Do you feel any discomfort? Quona shook her head then she looked at the other zombie cores on the table like wanting to devour them all. Arnana's absorbing zombie core is top notch. Shin suddenly said who was observing from the very start. Cleanse abandon on refilling the water tank and wisely explain further. To be able to settle the power of the zombie core, you have to have an actual battle. Big brother cleanse will help Arnana. N. It took months for the essence to completely settle but you have us as your big brothers. We will guide you in every step. Suddenly, black slimy liquid resurfaced from Quona's skin. It is the impurities of the zombie cause. It also means the power that she just absorbed a while ago was now completely settled inside her dungeon. Quona's big eyes blink three times. The four young men who just taught her the cultivation world using the standard of the mundane. I'll go upstairs first to take a bath. The four nodded dumbly. Can I have some beast core? 
Alec nodded blankly offering her all zombie cores on hand. Quona left the room leaving the four in an awkward silence. The rationale behind how the essence of the core settled in just a short time inside her is not only with Quona's special physique but also the impurities inside her body was long gone removed inside the sacred clock. She also had undergone training that her physique is able to settle the essence of the zombie core until she reach her first level of her elements and abilities without actual combat training. With this reason, Quona asked for more zombie cores to absorb before leaving. This is to reach the first level of her elements before taking a bath. The four recovered and helplessly accept everything smoothly even their pride and dignity as cultivators are ruthlessly wounded. She was tested as a cultivator, eater and a mutant, absorbing a zombie core in just a few seconds should no longer surprise them, right? No. Wrong. She's with unusual aptitude of both the three so cultivating each of her elements and abilities must take longer time, more effort and greater resources using the rules studied and tested, proven by the experts. Anana is too amazing, right? She's tested with five elements, absorbing a zombie core in an instant is a good thing. With her aptitude, she needs a lot of zombie cores to break through. We have to harvest as much as zombie cores as we can. The better a person's aptitude, the more zombie cores needed to break through. A person with single element needs less cores to absorb to break through his element than a person with two elements to upgrade one of its element. Thereby, when they saw Quona's aptitude, although she is able to cultivate multiple elements, the bitterness of this unbelievable result was that her progress to each of her abilities would took a long time and great resources. But seeing how she easily absorbed the essence of the core and even settle it inside her body for just a few seconds, they realize their worry at first is nonsensical. Thus, Rana's ability to absorb the zombie core's essence isn't the problem but the lacking of zombie cores. Cultivators need less zombie cores to upgrade their abilities compared to mutant fruit users, while mutants need to consume great numbers of cores compared to the element cultivators and mutant fruit users. Rana is a multi-elemental cultivator. Adding she's also both an eater and a mutant, she needs a lot of zombie cores just to upgrade one of her element or ability. Thus, when Quona went down after taking a bath, the four almost tripped of themselves when they saw she's at first level of her elements and ability. Although they already accepted her quick progress, they didn't expect it to be just as quick as baking cookies and cake. Shin is the first to recover placing the first slice of the newly baked cake on her plate. Anana is really amazing. Anana deserves the first slice for her reward. Although she's not smiling, Quona's eyes are twinkling looking at the sweets in front of her that she didn't hesitate to eat after meekly saying her thank you. The four are smiling at the little girl who is focusing on eating that is oblivious of how cute that she is. Cough. Lexia was first to recover after noticing how much he wanted to pinch her bulging cheeks. He took one of the delicacy stuffing it inside his mouth. Nana is also a mutant fruit eater, that means she can be a user someday. Unknowingly to them, they started to call her Nana, an intimate way addressing her like she's their little sister. What Lexia mentioned is the ability to inherit the power of mutant fruit. Once a mutant fruit eater eats a mutant fruit possessing the mutant's ability, he'll be called a mutant fruit user. Shin and Cleanse nodded with Lexia's sudden statement realizing zombie cause is not the sole problem here but also mutant fruit that is suitable for their little sister. N. Although mutant fruits are scarce and probably hidden by strong organizations, we will find the way to look for the best mutant fruit for our nana. Mutant fruits are rare existence especially today. Decades already passed since the existence of mutant fruits are discovered by humanity. Mutants are with peculiar ability that is unique from cultivators and even to the other mutants. Once a mutant died, their power will remain to the world and invade three ordinary fruits. These fruits that temporarily possess the mutant's power are called mutant fruits. Mutant fruits are with special existence with a reason of once a person ate mutant fruit, he will possess the power of the dead mutant. This can only happen meeting two conditions. First, the person have to be a mutant fruit eater. This existence although not as rare as mutants, it is rarer than an element cultivators. Once a mutant fruit eater inherit the mutant's power, he will be called a mutant fruit chooser. Second condition to be met, the mutant fruit eater have to eat the first mutant fruit of the three the same fruit. Once the mutant died, his power will be temporarily invade three ordinary fruits. 
whoever mutant fruit eat ret first any of these three fruits will possess the mutant ability. The other two mutant fruits left even eaten by a mutant fruit eater can't possess the mutant's power and worst scenario, the eater will die. The other two uneaten mutant fruits may be useless but they are still treasured especially by the mutant fruit user who ate the first fruit. This is with a reason a user's ability can be stolen once he died, intentionally killed in most cases. Although there are three similar mutant fruits possessing the same power, the first eater will be the only one who will and can use the mutant's ability. In order to possess the mutant's ability, the mutant fruit user have to die first. With the era of strongest rules, coveting the mutant's ability is not unacceptable. This is the reason even the mutant fruit's ability was already possessed by a user. The other two mutant fruits are still kept treasured either by the user himself or outsider. Mutant fruit users usually hide their ability and which fruit they ate while hunting for the remaining two similar mutant fruits for their ability to not took interest by other mutant fruit eaters. While the three are discussing of the possible mutant fruits suited for Quona, Alec is helpless at the cute sight and from time to time he will gently wipe the residue of the cake at the side of Quona's lips. Nana, eat slowly. Nana, don't eat too much. Your teeth is still growing. Nana, don't forget to drink water. The little girl, after finishing the first slice, she look at him blinking her big doe eyes then look at the cake on his side, not talking but her eyes are asking for another slice of cake. Alec is helpless with the pleading eyes. N, drink water first. While Alec is busy pouring a water for her, Quona's attention was diverted to the three when she heard they are talking about mutant fruits. There are a lot of mutant fruits just outside the residence. The four look at the little girl whom initiated to talk this time. They try to process her words when they realize what she's talking about. Waste mutant fruits. Yes, mutant fruits are indeed not an ordinary sight but the existence of what they labeled waste mutant fruits. Even ordinary people had seen a mutant fruit. Breaking the basic rule of mutant fruits. Waste mutant fruits are not only three in number. Everywhere even inside every bases, waste mutant fruits are growing in an inexplicable number. Because they are an ordinary sight to ordinary people, their existence is not as important as the other mutant fruits. I want two dozen of them. When the four realize Quona's words, they inform her that it would be better not to waste her talent with an ordinary mutant fruit as they will find the best and the most powerful mutant fruit for her. Quona shook her head. My mutant ability is connected to mutant fruits. Anana means. How is it connected to mutant fruit? What is Anana's mutant ability? The little girl's little face frown a little like she didn't know how to explain. Suddenly, a chubby little girl that seems five years old appeared out of nowhere. The four are taken aback at the new little girl, smaller than their Anna. Like it's her smaller and chubbier version but just the hair and eyes are in different color. Alec looked down when a small hand clutched at the hem of his shirt weakly pulling it to call for his attention. Quona using her big doe eyes, she's asking for her another slice of cake after completely drinking the water. Alec helplessly give him the second slice of cake. Why am I summoned? The five years old chubby little girl helplessly sigh realizing the reason why is she summoned. She then quietly observed the four new faces studying them. The four on the other hand already have an idea of the chubby little girl's identity, a guide soul, mutant are with special existence with a reason of their guides. A mutant once break through her first level, her guide will appear to be able, from their names, to guide the mutant, their master, of their mutant's ability. Although mutant fruit users can possess the dead mutant's ability, users cannot summon their guide soul. This is one of the reason of the advantage of mutants. My mutant ability. Rana simply said like talking too much would hurt her. The little girl guide soul sigh helplessly when she confirmed she was indeed summoned just to explain things. Firstly, I am named Komai. The four nodded their heads then carefully introduced themselves. N. Now that I saw my meek master is with four big brothers, the heavy burden when I saw her at first was slightly lifted. Now now. Let me discuss you the humans so-called waste mutant fruits and why they don't deserve to be labeled waste. Komai then patiently discussed from the very bottom, mutant fruits are easily distinguished from ordinary fruits with the similar peculiar patterns on their outer layer. Mutant fruits are distinguished from one another with their sizes, shapes, textures, and smell. The very basic rule of mutant fruits are they only exist in a limited number of three. 
This is the main reason you humans disregard these mutant fruits and even label them as waste mutant fruits. The usual number of only three numbers of each mutant fruit was broken by waste mutant fruits. These fruits just like mentioned earlier, they are down to mount everywhere. They are ordinary sight to everyone even those people who never left their bases. This is also the reason they are considered worthless to mutant fruit eaters and even to ordinary people. It is simply because they are just ordinary view to see, this is the only one of many reasons why they are labeled waste. You must know that there are three kinds of waste mutant fruits. The four young men nodded seriously while the little girl Quona is seriously focusing on munching the cake. Waste mutant fruits are in three kinds. Space mutant fruit gave the user to possess a space. Transformation mutant fruit allows the user to deform his own self. Lastly, the radar mutant fruit that can detect the existence of other mutant fruits. The special existence of these fruits are with a reason they are able to break the rules of mutant fruits. The very first and the very basic rule of mutant fruits. A mutant fruit eater can only eat one mutant fruit and possess its ability. The four frown with this basic knowledge. Lexia immediately refuted but still carefully said considering the little girl's identity, but these three fruits are with no defensive attacks. With Nana's five elements, defensive attacks can be disregarded. Cleanse replied. N. That is indeed correct. But the main reason for choosing waste mutant fruits as her mutant fruits is their power themselves. First, once possessed her own space, it would not only be convenient for her but also convenient to your group. They can't disagree to that. Second, just look at her. The four's eyes diverted to the cute scene where Quona whose focus is on eating the big cookie held by both of her small hands. This is too cute. Noticing their focus was not in line with her point. Komai almost do the very human gesture of palming her face. She can't even scold the four young men as she needs their manpower for the progress of her master. Her hair and eyes. The four nodded when realized what is the guide's soul Komai trying to say. Quona is with natural deep red hair and emerald green eyes that is too eye-catching not to mention its apocalyptic era. With the transformation mutant fruit, she can change the color of her exquisite extraordinary features of her hair and eyes. Lastly, radar mutant fruits can detect the location of mutant fruits. Cleanse added, plus, if Inanna's mutant fruit is these three, she will not be harmed by others with a reason of coveting her mutant fruit. Shin is with different concern on the other hand. Yes, these are three ones possessed by Kina. It would be beneficial not only to her but also to the whole group but there is a hole to this idea. Although possessing these three abilities are tempting, once a user intake the same mutant fruit he already ate and possess, he will die. This is one of the rule of mutant fruits. The mutant fruit user who ate the second the same mutant fruit he already possessed will die. Once the eater ate his first mutant fruit, he will possess the mutant's ability. Once he ate the second the same mutant fruit, he will die. So why is this a problem to waste mutant fruits? It is because space, transformation, and radar mutant fruits or the so-called waste mutant fruits can't be distinguished to one another. Mutant fruits can easily distinguish from ordinary fruit with the unique patterns at the outer layer of the fruits. Mutant fruits can be distinguished from one another according to their shapes, texture, smell and sizes. With a rule user will die once at the second mutant fruit of the same fruit he's possessing adding waste mutant fruits are indistinguishable to one another. Possessing the three abilities of space, transformation, and radar is with a great risk. Once the eater intake the same kind of waste mutant fruit he will die. This is where her mutant's ability enters. The three look at Komai with undeniably curiosity and full of anticipation. Alec on the other hand although listening to the words of Komai, his attention is at attending the little girl Quona whose focus is still on munching the cookies. It is to summon mutant fruits guide's spirit. When the words of the guide soul Komai was heard, the young men around need to process things slowly and thoroughly. Underscore. Sample scene from book one. Quona's almost closing eyes look up to his big brother Alec, sleepy. The young man smiled patting the little head while asking if he wanted to go home but the little head shook her head knowing they need to observe their opponent's abilities. Then Nana can just rest at big brother's shoulder. The little sleepy head obliged. Shin, Lexia, and Cleanse can only envy from the sideline. When the three noticed a deathly glare of their Nana's blood-related brothers not far from their seats, the three slowly turn their heads to their direction. With a smirk, the three raised their chin higher provoking the four young foreigners. 
the four young men not far away seeing their little sister being stolen at their very eyes can't even kill the four fakes big brothers of their little sister, they can only envy from afar, the three young foreigners are annoyed at the self-proclaimed big brothers of their little sister but they can only accept the fruit of their past actions, they just allowed their adopted sister bully her and even almost injured her, but that's before they learn she's their little sister. The three can only have sigh of relief knowing their little sister doesn't hated them unlike their eldest brother. Well, unlike them, even after seeing their little sister's eyes, they didn't recognize her but their great eldest brother just seeing her eyes knew she was their little sister. It's just unlucky to him he met one of their little sister's fake brother before her. Well, he just almost killed the young man named Alec later to find out he's their little sister's favorite big brother. That's the first time the always stoic little girl frown not hiding her dislike to a person and that very person is their eldest brother, her blood-related brother. Even knowing they are connected by blood, she didn't care and chose the fake four big brothers over them. They can't even go back to their country asking a help from their family announcing at last their family after three generations of waiting is now with a little sister as first things first. There are three old men, eleven uncles and thirty-four brothers to compete with their little sister's attention. That's not even including the, the old ladies and aunties. If they can't fix their relationship to her before the competitors knew her existence, they would never had a chance to her attention in any future. They are indeed dissatisfied with their current situation not to mention their eldest brother whom always calm and collected, his gloomy aura is radiating. On the other hand, the spectators from the sidelines seeing the cute scene of the infamous bloody Lily being doted by her big brothers can't help can only smile wryly. She is the same little girl whom killed two green level zombies before entering the Garion base, right? She is the same little girl whom compete with against the famous young master with thunder attribute from one of major families right? Why is she acting so delicate and cute right now? 51. Envy and Jealousy Title, King Adama dominates the whole land, underscore sacred path, underscore Adama, green totem, underscore metal era, made up ancient era mixed of east and western. Book 1, Ongoing Synopsis In the land of Milan where men dominates women, a story of a little girl with low birth was to be known as she pave her own way to dominate the whole land. In this life, she is no queen no hero no the hidden king neither the silent savior nor the pitiful mute slave little girl, not anyone but a king herself. She is to open a land free from discrimination of race, tribe, gender. She is to fulfill the prophecy of beginning and lead the five pilgrims. She is the master at the sacred path. She is called King Adama. Underscore. Chapter 1 The Prophecy of Beginning The land of Milan was founded by a group of sea traveler lead by Russian soon called King Beryl, Priestess Guyana, and Kiwan. Years turned to century and the civilization they built was soon called Kingdom of Gallio. The land of Milan was soon discovered by other travelers. People of Kingdom of Gallior didn't care as the land of Milan is a large piece of land. They occupy the East Land while the new settlers built their own kingdoms far from their marked territory. On the second hundredth years of the establishment of the Kingdom of Gallior, five artifacts descended from the sky buried themselves to five different directions surrounding the kingdom. After the phenomenon, Priestess Guyana's eyes turn gold as a prophecy of their kingdom flash on her head. With her instruction, the people built five towers surrounding the kingdom where the five artifacts are buried. At the center of the five towers where the palace for royalties are located, a large piece of stone with the carvings of the prophecy was displayed for everyone to see. The prophecy of beginning stated, years turn to century, century turns to decades, decades turn to millennium. This land would not be the same no longer held power. Thy kingdom would not be long but don't lost hope thy kingdom can be saved. This land was blessed by the heaven and earth. As a king would be born on this land, heaven will announce the mighty one's arrival. Five artifacts descended from heaven will descend from earth. Five artifacts under the five pilgrims. Five pilgrims under the king. Lead by the king, the kingdom would dominate the whole land. Thy kingdom can be saved. Years indeed turn to century to decades to millenniums and the land of Milan was no longer dominated by the first established kingdom. Three other kingdoms are built and small tribes established their own small kingdoms in the wild dominating the secluded areas. Just like in the prophecy, the kingdom of Gallior was no longer at the peak and can only wait for their savior, the king. To be born out from everyone's knowledge, 
The king there longing was now on her way with her tattered clothes chapped lips disheveled appearance blood all over her body, caused by their own greed. A king no one expected to be a her, a little girl they will label as a slave soon. Underscore. Chapter 2, The King Arrives, in the middle of the Coliseum. A group of people with peculiar cloth and marks on their bodies are on their sorry state as the people around are yelling and laughing to their soon death. This small group of people belong to a small tribe called Olesian, they are captured by the people of Gallio a month ago, travel by feet for consecutive days without proper foods and rest, their state is no better than a dying person arriving at the kingdom, their tribe symbol, their flag was disrespected thrown to the floor by the soldiers of Gallio and asked each of them to step their own flag symbolizing they are completely surrendering their identity to the kingdom. In exchange their lives would be spared and would even have the opportunity to serve the kingdom, to be a slave, none among the people of Olesian even facing the breath of death disrespect the symbol of their tribe and choose to die with dignity, the soldiers of Gallio seeing the stubbornness of their captives brought a show to the whole kingdom, they soon parade the people of Olesian tribe to the whole kingdom to announce the event of their public execution the next day. A young boy aged 10 after their parade chose to give up his tribe for his life, this boy is called Alyan. That night, the young boy Alyan step on the flag of their tribe in front of his tribesmen, his eyes are saluting his clan bidding them a farewell. The Gallio soldier's expectation of the commotion of the tribe didn't happen, the young boy is calm on his actions and his tribesmen are even more composed and calmer, they look at the young boy like they are giving him a great mission to accomplish. That night. The tribe leader asked the soldiers to spare the life of his five years old mute daughter but was only laughed by the soldiers. When the general heard about this request, he had give his order to his men. The next day, the people of Olesian are escorted to the entrainment ground of the kingdom, in the middle of the Coliseum. The small group of people on their tattered clothes are surrounded by weapons for them to use. This is after announcing one of them will be spared if, just if any of them will survive the claws of the general's pets. Two adult tigers are soon released, the two beasts are not fed last night, when seeing the group of fresh meats, they didn't waste a time and attacked them directly, the people of Olesian are not new to these beasts, they are people of nature, they live with the wild and survive from the wild, ten adult men took care of the two beasts while the rest surrounded a certain area, in the middle of their formation is a five years old little girl who is shaking with fear, half of incense are burnt. The two beasts are killed by the people of Olesian, none of them are killed but they are injured with the fierce battle. Words ran that soon tear down the peaceful time of the tribe, half of incense left. They are asked only one of them is to be spared. After winning from the battle of the two beasts, they are expecting them to kill each other for the position of a life to be spared. The general is expecting the tribe leader to kill his own people for his daughter to be saved. What they didn't expect, these people had long gone accepted their own deaths. All of them took their own weapon. Surrounding the five years old little girl, they wound their own right palms and draw the blood to their faces. They all shouted words unknown to the people outside their tribe. Yan Tin Mayakan Hijji Yan Tin Mayakan Hijji From afar, the young boy Alian whispered the same words. The people of Olesian stab their own heart, their lifeless bodies collapse to the ground one after another, the five years old young girl blankly look at how her father's body collapsed to the ground, her young mind need to process how all the people she knew stab their own life while looking at her full of, hope, hundreds of thunders soon strike from the heaven followed by a heavy rain, the whole kingdom of Gallior is covered wet, while the people of Gallior are celebrating of the first train of the year, a young soul was not, the thunder and rain soon stopped, the sky turned bright like the phenomenon earlier was just a bluff of heaven. Five bright lights suddenly strike from heaven surrounding the five corners of the kingdom. That day, the whole kingdom celebrated even more when they learned the five artifacts on the prophecy that buried their own had risen symbolizing their most awaited king had been born. The same day, four children are born and among them, three are boys. Among these three, Two are from royal family and one is from an aristocrat family. The people of Gallior can't tell whom among the three is the king mentioned on the prophecy but they didn't care. They know their king is now born and their kingdom would soon rise again. 
In the middle of the celebration, the little girl named Adama witnessed these people's eyes full of hope the same as her tribesmen's eyes towards her before they killed their own lives. Adama, who is in days of the celebration around while her tribesmen's corpse are surrounding her, was soon shivered of the indescribable sensation overflowing inside her body. Underscore. Chapter 3, Awaken Even with the joyous occasion, the soldiers didn't forget to brought the mute little girl to the house for slaves. There she was graded and displayed for a whole week to sell. With a reason she is too young adding her disabilities, no one is willing to pay for her thus she became a slave to the market, the lowest class of a slave. Days goes on and the mute little girl didn't retain her innocent demeanor. She became stronger, wiser and too beautiful. At age 10, an ill-mannered old man almost bought her to be his plaything in bed. Adama was only spared when the old man was killed the next day. Starting that day, she hid her face with a mask with a reason of her noticeable beauty. At age 11, she saved a six-years-old little boy that made her promoted from a market slave to a slave of an aristocratic family. Her new life as an own slave was lighter compared to the heavy chores at the market. She only have to attend the young boy's needs as his personal slave. The young boy was named Renios Gilbivios. He is among the three boys born the same day the king on the prophecy was born. With this, Jill was with a special identity just like the two princes who was born the same day as he is. The people of Galior didn't know whom among the three was the king mentioned in the prophecy thus they worship all the three equally as their future ruler. Years passed, one after another the five pilgrims was recognized by their artifacts and the king's identity was still unknown. The current emperor then suggested that the five pilgrims must choose among the three whom they will serve. Using a competition, the five pilgrims will recognize their king. The young boy Gil at age 15 entered the palace to compete against the two princes to win the five pilgrims' favor and the throne. Facing the schemes of the royal family, Gil's life inside the palace didn't go well but with the help of his wise and smart slave, Adama, the schemes of the royalties didn't go as they plan. With all the hardships and sacrifices of Adama, Gil's emotion towards her developed no longer as his slave, his friend, or his savior but his lover. The bond of Gil and Adama surpassed the relationship of a master and slave. Soon they became a couple keeping this relationship only between the two of them. The competition continued soon with the help of Adama. Gil won the five pilgrims' favor. He sat to the throne was recognized by the people of Galior as their savior, their king. Soon. On the day of celebrating Adama's day of birth, a character of the word king appeared on her forehead while the five artifacts spout to her. This scene was seen only by the five pilgrims and Adama's beloved, Gil now known as King Hivian. With Adama's words, her identity as the king in the prophecy was kept only known by the five pilgrims and her beloved. Hiding her position as the real king, she became the hidden king in the prophecy, leading the five pilgrims to win back the glory of the kingdom. The outsiders didn't know Adama is their real king showering their praises to the wrong person. When the kingdom of Galior earned back the glory of the whole land, Jill didn't waste time and married Adama whom in the eyes of the people of Galior was not deserving to be their queen. True to their thoughts, she didn't deserve to be a mere queen whom only under a power of her king. The five pilgrims stayed silent under their real king's order. Adama with her own ability, she won the heart of the people of Galior. The whole kingdom loved and worshipped her. The King Hivian won many battles but their queen improved their way of living with her unique ways of cultivation of foods and an easier way to find a source of water. Her world is full of sweets and praise not noticing the illicit relationship of her king and her comrade. She didn't notice the envy and fear of the king when he saw his own people worshipping her loving her more than him. She didn't notice the envy gaze of her comrade her friend her sister when she earned the position of a queen of the kingdom and the man she loves. She was killed by her two most loved and trusted people in the world. At the middle of the joyous occasion, a five years old young girl was surrounded by corpses of people and two behemoth bodies of tigers. The little girl stood at the middle of the Coliseum as she stared at a blank space in days of what she just saw. She had seen her future, her past. Whatever it was called, it was all a mistake. She had not recovered yet with the view of her clansmen dead bodies and her own death flashing on her head continuously when a strong force was pulling her soul. She closed her eyes to stabilize the sensation inside her. It didn't take long, the little girl opened her eyes. 
the full of rage, hate, and betrayal lies before was now replaced by a calm clear full of wisdom pair of beads. The little girl's eyes traveled to the dead bodies of her tribe then to the joyous occasion of the people excitedly rushing out to see the five artifacts outside wasting the opportunity to see the king herself. No one took a notice of the supposed mute little girl whispered to the heir, Yakin, Adama, Mayakin Hijji. It's her acceptance to lead their tribe, a tribe that no one to lead, for now. Underscore. A.N. I can't give a sample scene but I can say the plots of Adama's story is more complicated. The update of this story is slower than the rest. 52. Cousin Makes Yang. Title. The Wicked Witch Wreaks Havoc Once Again. Underscore Sacred Key Underscore An Plant Witch Underscore Fairy Tale World Book 1 On Hold Synopsis Once upon a time in a faraway land, where the princes and princesses are living there happily ever after, a little girl was roaming around the land wearing her usual smile on her small beautiful face, but don't be fooled with her innocent beauty and harmless demeanor cause she is no innocent nor harmless. Harmless? Not after she was tested as a tri-talent at age 10, a talented mundane, a powerful elite fighter and the rare sorcerer. Innocent, not after the mysterious sacred key recognized her as a master as she was able to transmigrate to different worlds and accumulate experiences of different profession. She was labeled wicked as she slowly unveil fairy tales a no full of songs and beauty. She caused havoc the moment she made the evil Kelpie her beast companion. She even turned the world upside down when she turns out to be a witch, the lost occupation that only in the legend exist. She is the wicked witch that will wreak havoc to your childhood tales. Underscore. Chapter 1 Anne, a small group of children who just turned 10 are on their line to test their aptitude. A little girl in her dirty dress was the last in the line as she stood there. Her small face is frowning full of annoyance. The old-aged prison guard accompanying her only sigh inwardly with the temperament of the little girl. If he's not begged by those usually lawless ruthless proud prisoners, he wouldn't take her out from the prison to test her aptitude. If not with those rascals putting this important stage of the little girl's life turning it to a bet, he is more than willing to bring her here. One after another. The children will touch the sphere with both of their palms and the result can tell by what color the white sphere would change into. Blue for a mundane, red for an elite fighter, violet for a sorcerer. Children will then be tested before the school year starts of what are their specific future occupation of these three, mundane, elite fighter, and sorcerer. Children tested as a mundane will be placed in a room full of books and different equipments. After going out of the room, they will touch the crystal of mundane to know which exact occupation are appropriate to them. They can become a merchant, professional, leader, carpenter, blacksmith, butcher, minstrel, tailor, and other simple jobs not needing force and magic. Children tested as an elite fighters would enter the tombstone of weapons where they can recognize the appropriate weapons for them. If the child is powerful, a weapon with spirit may recognize him as a master. Children tested as an sorcerer would enter the magical space to know which of the specific occupation they are fit to. Among the three, sorcerers are rare and the most noble occupation as they can become wizard, potion maker, spell scriber, and other occupations needing magic, the small room is no longer quiet as they are already done in taking their aptitude test had no care of the peasant's aptitude result. The children are surrounding a little boy who was tested as a rare sorcerer naturally the children from this remote area was amazed to his result as it is the first time they saw a sorcerer same age as them. The little girl on her tattered dirty dress didn't care of others indifferent treatment towards her and don't even care of the little boy being a sorcerer. The little girl in disheveled appearance is named Anne, an ordinary name in par with her ordinary background. Her father is a bandit while her mother is an ordinary lady from a small town. She is an orphan whom lived at jail eating and sleeping with prisoners the same cell his father was imprisoned. She is forced to take this nonsensical aptitude test because of those idiots taking a bet of her aptitude. The whole small prison facility then started to bet of her aptitude test. She grew inside the small prison facility and lived inside the prison cell where her late father lived. She was took care by prisoners and jail guards. Naturally she overtook their temperament. Right now, she's beyond annoyed, she is pissed. She's forcefully taken this nonsense aptitude test. If with either of any of the result, she will be needed to enroll to the academy that she never dreamed of. Forcefully doing what she didn't want to do, she is indeed not on her good mood. 
The moment both of her palm touched the white crystal, the little girl named Anne was drowned to darkness. Opening her eyes once again, she is dragged to an empty large area only she can see multiple closed and unlocked doors with different colors. Suddenly, a light appeared out of nowhere and only to find out one of the ten doors is now widely opened, her consciousness is forcefully taken inside. She didn't count so she didn't know for how long she had been there, entering ten doors, she surrendered to her fate, opening her eyes again, her old demeanor was changed, how she thinks was now clearer and calmer. Pulling her mind to the current situation, she observed where she is now, seeing she is back to the small testing center came out only a second past to the real world, she had fully understanding of everything. Lowering her eyes, her both palm are at the crystal ball. Knowing the process and trusting her result, she controlled the power inside her that was already rushing to the sphere. The ball although lightened up, it didn't change to different color like the other kids, while everyone was mocking her with their gazes of how her result is only the sorcerer in all night and not even the lowest mundane, she didn't care. And calmly withdrew her hand and get out of the small testing center. Blue for a mundane, red for an elite fighter, violet for a sorcerer. Everyone knows this. What they didn't know, once the crystal ball lighten up to a white color, the kid is with ease all result, a mundane, an elite fighter and also a sorcerer. Ignorance of the people of these remote area put down to advantage but this would not last long. The quality of the crystal ball is too low, it can't support her power. Good thing she controlled it before it reaches its core so the damage isn't visible yet, she have to get out of here now before someone notice the crack on the treasure's crystal ball of the small province. True to Anne's thoughts, the low quality crystal ball owned by the small testing center can't support the power inside her body. A power inside the crystal ball will lure all the power of the child for his first aptitude test to detect his real potential. This is the case for a crystal ball to detect the child's aptitude on her tenth age, to summon all his power inside as it is still faint. Anne is different. She was transmigrated to nine different worlds and taught by ten outstanding masters. Naturally the low quality crystal ball can't stand her overflowing power especially she is with a plant witch potential, the lost occupation only and the legend existed, no one noticed that in the middle of the crystal ball treasured by the small testing center is now with an unnoticeable crack slowly invading the whole crystal, the next day, the only crystal ball of the remote area was now broken. The mayor have to write a request for another crystal ball for their humble place stating the details of what happened that day. Little did they know, the information in the letter would bring commotion to the main office. Underscore. Sample scene from book 1. The prisoners, guards and even the warden of the, the small prison facility once again at a certain area, waiting for a certain paper at the wall replaced by the latest one. This is the time of the year unknown to them when it was started. They are crowded at the door excited of the arrivals of the new wanted posters, when they heard the prison guard heads loud, proud and arrogant laughs, their eyes followed the now slightly crumpled paper with the picture of a little girl in the wall, at the lower part is her name, quickly lowering the line of sight, their eyes bulged with the new released amount, one oh 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 a billion. Everyone was shouting for the now release new amount of that white-eyed wolf brat, shouting how troublesome and how lawless she is, clearly they are laughing and mocking her with words but their tone held pride as if she is their own child that they bring to life, which is not at all false, it only took three years after she left the prison cell and now her ransom amount is with already 13 digits. Just how amazing that brat is. They thought nothing else of her future troubles would surprise them when the news of Anne breaking the most secured pry and jail located at the notorious Scashin Island freeing the famous most wanted prisoner of the whole land but who could guess she's as troublesome without limit. No one expected she'll wreak havoc at the south almost killing a prince of Valley Kingdom, Prince Magarin. One of the most talented sorcerer of his generation and considered a treasure not only of his kingdom but the whole land. Far from the prisoners rejoicing the new released wanted posters, the reason of the chaos of the group of supposedly scary men is currently on her deep slumber night, after being disturbed by a creature that she almost killed because of his loud voice that cut off her peaceful time of sleep, she's without sleep of twenty consecutive days, two weeks ago, she planned to sleep for the whole day after consecutive days of training when a noise disturbed her, seeing it's a creature with big mouth.
she sealed its lips with a spell before throwing her a far that put her supposedly sleeping time not only delayed but completely forgotten when hundreds of palace guards hunted her with unknown reason to her not knowing and not caring the big-mouthed creature is a prince of a major kingdom. 53. Provocation. Book 1. Debut. The Unloved Fiancé. Status. Completed. Book 2. Quick Transmigration. Behold, Creatures. Book 3. Space. Unveiling the Waste Young Miss Shocking Identities. Underscore Sacred Door. Underscore Era. Plant System. Underscore Earth. Book 1. Completed. Book 2. Soon. Book 3. Soon. Synopsis of Book 1. 999 Lives. 999 Deaths. On her 999th death, she received a notification of the purpose of this rebirth. She is on her way in becoming a qualified transmigrator. Now, the second stage to earn this title. She was transmigrated to the same world she came from but was with a different identity. Transmigrated at a teen romance story. She was sly as a fox playing her role to play the fragile young hearts on her hands to turn this debut memorable. Little did our future qualified transmigrator know, provoking three male leads of the story would affect her future life as a future qualified transmigrator. Underscore. Chapter 1, 2 Cliché Getting reborn for 999 times at the same day at the same place at the same family, she's now at the bottom end of her wits. Now expecting to be reborn for her 1000th life when she received a notification. Congratulations for completing the first stage of your journey to become a qualified transmigrator. Input your chosen code. After her rebirth for a one step away 1000 times, her mental power has been strengthened and even predicted at least a million explanation why she's being reborn again and again thus the notification didn't gave her a lot of shock, excitement occupied her and if she's currently on her physical form a smirk may appear on her lips. She calmly draw her chosen code with her mental power. Kira. Again, congratulations, Kira. You are now on your second phase to become a qualified transmigrator, ready for your debut, drown in the darkness. The plot of the story flash in my head, I was transmigrated to the world the same world I came from, Maynard Cohen, the protagonist of the story and the only biological daughter of the Collins, the female protagonist's nanny swaps her newly born granddaughter to her place resulting Maynard's supposedly princessly life full of fairy tales turned to become simple and quiet in the countryside, Ivo Matt, the male protagonist, just like in every teen romance story. The male lead is a young master of a powerful family. Unknown to outsiders, Ivo is not the biological son of Mr. Matt's legal wife as she can't conceive a child. Leaving with no choice, Ivo was recognized by her father's legal wife as her own. In public, they are a loving family of three but in reality the family of three neither loving nor family and not even three. While the legal wife is the known perfect wife and mother by the public. The uneducated social climber but loving mistress stood as a caring mother and wife inside their mansion. The male lead and female lead first met when Ivo was 12 and Mena was 11. The young beautiful quick-witted playful girl happened to meet the young master on his sorry state who lost his way from his team in the wild. The little girl with big heart saved him attend to his injuries till his team rescued him. The main characters met again at the capital when Mena was adopted by her biological family. With a reason of the female protagonist growing up from the countryside, her parents are not confident with her thus can only recognize her as their adopted daughter while the smart, talented, and beautiful granddaughter of their maid was their recognized legal daughter whom not only sees the female protagonist's position in her family but also her fiancé, Aero Klin the second male lead of the story and also the supposed fiancé of the female protagonist. He wouldn't be called the second male lead if he's not the perfect young master who have everything aside from the female lead's true love. Having the one-sided love his main role is to be an additional factor of jealousy of the main lead's young love story. The story goes on as the, the main characters fell in love deeper to each other but soon to be disturbed by the real deal villain of the story, Yuri Cooper, fiancé of the male lead. A beautiful rich young heiress, the perfect match to the male lead in the eyes of everyone but unfortunately not in the eyes of her own fiancé, Ivo Matt. No one in the circle didn't know that the young heiress have unrequited love to her fiancé since childhood. The beautiful young princess also didn't have her easy life as her parents did have their own third parties that ended up to be known by the public. When the 12 years old Yuri gets to know about this, 
she runs to the male lead aka her first love expecting to be comforted but because the male lead himself is a son of a mistress, he even get more irritated to the words spouted by Yuri. The young confused Yuri went home only to know her parents already decided to transfer her to another country till the scandal subsided. When she came back after six years, the spoiled brat young heiress is now smarter and calmer while plotting her schemes to gain her fiancé back but only failed with the male lead and second male lead protecting the female protagonist. Opening my eyes, a two-story tall high metal gate is in front of me. Memories of the owner's body flooded my head. After organizing the information, my excitement aroused more. Of course this cliché teen romance story would be boring if I'm not the villain of the story, Yuri Cooper underscore. Chapter 2, Rewriting the Farewell Scene The 12 years old Yuri took public transportation for the first time all the way to the male lead's residence after knowing the third parties of her parents. In the original story, she ended up angering her fiancé with her careless words regarding third parties as the male lead is sensitive and this topic as he himself is a son of a third party. Before things went unfavorable to the villain of the story, the original Yuri was replaced by another soul who have a fully understanding of the overall situation. Currently, inside the Matt's mansion, the butler informed Grandma Matt of the arrival of the young lady of the Coopers. The old madam didn't waste time and told his grandson to accompany his fiancée as the affairs of the young heiress parents are now the headlines of the news. Naturally the old madam understood the reason of the young lady's sudden visit. Now on her sorry state, Yuri was personally invited by the the male protagonist himself. I, is grandma inside? Ivo, although confused, nodded and escorted her to his grandmother. Yuri seeing the old lady, her action was still restrained with Ivo's presence. She then silently asked, see, can Yuri have some G? Grandma's time? Although confused as the grandmother grandson pair both expected the young lady is here for her fiancé, they both understood Yuri's request. Sighing softly, the old madam look at her grandson and softly tap the back of his hand. The young master is not bothered at all. He walks out of the scene but did not get too far. Yuri sadly look at Ivo's departing back and when he's no longer in view she hurriedly run towards the old lady. The old madam did open her arms to be able to accommodate the little girl's small frame. Gee, grandma, grandma. A low sob came from Yuri as her tears continuously flow from her eyes. Grandma Matt tighten her hug to comfort her more as she caress her hair. Yes, I'm here my granddaughter. I'm here. A louder sob heard from the hall as the young lady state vague words but some are still recognizable. Just as expected. The reason of her visit was connected to her parents' affairs. When Yuri calmed down the two broke from their hug, the old madam took a tissue from the side and carefully wiped Yuri's tears but soon her hand abruptly froze when the young lady state her next words. Grandma, I, I want to be, break the engagement with big brother, Ivo, from afar about to step back from his eavesdropping spot ready to go upstairs, stops. His eyebrows almost meet and a confusion is now visible on his face. He want to confirm if he heard it right. My granddad Uta, W.H., what are you saying, Grandma? I don't want to be like Mom and Dad. I, I want to get married to the person I love and, and to, to the person who also loves me. A shock appeared on the old madam's eyes as she held Yuri's hand. My granddaughter Yuri. Yuri raised her head and look at her hands being caressed by the old lady. Grandma, I, I know. Everyone knows. I know big brother of D, don't like me. She lowered her head more, I like him but he don't like me, I know it. The old lady's eyes soften as her other hand started to caress the young lady's hair again. When Yuri's hurt and full of sadness eyes met hers, the old madam's eyes almost teared for the child. My Yuri, oh my Yuri, you are still young and so with my grandson of a big brother may not like you now but when. Grandma Matt stops on her next words when Yuri's eyes grew more hurt as she slowly shake her head. Grandma. Love can't be forced just like mom and dad. Yuri showed a forced smile to the old lady. I can still be grandma's granddaughter even without marrying big brother. Don't be lonely grandma. A weak smile appeared on the old madam's face and just caress Yuri's hair. Of course, Yuri is my favorite granddaughter and would only be my granddaughter. Let me accompany you on your way home. I'm sure your parents are worried about you. I also wanted to talk to your parents. 
The old madam stood up as Yuri carefully supported her walking on their way out. Not from afar, Ivo's line of sight was on the departing back of the petite young girl unknown to him his knuckles are subconsciously tighten. The moment the old lady's focus was on instructing the helpers, a smirk appeared on Yuri's face. She tried not to look at the boy's direction from afar acting oblivious of his stare. Yuri looked back to the direction of Evo's room as she gave a smile full of sadness like she's bidding a farewell to the owner of the room. Just like that, the soul inside Yuri rewrite the male protagonist and the villain's farewell scene. Underscore. Chapter 3, The Debutante, Breaking the Engagement? Is this because of about us? Mother Cooper awkwardly asked but with the hint of anger, pain, disappointment, and guilt, the old madam slowly shook her head, thrice softly sighing. A soft voice interrupted the scene of the adults. M, Mom, it's not Grandma who said it. I, it's me. The little girl when she saw her mother's eyes looking at hers, she averted her eyes, looking down on her entwined fingers fiddling them and like an afraid little kid thinking of an excuse. She said in a trembling voice, I, I no longer like big brother, the old lady sigh once again massaging her own forehead with the tips of her fingers she's having a headache of the obvious lie of the kid. Yuri's parents are no dumb to not understand their daughter's lie. Father Cooper then carefully said, if that's a Yuri's thought, mashes. Yuri's mother glare at her husband, hear me out first. We'll be out of the country and settle there for some years to lay low. After we came back and if our Yuri still wanted to break the engagement then we'll then officially break the N. Mashes. What? You're saying nonsense. What nonsense? We just talked about this. We didn't discuss about this. About going abroad. Yes we just did. About breaking the engagement. No. About going abroad. This is not the right time to say that. The old lady just look at the pair bantering at each other. Sighing softly she look at the girl on her side pitying her more. Going abroad is every rich family's last resort when a scandal broke so this decision of the Cooper couple are not too surprising. It's just that the young girl is the most affected in her parents' affairs. Mum, Dad. A soft voice interrupted the husband and wife there. See, can we stay here for another month? The two's glaring competition broke. Father Cooper looked at his wife arrogantly like all he said earlier are the best words to say. When he realized a thing, he then asked his daughter, A month? If our Yuri is thinking of her school, no worries. We already talked to the Harris and you would still be considered as a graduate of Harriet Academy. But a month? Isn't there a two more months for the... The dumb Father Cooper stopped when he realized a thing. Still on his stoic face. He cough awkwardly not meeting his wife's deathly glare. Grandma Matt getting a headache of this view of the couple. One month later is her grandson of O Matt's birthday and never in Yuri's existence did she get absent from the celebration. She even remember the young girl got sick before because of her grandson pushing her in the pool but she didn't even get angry to her fiancé and even attended his birthday and give him a thousand origami cranes folded by the young heiress herself. Every year. The young girl didn't stop to amaze the Matt family of her cute lovely full of effort gifts. My granddaughter Yuri, go upster first and grandma have something to discuss with your parents. Grandma knows a Yuri is tired and sleepy. Come come let me give you a good night hug. After giving a goodbye gestures to the three she left with small steps and her head down. The three adults can only look at the departing back of the child full of pity and guilt. When Yuri at last arrived at her bedroom she dropped all her pretense and calmly look at the numbers in the air. When she transmigrated to this world, she firstly noticed these numbers floating in the air which is only visible to her. She noticed the numbers started to fluctuate the moment she said her first statement to the grandmother grandson bear. It did increase a lot while conversing with the old lady regarding the breaking of the engagement. Now conversing with Yuri's parents with the same topic. It did still increase but unlike the fluctuation in the Matt's mansion, it's too weak. With this information, the soul inside Yuri end up to many conclusion and sticking to the most realistic one. These numbers are those creatures fluctuation of emotions related to the main characters of the story. The bigger the role to the story, the more they can affect these numbers of who and what creatures. She can only name them psychotic weird aliens. For getting reborn for almost a thousand times, she was more open to possibilities and existence of higher species. She stick to this conclusion with the hints she accumulated from the notification she received after her 999th death. First, it says she just finished the first stage namely reborn. Second, 
using mental power to encode her username. This means she was reborn for Helen 999 times to have this level of mental power and finally reach the second stage. Third hint. The second stage is labeled as debut. Fourth hint. These stages end result if all past is to become a qualified transmigrator. It means she's being introduced right now to hell who they are or where those freaks are. From the world she came from, she can only compare this to the movie Hunger Games transported them to a different place to entertain those rich psychotics with weird fashions but this situation of her is much easier. With much more complications of unknown backstories. Those aliens want emotions. Then she'll give them emotions. The soul named Kira inside the body of little Yuri closed her eyes. Her lips are curving, her mind is full of plays of how to bully and play the main characters under her hand. That night, she packed her clothes ready for her tomorrow's escapade. She can't lose to the original Yuri's effort in giving a birthday gift to the male protagonist. Is she? Underscore. Chapter 4. 54. Mercenary Tournament. Chapter 4. Gone Too Far. One month later, Ivo Matt, the young master of the mats, celebrated his birthday. Just like the past years, the celebration isn't simple attended by important figures but in the middle of this grandiose event, the celebrant's focus was not to these notable personalities. The young man unconsciously looked at a certain seat from time to time. Grandma Matt seeing this scene, she restrained herself from teasing her grandson. The event comes to an end, Ivo didn't see the figure of the little girl. Grandma Matt who is also expecting the presence of Yuri rather felt disappointed. She felt unsettled. A month ago, Yuri obviously wanted to attend the celebration. The old lady asked someone to call the Coopers but only answered by their butler saying the family had an emergency. When she tried to explain to her grandson, Ivo who is not in his mood indifferently said that he really didn't care and didn't even notice Yuri didn't attend at all. Two days after Ivo's grand celebration, Yuri wearing a simple pink dress was dropped by a noticeable entourage. The convoy was eye-catching enough and when Yuri exited with two old men from one of the lift, almost everyone around the school ground looked at their direction. The two old men whom catches the attention and the salute of the parents around are not bothered with the spectators' gaze as their focus was only to their granddaughter. They compromise their granddaughter for the tenth time today to be accompanied even by the butler but Yuri is with unwavering answer. When they saw their little granddaughter plead silently with her eyes full of helplessness for the last time, the two old men's weak heart gave up adding they are being scolded by their wives to get in the car. They let their granddaughter go. Yuri, with the news around about her parents and the breaking of the engagement of the young master of the mats as she was not invited to Ivo's celebration two days ago, is the focus of everyone's gaze. This is her first appearance to the public after the news about her parents' affairs broke, unexpectedly to the students whom are used to her arrogant demeanor and belittling gaze. The Yuri they are seeing now is with shoulder dropped head down and with careful steps walking alone around the campus. When the bell rang, Yuri didn't go first to where his real target was but roam around the campus first. The classes are going on so the hallways are almost empty. Yuri stopped when she heard a play of a piano. She followed the sound and was brought to where the original Yuri's favorite place in the campus, the piano room. When Yuri saw who is playing the piano, she then remember this character of the story, Gino West. He was crippled at age 11 and killed himself at age 15. The incident was related to the two male protagonists and so with his suicide, the two male leads' friendship didn't go well afterwards. Before the incident happened, Ivo Matt, the male protagonist, Aero Klin, the second male protagonist, and Gino West, was with a brotherhood relationship. This friendship was tainted after the incident of Gino West resulted he was crippled and even gone worst when he killed himself. Yuri looked at the young man in wheelchair as he is immersed on his own music not noticing her presence from afar. Yuri took a seat to the floor while listening to the piano piece. The little girl curl into a ball propped her head with her arms currently hugging her knees. Her act got the best of her that she unknowingly slept for real in that position. After two piano pieces, Gina who was about to get out of the room stopped by the door and saw Yuri who was sleeping curled in a ball position. Gino after recognizing the little girl instructed his butler to call her family. Not long gone, six adults arrived whom brought a doctor. When the worried grandparents and parents saw their little granddaughter was curled into a ball silently sleeping. 
they almost cried of the view of their princess. Knowing what their little princess had been through these past few days now seeing her sleep even in such position, they are relieved somehow. Gino West, who have been observing the scene how the little girl's family tried to stop the tears on their eyes while looking at the little girl, how they carefully lifted the petite body with extra care of her right arm, and how come doctors are on standby he somehow had an idea of what is happening. That day, Yuri's plan had a little adjustment when she met earlier one of the character of the story that she didn't expect to see before she leaves. Ivo, the male protagonist, whom had heard the arrival of Yuri to the campus had readied himself to hear her reasons first for not attending his birthday but the same as that day. He had wait and didn't see the figure of the little girl. The next day, Yuri appeared again to the campus and went straight to Ivo but didn't saw him. He encounter once again the cannon fodder of the story Gino West who is on his way to the piano room. The young master sitting on his wheelchair saw the little girl sitting at one of the bench outside like waiting for someone while she's caressing a small thing on her hand. When his butler noticed the gaze of his young master, the butler didn't stop on his track as he is not told so but slow down to let his young master had a view of the little girl longer. When arrived at the piano room, the butler didn't fully close the door while his young master was playing the piano. Yuri when heard the playing of the piano, she again strive on her way to the piano room stood near the slightly open door leaning at the wall as she deliberately didn't hide fully. Her pleated skirt was poking at the door waiting for the young master to notice her presence. Just as expected, Gino had seen the hiding little girl so stopped on playing the piano. Yuri like a little kid poke her little head to the open door to see why the music stopped and when she saw Gino looking on her direction, her big doe eyes went even bigger and like a shy child who had been discovered she hide herself again. Gino's butler was amused to this scene. He asked his young master if he wanted to invite the little girl but the young master only pursed his lips so he didn't do any movement. Yuri who had expected this had went out of her hiding spot and like a guilty little kid, she slowly walks toward Gino's way not looking at his eyes. She apologized using her gentle small voice while fiddling her small fingers out of nervousness. Are you here to play the piano? The original Yuri was renowned pianist even at a young age so this question of the young boy was expected by the soul inside Yuri. Yuri who was playing her role was startled to the question of the young master. She bowed her head looking at her right hand as she smiled bitterly. She shook her head and didn't talk. You don't have to stay outside if you wanted to hear me play. Yuri surprisedly looked at Gino and with her big bright eyes, she asked happily but tentatively. See can I? Gino just nodded and instructed the butler to put the chair on his side. Gino played the piano while Yuri was sitting on his side. While Yuri was immersed on the calming music, Gino was immersed on the view of the little girl. Yuri's eyes are closed her pink lips are with a gentle smile while her left hand are tapping gently her own lap with her pink small fingertips following the notes of the music. He then look at her unmoving right hand on her lap. Gino once again look at the small face of the little girl silently smiling. He averted his gaze before the little girl opened her eyes and act indifferently. The little girl would request a piece and the same as the other piece, she would close her eyes and imagine she is playing the piano while her eyes closed smiling gently. This is the harmonious scene of Oso when the door of the piano room was opened. Gino's fingers stops when he saw a group of young men entering the room. When Yuri noticed this, frowning slightly she opened her eyes and looked at him. When she saw his line of sight, Yuri's smile spread she grabbed the small box on her small sling bag and bid her farewell to Gino as she smilingly strive her way to Ivo. Big brother Ivo. Yuri whom was smiling happily to see him made Ivo more irritated. Yuri noticing the other people around, she asked hesitantly if she can talk to him in private. Ivo scoffed and acted indifferently, if you can't tell it here. Then don't bother. I, it's just a small matter. I, I just want T, to give Big Brother Ivo something. Ivo's friends around are amused how they see with their own eyes the arrogant terrorist was stuttering in front of their friend. While the people around are excited, Ivo was more irritated knowing it's a present for his past birthday made him remember things so when Yuri tentatively offer a small box with both of her small palm, he tap her hand resulting for the small box to fell. No one noticed how Yuri held her right hand in pain as the people around focused on the now opened small box and the bracelet on the floor. Ivo's friends are surprised at first with their friend's impulsiveness the same shock as Ivo to himself but when he saw the beautiful bracelet on the floor, his irritation rose more. He then stated mockingly, oh. 
It's a bracelet this time. You must have travel to the mountains to harvest the beads yourself. Ivo smirked and added, This year it seems you had done too well and the present was not poorly made. The onlookers chuckled with their friend's remark restraining their laughs to be noticeable. They all know. Everyone knows that Yuri's present to their friend every year was especially made by her and now Ivo just said to her face how her gifts in the past years are poorly made. Yuri on the other hand was bowing her head while holding her right hand, she restrained herself to beat the male protagonist keeping her role in play. Although she didn't expect the male lead would physically hurt her, Yuri can only view how things are going more favorable on her way to console the pain on her right hand. She sob quietly and run away when the insults are done. Gino's butler followed the young miss under his young master's order. Oi why would you be too honest to her, Ivo? Look at her now. My mum would scold me for not protecting my soon stepsister. Aero teasingly said to his friend. Ivo didn't appreciate his friend's joke. Ignoring him, he strived to Gino's direction but was only met with a glare. You've gone too far this time. Moving the wheels on his own, Gino ignored everyone and left the room leaving the group of young men in deep silence. Underscore. Chapter 5 55. Will follow end. Chapter 5. A comeback. When Yuri was fetched by her grandparents and was asked what really did happen, she didn't speak the truth. The butler of young master Gino on the sideline who had witnessed everything was pitying the little girl more. The old men gave their thanks for the second time to the butler whom didn't forget to advertise his young master saying he was only instructed by his good-looking talented smart young master. The next day, what happened to the piano room was the topic of the whole academy. This is with the reason of the villain running out crying from the music building deliberately went to the direction of the students to have more witness. These students are offended at least once by the arrogant Yuri and now possessing such information. They spread the gossip of Yuri being rejected by her own fiancé to the whole academy making Yuri a laughingstock. What they didn't know, this is all what Yuri wanted them to do. Not long. The gossip was reported to the grandparents of Yuri that made them enraged. They immediately took action. The announcement of breaking the engagement of their granddaughter and Devo soon published and without giving the business world time to breath another news confirmed by the both Lee and Cooper family, Yuri Lee Cooper as the sole heiress of the two biggest group corporation. True to this, her grandparents and parents' plan in the first place is to leave the companies in her name solely. This is part of the two families' agreement before their arranged marriage. The world didn't know but Mother Cooper. The only daughter of the powerful Lee family, got pregnant by the second young master of the two young masters of the powerful Cooper family. Before Yuri was born, the second young master died of car accident while their eldest young master aka Father Cooper can't conceive his own descendant. They thought the bloodline of the Coopers soon to end until they get to know about Mother Cooper. The arranged marriage between Mother Cooper and Father Cooper was agreed after knowing Yuri's existence. Before their marriage, Mother Cooper took the initiative to reveal her sexual orientation to Father Cooper. Even before the second young master of the Coopers forced his way to her, Mother Cooper was never get attracted to the opposite sex and it even got worse after the incident happened. This gave the two, husband and wife an understanding of their boundaries. After Yuri was born, Mother Cooper even decided to stop her own lineage. This is to make Yuri Lee Cooper the only descendant of the two most powerful family in the country. When the Matt family learned about this, they brought their son to the Cooper's residence to apologize but was only rejected all the time. This is not the case with the young master Gino West whom was even invited by Yuri's parents themselves. When Yuri had a problem of insomnia, they again remember when she fell asleep outside the piano room. This is the reason Gino had been invited at their residence and was indeed successful. It's been seven days straight and Gino would visit Yuri after his classes. Slowly the two cultivated their relationship into friendship. What are you doing? When Yuri heard the young man's voice, she covered her paper with her left arm to hide it from the young man's view. What is that? Don't look first. I'm not done yet. Gino squeezed his eyes looking at Yuri suspiciously. The butler on the side restrained himself to laugh to the kid's immature actions. He coughed to clear his voice and made his young master remember to bid his farewell to the young girl. We are leaving. Are you not going to send us out? This would be the last time we will see each other. Yuri stops from writing and glare at Gino. Her small face was crumpled to a frown her pink fat cheeks are bulging while her small pink lips was pressed.
We're only going abroad. I'll be back here anyways. What are you saying we'll not see each other? You can always visit me. Gino only pursed his lips into a straight line. What? You're not planning to ignore me, are you? Gino can only sigh. He was somehow was amused how the little girl recovered her arrogance even with her current condition. Her thin right arm is with a cast while the side of her forehead is now covered with a gauze. Her injuries are no longer concealed unlike when she went to the academy. Even with the cast and the gauze, her arrogance are still the same just like her before but this current her whatever face she makes, it's was cuter than the past. I would not. Yuri squeeze her eyes like she's not believing him and slowly withdrew her eyes to write something on the paper. Short while. She carefully fold the paper back and hide it. HMP. Let's go let's go. I will see you out. Yuri said acting indifferent but cutely while hiding the paper on her back. When they arrived at the parking area, Yuri stood in front of Gino while the butler is fixing the area for his young master. Gino raised his head only to see Yuri's left arm was extended her small hand was patting his hair. I learned I am seven months older than you. It means you're my little brother. Gino was taken aback with Yuri's action. Little brother Gino, you're not allowed to ignore me when we see each other again, okay? The butler coughs a few times to wake his young master from his reverie. Yuri withdrew her hand. Ow, you have to go. She then carefully asked, little brother Gino, can I pinch your cheeks? Gino's face twitch. No, too petty. Her chubby cheeks went even bigger when her small pink lips pouted like a spoiled brat whom didn't get what she wanted. This is the face Gino remembered of Yuri on their last meeting. Before he left, Yuri stuffed a letter to his arm she write and draw herself with her left hand thus it was like carelessly written and drawn but Gino knew it was with all her effort. Days turned to years and Yuri turned 16. She went lay low never had a picture of herself on social medias. She focused on her studies while being active on other things. When Gino woke up early morning, he checked his email first and didn't see a message of his friend. The past four years, the two's communication continue. They will talk about music, stocks, and academics. When Yuri had something she didn't understand, the two would have a video call but Yuri wouldn't show her face. The camera would face only to her paper and her small hand holding her pink pen. It's the start of the school year, the campus is bustling with rich heirs and heiress meeting their friends telling stories how they spent their summer. This scene was soon disturbed when a picture of Yuri went down from her lift was posted on their school forum. Two of those friends are currently talking about this even zooming the face of the girl on the picture to confirm if it's really their master's fiancé. Ex-fiancé. She, that, is her name Yuri? The voice of the female lead made the two avert their attention to her. Four years had passed and the fate of the main characters didn't change. Mena was retrieved from the countryside and the main characters met last school year. Mena was bullied by the male lead at first but when he learned she's the kid attend to his injury when he they are young, the male lead treated her better. With the current situation of the female protagonist on her family adding the real adopted daughter secretly bullying her. He announced to the whole campus his protection to the female lead. Yes, it looks like her. She seems all right now. Yes, the storyline of the main characters didn't change but the villain of the story changed. The soul inside Yuri adjusted not only the impressions of the characters to her but also interacted with the female protagonist earlier than on the story. What are you saying? Do you know her? Mena, the female protagonist didn't notice the weird reactions of the people around by her sudden mention of Yuri's name. She narrated what happened that year without any restraint. Four years ago, Yuri accompanied by the butlers went to the countryside to visit a temple built at the top of the mountain. When they went down the mountain, they met an accident and their young miss injured her right hand. Their tour guide happened to know an old lady living at the bottom of the mountain so they brought Yuri there to be accommodated first while waiting for the rescue. This old lady happened to be the grandmother of the female protagonist. It even gave me pain when I learned she went up to the temple to just pray for a bracelet. I don't think the bracelet is worth it to her injury but I remember she was holding the bracelet the whole time while she's in pain. Her hand that time it's really the worst con. The face of the few people inside the room sank. Ivo's face was the worst who was just by the door heard half of Mena's statement. Yuri walking on her way to the classroom raised an eyebrow when she saw the great fluctuation of the numbers in the air. She somehow felt a little disappointment to learn the story came out earlier than her plan. 
she change her track instead of going to her first class she strive her way to the piano room, not long gone, a beautiful young lady leaning her back on the wall her eyes closed while a sad music of a piano playing on the background was the view the first time the three male leads saw Yuri again for the past four years, underscore. A.N. Kira's book 1 is completed, hope you'll read it, the first arc of the book 2 would be historical fiction.